Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Corn Pops! Kellogg's Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. As United States Marshal, Wild Bill Hickok was sworn to fight the most vicious outlaws of the West, bandits, rustlers, gunmen. But he also concerned himself with the problems of little folks. One of those folks was Dan O'Brien, who ran a horse ranch. Not a large one, but it was all that Dan had, that and his young daughter, Molly. One afternoon, Wild Bill and his jolly deputy Jingles were at Dan's corral, enjoying some bronc busting as Molly looked on. Thanks, Jingles. Man, what a ride you gave that bronc. That's the first time anybody ever stayed on him, Wild Bill. Mm, your dad sure has a good horse there, Molly. Oh, there's Dad, back from town already. He said he was going there on business. Who's that with him? Mr. Schuyler. He's our neighbor. Hi, Daddy. Howdy to you, Dan. Hello, boys. Uh, Molly, honey, I think you'd better run on up to the house. Well, all right, Daddy. Gents, meet uh, Alex Schuyler. Owns the Lazy S just to the west. Alex, this is Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. Howdy. Howdy, Howdy. I'm mighty glad to know you, Hickok. Jingles. Something troubling you, Dan? Oh, plenty, Bill. I guess you know what living I make uh, comes from the sale of my horses. Yeah, and you've got some mighty good ones, Dan. Or I did have, till White Fury showed up. White Fury? A wild stallion that roams the hills south of my land. Proud beauty of Ebersol one. Trouble is, word's been getting around that White Fury's a killer. What's more, folks are saying the stallion's been getting into my herd. Hmm, I see. Anybody sure White Fury's a killer? Uh, nobody knows for a fact. But naturally, they're not going to buy any of my herd if they think the killer strain's gotten into them. Uh, it's too bad, Dan, but you can't exactly blame them. No, Alex, guess I wouldn't either. Especially when you can get horses other places easy enough. Well, now, seems to me the thing to do is to find out the truth about White Fury. If he really is a killer. We're trying, Jingles. But meantime, I can't sell my horses and keep up my mortgage. Oh? You got one of them things, too? Yeah. Oh. I just talked to Sam Carter at the bank about an extension, but got nowhere. Looks like I stand to lose all I've got. Don't you know anybody who will help you, Dan? Dan, you know I'd loan you the money. Tell folks we're sure about your herd, but uh, my money's tied up. No, I wouldn't ask it, Alex. Uh, maybe there's time. Jim Rogers, my foreman, is going out to try and round up White Fury. Uh, Jim's a mighty good hand with horses. Dan, I think Jingles and I'll have a look around those South Hills. Getting awful late, Bill. Looks like we won't have any luck today. We can ride a little further before dark, Jingles. But it's getting half past supper time, partner. Hey, wait a minute. Look over there on the hills. It's a light. Yeah, somebody with a torch. Bill, all at once it's gone. Now that's funny. Mm, nothing to bother us, I guess. But a feller doesn't put out a torch just when it starts getting dark. Well, come on, let's keep moving. You might as well, but I'm still saying Jingles. that... Jingles, hey, look. Now, what do you see, Bill? At the top of that high ridge, standing against the sky. A white stallion. Now, ain't he a beautiful hunk of horse flesh? I've never seen a horse like him before. So that's White Fury. Yeah. Standing there like he owned the whole world with a fence around it. Yeah, he's what we came looking for. Let's go get him. Come on, boy. Ho, ho, ho. My rope's ready. Fall this draw. We'll try and circle him. Well, if he don't get other ideas... Hold it, Jingles. Ooh, butcha. Ooh, boy. Ooh. Bill! 
I thought you said we was going after White Fury. Forget him for now. That man lying on the ground. Huh, lucky thing you saw him. Not so lucky, Jingles. There's nothing we can do for him now. Look, it's Jim Rogers, Dan's foreman. He, he was out to catch White Fury. Well, it looks like he's been trampled to death. That's right. By the hoofs of a horse. There's sure plenty of marks. Yeah. The hoofs of a killer horse, Bill. It looks like they were right about White Fury. <laughs> Hi, partners. Here's your old sidekick, Panhandle Jim. You know, lots of young buckaroos, when they listen to a show like this, get so excited they start biting their nails. Well, you shouldn't ought to do that. Your mom will tell you it's a bad habit. What you ought to do is bite into a handful of Kellogg's Corn Pops. That's a good habit, because Kellogg's Corn Pops is a wonderful new eating cereal that's already sweetened for you. Now, come Wild Bill Hickok time on the radio, I sit back and listen while I eat my corn pops just like candy, right out of the box. But come breakfast time, I eat them in a bowl with milk. No sugar, mind you. The sweetening's already there, and plenty of it. Say, in that shiny silver-like bag that your corn pops are sealed in, right inside the box, keeps your Kellogg's corn pops fresh up to ten times longer. And tell your mom this, that bag's plumb wonderful for storing things in the refrigerator or for wrapping sandwiches and keeping them fresh and tasty. Now, you're going to want Kellogg's Corn Pops at your place, sure, if you haven't already got them like most folks. Now, listen to this. Kids love Pops. Moms love Pops. Pops love Pops. <laughs> Kellogg's Corn Pops. Now, let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. <laughs> Bill Hickok and Jingles rode into the hills, hoping to prove that the great wild stallion known as White Fury was not a killer, and that the killer strain had not gotten into Dan O'Brien's herd. But shortly after spotting White Fury, they stumbled onto the body of Jim Rogers, Dan's foreman, dead and marked with horses' hooves. Back in town, word got around fast. I just heard the news, Mr. O'Brien. It's too bad about your foreman. Uh, It can't be helped now. Meet Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. Gents, this is Sam Carter, town banker. Hello, Mr. Carter. A pleasure, Mr. Hickok. Jingles. Howdy. Mr. O'Brien, I guess you know what this all means. You're talking about the mortgage on my ranch, of course. Now that we know White Fury's a killer, your herd's ruined. That's more than a rumor now. Oh, but if you'd just give me a little longer... No, I can't give you any more time. We'll have to foreclose, and as soon as possible. Yeah, I guess there's no more to be said. You riding with us in the morning, Bill? Mm, not this time, Dan. But, Bill, why not? We could sure use both of you. You'll have plenty of men. Besides, Jingles and I have another job to do. Bill, I sure don't get you. Long as we're riding in these hills this morning, why didn't we come with the rest of them? You and I sometimes do better alone, Jingles. Oh, we didn't get a lick of sleep. I declare I could lay right down in a cactus patch and dream about goose feathers. We spotted White Fury along about here last night. Bill, you know, I'll just bet you don't think White Fury's a killer horse at all. There's plenty of evidence against him, but I'm not convinced. Let's put it that way. Hey, Jingles. There, through the willows. By a watering hole, just where I thought he'd be. He's already got wind of us. If we're lucky, we can corral him in that box canyon up ahead there. <laughs> if we're lucky. All right, spread out now. Drive him ahead. Hi! Hey! 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 Easy now, Jingles. Hey, Billy took our bait right into that box canyon. Rain up now. Whoa, what's that? Whoa. White Fury ain't gonna like being trapped. You try to make a break once he finds out. Then have him help us. Let him come between us. We'll try to rope him from either side. Here he comes. All right, spread up. Dad, that loop, Jingles. Hey, we got him, Bill. We got him. All right, keep the rope tight. Hold on, Jingles. Bill. Bill, what are you doing now? Get away from him, Bill. Major. Now for my saddle. Your saddle? 
Oh, Bill, are you loco? You just keep that rope tight, Jingles. Oh, Bill, nobody can ride that horse. Nobody. Bill. Let that go, Jingles. I'm riding him. Bill. Bill, dive into the brush while you can. Jump, will you? Come on your way, Jingles. This is the end. I knew it. Bill, for the last time. Easy, boy. Easy, boy. Settle down there now. Nobody's going to hurt you. Well, I'm a crop-eared, ring-tailed bobcat. Well, Jingles, does White Fury look like a killer horse to you now? No, no. Wild and spirited, but not a killer. But try and convince other folks of that. Maybe we can, with Molly's help. Molly? Dan O'Brien's little girl? Yes, if she's game. Meantime, we'll get to the bottom of Jim Rogers' killing. Now that we know White Fury didn't do it. But, but, but hold on, Bill. How's little old Molly going to help us? Listen carefully, Jingles, because I want you to take the plan to her. Well, what'll you be doing? Talking to Sam Carter, the town banker. While we build a hidden corral for White Fury, I'll explain everything. Have a seat, Mr. Hickok. What can I do for you? Just a couple of questions, if you don't mind, Mr. Carter. Anything I can answer. I guess there's no good word from the boys who rode into the South Hills this morning. No, I don't think they found White Fury. Well, running down a vicious killer like that won't be easy. But he's got to be found. White Fury's caused enough damage, especially to Dan O'Brien's herd. Mr. Carter, what would a lighted torch be doing in those South Hills? Torch, Mr. Hickok? Yeah, Jingles and I saw one last night. Well, I wouldn't know. Something else, too. How far does Dan O'Brien's ranch go into those hills? His property line runs along the first high ridge, about where you spotted White Fury last evening, I guess. Why do you ask? Just wondered, Mr. Carter. You know, I've heard talk that there might be valuable ore on that land. <laughs> yes, a rumor's been going around for years about silver to be found there. Just a rumor. Any actually been found? No, none's ever been brought in. I'm sure you can forget that. But why... Uh... Thanks very much, Mr. Carter. I I guess that's all. Uh, Mr. Hickok, I, uh, I know you're trying to help Dan O'Brien out of his trouble with the bank, but I've got the stockholders to consider. I wish I could do something. Maybe you can. So long, Mr. Carter. Get in here, Max. He gone, Carter? Yeah, Hickok's gone. But he started snooping. Way too much. You better mount up and tell your boss. <laughs> what are you so jumpy about? I've heard of Marshal Hickok's reputation, that's all. I don't like it. You got nothing to worry about. What you're doing's all legal. But what you and your boss are up to isn't. Leave that to us. It ain't your neck. But I tell you, Hickok's asking questions. Way too many. What if they find out? Let them try. <laughs> If Hickok and Jingles get too nosy, they'll end up right where Jim Rogers did. Under the hoofs of White Fury. Jingles told you everything, Molly? Yeah, and she's game, Bill. Ain't you, Molly? Sure, I'll do anything you want me to, Wild Bill. It'll take plenty of nerve, Molly. I wouldn't be asking you, if, except it's the only way. I'm not scared. Jingle says it may help save my daddy's horse ranch. Well, let's hope it does, and we're counting on you, Molly. All right, let's go, Jingles. Where to now, Bill? To the spot in the hills where we saw that lighted torch disappear. I've got to find out what it means. Easy, boy. Now, easy on this slope. That ridge we just crossed is the boundary to Dan O'Brien's ranch, Jingles. Well, what about it? I thought we was looking for, for where we saw that torch. That's right. Somewhere near here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. Hey, Jingles. There you are. Cave in by the mesquite. Yeah, yeah, looks like a prospector's diggings. That's where the torch disappeared to. Well, what would a feller be doing out here that time of night? Don't see nobody now. Maybe inside will tell us. Keep your eyes open, Jingles. Bill, you get us into some of the doggone places. Well, here's the torch. Might as well light it up and see where we're going. 
Well, I guess folks was always digging in these hills, not finding anything. No, Jingles? Have a look at that vein. Small, but it widens out the further we go. Why, hey, it could be silver. And notice which way the tunnel runs. North, if that's what you mean. Why? It tells us why Dan O'Brien's been having so much trouble holding his ranch. It does? It does. Why, sure. Now, now the way I've got it figured is... Oh, a couple of rocks here. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see them. Oh, just rocks. Bill, Bill, that that looks like bloodstains on them. Yeah, Jingles. Notice how they're shaped. Yeah, just like horses' hooves. The hooves that killed Jim Rogers. Bring them along. We'll look around a little bit more and then get out of here. Well, getting out of here just suits me fine. Hold it here, Max. Right outside the mine. I knowed we should have followed Hickok and Jingles, boss. I told you. This is as far as they're going. We'll find out plenty in there. For what good it'll do them. Let Hickok and his overgrown partner snoop once too much. We're going to go in and get them? I take a chance. You hide on the other side of the opening. When they come out, we'll blast them down. <laughs> I got you. In our crossfire, they won't know what hit them. Let's get outside to our horses, Jingles. We haven't got much time. Not if Molly's on the job. No, I think we can count on her, all right. <laughs> you know, with the evidence we got, somebody's got some tall explaining to do. Once they show their hand. Yeah, leave the torch right there where it was. Woo-wee! Sure is good to get out in the daylight again. Now, if the rest is as easy... Jingles, look out! Why, them dry gulch and muley cows all... Get back, Jingles! Bill! Bill, you're hit, Bill! Just a second, Rangers. Let me simmer down here from all the goings on. Catch my breath a little. Uh, see, I want you young ranch hands to know the reason why Kellogg's Corn Pops is better than most other cereals. That's because it's a two-way cereal. Good at pleasing folks two ways when it comes to eating. And one way is right out of the box, just like you eat candy. Yes, yeah, sir, they're a real tasty snack with a sweetening already on them. Now, the other way to eat Corn Pops is out of the bowl with milk. But remember what I said about the sweetening. Don't go wasting a lot of extra sugar on them. They're already sweetened for you. Tasty puffed up hearts of corn all ready to go. My partners, they're a real two-gun, two-way cereal with B vitamins, vitamin D, with important minerals and food energy, too. So if you aren't already settled back enjoying Kellogg's Corn Pops, you better saddle up and ride down the store tomorrow and get a load of them. You'll need plenty because the whole family's going to be getting into them. Now, let's say our little saying all together. Kids love pops. Moms love pops. And pops love pops. Good for you. Hell, right now, I'm almost busting to get back to the show. How about you? Entering a silver mine near the border to Dan O'Brien's horse ranch, Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles found just the evidence they wanted. But as they stepped out of the mine entrance, they were met with an ambush from two unknown assailants, and Bill was hit. Bill! Forget me, Jingles. They just got me in the shoulder. Look out for yourself. I'll flush out them yellow-backed hootie owls. Back in the cave, Jingles. That got them there scooting like heel flies was after them. Hey, look, a bunch of riders in front of the bank. I reckon they gave up trying to find White Fury for the day. Yeah, Dan O'Brien's there, too. Yeah, and Skyler, Banker Carter, plenty of others. Good. The stage is all set. Now, watch me now, Jingles. Bill, Bill, what happened to you? I'll explain it later, Dan. You might say a June bug bit him, only it ain't June. I don't understand. Never mind me. No luck finding White Fury, fellas? No, but we're going out again tonight, and this time I'm riding with him. How about you, Max? Sure, Skylar. We're going to put an end to that killer horse. You bet you are. No, no, you're not. You're all wrong. 
Uh, White Fury isn't a killer at all. What are you talking about, Hickok? Bill, I wish I could believe you, but you know yourself what happened to Rogers. Just the same. Bill's telling the truth, Dan. We'd all like to believe you, Mr. Hickok, but after all, you have to give us proof. I'll show you the proof, Mr. Carter. Soon enough. Oh, don't listen to him. Come on, let's go get that murdering stash. Now, wait a minute. First, maybe you'd like to have a look at that horse coming. Big white horse. It's White Fury. White Fury? White Fury. And my daughter's riding him. Molly! Howdy to you, Miss Molly! Oh, Jingles, Wild Bill. Hi, Daddy. Molly, what are you doing? Oh, she's just enjoying a little ride. Best horse lady in 16 counties. Man, White Fury. Well, is that proof enough for you, Banker Carter? Why, uh, it's proof enough for me. That horse is no killer. Why? But I don't get it. If White Fury didn't kill Jim Rogers, who did? Show them the rocks, Jingles. Well, here they are. Look at them, folks. Shaped like horses' hooves. They were used to kill Rogers to make it look like White Fury did it. But why? Just to make it impossible for Dan O'Brien to make enough money to hold on to his ranch. Somebody else wanted it. And the reason they wanted it was because of a silver mine. The really rich part runs down over into Dan's land, so the real killer was the one that was digging the mine. Yeah, but Bill, if we don't know who that is... Let's find out, Dan. Who was it urged Sam Carter to foreclose on your ranch so he and Carter could take over your property? I'll tell it. Alex Schuyler, your neighbor and best friend. Oh, you're lying. You can't prove that. Let's see what Carter has to say. I did nothing that wasn't legal. On the surface, anyway. You had a right to foreclose, but Schuyler was involved in a murder. Get it now, Banker Carter? If you don't want the same thing on you. Schuyler, Max, let's get out of here. Not until I... Watch, Max! Good draw for a wounded man, Bill. We got Schuyler. Watch your shoulder, Bill. Schuyler's all mine. Uh, uh, I'll you get got... a gun down, my partner. You no good hopper grass. Shooting well, Bill, when he ain't looking. Now, just for a sample. Now, get up from there so I can knock you down yeah, again. No, Jingles, no. I'm just starting to commence. That's enough, Jingles. No, Bill, after what he did to you, I'm... I think Skyler and his friends have enough coming without that. Now, ain't that the truth? <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. All right, hold still now while I pour this medicine in the wound. No, Dan. Now take no, it easy, no, Jingle. No, no, this Dan. is all we got to clean it with. Oh. What's that? He's pouring it on Bill. What are you hollering about, Jingle? <laughs> huh? Oh, well, I, I got so used to sharing all of Bill's troubles, I just naturally figured the doggone stuff was stinging me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't everything wonderful? I think we ought to have a celebration. That sounds like a good idea, Molly. Yeah. Now, what kind of a celebration you got in mind, honey? Well, I could cook you some chicken and dumplings. Chicken and dumplings? Now you're talking, Molly. You know, and just for that, when I grow up, I'm going to marry you. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison, and Andy Devine. Well, folks, that's all for today. We'll be back your way again next week with another story for you. Yes, sir Ree. And if you're hankering for some real gun smoke and action, you be with us, will you? Yes, sir, be sure to listen next week at the same time on this same station when Kellogg's Corn Pops brings you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Ann Whitfield, Bob Bruce, Barney Phillips, Will Wright, Clayton Post, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce. Music by Dick Orant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. This is Charlie Lyon reminding you... Kids love pops, moms love pops, pops love pops. Kellogg's Corn Pops.
Pops and pass those Kellogg's Corn Pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Corn Pops! Kellogg's Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingle. All through the years he wore the badge of United States Marshal, Wild Bill Hickok, with his big deputy jingles, rode a dangerous gun smoke trail. Over the mountains, through the valleys, and across scorching deserts, he traced the signs of robbers, rustlers, and killers. But on at least one occasion, he was riding a blind trail. Bill and Jingles were nearing the ranch of their friend Wade Ingram, just outside the town of Two Forks, unaware that at the same moment, the sheriff of Two Forks was accusing a clean-cut young Mexican boy of Ingram's murder. You can't lie to me, Flores. I rode up and caught you leaning over Ingram's body. See, si, senor sheriff, but I did not kill senor Ingram. Well, if I had proof, I'd lock you up right now. No, senor. You will not lock Benito Flores in your jail. What? Hey, put down that gun. Not until I'm away from here, Sheriff. When you find the true killer, then I will come back. Hey, this proves it. Pulling a gun on me. I'll track you down even if you get across the border. I'll bring you back and hang you, Flores. You can't get away. But I am getting away, Sheriff. No! Do not move. Until I am gone. Hey! Oh. Come back here, you tired! And then he pulled a gun on me, Hickok, and hightailed it out the south end of town. Seems mighty strange. What are you getting at, Bill? Nothing strange about it. He's guilty of sin. Shot Wade Ingram down in cold blood. Took his money and the deed to his ranch. You got proof of that, Sheriff? Uh, well, no. Uh... Then you got no call to arrest him for murder. Takes proof, don't it, Bill? That's right, Jingle. But it happened like I said. I rode up and he was standing over Ingram, lying there in the road. And he had a smoking forty-four in his hand. Was uh, Ingram killed with a forty-four? Don't know. We uh, ain't weighed the bullets yet. But I'll stake my badge he was. That still wouldn't prove much. There are a lot of forty-fours in the West. As a matter of fact, you're packing a brace of them yourself. Just the same, I'm tracking down Benito Flores and booking him for Ingram's murder. Now, wait a minute. I think you better let me do the tracking. You know, your authority doesn't go beyond the county line. Are we going after Flores, Bill? Yeah, Jingles. In the meantime, Sheriff, you better be digging up your proof. I'm out to find out who killed my friend, Wade Ingram. And I'm going to bring him back to justice. Where are we going first, Bill? The hands at the Ingram ranch said Flores had a sister living down here on the river road. Are we going to see her, huh? Just my run into Flores down here. Then we'd better keep our ears up, Bill. If that bird's a killer, he's just liable to try adding a couple of more notches to his score <laughs> with our names on them. It might be to be a little careful at that. Hey, there's a house, that pink adobe to the left. Yeah, ain't it pretty? Just a pretty little place. Turn in here. Plow. Ooh, come on, Buckshot. Bill, ain't we kind of right out in plain sight? <laughs> you know, I make a fair to midland target for anybody but a man. <laughs> Uh oh, there it comes, Bill. Keep riding in, Jingles, with your hands up in the air. You got local partner riding right down the barrel of a smoking rifle? <laughs> That's foolish. It's apt to be dangerous, too. Howdy, partners. Here's your old pal, Panhandle Jim. I'm sitting here in the edge of my chair listening to Wild Bill and chomping up big, crunchy handfuls of Kellogg's Corn Pops. Keeps me from hooting and hollering when I get excited. Yep, right out of the box is the way I eat my Corn Pops, just like candy. Because the sweetening's already on them. Come sun up, though, I go for Corn Pops at breakfast in a bowl with milk. But whoa there, hold the sugar, partner. The sweetening's already on Corn Pops, and milk is all you need. And Kellogg's Corn Pops, delicious as they are, contain lots of things that are good for you. 
B vitamins, vitamin D, with important minerals and food energy, too. That means you can eat all you want of those golden hearts of corn puffed up big and crisp. And that silver-like bag inside the Corn Pops box is pure aluminum. Keeps Kellogg's Corn Pops fresh up to ten times longer. And your mom can use it to store things in the refrigerator for wrapping sandwiches. But best of all, and already sweetened for you, are Kellogg's Corn Pops. Now, you know who loves Pops. Let's say it together. Kids love Pops. Moms love Pops. And Pops love Pops. <laughs> right. Now, let's get back to Wild Bill and Jingles. Wild Bill and Jingles, in search of the young Mexican Benito Flores, have gone to the home of his sister Juanita. As they approach the little pink adobe house, a rifle barks and a bullet sings uncomfortably close to their sombrero. Oh, I don't like this. Keep riding for the house, Jingles. Get those hands up high. Well, I can't get them any higher, Bill. Just burnt my fingers on the sun as it is. Hey, he quit shooting. Yeah. Now hold your horse and dismount. Follow my lead. Ooh, but Chuck. Ooh, boy. Oh, Joker. Oh. Now what are we going to do? Walk right up to the house. Well, what are you trying to prove, Bill? I'm looking for a killer. Well, this is a mighty funny way to look for him. You figure to find him hiding down that rifle barrel? Maybe. Hold it, Jingles. Go away from this place. Buenas tardes, senorita. Buenas tardes. Now go away. Buenas tardes, senorita. Hasta la... <laughs> How have you been? I am better when you go away. Andale, before I shoot you. We want to talk to you, Miss Flores. Well, I don't want to talk to you. Well, how can such a pretty girl be so stubborn? Oh, now, come on. Talk to us, senorita. <laughs> Please, and put that rifle down. I'm getting tired of holding my hands up like this. Right. What do you want to talk to me about? Oh, the weather or how to make good tacos. <laughs> Almost anything. You lied to me. No, senorita Flores. I want to talk to you about your brother, Benito. No, I don't talk about him. Is he here? No, I haven't seen him. Who are you? Oh, us? Oh, he's Wild Bill Hickok, that's all. I'm Jingles. Did you say Wild Bill Hickok? Yeah, I did. Put your hands down. Come in. I've heard that Wild Bill Hickok is honest and friendly. Well, now that's true, Miss Flores. I will put down my rifle. You come in the kitchen. I will give you some tacos, Jingles. Come on. Now you're talking. Sit down, Bill Hickok. Well, there are enough tacos here for all of us. Thanks, Miss Flores. My name is Juanita. You will not chase my brother, will you? I'm only trying to find the killer of Mr. Ingram, Juanita. My brother Benito, he didn't kill Senor Ingram. Did he tell you what happened? Oh, see, si, Senor... He said Senor Ingram asked him to ride to town with him. He was taking his money and the deed to his ranch to the bank. Yeah, Bill, that's what the sheriff said. Let her tell her, Jingles. Oh, and then he say, when they are still two, three miles out of the town of Two Forks, a man shoot from the bushes and kill Senor Ingram. One man? See, si, one man do the shooting. What did Benito tell you then? He see Senor Ingram fall from his horse, so Benito spurred his own horse after the killer. Did he catch him? No, the man have a very fast horse to get away. Benito said he not even know him, that from a distance he looked just like any other caballero around here. Then what? Benito come back to Senor Ingram right away and get off his horse and bend down to see if he can help the Senor. But he's dead. And just then a horse rides up and Benito look up and it's the sheriff. And they take him to jail, huh? See, si, the sheriff say Benito come with him. But Benito say it's very funny the sheriff didn't take his guns away from him. Does uh, Benito carry a forty-four? Uh, no, his guns are forty-five. But, Bill, we don't Never know... Never mind, what... Jingles. No. Juanita, I have to find Benito and bring him back. No. He didn't do it. You will not take him. Get out of here. Get out! Oh, but I haven't finished my talk. Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Bill, you has got loco. Come on, Jingles. Let's get out of here. Backward. <laughs> Well, what are we watching Juanita's cabin for, Bill? I've just got a hunch, partner. You think she'll follow her brother, huh? She just might. Well, it's plenty dark, and she hasn't made a move in over three hours, and I... Oh, oh. <laughs> there she goes, Bill, just like you thought. Yeah. Come on, let's get the horses. You reckon she'll lead us to Benita, Florida? Well, she's headed south toward the border. We can follow her and find out. You ain't following nobody, mister. Huh? Oh, who 
Who's that? Never you mind who's that. Just you grab a handful of air. Oh. You sure you haven't made a mistake, mister? No, I ain't made a mistake. I was told to stop you from following or catching Benito Flores, and that means you ain't gonna follow him, see? Take him, Bill. I got him. I got him, partner. Get up, Bill. He ain't gonna wake up, fatty. Now it's your turn. Knock my partner down, will you? Call me Yeah, me. and here's where I knock you down, too. Oh. <laughs> ah, I reckon that'll hold you two from following anybody for a spell. That's what you think, mister. But, uh, so, you want more, huh? You bet I do. I got a little to give, too. You shouldn't lead with your chin, mister. Hey, partner, come on, wake up. Jingles. Hey, Jingles, you can't sleep all night. We got work to do. Come on. It looks like the sheriff's gone to sleep, Bill. We'll wake him up. Come on, get in there, you. Uh, quit shoving. Who's that? Don't move or I'll blast you. Put away your hog leg, Sheriff. It's Hickok. By the lamp, Jingles. Get out of the feathers, Sheriff, and open up one of them cages. We brought you a monkey to keep. Oh, so you got Flores, eh? Well, we'll set up a necktie party for him in the morning. As soon as the judge can... Hey, that ain't Flores. That's a... Who were you going to say it was, Sheriff? Why, uh, a stranger. Never saw him before. Where'd you get him? They jumped me outside the town, Sheriff. I wasn't doing nothing. Now, that just ain't so. Sheriff, this coyote waylaid us and tried to put us both away. I think you better lock him up for a while, Sheriff. He might try to get in the way again. Anything you say, Hickok. Just hold him till I get back. Come on, Jingles. Where are we going, Bill? To pick up a cold trail. We'll be back, Sheriff. All right, Rack. What happened? Now, don't you try getting hard with me. I told you not to let him catch up with Flores. I didn't figure you'd be dumb enough to let him hard tire. What are you beefing about? I held him up long enough so they'll never pick up his trail. He's likely safe over the border right now, so what are you worried about? You don't know, Hickok. When he gets after a man, he's worse than a coon dog. And he could trail a drop of water through a river. Well, he's got no authority below the border. Just the same. You'd better hightail it after him. Take the shortcut to Dusty Gap. If they start through it to cross the border, you know what to do. Here's the dynamite. Yeah. And this time, those two won't get no chance to get their meat hooks on me. They won't even know what hit them. You find their tracks again, Bill? Yeah, Jingles. They're still headed for the border. Juanita's right behind Flores. Trail still leads through Dusty Gap. Yeah, that's right. Just ahead of us, sir. <laughs> That's a right narrow pass through there, Bill. I'm glad that varmint we caught didn't wait to try something here. It's a good place for trouble, all right. You drop in behind me. It's not wide enough for two horses abreast. Uh, we going on over the border, Bill? Looks like we'll have to if we want to get Flores. But we got no authority over there. Yeah, I know. We'll have to talk Flores into coming back with us. Now, that'll be a good trick. <laughs> you wouldn't talk me into anything like this. Hey, Bill, some rocks just fell down. You don't reckon some sneak? Jingles, that's dynamite. Bill, uh, the whole mountain coming down. They'll be buried alive. Man, am I in a fix. The show's not even close to over, and I'm all out of corn puffs. Well, that'll be a lesson to me, and to you, too. Remember to get plenty of Kellogg's Corn Pops tomorrow, sure. The new two-way cereal that's already sweetened for you. I said two-way cereal because that's the way you eat pops. Out of the box, just like candy, or out of the bowl. Dig in for a fistful any time of the day, but come breakfast, pour on a little milk and you're all set. And before you start for the sugar bowl, take a taste. You don't need sugar. Because corn pops are already sweetened for you. And your mom will let you eat all the corn pops you want, too. Because they contain B vitamins, vitamin D, with important minerals and food energy. Say, and take a look at that silvery bag that holds the corn pops in the box. That bag keeps Kellogg's corn pops fresh up to ten times longer. 
It's great for packing sandwiches in after all the corn pops are gone, and your mom will like it to store things in the refrigerator. Now, let's get together here and tell the folks who loves pops. Kids love pops. Moms love pops. And pops love pops. <laughs> you said it. Now, let's get back to the show. <laughs> Close on the heels of Benito and Juanita Flores, Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles started through the narrow border pass of Dusty Gap. But Rack Dutton was there ahead of them and waiting, for just as they entered the narrow trail between high rock walls... Jingles, that's dynamite! Pull that towards the bank! Bill, the whole mountain's coming down! They'll be buried alive! Bill, you all right, partner? Yeah. How about you, Jingles? Yeah, it's a good thing you yelled to get close into the bank. It went right over us. Now, who do you suppose set off that dynamite? I don't know, but I figure he'll come down to see whether it worked or not. Uh Uh-oh. Sounds like you were right, Bill. Quiet. (laughs) Well, now, I reckon that takes care of the almighty wild Bill Hickok and his two-ton shadow. A pretty smooth job, if I do say so. What's that? Uh, Hickok's horse. Well, to make this all look the same, I'd better shoot that coyote. Billy's gonna shoot Buckshot! What's going on here? All right, you ringtail monkey, you dug your grave. Yeah, who says? I got him, Jingles. Well, would you look at that? Bill, that's the same varmint we turned over to the sheriff last night. You're right, Jingles. Come on, help me tie him over the back of my saddle. This time, we'll keep him where we can watch him while we track down Benito Flores. Bill, here's another hacienda and an old guy sitting out in front. Reckon we ought to ask him about Flores? Might as well, Jingles. I mean to find him. Yeah, but we've had so many no savvy since we crossed the border, I got a feeling the whole country's out to protect Benita Flores. Could be, partner. Sure wish we spoke Mex. At least a little more than Buenos dias, senor. Buenos dias, senor. Huh? Buenos dias, senor. I'm a star of state. Hey, hey, Bill, did you hear that? He understands me. Well, go on, talk to him. Sure, sure. Buenos dias, senor. Buenos dias, mi amigo. I'm a star of state. Uh, fine. Uh, doggone it, Bill, that's all I know. I run out. Well, you got us off to a good start. Well, then you take it from here, huh? All right. Senor, we are looking for a young fellow by the name of Benito Flores. Have you seen him? No sabe, senor. Oh, here we go again. We're on a blind trail, Bill. Senor, this Benito Flores may have had his sister with him. Her name is Juanita. They're both young. Yeah, um, I mean, see, and she is pretty as a picture out of a mail-order catalog. You seen her, huh? No sabe, senor. Oh, no savvy, senor. No savvy. That's all you're going to get down here, Bill. And that's just serving you right, you two sneaking weasels. Your time will come, Rack. Adios, senores. Wait, senor. Uncle Eduardo, what... Bill! Bonito, go back. So, my friend, you do speak American and you do know Benito Flores. In fact, you're his uncle. Yes, I am his uncle, but he is not here. Juanita came only this morning. I do not know where Benito is. It won't do you any good to lie, senor. We follow his tracks to your door. He's here. Well, you want me to go in and look for him, Bill? No, Jingles. I think when I've had a talk with his uncle, Benito will go back with us of his own free will. Then you understand, Senor Robles. Si, Senor Hickok. I understand. If Benito goes back with you, he will see that justice is done. Sure, and if Benito didn't kill Wade Ingram, he'll go free. Then I will call Benito. Benito! Benito! Come out. It is all right. No. Benito will not come out. He will not take him back. They will hang him. Quieto, chiquito. It is all right. It is not all right. Do not worry, little sister. I have heard everything. I am ready to go with Senor de Marsh. No, you will not. And doggone the she ain't stubborn. Please, I ask you. I will kill you. You will not take my brother. Hey, hey, hey. Hold it, Bill. Juanita, stop this. But they will take you to behind, Benito. 
no. I am not guilty, so I will not hang. Senor Hickok has said it is so. Jingles, did you lock Rat Dutton in the smokehouse? Si, senor, I... I mean, yeah. Go get him. We'll get started. You will not get him either. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, no, you won't. I have already turned him loose. What? Chiquito, you should not do this. I'm afraid that was a mistake, Miss Flores. You know it. He'll be waiting to kill us all along the trail. Well, that's a chance we're going to have to take, Jingles. All right, let's go. We should make the sheriff's office by sundown. Well, Bill, there's the sheriff's office. Yeah, Jingles. Benito, are you all set to tell the whole story? Si, senor marshal. Hey, Bill, there's Rag Dutton and the sheriff going out the back way. But, but why would they run away, senor? We'll soon find out. Stay here, Juanita. Come on. Hey, Max, hey, hey. Jeff, Joker, you heard what Bill said. Ha, 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 ha. All right, you two. Hold up. <coughs> They're going to be mean about it, Bill. Shoot over their heads, Jingles. Stop those cayuses, you sidewinders. Or the next one will go clean through you. All right, all right. Don't shoot anymore. We give up. Oh. 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 Well, now that's better. Now uh, hand over that hardware. Uh-uh. But first with two fingers. <laughs> that's it. Well, Sheriff... Your little plan to frame Benito Flores for Ingram's killing didn't work, did it? I didn't kill him. Rack Dutton done it. Why, you old coot. You set it up and you got the money and Ingram's deed before Flores got back from chasing me. Benito! Benito, what is it? What is happening? It is all right, Chiquita. Marshal Hickok has made good his promise. These two men did the killing. That's right, Benito. Well, you're free to go your own way now. They did? And they tried to give you the blame for it? Oh, I will kill them. I will smash their head with a frying pan. I will... No, 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 wait a minute. Now, ain't that too bad? There's not a stew pot or a frying pan within reach. Now, come on, Chiquita. We'll go hunt some up and you can take your vengeance out on making me a batch of tortillas and tacos. That way, nobody gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison, and Andy Devine. Andy and I'll be around your way again next week with another story for you. So be with us, will you? Yes, sir. And you can bet your bottom sawbuck we'll be mixed up in some kind of trouble. Meanwhile, Andy and I also hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Corn Pops. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Corn Pops are great. So long. See you next week. <laughs> yes, sir, be sure to listen next week at this same time on this same station when Kellogg's Corn Pops brings you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Harry Bartell, Ted Von Elts, Lillian Bayef, Frank Gerstel, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce, music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. This is Charlie Lyon reminding you, kids love pops, moms love pops, pops love pops. Kellogg's Corn Pops. The greatest name in cereals presents... Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you. 
from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingle. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of The Flame Riders. Say, boys and girls, if your mom asks you what you'd like to have for breakfast tomorrow, put in your order for delicious new Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Good as they are right out of the box, these crispy, crunchy sugar corn pops just can't be beat for flavor in a bowl with milk in the morning. And no sugar needed. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops are already sweetened for you. Just right. Now, let's listen. United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his faithful saddle partner Jingles were months out of their Abilene headquarters. They had jumped from one hornet's nest of sizzling lead to another as they answered each desperate call for help. Then came the fateful message, which was to pit all of Wild Bill's courage and cunning against the viciousness of the Flame Riders. Now they've stopped shooting. Yeah, and they're sprinting out up there in those rocks. We'll never catch them tonight, Bill. All right, pull up, partner. Who, Buckshot? Who? No, oh, Joker. Doggone it, Bill. They got away from a slicker and a black cat in a thunderstorm. Yeah. But there's one thing I can't understand. Well, what's that? There were only four of them. The sheriff said there was a big gang. Well, maybe he was just guessing. Maybe. Maybe they split up on us tonight. Oh, why would they do that? That's your answer, Jingles. Yeah, more shooting. Bill! Bill, look at the floor of the valley. Another fire. And that's where we'll find the rest of the gang, if we're not too late. Come on. Hi, Buck. Hi. Jeff, Joker, you heard what Bill said. Ha, ha, ha. Another homesteader's place. That's why they split up on us. Yeah, but we can't be everywhere at once. There they are, Jingles. Circling around the other side of the fire. Let's get them. Hi, Buckner. Hi. Bill, there's too many of them. Have to catch one of them and take his mask off. That's the only way to find out who's behind this. Yeah, but how are you going to get one out of 20? Now what? Bill, behind us. It's them other four we was chasing. Now we're caught between them. Stand your ground and shoot it out, partner. Oh, my son. Oh, boy. Oh, Joker. Whoa. All right, you mad polecats. Come on. Steady, boy. Steady, boy. You saw my aim. You got one of them, Bill. And now the rest are running away. Let them go, Jingles. We'll unmask this one and make him give us a line on who's leading those flame riders. Come on, Buckshot. Up, Joker. That makes four fires so far, don't it, Bill? That's right. Three before we got here. Sure looks like somebody was after those homesteaders. I wonder why. Well, let's see if this Jasper can tell us. Who, but you? Who, boy? Oh, steady, Joker. Well, oh, Billy ain't moving much. Roll him over, partner, and get that mask off. Yeah. Well, he ain't gonna tell us nothing. You're right. That leaves us right where we started. Yeah, nowhere. Wonder if the sheriff could identify him. Time I cross my saddle, Jingles. We'll have a look around the fire. Then we'll take him into town. The sheriff ought to be up by the time we get there. Bill, something's mighty strange around this town. What's that, partner? Well, the sun ain't no more and just poked its head above the sage. And already there's more people roaming the streets than you see the free barbecue. Yeah, I noticed that, Jingles. Ooh, but shot steady, boy. Whoop, oh, Joker. You want me to bring this, well, this poor fellow in for the sheriff to identify him? No, Jingles, you lead him there. We'll bring the sheriff out and he can take him over the morgue. Well, after he tells us who he is, you mean? 
Yeah, if he can. The varmint's the only evidence we have so far. Yeah, and if he don't lead us to something, we're still up a tree high as a possum hiding from a bobcat. Hold it, Jingles. Sounds like the sheriff's got trouble of his own. Yeah. Well, let's go in and see if we can help him. Well, I'm telling you this, Sheriff. If something isn't done mighty quick about these night ride marauders, we're going to have a new man packing that store you're wearing. Well, I told you, Bigger. I've got Wild Bill Hickok on the job. He's the... Howdy, gents. Sorry to break up uh, your little fracas. Yeah, it sure seems a shame to stop such a friendly conversation. But we got business to tend to. Business? Wild Bill, did you catch him? Well, Sheriff, I wouldn't say we exactly caught them, but I've got one of them out here for you to look at. You got one of them? Yeah, but he won't be much good in the conversation. He's right outside there on the back of... Hey, Bill! What's going on out there? What's the carnation? They stole the evidence, Bill! They're getting away! Come on, after them. Hey, hold that blame tongue shooting at them. Well, I remember that hog leg and help them out, Sheriff. Howdy, Wranglers. This is your old corral pal, Panhandle Jim. Say, uh, guess who's sitting here in my lap right now? Andy Devine. That's right, partners. That is uh, <laughs> Andy Devine's picture on this big yellow box of Kellogg sugar corn pops. By Jingo, it looks so real, it's almost as though we were right here. You know, while I was chomping on my sugar corn pops here listening to the show, I noticed what a good picture that really is. Same with a picture of Guy Madison on my other box here. And something else I noticed, besides how mighty good sugar corn pops always taste... Wild Bill's famous gun cutouts on the backs of these big yellow Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops packages are really great. One of these gun cutouts is just like my six-shooter. Yes, sir. You'll sure want to make a collection of all these different guns, because they're right, right smart. Now, how about a little Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops music? Yippee! Sugar Pops. They're sugar-coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops Sugar Pops are tops Now Sugar Pops, you know, are sweet But cowboys know there's an extra treat Right out of the box, take a handful out Pop them into your mouth as you run about Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops Sugar Pops are tops Just about when Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles were going to ask the sheriff to identify the dead flame rider, a gang of riders stole the body and rode out of town in a hail of lead. Hold your fire, gents. They're gone. And I'm getting up a posse to go after them. And blundering fools. If I ran my bank like you operate your business, I'd go broke in ten minutes. Now hold on, Mr. Bigger. You ain't got no call to climb our backs and rake your spurs. I take it you're the town banker, Mr. Bigger. Yes, I am. And my bank holds the mortgages on those homesteads. Mortgages? On homesteads? Well, Bill, that don't sound right. Well, it does when every last one of those homesteaders had to borrow himself into a deep furrow to stock and plant his farm. Oh? Did they have to do that? They sure did, Jingles. Yeah. And if these flame riders keep on every night, they won't have nothing left. My mortgages won't be worth the paper they're written on. That's so, Mr. Bigger? Of course it's so. You'd still have the land free and clear. Well, what's the good of that? That's what I mean to find out. Well, you'd better be out chasing those sidewinders that just stole that corpse right out from under your nose. The people in this valley are not going to do much blundering around from you from now on. Woo-wee! Short fuse gent like that had not to be wearing those celluloid collars. Yeah, he's been raw hiding the life out of me about these fires and killings. Sheriff, you got any idea who's behind this? It's all a plain attempt to ruin the homesteaders. Make them give up and get up and leave. That's plain enough, but why? Well, uh, now, Bill, I ain't saying this is true, and I ain't saying it ain't. I ain't even saying I heard it right. So far, you ain't saying nothing. Well, I'm getting round to it. So's judgment. Hold it, Jingles. What's on your mind, Sheriff? Well, uh, I heard a rumor, just a rumor, mind you, that the railroad was coming through this valley. The railroad? Yep. that give you any ideas, Hickok? If that's true, it gives us a motive for somebody to go after the homesteaders, all right. 
Hey, what's that? Bill at the window. Outside, quick. Well, I'll... Oh. I'll be a mud turtle got clean away. Not a sign of anybody here. But that sneak and peek and Tom was sure listening to every word we said. We've got somebody watching us mighty close, partner. Looks like they're getting awfully anxious. Well, I wish they'd come out in the open and fight it out. Maybe we can force them out, yeah? Well, you better do it fast, you cook. I forgot to tell you they're all gathering in town this afternoon in a mass meeting. Look up the street. Some's in already. Well, what for, Sheriff? They're planning to take the law into their own hands. And if they do, there'll be more killings than you can say a prayer over. Nobody will be safe. We'll have to stop that. Who's the leader of the homesteaders? A fellow named of Charlie Salvers. Lived just to the side of Buzzard's Pass a mile or two. Why? I'm going out there to talk to him. But, Bill, he'll be in at the meeting this afternoon, won't he? That'll be too late, Jingles. Come on, let's go. Well, if you're going through the pass to see Charlie, watch your step. They don't call it Buzzard's Pass for nothing. Thanks for the tip, Sheriff. We'll be back for that meeting this afternoon. Let's go, Buckshot. Yeah, and if we ain't there on time, chalk up two more for Buzzard's Pass. Oh, Bill, couldn't we go another way that might take us through some place called Butterfly Heaven or something like that, huh, Bill? <laughs> Well, is that Buzzard's Pass just ahead of us? That's it, partner, but don't let it worry you. No, it doesn't worry me. <laughs> not at all. Not even a little teensy-weensy little bit. No, sir. Not a bit. No, it doesn't sound like it. Well, now, don't gun it, Bill. I got that hair standing up on the back of my neck again. I can just feel somebody staring down a rifle barrel that's leveled right at my gizzard. Good be, partner. Somebody's keep mighty close check on our movements. Looks like they'd be proud to get us out of the way. No, oh, now, don't you talk like that, Bill. Bill! Looks like you were right, Jingles. Way up on the hill! Too far away, Jingles. Fight up these ponies and let's get through the pass. Hi, about you. Hi! Jump, Joker, get me out of here! Ha, ha, ha! Another glass of milk, Jingles? <laughs> you look like you need something to settle your nerves. Oh, I don't mind if I do. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Just, uh, what did these night riders do when they attacked, Charlie? Well, first, they wait till it's most two in the morning when it's darkest. Then they come riding up in a body wearing masks and carrying torches. Just like a masquerade party, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Only this ain't no party. Go on, Charlie. Then part of them surrounds the house to make sure nobody don't get out. One of them raps on the door and calls the homesteader out. Then what? Then the leader, a big voice mean sounding hombre, tells the homesteader to pack up and get. What about those that won't leave? The raiders ransack the house. Set torches the whole place, house, barns, haystacks. Oh, the worst Indian raids was never like this. What's this meeting about, do you know? Sure. We're taking up a collection of money to hire gun slicks. You mean you're going to hire killers out here? That's yep. what I was afraid of. That's the wrong way, Charlie. Come on, let's get to that meeting. We've got to stop this. <laughs> Nothing decided while you're yapping like a pack of coyotes around a carcass. And well, what's the sheriff and Wild Bill Hick I got to say about all this, Charlie? Now, I'll tell you what I got to say, Mr. Bigger. These men are putting their heads in a noose by taking the law into their own hands. That's right, mister. I've been standing here watching every one of them put his last cent of cash in that hat that's going around. That money's going to bring in hired gun slicks to come here and ruin your valley. Well, we ain't standing still for no more of these raids. The sheriff ain't done nothing about it, and you ain't neither, Hickok. <laughs> Looks like he got you told, Hickok. He sure did. Hold that, Jan. Hold it, nothing. Gents, listen to me. You're right about these muddling star packers. They've done nothing to help you. That's right. We're hiring the best man killers we can find in Ellsworth and Dodge City to come and clean out these flame riders. <laughs> now, just a minute. Quiet! 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 
Now, Wild Bill's got something else to say, and you'd better listen. And the first man that opens his mouth's going to get it filled with my fist. Never mind, Jingles. Hmm. Gents, I'd like to have one more chance. Yeah? And what would you do with it, Hickok? Just this. Charlie's got all the money you've collected. Let him hold it over the night at his house. I go there and stay with him. And I'll be responsible for every cent of it. And if I don't have those raiders for you by tomorrow's sun up, you can send for your gun slicks. How you figure to catch them, Hickok? Yeah, Hickok. You got a plan up your sleeve? If I did, Mr. Bigger, I'd be a fool to tell the world about it, wouldn't I? Well, you could tell us. We're all honest men. Maybe. But how do I know the ringleader of these raiders isn't right here in this room? Yeah, how do we know that, huh? Just show them to me, Bill, and I'll blast his buttons loose from his vest. No, Jingles. Tonight should give us the proof we need. Well, gents, what do you say to Wild Bill's proposition? Well, just one more night. Yeah. yeah. And if anybody's place gets burned down tonight, Hickok, we'll be coming after you instead of those raiders. Oh, Bill, I don't like the sound of that. You sure you know what you're doing? I hope so, Jingles. Well, if your plan don't work, we can wind up awful dead. Well, bless my boots, partners. I just got to thinking, maybe some of you ranchers who never tasted Kellogg's new sugar corn pops before might be wondering about them. Wondering which sugar corn pops you eat out of the box like candy and which sugar corn pops you eat out of the bowl with milk. Well, here's the story. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops is a new two-way cereal that's already sweetened for you. Yes, Siri, by jingle. Every single crispy, crunchy Sugar Corn Pops got the sweetening already on it. So you can eat every single Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops two ways. Out of the box for snacks or out of the bowl for breakfast. That's what makes Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops so downright two-way delicious. Get a load of those new, big, yellow Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops packages and try them. You'll see what I mean. Just like the song says. Yippee! Sugar Pops. They're sugar-coated, tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Now, sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Nighttime came, it found Wild Bill, Jingles, and Charlie Salvers sitting around the table in Charlie's kitchen, with the box of Homesteaders' money on top of the table between their coffee cups. Bill, why'd you ever think up this crazy scheme? What's crazy about it, Jingles? Oh, sitting here with this box full of money is like plunking yourself down on a powder keg with a short fuse sputtering. I have some more coffee, Jingles. It'll keep you awake so you can see the fireworks. I'm so awake now, I look like a hootie owl in a persimmon tree. What are you thinking, Bill? I figure the best way to catch flies is with sugar, Jingle. <laughs> well, if you're calling that box of money sugar, I gotta... Bill, Bill, don't turn around now, but that same face I saw at the sheriff's office is staring in the window. Has he got a gun pointed at my back? No, but he's sure looking around this room. Then pay no attention to him, partner. Uh-oh, he's gone. Now what? Now we wait some more. You might light a couple of more lamps, Jingles, and when I say the word, put them in the window. More lamps? Now, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. You want to show them how to get in here to steal this money? Sure. I'll get the lamps, Mr. Hickok. Thanks, Charlie. I wish I knew what was going on around here. You will soon enough, partner. I hear them coming, Mr. Hickok. That's right, Charlie. Right on time. <laughs> They're coming here. They're coming after the money. Uh, well, where's my rifle? Now, get your six guns, Bill. All that, Jingles. Now, settle down. Well, what do you think I am? A little lamb just sitting waiting for the slaughter? Oh, 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 oh. All right, Jingles. Put those lamps in the window. What? And get them shot out of my hand? Oh, all right. They're getting anxious, Mr. Hickok. All right, stand behind me, Charlie. Jingles, you take the other side. Don't shoot till I say so. All right, Hickok. Come on out before we blast you to kingdom come. 
Looking for somebody, gents? That's him, boss. Let me plug him. You gents come to talk or to fight? Hickok, I'll give you ten to have that money out here and in my hand. And I'll give you three to give up. Drop your guns and surrender to the law, mister. Yeah, and you better be quick about it, because I count awful fast. One for the money. Two for the show. <laughs> three. Who oh, does that big stuffed up brown teddy bear think he's kidding? All right, gents, you're dropping those guns? All right, plug in, boys. Well, shoot, you fool! <laughs> well, it don't look like none of your hooted hyenas got a hankering to exchange lead with Wild Bill Hickok, mister. And that's where they're smarter and I give them credit for when you rode up. All right, mister, you're through. Your time's run out. All right, Sheriff, run them up! Hey, boss, they tricked us. Let's surround it. <laughs> Looks like that's got them all, Mr. Hickok. Yeah, where's that big Jasper that was spouting off like a howling... Get me, Hickok. There he goes, Bill. No, you don't, mister. Now come down off of that horse. Hey, let go of me. <clears throat> You've been long overdue for this, mister. That's the one, Bill. Oh. Now get up and let's get that hood off. I want to see what you look like. Billy's got a derringer up his sleeve. That was your last play, mister. Now get up. Now let's get that hood off. Well, B- Bill, it's the banker. Mr. Bigger. Yeah, gents. There's the coyote that's been leading your flame riders. Give them to us, Bill. We'll take them out and string them up so high, the buzzers will have to fly up to get at him. No, Charlie. The law can take care of him from now on out. All right, gents. Charlie, we'll give you all your money back. You won't need to hire any gun slicks to protect your homesteads now. Yeah. Now Bigger and his gang are headed for the state penitentiary, where they'll trade in their black hoods for black and white striped suits. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's our Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you today. We'll be with you again on Friday, right, Andy? Right, Guy. And if you folks want a real action-packed story of Wild Bill Hickok fighting a band of young outlaws, just you listen to Fighting the Bits. Meanwhile, Andy and I also hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pumps. Right. It's the great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Sugar Corn Pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Herb Butterfield, Ralph Moody, Jim Nusser, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce. Music by Dick O'Rourke. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok goes fighting the bits. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. The greatest name in cereals presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hiya, folks! Hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok 
and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal. Snap, crackle, and pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Fightin' the Bits. Do you have plenty of Kellogg's Rice Krispies at your house? There's so much fun to eat that it's wise to keep a couple of packages handy. Ask Mother to get you some soon. Just tell her you want Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the talking cereal, the ready-to-eat cereal that says snap, crackle, pop when you pour the milk on them. That's the way they let you know how fresh and crisp and good they are. Have a big bowl of Kellogg's Rice Krispies tomorrow for breakfast. You'll love them. United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his trusted deputy Jingles were leaving the Rio Grande and riding north after cleaning up a rough fracas along the border. But before they shook the dust of Texas from their boots, fate had destined them to mix in another gun smoke and action packed adventure as they ran into the kid who was fighting the bits. All right, don't none of you move or I'll ventilate your hide. What do we do now, Kino? Grab that cigar box full of money from behind the counter. Don't stand there. Get it. Sure, Kino. I'll get it. Oh, shake a leg. All right, you hold it there. Eh? All right, Kino. I got the money. Let's get out of here. Back up towards the door. Now, the first one sticks his head out of this door, gets it right in the chest. All right. Come on, Bucky. Let's ride. Yeah. They're coming after us, Kino. Well, then blast away. That'll slow him down. Come for it. Go. I said you're not going, and that's that. Like I said, Pa, I'm riding into town for some fun. Feeling your oats, ain't you, boy? I want to see something more than mean Bronx and meaner cows for a change. A fellow my age gets tired of wall-eyed critters, Pa. Son, there's plenty of time before you're ready to bust out of the chute. First, I want you to be sure your saddle's cinched on tight. There you go again. It's because you ain't got good legs, you don't want me to use mine. Dad, don't say that to your Pa. Well, no Bronx taking the stiffening out of my legs, or my backbone neither. I know what I'm doing, and I'm going to town like I said. No, sir. Ted, wait. Uh, I'll be back when you hear the coyotes howling. Go, Raker. Get in the town, boy. Ted, wait, boy. Bill, you mean nobody's got any idea who's pulling these holdups? No, Jingles, but it sounds like young bandits. Holding up stores and robbing lone riders in the road. Oh, now, Bill, young'uns wouldn't do a thing like that. No? Well, don't forget, Billy the Kid started young, turned killer when he was 16. Yeah, and look where he wound up. That's right. Well, let's hope we catch these mavericks before they turn to robbing gold messengers and stagecoaches. Yeah, or maybe trains. Hey, say, speaking of buttons, don't that young fella coming down the road look like Shorty Mawson's boy, Tan? Sure does, partner. Whoa, Buckshot, whoa. Whoa. Well, he's put on some beef since we saw him last. Yeah. Howdy, Tad. Morning, Sonny. See if it ain't Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. Oh, boy. Howdy, man. Well, if he ain't grown up. Howdy, man, he says. Just like the button had a beard. <laughs> I ain't no button no more. Hmm. Guess that's right, Tad. Been a couple of years since we saw you. How's your dad? Oh, it's... He's all right, I guess. You guess? Shorty ain't sick, is he? No, nah, he ain't sick. Just ornery. No, that ain't no way to talk about your pa, Sonny. Shorty Mawson's one of the finest men in Texas. Easy, Jingles. How come you're heading this way, Dad? Hey, that's right. Seems to me it ought to be about roundup time on the Circle T. Huh. How come you're not chasing Maverick? Because I'm fed up chasing critters, that's why. I'm going to town for some fun. All that button. You know, Roundup's a time for all hands to pitch in and help. You ought not be running out on your dad at a time like this. Now, don't you go preaching at me, too. You ain't got no call. Let's go, Breaker. I don't have to listen to that blabber. <laughs> well, 
talking about Mavericks, Bill. That young shaver's got the wild look of a local critter that's broke off his home range and gone stampeding for nowhere. I think you've pegged it right, Jingles. And I've got a hunch to drop by and see Shorty Mawson. He might just have a bull by the tail he can't throw. This is Charlie Lyon, friends, and Slim, the singing cowboy. Are you ready, Slim? Ready as Rice Krispies. Well, that certainly says it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies are always ready. Always ready to eat any time you are. And zing, I'm just about always ready to eat Rice Krispies. Mmm, they're fresh and crisp. Boy, it sure makes fruit or berries taste good when you put them with those golden Rice Krispies. You know, I had some for breakfast. And, and... did they talk? Rice Krispies are the talking cereal, you know. I'll say they talked. Told me just how crisp they are. And when I put the milk to them, they said, snap, crackle, pop. Well, now, go on. Sing us that little song about them, Slim. Sure thing. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Ah, you bet. Kellogg's Rice Krispies are sure fun to eat. Fun to listen to and fun to eat. They're the talking cereal. They tell you, snap, crackle, pop, how crisp and fresh tasting they are. You're sure to enjoy every golden bite. So get a supply of Kellogg's Rice Krispies the very next time you go shopping. Remember that, will you? Now let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. <laughs> While Bill Hickok and Jingles turned their horses up the road to Shorty Mawson's Circle T spread, and the defiant young Tad Mawson headed on into town. It wasn't long before the young lad discovered there was a carnival in town, and that's where he went to find his fun. Mawson, horn toads. You ain't never seen nothing like this in all my... Hey! Why don't you look where you're going, kid? I, I didn't see you. I was looking at them red and gold horses yonder. Well, you never seen a merry-go-round before? A uh, what? Merry-go-round? <laughs> hey, Bunk, you look like we run into a stray. Yeah, Kino, hey, see. Leave him alone. Come on, let's go. No, wait a minute, Bunky. Wait a minute. We might just be able to use him in our business. No, Kino, you loco. He ain't old enough to know. Then we can teach him, Bunky. What's your name, kid? Tad. Tad Moss. What's your stranger? I'm Kino McCoy. Shake hands with my partner, Bunky Adam. Howdy. Yeah, howdy. Let's show Tad the sights, huh, Bunky? Come on, kid. We'll take you in the merry-go-round of the side show. Well, I haven't the... got any money. I was just looking. You know, this ain't no good. That kid's bad luck. I make my own luck, Bunky. What you worry about money, kid? We got lots of it. See? Gee, you got a hand for Yeah. <laughs> Plenty more where that came from. Come on, kid. You got a lot of fun to catch up on, so let's get started. Well, it sure is a treat to see you and Jingles. Same here, Shorty. Yeah. Hey, we saw Tad on the road. He was headed for town. Fine boy. Growing like a weed in a tomato patch. <laughs> Bet he's a big help to you, huh? Yes, yes, he... No. No, Dad Burnett, he ain't. I wish I could say he was, but he ain't. Jingles didn't mean to pry, Shorty. Oh, it ain't prying, Bill. It's natural that a boy should help his paw, especially when his paw's a cripple, but... Tad's got no interest in the spread. Well, he's young, Shorty. He'll come around. I don't know. The way he's fighting the bits, I'm afraid of him. If Tad caught up with the wrong company, he's just wild enough to get roped into big trouble before he knew what he was doing. I ain't never had so much fun in all my life, Kino. But I reckon I better go on back and get to work. Work? <laughs> Only suckers work for a living, Tad. I got lots of money. I never work. How do you do that? Come on, I'll show you. Kino, what are you up to? There's nobody around that ticket man at the side show. Let's take him. No, Kino, not here. It's a cinch, Bunky. Now, Tad, you're going to get your first lesson on how to get quick, easy money. You mean you can get it around here? Why, sure. Now, just watch. 
Howdy, partner. Well, howdy, customers. Step right up. Tickets a dime, a tenth part of a dollar. Let you have three for two bits right now. No, sir, mister. We don't want any tickets. We'll take that money sack you got tied to your belt. Hey, good. No, you don't. Hey, Rube. Wait. No, you don't. You don't pull no hey, Rube on me, mister. Hey, you hit him. What'd you do that for? Shut up. Monkey, hurry it up. All right, kid, let's go. I got the sack. Come on, kid, stay with us. Run for the horses, Monkey. You reckon they followed us, Kino? No. Now, you see, Tad, how easy that was? We got away clean as a whistle in a windstorm. But you pistol whipped that ticket man. I'll bet you killed him. No, I just tapped him to sleep. You ain't nothing but owl hoots. I ain't riding with you no more. Get up. Oh. Now, get this straight, you hayseed. You're doing what I tell you to. Cut out slapping me. You don't seem to realize, kid. You're one of us now. You and me and Bunky, we pulled a stick up, you get it? You're guilty, too. But I didn't do nothing. You were there with us. That makes you guilty. Oh, it's not so bad. Hey, give me that sack, Bunky. Now, look at here, kid. Hey, that's better than I thought. <laughs> sure. Thirty and forty. And a pocket full of change. You see, kid? Five minutes and we made more than a cowpoke makes in a month. Here. Here's ten bucks for your share. Ten bucks? Why, sure. You never had money like that before, did you? I don't want no stolen money. I'm going home right now. I said you wasn't. You hear me? You're sticking with it. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe you got something there. Where do you live, kid? My pound's the Circle T. Shorty Morrison's his name. I live with him. Shorty Morrison? Used to be a top rodeo rider? Yeah. Until a cinch strap broke with him coming out of a chute... He's crippled up now. What are you getting at, Kino? We need a hideout, Bunky, and I know just the place now. The Circle T. You ain't hiding out on our spread. Why, sure we are, Tad. Come on, kid. You're taking a couple of old friends home to meet your pa. Like I told you, Bunky, I not only got brains, I use them. Let's ride. <laughs> Well, Shorty, we better be hitting the road on into town. No, Bill, do we have to go? Yes, Jingles. I want to check with the sheriff and see if he has any more leads on those holdups. Don't worry about Tad, Shorty. He's going to be Wait, all... Wait, Bill. Here comes Tad now. I wonder who this is with him. Well, he was headed for town alone when we saw him. Whoa. Hello, son. Glad to see you got back so soon. Hi, Paul. Hi. I brought some friends back with me. Well, that's fine, Ted. I'd like for you to bring your friends home. Bill, I don't like that slick Jasper looks. Wait, Jingles. Pa, this is Keno. Keno McCoy and Bunky Adams. Welcome to the Circle T, boys. Howdy. Yeah. Step up and shake hands with a couple of my friends, boys. This big one is Jingles. And that is Wild Bill Hickok. Keno, you hear what he said? Hickok? What's he doing here? Just passing the time of day. Oh. Well, <laughs> Howdy. Heard a lot about you, Mr. Hickok. I hoped I'd cut your trail someday. Yeah, looks like you've done it all right. And what do you mean by that, Lord Barrel? Why, you young maverick. Yeah. Oh, that jingle. Oh, but Bill, we'll a little be going, sassy Shorty. Brat. We'll see you later. So long, Tad. You better help your paw all you can. Yeah. And you'd better be careful what kind of strays you pick up and call friends. Easy, partner. All right, Buckshot. Let's dig in. Come on, Joker. We're going to town. Run, boy. Oh! Bill, this holdup must have been done while we were sitting John with Shorty out at the Circle P. Yeah. Howdy, mister. You're the man that was held up today? You're dead burn right I am. Don't think I got this bump on my head for... Hey, wait, ain't you Wild Bill Hickok? He sure is, mister, and I'm his deputy Jingles. So the sheriff said you could tell us enough to help us catch these bandits that held you up. Did you get a good look at them, mister? Sure I did. There's three of them. One fancy dandy polecat about 22 called Keno. Keno? Bill, that's... Another one, nigh 20 years old, if I'm any guess her age. But that third one was only a fuzzy-faced kid that ain't been shaving too long. Name of Tad. Tad? Bill, Tad Mawson. Yeah, partner. This is gonna break old Shorty's heart. Well, thanks, mister. 
Come on, Jingles. Bill, this is one case where our duty's going to be real tough to do. But, Kino, how do you know a gold messenger comes along here? Because I'm smart. He'd be here any minute. Hey, Dad, here's a gun for you. A gun? For me? Why, sure. A big six gun, just like mine. And I loaded it for you myself. But I ain't never shot a six gun in my life. Well, if you have to, just point it, close your eyes, and pull the trigger. I wish I'd have never run into you. It's too late for that now, Buster. You're stuck, see? Kino, here he comes. Yeah. All right, draw those six guns, you two. We make this quick and easy, and then hightail it back to the ranch. All right, mister, drop them saddlebags. You won't get hurt. He knows pull the gun. Shoot, Tad, shoot. No, I don't. Shoot. That's it. All right, now let's get that gold. He's dead. Yeah, yeah, kid. That was a nice shot. But uh, I, I didn't mean to shoot. Kino, somebody's shooting at us. They're coming down the hill. Wild Bill Hickok and shoot. Hick, let's go. Kino, forget the gold. All right. Come on, head for the ranch. The never think it's so bad as that. Up on your hind legs, you riders that are traipsing into town for mail and provisions. You're first for breakfast, you lucky galoots. And see to it that you leave some for the rest of the boys, will you? And let's hear you sing out for what you want. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies mean more fun and pep, so come on, gang, let's get in step. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Add milk or cream, that's all you do, then listen to them talk to you. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Mm, mm, mm. No ranch house dinner bell ever stirred a man's appetite more than the mention of those golden good Rice Krispies. Tell you what I'd do if I were you. I'd make mighty sure that there was a good supply that I could get at every morning for breakfast. Now, all you got to do, bucko, is ask Mom to get you some. <laughs> she will, I'll bet you. Now, let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. <laughs> With Kino McCoy on the lead, the three young riders raced away from the scene of their holdup. And not far behind, Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles followed in hot pursuit. Bill, you sure it's those same three bandits? It's them, all right. Hoo, bacha, hoo, boy. Oh, Joker, hoo, hoo. Oh. Bill, man looks awful dead. Yeah, he's dead, all right. Bullet caught him in the chest. He only fired one shot. But I heard three shots. A good point, Jingles. Remember it. Oh, uh, yeah? All right. Let's get after them. Well, where do you reckon they went? This way. They're headed back to Shorty's ranch. Let's go, Buckshot. Hi! Jump, Joker, even if I don't like what we're going to have to do. Ho, ho, ho! We can hide in there and shoot it out with him. Ho, ho, ho. You ain't gonna hide in my house. You know, you ain't looking to shoot it out with Wild Bill Hickok. Don't talk so much. Do it. I can. Come on in. That's you, Ted. Oh, I see you brought those two varmints back with you. Pa. We... Pa, we shut up. Shut up. Squealing puppy. Hey, you can't go slapping my boy like that. You stand where you are, Marston. No, don't shoot, Pa. Ain't got time to fool with you, Marston. Monkey, tie him up. No, you're not tying up my Pa. Now, kid, if you don't want some of the same lead poison you gave that gold messenger, you stay put. You slick haired weasel. What's this all about, Ted? I'll tell you what it's all about. We held up a gold messenger. And your pride and joy here plugged him. Ted, you running with these outlaws? Keenan McCoy, you're responsible for this. <laughs> That's right, Marshal. 
And what are you going to do about it? Keno, it's Hickok. All right, McCoy, drop that gun. I ain't dropping nothing, Hickok. I got ash. Oh, oh, cut out that whining, McCoy. You ain't oh. hurt. Pick up his gun, Jingles. I want to take a look at it. Bill, Bill, I'm sure glad you come. So am I, Shorty. Thanks, Jingles. Now, here's where we find out who shot that gold messenger. Tad shot him. You sure about that, McCoy? Why, sure. Ask Bunky. I don't think I'll have to. You fired one shot at me just now, Kino. But your gun's been fired twice. Tad, let me see your gun. Yeah, Mr. Hickok. Tad, you ought to be ashamed packing a six iron at your age. Did you load this gun, Tad? I'm getting out of here. Grab Kino, Jingles. Oh, no, you did. don't, you oh. slimy little snake. Now get over there with your partner and no. stay there. Got caught in your own trap, didn't you, Kino? What are you getting at, Bill? Yeah, Bill, what do you mean? Answer me, Tad. Who loaded this gun? Kino did, Wild Bill. Mm, I thought so. Why'd you load it with blanks, Kino? I wouldn't take no chances in that greenhorn kid shooting me in the back. He didn't know nothing about guns. He didn't know nothing, and he didn't do nothing either. Thanks, Bunky. So that means you shot the messenger, Kino. You and your partner will spend the rest of your lives in jail for that. Then Tad's not guilty, huh, Bill? No, partner. That clears Tad of the killing. Son, I knew you couldn't do that. Well, now that makes me feel a doggone sight better. Pa. Pa, I reckon you're right. I'm no more than a button after all, and like you say, I got no business busting out of this chute till I got my saddle cinched on tight. Son, I reckon you're not the first kid would got his rope foul by fighting a bitch. Don't you fret. When will you get you all square with the law, you and I'll figure out how to have some real fun together. That's right. You stick with your dad, Tad Boy, and everything's going to be all right. You said it. And Sonny, any time you think you're growed up and ready to break off the home range... Just stop and think how you'd miss them ham hocks and turnip greens. Then you'll come high-tailing it back. And, well, someday you'll be big and fat and happy like me. <laughs> and now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Matheson, and Andy Devine. That's our Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you today, folks. Have a good weekend, and we'll be with you again on Monday. And by jingle, we've got a rip-snorting story for you, all about stagecoach bandits called the Shadow Hills Gang. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right. It's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Clayton Post, Bobby Ellis, Eddie Firestone, and Larry Dobkin. Our director is Paul Pierce, music by Dick O'Ron. The story was by Larry Hayes. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok tackles the Shadow Hills gang. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Greatest name in cereals presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on. 
into your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, The Phantom of the Gold Circle. Right here, boys and girls, we want to thank you for all the nice letters you've sent in saying how much you like Kellogg's new sugar corn pops. We're happy to hear you tell in your own words how much you enjoy Kellogg's sugar corn pops out of the bowl for breakfast and out of the box for snacks. We're also happy you're telling your friends all about them. Thank you again. Now... Let's listen. The bandits and highwaymen of the Old West who were brought to justice by United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles were of many kinds. Some were hard cases who specialized in robbing trains and stagecoaches. Some were slick gamblers in frock coats and expensive brocade vests. But there was one who gave Wild Bill and Jingles a wild, hair-raising time of it with death, a constant threat from the Phantom of the Gold Circle. Bill, has brought up these ponies a little, huh? What's your hurry, Jingles? Well, the sun's already down, and I can't wait to get to the Gold Circle Barbershop. It's going to take about three hot baths to get this Arizona desert off of me. <laughs> well, we'll be able to see the lights of the town when we top this next rise. Come on, Buckshot. Pick it up to a high lope. Go on. Stay with him, Joker. You reckon Tim Frawley will be glad to see us, Bill? Sure he will, partner. Yeah, if he's still working that rich vein at his gold circle mine, he ought to be a millionaire by now. There's the mill whistle, Jingles. Guess he's still working the mine, all right. Yeah, it sounds like it. Well, here's the rise. Bill... Bill, that's funny. There ain't a light showing in the whole town a gold circle. You're right, partner. From here, I can't see a single wagon or a horse. And there ain't no smoke rising from even one chimney. Bill, the whole place looks downright dead. Well, let's stop here and look around, partner. Who, Buckshot? Who, boy? Oh, Joker. Oh, no. Now, Bill, what, what are you looking for, ghost? Come on, it's getting dark, and this is no place to be when you can't see nothing. Here's the hotel where we stayed. Come on. Yeah, but it's all falling apart. Oh, go on, Bill. Don't go in there. Now, get hold of yourself, Jingles. You're not afraid of a little dark, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> it's just what's apt to be hiding in the dark what raises my goose pimples. Hmm. Wonder what's upstairs. Oh, who cares what's upstairs? I want to go, Bill. No, don't leave me. Then come on. Don't lean on that banister too hard. It looks kind of rotten. Yeah. Uh, Bill, there ain't nothing up there that we want. Oh. Bill, Bill, the ghost. Jingles, what's that railing? Oh. Hey, partner. Partner, you hurt? Oh, Bill. Bill, I'm done for. Tell Joker goodbye. And you can have my silver stick pin. Jingles. Oh. Get up. You're not hurt. I'm not? But Bill, that big white ghost, I thought he'd come for me, sure. It was nothing but a white screech owl that was nesting upstairs. Now, come on. You weren't scared, were you? Who, me? Scared? <laughs> oh, a little old screech owl? No, of course not. <laughs> Foot slipped. Then let's look around the ballroom. Used to be just back at this big fireplace. <laughs> yeah, the ballroom. You know, I remember when we was here last. <laughs> I danced a round dance with Maybell Chili right about here. Oh, we sure were a couple of high steppers. <laughs> I was just... Bill, there they are! I got them. Well, partner, that was a mighty nice big mirror once. But but I saw them. I saw them, Bill, I tell you. You saw us in the mirror. You just blasted the pieces. Oh, Bill, listen. Yeah, partner, somebody's ringing the church bell. Let's go see who it is. Well, I'll sure be glad to find somebody human around here. Maybe they can tell us what happened to Gold Circle. Yeah, here we are. Hey! Hey in there! Come out here! Bill, there ain't no answer. 
a note on the door here, Jingles. But there isn't enough light to read it by. Oh, here, I got a match, Bill. What's it say? It says, if you hear this bell at night and stay, you will never see the light of day. Now, what does it mean? Hey, wait, wait a minute. No, uh... don't go getting excited, partner. Let's go in and talk to the Jasper who's ringing that bell. Bill, Bill, look up through that belfry. That bell's ringing. But there ain't nobody down here pulling the bell rope. I'm getting out of here. Howdy, cow folks. Your old pal Panhandle Jim talking. You know, sometimes I find it hard to put into words just how downright delicious these here Kellogg sugar corn pops are. Because the best way to really know about this wonderful new two-way cereal is by chomping a few mouthfuls yourself. By digging into sugar corn pops right out of the big yellow box, just like candy. Like I'm eating them now. Yes, sir, they're a real tasty snack with a sweetening already on them. Or by enjoying Kellogg's sugar corn pops in the bowl with milk for breakfast. Yes, sir, by Jingo, either way, both ways, these sweeter new Kellogg sugar corn pops just can't be beat for flavor. So if you aren't already settled back enjoying Kellogg's sugar corn pops right now, better hit for the store tomorrow and get a load of them. Now, just listen to this sweet music about them. Yippee! Sugar pops. They're sugar-coated, tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are pops. When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles heard the church bell ringing in deserted Gold City, they rushed to the church, expecting to find someone to clear up the mystery. But when they opened the door, Jingles made an awesome discovery. Bill, look up through that belfry. That bell's ringing, but there ain't nobody down here pulling the bell rope. I'm getting out of here. Hold it, partner. This mystery's getting too deep. I'm going up in that belfry. Up there, Bill? Oh, you gone loco? I wouldn't go up there for a four-pound T-bone steak and a bushel of fried potatoes. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of, Jingles. Bill, Bill, let's stop. Them ghosts heard you say you were coming up there. Come on, Bill. Let's leave Gold Circle to the haunts. Yeah, here's a ladder. Help me put it up there. Oh, I'll be doggone if I ever saw anybody as stubborn as you are, Bill Hickok. Now, hold the ladder while I climb up. Bill... It's not right leaving me all alone down here. Now, go away, ghosties. Shh, shoo. Now, you wouldn't want me anyway. No, I'm no good. Now, stay away from me now. Bill! Bill, they're after me. Help! Help! A million of Bill! Jingles. Now, Jingles, settle down. It's only bats. They're not going to hurt you. Oh, <laughs> bats, huh? I guess it was. <laughs> I never uh, thought of you having bats up there in the belfry. I'm a, you coming down now, aren't you, Bill? Huh? And I'm in it, partner. A minute, nothing. If you ain't coming down, I'm coming up. No, partner, I'm about ready to come down. Did you find anything up there, Bill? Yeah, partner. I reckon there's more to this mystery than we figured on. Oh, well, there is? Yep. Now, come on. I want to ride into Great Forks and see the sheriff. I'd like to ask him a few questions. <laughs> Well, that's the first time a 20-mile ride without any supper ever sounded good to me. Let's go. Well, Mr. Hickok, uh, let's see now. Uh, you say you was here four years ago? That's right. In uh, January, sure. And Gold Circle was a boom town. The mine was going full blast and the town was wide open. Huh, people had more money than they had sand. I know how it was, Jingles. Now, you just let me recollect my thoughts here a minute. Uh, January, you say? Yes, January. Now, what happened? Give him time, Jingles. Yes, give me time. Uh, let's see. It was uh, February the 13th, it was, that the big catastrophe took place. 
But before that, there'd been mysterious accidents at the Gold Circle. Accidents? Yep. Like a man falling off a ladder. Or a cave-in that had catched somebody down in the drift. Miners took to thinking the Gold Circle was jinxed. Well, I sure got jinxed out there this evening. Will you hash your chatter, Jingles? It rattles me something awful. Oh, well, go on, you old featherhead. Then on February the 13th, the big cave-in happened. Ten men got caught and buried alive in it. And before anybody could even start digging, the shaft house in the mill caught fire. It was like the end of the world had come. And then right in the middle of the fire, all the machinery started running, and the whistle started blowing all by itself. By itself? Bill liked the church bell, didn't it? Go on, Jeff. It was enough to drive you crazy. Fact is, it did drive the mine superintendent loco. Old Ben Tremler went as loony as a jaybird in a tailspin. You've seen jays do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the way old Ben was. He's the only one that'll get near the old gold circle now. He stayed around. You didn't see him, did you? Well, he didn't see nobody. What about Tim Frawley? Tim? He was the owner of the gold circle, you know. Yes, he was a friend of mine. Broke him up something terrible. When the whole town cleared out, he couldn't get nobody to work his mine. So he left it, moved here. He lives here in town now, huh? Yep. Yeah, come here. Now, look out that window. See that gray house with a juniper tree in front? Yeah, yeah, I see it. That's Tim Frawley a sitting on the porch. Reckon he'd be glad to see you. Mm-hmm. Say, uh, you wouldn't like to go back out to the gold circle with us, would you, Sheriff? Me? Uh, what, what, what for? Mm, thought I'd go back out and look around some more in the daylight. Uh, go ahead. Uh, but for me, no. Far as I know, there ain't nothing going on out there that's against the law. And the law's my business. Fact is, Mr. Hickok, I can face owl hoops and rustlers with their fists filled with forty fives. But them things in Gold Circle just ain't natural. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of out there, Sheriff. It's nothing but an old ghost town. Now you ought to seen me. Why, I just stuck out my chest and I waited right through the... <laughs> Bill! <laughs> yep, you just stuck your chest out and stepped on my cat's tail. Oh. It's lucky you didn't hit it with them shots. You sure are brave, Jingles. I'll give you credit. Yep, Sheriff. He's just as cool as a cucumber. Yeah, just as cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sheriff. Come here, kitty. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it. Now, come on, kitty, kitty, kitty. Poor little ah! cow. You better let well enough alone, Jingles. Yes, sir. Now, come on, let's go see Tim Frawley. Well, so long, Mr. Hickok. If you and Jingles find anything interesting out there, write me a letter. But don't go sending for me. Oh, fine, Sheriff, you are, you old scaredy cat. <laughs> Mighty glad you decided to come back to Gold Circle with us, Tim. Yeah, Mr. Frawley. It's nice to have company. Especially in a place like Gold Circle. <laughs> well, Hans, I don't mind saying I don't like to come out here. Brings back all the memories of the day everybody ran away. Was the mine worked out, Tim? Worked out? <laughs> Not by a long shot. We were cutting through a vein of thousand dollar ore when the cave in happened. Bill, Bill, there goes that whistle again. Can you explain that, Tim? We heard it twice last night while we were out here. No, Bill. First time I've heard it. But some folks still believe the place is populated by devils. Well, where are we going first, Bill? Just a minute, Jingles. Who but Who? 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 Joker, who? Tim, if you were hitting a rich vein like you say, did it ever strike you that somebody might be high grading the place now? No, oh, Bill, they couldn't be. Gold Circle's been deserted for four years. Not quite. No, it's full of ghosts. That's what it is. Now wait a minute, Jingle. Oh, what are you getting at, Bill? Something I found in that church belfry makes me think. Bill. Yeah, Jingles. Your ghosts are using mighty heavy artillery, aren't they? Sounds just like a real rifle. Oh, now stop on me, Bill. They're shooting at us. Where are those shots coming from? I can't tell. Come on, let's get on over to the mine. Hi, like that. Hi. Head jump, Joker, before we get ventilated. Ha ha ha! Whoa, Buckshot. Whoa, 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 whoa Joker. Woo, we. This mine is sure a burned out mess, Mr. Frowley. Yeah, Jingles. This is just like we left it. Well, come on. Let's have a look down inside the mine. Oh, uh, uh, now, Bill, you ain't ain't planning on going down in those dark tunnels, are you? I sure am, partner. Oh. You got those miners' lamps you brought, Tim? Yeah, Bill. 
Here, you... T- Bill. Oh, what is it? Oh, what is... I said, what is it? What do you see, Tim? That ladder, Bill. Oh. Leading down into the shaft. That ladder's been repaired. So it has. Then somebody's been here. Well, that's what I started to tell you. I found a powerful telescope in the belfry of the church. Somebody's been keeping a close watch on people who get too close to gold circle. And you figure there's a reason for it? I figure your gold is a reason for it, Tim. Well, then come on. Let's get down that ladder. Uh, Bill, if it's all the same to you, I'll stay up here and keep watch. All right, partner. If you want to stay up there alone, go ahead. Sure. We'll be back soon, Jingles. Alone? Oh, I never thought of that. I reckon I'll just come along with you, Bill. Wouldn't want you to get hurt down there. <laughs> uh, just a little below you now, Bill. There. There's the floor. <laughs> Take it easy now, Jingles. That last step's a long one. Yeah, no, don't catch me, Bill! Oh. oh, my bruised and beaten body. Bill, can't you never tell me things like that a little faster? Oh. <laughs> so you dare defy the spirits of dead miners of the ghoul circle? Bill, Bill, listen. Quiet, Jingles. <laughs> You should have heeded the warning of the whistle. Bill, the ladder. It's being pulled up. Grab it. Don't on it. Too late. It's out of reach. We're trapped down here like gophers in a well. <laughs> now for you, like it did for all the others. <laughs> the bell will toll again tonight. <laughs> I'll be a twisted hunk of sagebrush if we don't have more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Just sitting here chomping on these luscious new Kellogg sugar corn pops and listening to the show. Don't we, though? Yes, sir, by Jingo. Because right out of the big yellow box, just like candy, Kellogg sugar corn pops are crispy and crunchy and tastier than ever. And say, Wranglers, let's not leave out how mighty good sugar corn pops are out of the bowl for breakfast with some milk. And no sugar needed... Because they're already sweetened for you. Yep, to perfection. Now, tomorrow, sure, you'll want to ride out to the store and get a load of these big yellow boxes with the swell pictures of Guy Madison and Andy Devine on the front. And Wild Bill Hickok's famous gun cutouts on the back. Because they're just loaded with delicious Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Yippee! Sugar pots. They're sugar-coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Just as Wild Bill Hickok, Jingles, and Tim Frawley reached the bottom of the shaft, they heard an insane laugh, and Tim saw the ladder being pulled up behind them. Bill, what are we going to do? As long as we're down here, we might as well look around. Light a map, Jingles. But if we don't get out, what we learn won't do us any good. That's it. Now, light these lamps. You take one, Jingles. Tim and I'll take the other one and... Well, there you are, Tim. What? Right over there. What do those sacks look like to you? I agreed, or as sure as you're a marshal. Well, what does that mean, Bill? That and the telescope and the ladder and that crazy laugh means there aren't any ghosts to run the gold circle, partner. Somebody's high grade in my mind, all right. But who could it be? I reckon we'll find out before long. Come on. Bill? Bill, what's that noise? Those are Tommy knockers, Jingles. What? Tommy knockers. Oh. Little men with green noses and red beards that live in the mine. Oh. When there's about to be a cave in, they start knocking to warn the miners. A cave in? Bill, there was t- ten men lost that last day the mine worked. We'd better get out of here. Now take it easy, oh. Jingles. Bill, he's right. When you hear the Tommy knockers that strong, it's time to start looking for high ground. I think it's a trick from our friends. But, Tim. Bill, if it isn't a trick, if it's a real game. It game-in. is. The timbers are given away. Quick, get back in the trap. <laughs> the bell will toll again tonight. <laughs> Try to 
interfere with old Ben Pemler's plans, will they? <laughs> old crazy Ben. Yeah, crazy like a fox. Yeah, get this lamp going, see if there's anything left of him. There. <laughs> Bill, that's Ben Tremler, my old mine superintendent. Yeah, Bill. R- remember the sheriff told us about him going crazy. He thinks we were in that cave. Man. Shh. Looks like he wasn't as crazy as people thought. Come on, we'll follow his light. Be quiet now. Let's see what he does. There he is, looking at the cave in. Well, well, well. Eh, what a fine permanent grave for him. Hmm. It's pretty good getting rid of Tim Frawley, Wild Bill Hickok, and his deputy all at once. You're not quite rid of us yet, Ben. Uh, who, who's that? Oh, oh. <laughs> well, well, howdy, Mr. Frawley. You come back to see old crazy Ben, eh? Now that's right nice. Oh, hold it, Ben. That crazy act's no good anymore. We saw the high grade you dug out of this mine. Well, you ain't taking me. Bill! This lamp done! No, you don't, Ben. I got you. Now, settle down. Let me go. I'll, I'll kill you, Hickok. Your I'll killing days are over, Trembler. You mean Ben's been responsible for all the trouble in the gold circle, Bill? That's right, Tim. Jingles, pick up those strings over there. You, you mean these, Bill? Yeah. Now, pull them. Bill, there goes a Tommy knocker again. Another cave in. No. You're causing it, Jingles. Huh? Well, I'll be doggone. Ben caused that, too? Yep. And pulled that brace loose with this cable to cause a cave-in. Oh, what about the church bell? He tied something to the bell that caught the wind. When the wind blew, the bell rang. Yeah, Hickok. And if you hadn't come along, I'd have been the richest man in Arizona. Hmm. Well, Tim, that clears up the ghost around the gold circle. You couldn't get your miners back, start working. Well, I'm just about giving it up for good, Bill. I can't thank you enough. Huh. Hey, Bill, come on, hurry. I got something to do. What's that, Jingles? I'm going to go ring that church bell loud enough for people to hear it for miles around. And then when they come a-running and gather around the church, I'm going to jump out and yell, Boo! <laughs> I figure I've been scared too much lately for one man, and I'm going to spread it around a little. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison, and Andy Devine. We'll be back again on Friday, folks, with another Wild Bill Hickok adventure for you. So be with the send, will you? And if you like real action, you'll get it in our story called Thunder on the Plains. It's Wild Bill and Jingles tangling with a bunch of horse thieves. Meanwhile, Andy and I also hope you'll remember to get Kellogg Sugar Corn Bob. Right. It's the great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think sugar corn pops are great. So long. See you Friday. Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Fred Howard, Jess Kirkpatrick, Forrest Lewis, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce, music by Dick O'Rant, story by Larry Hayes. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok faces thunder on the plains. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with a sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. And Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. The greatest name in cereals presents... Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and gallop along.
along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal. Snap, crackle, and pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Thunder on the Plains. For a breakfast that's fun to eat, ask Mom for Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies and, if you like, some sort of fruit. Peaches, berries, or bananas, for instance. When you pour the milk on Kellogg's Rice Krispies, listen to them. It's fun because they're the talking cereal. And they go snap, crackle, pop to tell you how crisp and good they are. Have some tomorrow. Across the wasted deserts of Texas, north along the Pecos River, into the mountains of Colorado and beyond, rode United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his saddle partner, Jingles. Theirs was a special assignment this time, and their orders were to report to the new commander at Fort Laramie, Colonel Moonlight. Their job was to stop the ominous sound of thunder on the plains. Oh, Buckshot. Oh, 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 Joker. There she is, Jingles, Fort Laramie. Yeah, Bill. Sure good to see some signs of civilization after a month on the trail. We're not through riding yet, Courtney. <laughs> yeah, well, steady boy. <laughs> Looks like Joker's found a friend already. You'll find plenty of friends at the fort. They've got a lot of horses. Uh-oh. Now there's a bugle call that's music to my ears. That means we're going to eat. Yep, the sun's straight up overhead and time for the noon meal. Well, what are we waiting on? Let's get over there before they get all those buffalo steaks devoured. Dig in, Joker. Ho, ho, ho. Hurry, for I'm starved to death. Hey, Jingles, not so fast. All right, Buckshot, catch him. Hi, hi. Ooh, ooh-wee. That's what I call a fine meal. All right, Jingles, if you've had your fill, we'll report to Colonel Moonlight. Now? Right now. Oh, Bill, now you got things all mixed up. After the noon meal comes the siesta for a couple hours. And after that, well, maybe you get around to business. You're not down around the border now, partner. This is Wyoming, and you're serving with the Army. Well, already I got a feeling this is one job I ain't gonna like. Why'd they send for us, Bill? That's what we're going to find out from the colonel. Come on. You know, something tells me I shouldn't have been in such a hurry to get here. Well, you had a good meal, partner. Yeah, I sure did. Now comes a time when you earn it. Hey, Bill. Hey, look at them soldiers drilling. Hey, we don't have to do that, do we? No, and that's one thing you can be thankful for. Good. Well, if it ain't a couple of buckskin boys come to learn how they do it in the Army. No, we didn't come to learn to do nothing from the Army, you smart jack button polisher. We come to teach the Army a thing or two. Yeah? Yeah? All that jingles. Oh. Hello, Sergeant. I'd like to see Colonel Moonlight. Yeah, I know. Every buckskin britches on the Oregon Trail wants to see the Colonel. Oh, Bill. Their I... wagon trains get in trouble, and right away they come crying to the Army. Well, you ain't seeing the colonel. Go tell your troubles to the engines. Why, you sun-softened, loud-mouthed, low-down brother to a bull-headed buffalo? I got a mind Never to... mind, Jingles. But Bill, he can't talk to us like that. Who says I can't? <laughs> I can do more than that. I can throw you and your saddle tramp sidekick out of here on your ear. Now, just a minute, mister. Oh, let me have him, Bill. Come on, you jughead, and try it. Don't you think I won't? Hold it, Sergeant. Yeah. Now, stand back, Bill. This turkey's mine. That's what you think, fat boy. I'm sorting you down for a winter feet. Lay off, you two. Now, just one more, Bill. Now, you've done it, Jingles. Yeah, and a pretty good job if I do say so myself. I'm proud of it. Yeah. Well, you ain't finished with me yet, you big tub of... Burger! Yes, sir? Now, Sergeant Burger, what's going on here? Uh, I was just doing my duty, sir. These two saddle tramps wanted to disturb you, sir. Choke up just one more mistake on your record, Burger. Huh? 
These two saddle tramps you just tackled happen to be Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy, Jingles. Hickok? Yeah, Hickok. Jingles? Now get back to your desk and be more careful in the future, Sergeant. Or I'll give you time to think it over in the guardhouse. Ah, glad to see you, Bill and Jingles. Come in. All right, Colonel. And as for you, Sergeant Berger, don't you forget what we look like from now on. I ain't forgetting. When I get my chance, ain't neither of you gonna look like that for long. Friends, this is Charlie Lyon and that singing cowboy, Slim. Now, are you all set to entertain us, Slim? Why, Charlie, I'm full of sparkle as a hat full of diamonds. <laughs> well, now, you had your Rice Krispies, didn't you? Why, well, I always do, you betcha. You. you know, those Kellogg's Rice Krispies are fun to eat. They're so fresh and crisp. Why, even they tell you they're crisp. When you pour the milk to them, they talk right up. Snap, crackle, and pop. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Rice Krispies are fun to eat. They're the talking cereal. And Slim, if uh, you're really a singing cowboy, let's sing here about... Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Now, have some of those delicious Rice Krispies tomorrow. You'll enjoy berries or fruit more for breakfast if you put them on top of golden good Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Now, buy a supply, several packages, next time you're shopping. Now, let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles went to report to Colonel Moonlight, the commander of Fort Laramie, for special duty, they ran into a tough, bad-tempered Sergeant Berger. The sergeant picked a fight with Jingles, but Colonel Moonlight stopped it and invited Bill and Jingles into his office. Sorry, Sergeant Berger gave you such a rough reception, Bill. He's a little too quick on the trigger when it comes to a fight. That's all right, Colonel Moonlight. Right now, I figure we've got other business, Colonel. We were ordered to report to you for a special assignment. Mm, all business, aren't you, Hickok? I'd like to get a job done. That's yeah, us, Colonel. Straight and to the point. Um, what's the point, sir? All right. Here it is, straight. Horse thieves. Horse thieves? Is that all? You're talking when you should be listening, partner. I am? Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Colonel. Well, all my troops are mounted cavalry. Without a horse, a man's not a man in this country. I know I don't have to tell you that. You have a big territory to cover. You need horses. Exactly. But somebody is stealing them almost as fast as we can bring them in. Indian? Some think it's Indian's jingles. Some don't. Hmm. I'm one who doesn't. How do they operate, Colonel Moonlight? Each theft has been at night. I've doubled the guard twice. But suddenly, in the middle of the night, the horses are stampeded from their corral. Fences broken down, and 50 to 100 head go thundering off in the darkness. I see. Let me get to work on it, Colonel. As far as I'm concerned, you have a free hand, Hickok. I'll assign you quarters and a groom for your horses. Mm, that won't be necessary. We'll take care of our own horses. Well, he'll be handy if you need him. Uh, would you like one of our scouts to help you? I'd rather look them over and pick one myself, if you don't mind. Anything you say. Come on, I'll have Sergeant Berger see to your needs right now. Oh, uh, Sergeant Berger. Yes, sir? I want you to assign our best quarters to Mr. Hickok and his deputy. Then pick a good man to be their groom. Yes, sir. I have just the man, sir. Good. All right, Hickok. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Now, don't you worry about a thing, Colonel Moonlight. The job's as good as done right now, isn't it, Bill? Isn't it? Huh? Huh, Bill? I tell you, I ain't waiting much longer, Burger. I got a market for more horses, and I want them quick. Yeah, Wrangler, I know, but it ain't going to be that easy no more. Why not? Because we're bucking Hickok now, and he's a drifting beat of cat. Well, you better think of something. I want them horses tomorrow night for sure. I should have had them tonight. Well, I couldn't send you the signal tonight. It was to... Shh! Hold it. Back in the shadow. You reckon we'll catch him tonight, Bill? I doubt it, Jingles. That's them, Wrangler. 
It's Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. Where do you reckon they're headed? Well, I don't know. Do they know something? What could they know? Well, if you've let something slip that'll give us away, I'll kill you. I ain't said nothing, man. All right, all right. I better get out of here. Me and the boys will be waiting for your signal tomorrow night at the same time, and we better hear it, too. You'll hear the drum if Hickok don't get in my way. Wait a minute. Yeah. Get rid of Hickok. Here's how you can do it. Huh? You got plenty of blasting powder in the warehouse. Oh, sure, but Hickok I... and that big good for nothing deputy of his are riding out on the plains now. Go get a keg of powder and put it under Hickok's bed. Then get a long fuse and set it. You've been eating loco, we'd rank for Ah, uh, no, no. It'll be a cinch. Run the long fuse out their window where you can light it without being seen. Well, After they come back and go to sleep, you light the fuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see. <laughs> a long fuse will give me time to get back to bed before it explodes the pot. Hey, that's a good idea, Rang. Sure, yeah. And with Hickok out of the way, we can go right on with our little business of stealing horses and nobody to bother us. Bill, you don't make any more sense than a buffalo bedding down with a mountain lion. How's that, Jingles? Oh, you're so old, fired head up about getting to Fort Laramie to start on this special duty. Then when you find out that it's horse thieves, you don't do nothing but sit around the fort for four days. Is that all, Jingles? No, it's not all. Now, for no reason at all, you drag me out to take a ride on a moonlight night just going no place. Jingles... I reckon I better catch you up on a few things. All right. Oh, Ooh. Joker. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, Ooh, boy. Stand boy. Now, that's a right good idea, partner. First, your friend, Sergeant Berger, is tied up with the horse thieves. He is? Why, that no good horse thief? Might... Yeah, that's right. He's the one that stampedes the horses after sending his friends a signal. A signal? That's right. With a drum. I know where the drum is. Berger tell you all this? No, I just keep my eyes open. Well, all right, then what else? When we rode by the corral just now, Berg was meeting with one of the outside gang in the shadows. You mean we rode right by him? That's right. Oh, Bill, now that's crazy. What if they'd taken a pot shot at us? We were sitting duck. They wouldn't tip their hand, partner. Oh. But I'd sure like to know what they were talking about. Well, why didn't we grab them? I want the whole bunch with proof. So we catch him in the act, huh? That's right. Bill! There's something I can count on. Come on, let's go back to the fort. And there they are up on the hill. Reach with the six gun jingles. They've got rifles. Come on. Hi, Macho. Hi. Jump, Joker. But Bill, let's go get him. Not now, Jingles. I want them all together. Come on. Right for the floor. Hi, Macho. Hi. <laughs> But, Bill, I don't understand why we came back here. To get some sleep, Jingles. Oh, that's all we've done. Sleep and eat, sleep and eat since we've been here at Fort Laramie. Well, don't worry about it. Get plenty of sleep tonight because I got an idea. We won't get any tomorrow night. Well, all right. If you say so, Bill. Good night. Good night. What's those nightmares, partner? No, now, Bill. You know I don't have any more nightmares. <sighs> This. The powder's all set. Here's the end of the fuse. Better see if they're asleep. Yeah. <laughs> the jingle snores like a freight mule going up here. I never hear this fuse. Well, here goes. Now, to get to my quarters before that thing blows sky high. So long. <laughs> You shouldn't have lit a campfire. You'll scorch your buckskins. You did. You know you. Jinx. Jinx. Uh-huh. Wake up. 
Wake up. Did you strike a match? Uh Uh-huh, Bill. What what are you talking about? I smell something burning. So do I. It smells like... Bill, they're coming across the floor to your bed. A burning fuse. Bill, it's disappeared under your bed. Jump, Jingles. Run for it. Come on. Hey, Bill, wait for me. All right, partners, here comes the rodeo's grand march. All top hands, champion riders, ropers, and bronc busters, rein up and pray to the cook shack. Let's swing along and sing along with them. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies mean more fun and pep. So come on, gang, let's get in step. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Add milk or cream, that's all you do. Then listen to them talk to you. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Make sure there's plenty of those good rations at your ranch, bucko. They're as golden good as the good old West. Ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Rice Krispies right now. And now what do you say? Let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. Much to Jingle's surprise, Bill didn't choose to fight back when they were shot at by strangers out on the plains. They returned to the fort and went to bed. But there was an even greater surprise in store for them. During the night, Jingles was having a nightmare which awakened Wild Bill just in time to escape a terrific explosion. How in the world could a thing like this happen right in the middle of Fort Laramie? You've got all the makings right in the warehouse, Colonel Moonlight. Kegs of blasting powder and fuses. Yes, and any man in the fort could get at him, Bill. Oh, I wish I could lay my hands on the culprit. I'd have him shot at sunrise. Well, it's after sunrise now, Colonel, and I'm getting a little chilly wandering around this way. Sergeant Berger is bringing some uniforms for you. Looks like we'll be in the Army after all, Jingles. Well, we're lucky to have our stone skins to put under a uniform. <laughs> I never got out of bed so fast in all my life. This is the best I could do, Colonel, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Berger. I brought a cinch strap to hold Jingles' britches up. We'll have to get the tent maker to fit him. That's all, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Now, just a minute, you Henri polecat. You can't talk Hold it, Jingles. Yes, sir. I, uh, I'm sorry to hear about the accident, Mr. Hickok. Can't see how anything like that could happen inside the fort. No, I'll bet you can't. I can see how sorry you are. Huh? What do you mean by that? Jingles, don't start anything. Well, I... Yeah, mister, don't start anything you can't finish. Sergeant, that'll be all. Yes, sir. Yep, yep, and Coyote will get his one of these days. That's enough, Jingles. Oh. Well, Colonel, we'll get into these things and be on our way. Where are you going, Hickok? I think I'll have your horse thieves by tomorrow morning. Oh, you do? Yep, if you'll send those 14 men to me at sundown and don't let anyone else know about it. I'll round them up myself, Bill. I don't know what you're up to, but good luck. Well, the way things have been going so far, Colonel, we'll need all the good luck we can get. Right. Everything in the clear? Hickok and Jingles rode out to the north about an hour before dark. A 14-man patrol rode south before that. Good. We're taking these cayuses straight west. Let's get started. Yeah. Uh, you take that side, start yelling. When they're all out, you get gone as fast as you can. What's got you so nervous, Berger? Well, I, uh, I don't want to get caught, that's why. Don't hanker to be sent up to the federal pen for this. All right, all right, don't talk so much. Here we go. Cut loose. Yeah. Here! 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 Back and start stalling the guards. Raise as much confusion as you can. The boys will meet me two miles west. They're wait. Get going. I'm going. Up, boy. Run. Yeah. Yeah. Help! Guards! Horse thief! Guards! Turn up! You 
you think you got this figured right, Bill? I think so, partner. I saw Sergeant Berger take his drum and hide it down by the horse corral this morning. That low-down polecat. Darn near blew us to kingdom come last night. He'll get his, Jingles. Don't worry. Yeah, I won't. And I'm going to see to that personal. Here they come, Jingles. Yeah. You reckon those other scouts are all set? Sure. They rode out south at the fort a half an hour before we rode north. They've circled and are right opposite us now. And when you give the signal, we close in from both sides. That's the plan. All right. They're close enough. Now we go. Yeah, partner. Let's get them. Hi, back shot. Take him, boy. Hi. Jump, Joker. We're at the horse thieves this time. Ah, ha, ha, ha. It was a great job, Hickok. You got the ringleader of that gang of horse thieves and all of his men in one big roundup. Well, not quite all his men, Colonel. No, Colonel, not quite all of them are locked up yet. But I thought... It'll get real clear in a minute, Colonel. That's the reason I asked you to have Sergeant Berger bring the leader here to your office. I still don't understand. Here's the man you asked for, Colonel. What do you want with me? You caught me in my gang, ain't that enough? Not quite, Wrangler. I thought you might like to know how we caught up with you. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to know that. Can I tell him, Bill? No, we're oh. going to let Sergeant Berger tell him, Jingles. Oh. Me? Berger. Huh? You sneaking stole pigeon. Uh, I might have known. I, I didn't do nothing, Wrangler. I'll kill you for that. I promised I wouldn't. Oh, all right, all right. That's enough. Grab him, Jingles. Yeah. Get back there, Wrangler. Now lay off, Berger. Come on, lay off. That's better. You watch Berger, Jingles. Well, uh, Colonel, that winds it up. But, Hickok, what's Sergeant Berger got to do with this? Plenty. He was the inside man who gave the signal when all was clear for the raid. I, I... Don't move, Berger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was the inside man in the fort who caused all your trouble, Colonel. But from now on, he's going to be the inside man at the penitentiary. And up there, he ain't going to cause no trouble at all. <laughs> Now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Matheson and Andy Devine. Thanks for being with us today, folks. Say, Andy, what's our story going to be on Monday? Guy, it's a pip. Along with a lot of action, you'll get a lot of laughs out of Wild Bill and Jingles in The Confidence Man. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right. It's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Lou Merrow, Ed Max, and Ted Von Elts. Our director is Paul Pierce, music by Dick O'Rant, story by Larry Hayes. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok fights the confidence game. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Cereals presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats. 
Pops and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Cause here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We've got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of Big John and Little Mike. Say, boys and girls, if you haven't discovered what's inside the new big yellow box of Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, well, you're in for a bigger treat than ever. Because the new Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops you'll find inside those yellow boxes are sweeter and crisper and tastier than ever. So be sure you get to try them real soon, won't you? Now, let's listen. Cleaning out the lawless element of the Old West was a job for strong men with rawhide courage and nerves of steel. The most famous of the lawmen who tackled that job were United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big deputy Jingles. And one of the most vicious teams of outlaws they ever faced was that of Big John and Little Mike. Hey, come back here. Stop us, eh? Oh, dag, nab the ding-dong, dad, blasted luck. He got away again. You're not much good with a six-gun, are you, Sheriff? Huh? Now, Buddy Wilson, you quit plaguing me. I got enough troubles. Yeah, and you're going to have more right pronto. I am? What you mean, boy? Here comes a bunch of folks that heard the shooting. And little Mike's in the lead. Little Mike. Yeah, and you know what that means. He's going to be after your hide for fair this time. Well, boys, there he is. Your guardian of law and order for Marcy Ben. <laughs> What are you shooting up the town for this time, Sheriff? I weren't shooting up the town, and you know it, Little Mike. I was shooting at Big John, what just robbed the bank. <laughs> so, Big John outfoxed you again, huh? Seems like that's getting to be a habit with you. Why don't you make up a posse and go after him, Sheriff? Now, you mind your own business, boy. You just eat... Hmm? Posse, eh? Well, now, I reckon that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, I thought it was. Yep, sure is. Little Mike, yeah. I'm making up a posse right this minute to go after Big John, and I'm deputizing you first. Oh, no, you're not. Law and order's your job. I run the hardware store. That's my job. Now, you know I wouldn't stand a chance of a feather in a tornado going after Big John by myself. Then I reckon there's only one thing left to do, Sheriff. Now, what's that, boy? Send for Wild Bill Hickok. Hickok? Sure, Wild Bill can catch anybody and make him holler calf rope quicker than a bobcat can blink his eye. Bill, don't you reckon we're ever going to come to a town? This road's got to lead to someplace, Jingle. Well, I hope it leads there real quick. We've been on the trail so long, I'm ready to trade Joker in on a nice, comfortable rocking chair. And I'll bet he's ready to trade you for a nice big bale of hay with an even swap. <laughs> oh, now, Joker, you quit hoorawing me. Hey, Bill, look at that rider fogging down the road toward us. He sure is in a hurry. Well, let's stop in and ask him where the next town is. Whoa, whoa, Joker. Whoa, what's that? Whoa. All right, you ask him, partner. <laughs> yeah. Hey, stranger, Raina. Get out of my way. Hey. Oh, boy, you don't hurt me. I said, get out of my way. Ah, just a minute, stranger. Uh, my partner just wanted to ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, well, I ain't ready to answer no questions. I'm through wasting time with you two. I'm coming through. Now, get up, you bastard. Call you a bill is gun. Why, you... <laughs> Now, you see what happens when some pig-headed walloper like you tries to ride through Wild Bill Hickok? Hickok? Yeah, it comes as a little surprise, don't it? <laughs> Never mind, Jingles. I reckon our friend was in just too big a hurry to be sociable. Yeah, well, uh, what'd you want with me, Hickok? Jingles just wanted to ask you if there was a town at the end of this road. Oh, is that all? Yeah, that's all. But now I got a mind to ask you what was making you hightail it down this road like a posse was after you. You being chased or something? Hold it, Jingles. Oh. So far, that's none of our business. Yeah, fat boy. Hmm. Like Hickok says, that's none of your business. Oh. 
And the town you're looking for is only about three miles down the road called Mossy Bend. Thanks. And when you get to Mossy Bend, be sure to tell the sheriff Big John sent you. He'll be right happy to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, Wranglers. This is your sidekick, Panhandle Jim, saying, Mighty good to be with you again. And mighty good to be snacking on these wonderful new Kellogg sugar corn pops, too. <laughs> you betcha. I don't know anything that's more fun than getting together like we do and chomping on our Kellogg sugar corn pops right out of the box just like candy. Every handful is downright delicious. Yes, sir, by Jingo. And that goes for sugar corn pops in the morning for breakfast. Because every spoonful out of the bowl with milk is downright delicious, too. Yep, delicious is the word for new Kellogg sugar corn pops. Out of the bowl or out of the box, morning, noon, or night, corn pops are just right. Because <laughs> they're already sweetened, ready for eating. Now, let's listen. Yippee! Sugar pops. They're sugar coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out, pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are pops. When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles had their run-in with Big John, they didn't know he had just robbed the bank in Mossy Bend. As they rode into town a little while later, the two partners were having a slight disagreement. Now, Bill, I don't see no use in going to the sheriff's office at all. You heard that, Jasper. Say the sheriff would be happy to hear he sent us to Mossy Bend, Jingles. Yeah, but I ain't no messenger boy just going around delivering greetings. Well, I'm right curious about that fellow Big John. I'd like to ask the sheriff about him. Who about John? Who? Oh, Joker. Well, I ain't the least bit curious for a change. I'm all set to get me a bath and a shave and... Then wade through enough vittles to stock Fort Laramie, and that's just what I am going to do. All right, partner, you go right ahead. I'll walk across the street to the sheriff's office and then come back and meet you here. Just keep out of mischief until I get back. Oh, now there he goes again. Now you just keep out of mischief, he says. He knows doggone well I never get it. Hey, who's shooting? <laughs> I'll get you, you varmint. What are you shooting at, mister? Huh? Oh, why, 40 bandits just tried to shoot it out with me, and I scared them off, I guess. I didn't see no bandits. You didn't? <laughs> well, you must have heard the shots. That was me. I busted a paper bag behind your back. You did? <laughs> you little scallywag. You know, I got a mind to turn you right over my knee. Oh, you couldn't catch me. Oh, I'll bet I could. Just try it. Come on, just try it. I'll show you, you little maverick. You just wait. I'll tan your hide for scaring me like that. Hey, where are you going in there? Between these buildings. You can't get in. Oh, yes, I can. Hey, help. Help, I'm wedged in here. I told you you couldn't catch me in a million thousand years. No, oh, you little Gila monster. All you did was catch yourself, and now you're stuck. Oh, now stop hoorawing me and get me out of here. I can't move. What'll you give me? Well, I'll give you a lick and you'll remember for the... Oh, oh. <clears throat> hey, uh, now be a good little boy and do something. <laughs> I'll give you a stick of peppermint candy. How's that? Nah, that ain't nothing. Well, uh, how about it if I give you a ride on my horse, Joker? No, I got a horse of my own. Oh, now, gee willikers, let's stop this, John, and get me some help. I gotta get out of here right now. No, nope, you might give me a licking. So long. Maybe I'll send somebody to find you later. Hey, don't leave me stuck in here. Bill comes back, he'll just give me what for for this. Hey, somebody help. Bill! Oh, 
old dog gone anyway. You mean you saw that murdering, thieving Big John face to face and shot the gun out in his hand? That's right, Sheriff. Who is he? Who is he? Why, Dad Bernard Hickok, that's the lowest, meanest owl hoot west of the Mississippi River. And that's covering a lot of territory. Too bad I didn't get your message before I happened into him. It sure is. You could have brought him in just as easy as swatting flies. And that's what I was sending for you to help me do. Now, Dad, blast it, he'll be holed up in that hideout of his, and which is darn near impossible to get to. Well, Sheriff, you old gopher, yeah? You still figuring on sending for a Wild Bill Hickok? No, I ain't, little Mike. <laughs> I figured you wouldn't. I ain't gonna send for him, because he's right here. Hair hiding all in the flesh. Huh? Who? Hickok, you yapping little terrier. Open your eyes and look at him. Shake hands with him. If he's a mind to dirty his hands... Howdy, friend. Hickok! You here already? I just happen to be riding through this country. Well, now, ain't that a coincidence? Yeah, ain't it? And a big sack of bad luck for that bank-raiding bandit Big John. Well, uh, I wish you both luck, uh, gents. Uh, we'll be waiting for you to bring him in. Uh, everybody will be glad to know you're here, Mr. Hickok. He didn't sound as happy about my being here as the words he was saying, Sheriff. That little sidewinder. He's always riding me. Just let something happen and little Mike's right there a-picking the bones. My bones, mostly. Well, you get yourself ready, Sheriff, and I'll go round up Jingles. We might as well get started after Big John before the word gets around that I'm here. Somebody, mister? I sure am, Sonny. My name's Buddy. He's over there. Who is? The one that's lost. Hey, gee whiz. You're Wild Bill Hickok, aren't you? Well, that's what they call me, Button. Hoppin' horn toads. If I'd have known that, I wouldn't have done it. Honest, Mr. Hickok. Done what, Buddy? What I did. Come on, we gotta get him out. No, wait a minute. Slow down, youngster, and put it to me plain. Well... You're looking for a big, fat guy with a voice like a sick burl. What ain't at for four days, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, I guess that fits my partner all right, but I'm in a hurry. Then bring that rope off your saddle and come on. All right. What's he gotten into this time, buddy? Something you can't get out of alone. So we got to help him. See, there he is. Jink. Bill. Bill, is that you? Yeah. How'd you get stuck in between those buildings? Get me out of here and I'll tell you. Okay. I'll pull on your belt here. Here you come. Oh, just a little more. That's doing it, Bill. There I... Wow! Oh, it was awful. There was 40 bandits started shooting at me and I... <laughs> Oh, oh, now, you little sidewinder, I'm going to get you. Now I begin to see. Gee whiz, Mr. Jingles, can't we shake and be friends? No, no siree. Please? No. Jingles, hmm? I think it'd be healthier all around if you did. Sure, then you'd be safe from me. I don't pick on my friends. No siree. Jingles? Oh, all right. <laughs> well, shake, put her there, kid. My name's Buddy, Buddy Wilson. Now that I got you two together, I'm going to help you round up Big John. I heard that, buddy, and you ain't going to do no such thing. Place for you is home. Now, get. You wish you had me with you when the time Big John suits you full of holes. No, you just take it easy, buddy. Your time's going to come. You ready, Sheriff? Yep, sure am, Hickok. Me too. So long, buddy. Come on, let's ride. Hi, Bartow. Hi. Hey, get along there, Juniper. Jump, Juniper. You heard what Bill said. Ho, ho, ho! Hey, what are you doing up here, Mike? Big John, we got trouble. I had to come to warn you. Warn me about what? When the sheriff's on the way up here with you. You, you know I ain't afraid of that fuddling old turnkey. Yeah, 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 but this time he's bringing company with him. Company? Yeah, I said company. While Bill Hickok and his deputy. Hickok? So he did meet up with a sheriff. What do you mean? I met Hickok once before today. I told him to give the sheriff my regards. I guess he did all right. He was talking to the sheriff all right. And they're on the way up here now. I took the shortcut only you and me know about. What's that? 
Well, what are you so nervous about? It's probably just a bear knocking over my wash pan again. Happens all the time. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe it ain't no bear at all. Maybe you're double-crossing me, little Mike. Me? Maybe you'll let Hickok up here and... No, no, Big John, no. You and me as partner. Yeah. Well, we'll both take a look around the house. You first. Right on around the corner. If there's anybody there, you're going to get it first right in the back. Uh, but what if a Hickok? Then I'll get him while you're shielding me. Looks like I come out all right either way, don't it, little Mike? Now get moving. Partners, you know, out on the range, your wrangler is the fellow who has charge of the chuck wagon. He sees that there's always plenty of good eating around for all the ranch hands. Well, now, how about you being the Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops wrangler at your ranch? Then, just like those good fellas out in the range, you can take over and make sure there's always plenty of these delicious new sugar corn pops on hand at your ranch. <laughs> yes, siri, by Jingo. And the way your family's going to go for new Kellogg sugar corn pops, out of the box like candy or out of the bowl with milk, you really have to keep an eye on the supply. So don't forget to load up big on those new bright yellow boxes of Kellogg sugar corn pops with the pictures of Guy Madison and Andy Devine right on front. Because everybody's going to be diving into them. Sugar pops. They're sugar coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out, pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Big John, suddenly suspicious of his partner, little Mike, forced Mike to walk ahead as they rounded the hideout cabin to investigate a strange noise. All right, go on around the corner. Now wait, wait, Big John, wait. If that Hickok, he'll blast me. Now ain't that just too bad. I'd sure miss you. Move. Get on around there, I'll blast you first. All right, all right. Don't push me. Now, let's see who... John! Hey, what is it? Why, it's a kid! Hey! Don't you... let me go! Now, just settle down, you little monkey, and tell me what you're doing here. I was riding out and dropped by this way. Yeah, a likely story. He was spying on us for Hickok. I was not. How'd you get here? By the shortcut. Yeah, little Mike, you heard him. By the shortcut. And you and me was the only ones supposed to know that way. Oh, I've known about that for a long time. What? Maybe, John, maybe he told Hickok. Did you, kid? Did you tell Hickok and the sheriff? No, I wouldn't tell that old sheriff nothing. Well, that's just fine. That gives us just one trail to watch. Come on, in the cabin, kid. What are you going to do with me? We'll have to worry about that later. Right now, we're going to set up a little gun smoke welcome for Wild Bill Hickok and his friends. After we're rid of them, then we can take care of you. Bill, this sure is a steep hill. Are we on the right trail, Sheriff? Yeah, and this is the only trail, Jingles. Uh, there, look up ahead. There's Big John's cabin. Good hideout, all right. That's too good, Bill. Big John shot it out with more than one posse coming up this trail. That's why I couldn't get nobody to come up here with me this time. Well, this is far enough. Who? Oh, yeah, hold up there, Jennifer girl. Hey, what you got in mind, Bill? You two go on foot up the trail straight to the cabin. When he starts shooting, take cover and keep him interested. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to circle around and go at the cabin from the side. Oh. You wait a minute to give me a start, then move up. Surprise him, huh? I'll try to. You just keep him looking your way. And don't get where he can hit you. Oh, we won't, will we, Sheriff? Not by a long shot. Or a short shot, either. <laughs> That's kind of funny, ain't it? No, I don't think so. 
I say funnier things than that all the time. Like what, for instance? Oh, like, well, for instance, what makes a chicken run across the road? <laughs> give up? Nope. I never give up. I'll figure it out. Doggone it, he started shooting. Get your head down and uh, you'll be shot off. Bill said keep Big John interested. Yeah, throw a few slugs at him. Doggone it, he just missed my hat. Maybe he's too interested. Come on. Come on. Hey, let's get closer to the cabin. we got to help Bill all we can. Yeah. wonder if he's getting a chance to sneak up on him from the side. Jingles and the sheriff are keeping Big John busy, all right. Hey, wait a minute. There's more than one gun working in that cabin. Big John's got some help. Better get closer. All right, Hickok. Why don't you come and get me? You yellow. Come on. He's coming, all right. You can't stop him, Big John. Shut up, you sniveling kid. Buddy, how'd he get in there? Well, Bill is coming to get you, Big John. That's where you're right, buddy boy. I'm coming. Right now. Well, let him come. I'm ready for him. He won't get me. Nobody big enough to get Big John. That's where you're wrong, Big John. John, it's your shock. Get out, Bill, Bill. No. You got their guns, Wild Bill. Boy, that was some shooting. All right, you two polecats. Stand where you are while I climb in this window. I told you he'd come for you, Big John. Uh... Bill. Uh, Bill, you, you all right? Yeah, Jingles. Come on up. You heard him, Sheriff. Come on, hurry up. I'm coming. That damn it, quit hollering at me. Well, well. Wild Bill. I see you caught them varmints dead to rights, eh? Eh. Little Mike. So you were mixed up with Big John, too, huh? Oh, yeah. Sure he was. I could have told you that, Sheriff, but you didn't ask me. Buddy, what are you doing here? I just came along to help. And I reckon you did, too, buddy. All right, Sheriff, I guess you can pack those two off to jail. Ah, you can't take me to jail. I didn't do nothing. Oh, yes, you did. You brought them supplies and told them when there was going to be gold in the bank. I heard you. I'll cut your tongue off, you little side boy. Oh, no, I reckon you're through with that rough stuff for good, Mike. You and Big John are headed for jail. Well, Mr. Hickok, the whole town of Mossy Bend is going to be mighty grateful to you for rounding up them there polecats. No, oh, now think nothing of it, Sheriff. We do it all the time. You said it, Jingles. There ain't nobody like Wild Bill. And Jingles. Oh, you couldn't even catch me. Hmm? Want to try? Remember what happened last time. By the way, Jingles, just what did happen to get you wedged in between those two buildings back in town? Oh, now, Bill, I wasn't wedged in. I just heard there was going to be a tornado, so, well, I stepped over there to stand between those two buildings so the wind wouldn't blow them down. <laughs> Now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's our Wild Bill Hickok story for today, folks. We'll be back on Friday with another one. Right, Andy? You bet, Guy, and it's a corker, too. All about road agents attacked in a stagecoach guarded by Wild Bill and Jingles. Don't miss it, kids. It's called Death at Sunset Trail. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Lou Krugman, Junius Matthews, Fred Howard, David Duvall, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok faces death at Sunset Trail. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal.
the greatest name in cereals, presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hiya, folks. Hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok in his foul jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap, Crackle, and Pop, Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Death at Sunset Trail. When you open your eyes in the morning, there's no finer thing in the world to look forward to than a big heaping bowl of golden, crisp Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the talking cereal. These merry little gadabouts in the bowl will tell you with a snap, crackle, pop how fresh and crisp and good tasting they are. So get a big box tomorrow. And boys and girls, a little later on in the program, we'll tell you how you can get a wonderful Aerodoodle rocket launching beanie. So be sure to stay tuned in. The dangerous duties as United States Marshal led Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles from Kansas cow towns to the buttes of Wyoming in search of outlaws. But there were routine duties, too. One of these was to escort a mail stage from Cottonwood Springs to Bear River. It was easy enough to start with, but before they were through, there was excitement aplenty as they ran into Death at Sunset Trail. Now, Bill, this is what I call a real fine job. You like it, Jingle? I sure do. Just riding along nice and easy through pretty country. We're supposed to be guarding this stagecoach, partner. It's carrying mail, a box of gold, and a couple of passengers, remember? Sure, but it's a cinch, Bill. This is the life. Yeah, but you'd be hauling like a coyote in a bear trap if you had to do it all the time. Oh, no, I wouldn't do no such a thing. That's right. Just be sure you don't go to sleep on the job. Me? Go to sleep? That's what I said. There might just be some road agents who'd like to get their hands on that gold box. Bill. Bill. Look coming down the hill. Yeah, partner. Now, you see what I mean? Three of them, Bill, wearing masks. They don't see us yet. Be ready. I'm ready. Doggone those varmints. They're liable to plumb ruin my vacation. All right, folks, I'll have you move. Driver, throw down the box. First one makes a play, dies in his tracks. Not so fast, mister. You're covered. Drop those guns. All three of you. Hickok, where'd you come from? Drop those guns. Yeah, you ain't robbing this stage. You two ain't stopping me. Feed them lead, boy. Two down, Bill. Yeah, but I'm left, and here's where you get yours, Hickok. You've got a chance to drop that six iron and live, mister. Not all your life, Bill! Too bad he asked for it, Bill. I only nicked him, Jingles. Well, there's three more owl hoots that ain't riding the trail for a long time. <laughs> After they get patched up, they'll be guests of the territorial prison. That's right. Uh, well, good morning, gentlemen. Well, Mr. Hickok, I would like to shake your hand. I'm Albert J. Morgan from Philadelphia. Howdy, Mr. Morgan. This is my partner, Jingle. Well, pleased to meet you, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> well, you're almost big enough for two partners, Jingle. Now, hold on there, mister. Oh, no offense, no offense at all. <laughs> as long as I'm to be a part of the West now, I want to make all the friends I can. You coming West to live, Mr. Morgan? Yes, Mr. Hickok. I have found the answer to all my dreams at last. Hmm, that's so? Uh, well, what are you dreaming about? Peace and quiet and security. Hmm. No more board of directors meetings, no more balance sheets to read, and no more worries. <laughs> I'm 76, gentlemen, and it's about time I had some fun out of life. Well, you come out here for peace and quiet, riding a bone jar and stagecoach, getting mixed up in holdups? Mister, you sure you ain't heading in the wrong direction? <laughs> Not at all. Here, here's the clipping from the Philadelphia paper. You read it yourself. Well, it says... Uh, what does it say, Bill? It says, to tired businessmen. Oh. 
Forget your troubles and stop worrying. <laughs> Spend the rest of your life at Sunset Trail in peace and quiet. We take care of everything. Write to Big Ben Bogart at Bear River, Wyoming. And you wrote this, Jasper, a letter? I certainly did, Jingles. <laughs> I got it all arranged. Big Ben Bogart's meeting me when the stage gets to Bear River. He is, huh? Yes, sir. And he says I've got nothing to worry about for the rest of my life. Oh, oh well, by George, the stage is ready to go. <laughs> Bear River, here I come. Yep. <laughs> well, he's just kicking up his heels like a spring cold. <laughs> hey, Bill, Bill, what are you looking so thoughtful about? Come on, Jingles. Let's stay with the old gent till we get to Bear River. I want to know more about this plan Big Ben Bogart's got up his sleeve. Yeah. You know, come to think about it, it sounds too good to be true. That's just what I'm thinking, partner. All right, let's ride. Hiya, Buck John. Hiya, boy. Jump, Joker, we're heading for Bear River. Ha, ha, ha! This is Charlie Lyon and Slim the Singing Cowboy, friends. Say, tell us about those wonderful new Aerodoodle beanie caps and rocket planes, Slim. Well, sir, they're just about the nippiest thing this side of the Rio Grande, Charlie. You know what a beanie is, kids. It's a cap. And this one's bright colored red and green. And it's got a four-inch flexible plastic launching tube on top for shooting out rocket planes. You fit one of these here rocket planes on the tube, then you blow through a 20-inch blasting tube, and that rocket plane can soar as high as a house. Boy, oh boy, what fun. Now, be the first in your neighborhood to get one. You just tear off the top of a regular or large-sized box of those delicious golden Kellogg's Rice Krispies and send it along with 25 cents to Kellogg's. They'll send you a swell rocket launching beanie with three rocket planes. So get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. That's the talking cereal that goes snap, crackle, and pop to tell you how fresh and crisp they are. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best, and how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Get this wonderful trick beanie that actually launches rocket planes. Send now to Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. Okay, let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. While Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles were riding with the stage toward Bear River... Out at the ranch called Sunset Trail, Big Ben Bogard and one of his men was getting ready for the arrival of old A.J. Morgan. Yeah, uh, move that big chair over by the window, Buck, where it'll be in the sun. Yeah, Ben, so as the old weasel can be nice and comfortable, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're catching on, Buck. Well, I reckon I ought to catch on, at least by now, boss. This new one makes number nine you caught in your trap with that newspaper advertisement you run in Philadelphia. Thought I told you to forget about our other... Guess. You let something slip about them, and I'll put you up on the hill with them. Oh, now, Ben, you know I ain't going to say nothing. Uh, what's the new sucker's name? Mr. A.J. Morgan, former president of Wilson, Todd, and Morgan Investment Brokers. Oh, rich, huh? Oh, the richest one so far. Come on, let's get the buckboard and go meet him. Stage ought to get to Bear River just about the time we do. You know, there's just one thing I don't understand. What's that? If these old mossy horns are smart enough to make so much money, how come they're dumb enough to fall for your scheme, boss? And there's two right good reasons for that, Buck. There is? Sure. First, there's no fool like an old fool. And second, Big Ben Bogart's got this thing figured as slick as a greased pig at the county fair. Slide out of these saddles and say goodbye to Mr. Morgan, Bill. All right, partner. Yeah, stand there, Buckshot. Hey, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> sure stands out in this crowd of cowpokes and miners, don't he? Well, uh, Jingles and Mr. Hickok, I wanted to express my appreciation for a nice, safe trip. 
Oh, yes, and for the excitement, too. Well, I thought you'd come out here looking for peace and quiet. Oh, oh, surely, but there's plenty of time for that at Sunset Trail. Pardon me, mister. Did I hear you mention Sunset Trail? I did. I, I, oh, are you Mr. Bogart? Big Ben Bogart at your service. You must be Mr. Albert J. Moore. I am. And these are my very good friends. Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. Hickok? That's right, mister. And I'm the one he meant by Jingles. Because <laughs> that's my name. Howdy, Bogart. Well, howdy, Marshal Jingles. I didn't know you two were in Wyoming. We just rode in with the stage that brought Mr. Morgan. He told us about your plans for him. Yes, huh? Well, we've got some great plans for Mr. Morgan. Uh, Buck, come and get Mr. Morgan's luggage. Sure, boss. I'd like to hear a little bit more about those plans, Mr. Bogart. What for, Hickok? They don't concern you? No. But it all sounds very interesting, and Mr. Morgan's a friend of mine. Well, some other time. We've got to get Mr. Morgan back to the ranch at Sunset Trail right now. Alone. Alone? <laughs> Bill, all of a sudden, it looks like we aren't welcome out there. Never mind, Jingles. I wanted to drop over and have a talk with the sheriff anyway. What are you going to talk to the sheriff about, Hickok? Well, it might just be about a ranch where lawmen aren't welcome. The Jasper who runs such a ranch. I don't take that from you, Hickok. You you got a mighty touchy temper, Bogart. Push in his face, Bill. I didn't like it from the start. Your face is going to get pushed in. I don't think so, Mr. Wait. All right, Bogart. Get on your feet and take Mr. Morgan to your ranch. But handle him easy. What do you mean by that? Just this. I'm coming out for a visit in a day or two, and I want to see him in the best of health. Understand? I don't know what you're getting at, Hickok. But I'm telling you this. Gents that go around meddling where it's none of their business sometimes don't come back. Well, Mr. Morgan, how do you like your sunset trail? It's all I expected and more too, Ben. Yes. This is the kind of place I've thought about for years. While I sat at my desk in Philadelphia. Well, you know my agreement. You try it for a week or a month. Then if you like it, you make out your will to me. And the place is yours. And you agree to take care of me for the rest of my life. Run the ranch and shoulder all the worries. <laughs> That's it. Fair enough, isn't it? Oh, it's fine with me. I have no heirs, no family. All I want is peace and quiet. Well, take your time making up your mind. You're my guest, you know. Make yourself at home. Uh, thank you. Oh, by the way, Ben, have you seen anything of Wild Bill Hickok? No, why? Well, I've been here two days, and he said he was coming out to visit me. Oh, you ain't lost nothing if he don't show up. Maybe he forgot all about it. Boss! Hey, Ben, can I see you a minute? Sure, Buck, be right there. <laughs> oh, one more question about the deal, Ben. Yes? What's that, Mr. Moore? Well, the way it's set up, if I die, everything goes to you. What if you should die first? Why, why, it's all yours. But don't you go worrying about my dying first. Oh, well, I don't know. The way you pick fights with Wild Bill Hickok, it might just happen that I'd outlive you. <laughs> hey, boss, you coming? Yes, I'm coming. Hickok's not worrying me, Morgan. I'll outlive you both by a good margin. Hey, Ben. I just got back from town. What'd you find out? I heard Hickok and that big deputy of his talking to the sheriff. Hickok wanted to know whether you had had any other guests here at Sunset Trail, that's what. Boss, I don't like that star packer pushing his way around. And why don't you do something about it, Buck? Huh? What do you mean, Ben? That oughtn't to be hard for you to figure out, Buck. You got a rifle. Hickok said he was coming out here. Yeah. I begin to see what you mean. Wouldn't surprise me if he was on his way out this afternoon. If a good man with a rifle sat on Lookout Rock just above the trail, he could plug two men easy without half trying. Yeah. He could plug two men easy, couldn't he? Without half trying. I'll see you later, boss. <laughs> You reckon Mr. Morgan's all right, Bill? He's all right if he hasn't signed that paper yet, Jingles. That the same one the others signed, Bill? That's right. Eight of them before Morgan. Well, I I don't see what you're 
getting so all fired hot under the collar about you said yourself the paper was clean and legal. Sure, the paper's legal, partner, but murder's not. Bill, Bill, that guy's trying to murder us, and we ain't got so much as a blade of grass to hide behind. Right for it, Jingles. A moving target's harder to hit. Hi, but so high. Jim Joker, run, boy. You're liable to be carrying an empty saddle. Oh, ho, ho. Hey, Wranglers, kids all over the land are buzzing about the sensational new offer that Kellogg's Rice Krispies is making. Now, I'm going to tell you all about it in a minute. Right now, though, come on, let's everybody sing. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best, and how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Here's what you can get from Kellogg's, kids. It's called the Aerodoodle Beanie Cap and Rocket Outfit. It's a bright red and green cap that fits on your head and has a flexible plastic four-inch tube attached to the top. You fit a sleek, sturdy five-and-a-half-inch rocket plane, and uh, there's three of them in the kit, on the front of this here tube. Now you blow through another long tube and watch the rocket go zooming off your cap and zip up into the air. You'll have all kinds of fun with it, and I'll tell you how you can get this wonderful rocket beanie outfit. Just send the box top from a package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies along with 25 cents to Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now be sure to include your name and address. That's Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. You better send it right away. And now what do you say? Let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles on their way to Sunset Trail Ranch to visit old Mr. Morgan were ambushed by an unseen gunman and had to make a run for it. Come on, Joker! Just a little more, Jingles, and we'll be out of his range. That cut come too soon for me! Oh, what's up? Who boy? Hold up, Jingles. Oh, ho, Joker. You sure we're out of range, Bill? Must be. Stop shooting. Now, who do you think that could have been? Just offhand, I'd say it was either Bogart or one of his men. But why Why would he want to go dusting the cuckleburrs out of my hair with a rifle slug for? Maybe he doesn't like the way you comb it, partner. Oh, now, Bill, you know I ain't combed my hair all day. Well, what are we going to do now? I'd kind of like to head up that hill and smoke that bushwhacker out in the open, but... I figure we got more urgent business. Yeah? Like what? A social visit to Mr. Morgan at the Sunset Trail Ranch. Come on, it's not much further. Let's go, Buckshot. Come on. Well, I ain't been hankering for the visit. But if you're set on it, I reckon I gotta go, too. Get along, Joker. ho ho Hold down. Boss, we got to do something fast. Well, what's chasing you, Buck? Wild Bill Hickok and that big deputy of his. I missed them. You lame brain dodo. How could you miss them? Well, they, they outran my bullets. Now, I swear it. I seen them. Where's the old man? Around front of the house. Well, Hickok will be here any minute. What are we going to do? You ain't going to do nothing but go hide out and keep your trap shut. I'll take care of this my way. Okay, Ben, anything you say. And don't show your face till I come looking for you. I won't. I want no part of that Hickok. (laughs) Well, hello, Ben. I was just enjoying the scenery. This hammock you put up for me is the answer to all my prayers. Well, that's fine, Mr. Morgan. Glad you liked it, please. <laughs> like it? Why, I wouldn't leave here in anything but a pine box. Well, then, maybe you'd better come in the house and sign your new will right now before you change your mind. Yeah, I've got it right here in my pocket. Yeah, it's all made out and ready for you. Oh, well, let me see it here. Oh, yes, well, it, it's set up just as you outlined it all right. Sure, all neat and legal, like I said. You leave everything to me when you die... I sign over to the ranch to you now and agree to take care of you the rest of your life. And if you die first, I get it all. You still worrying about me kicking up my heels first, huh? Well, don't lose no sleep over that. (laughs) Don't worry, I won't. (laughs) But I'm in no hurry. Oh, yes, you are. What's that? 
You're going in the house and sign that will right now. Come on. Oh, God. Turn me loose. What are you doing? I got no more time to fool with you. No, 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 no. Wait. Wait. Nothing. Man. There's a pen and ink on the desk. Sign it. Yes, but I'm not ready to sign that will yet. Stop stalling. I ain't going to wait all day. Uh, well, all right. All right. We, we both have to sign it, I believe. So suppose you sign it first, Bogart. Sure, sure. What's the difference? There you are. That's right. Now, my signature goes just below yours, I believe. Yeah, you know it does. Now, sign it quick. Don't sign that paper, Morgan. Me, I had no intention of signing, Mr. Hickok, but I thought you'd never get here. What do you mean by that, Morgan? <laughs> We'd have been here sooner, but we were delayed a bit down the road. Well, thank goodness you got here when you did, Bill. This man, Bogart's a swindler. That's a lie. These papers are legal. Sure they are. But Bogard's more than a swindler, Mr. Morgan. Huh? What do you mean, Bill? If Morgan had signed that will, he'd have been signing his death warrant at the same time. My my death warrant? That's right. The sheriff told me there had been eight other owners of this Sunset Trail Ranch in the last five months. Eight others? Well, where are they? You might ask Bogard that question. Well, they, uh, they died. I took care of them until they did. For the rest of their lives. Like this will reads. Sure. Just like it says. Say, what's going on here? I don't think they lasted long after they signed their will, Bogart. I ain't listening to no more of this, Hickok. You found proof for your accusations, Bill? Bill, you mean Bogart got them eight old men to sign wills, leaving him everything, and then killed them? That's my guess, partner. Hmm. You keep an eye on Bogart while I go look around for eight graves. You ain't gonna find no graves but your own, Hickok. Mr. Hickok, get out! Billy's drawn! Well, mister, it's just a good thing Bill don't like killing people, or you would be in your grave from that bonehead play. Uh... Hey, Bill, there's the other one. No, no, don't shoot, don't shoot. I give up. Well, that's better. Now drop that six gun. Now both of you varmints back up against that wall till we're good and ready to take you to jail. Nice work, Jingles. So Bogard was going to make corpse number nine out of me, huh? Oh, yeah. Give me one of your guns, Bill. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, what are you up to, Mr. Morgan? I'm going to show this low-down, bloodthirsty rapscallion which one of us is going to live the longest round here. No, no, don't let him shoot me. Hold it, Morgan. The law will take care of Bogard. You better return my gun just the way it is. No, no let me shoot him, Bill. Oh, he sure <laughs> got pepper in his gizzard, ain't he, Bill? <laughs> Almost too much, partner. Hey, Mr. Morgan... Ain't you the gent who came west looking for peace and quiet for the rest of your life? Why, sure I did, Jingles. Why? Well, from the way you take the gun smoking action, looks to me like you're going to have to come and ride the trail with Wild Bill and me just to get enough excitement to keep you from going to seed. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Thanks for being with us, folks. Andy and I will be back again with you on Monday. Yes, sirree. And we've got another Wild Bill Hickok story for you, all about a little western newspaper in plenty of trouble. We call it Press for Justice. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right. It's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Ken Christie, Fred Shields, and Howard McNear. Our director is Paul Pierce. Music by Dick O'Rant. Story by Larry Hayes. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok stands up for the press for justice. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's! 
the greatest name in cereals, presents... Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Battle at Bear Creek. Now, kids, before we get into today's exciting Wild Bill Hickok adventure, let's all get settled back with our big yellow boxes of new Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. And say, if you don't have your sugar corn pops handy, next time be sure you do, because it's real fun to snack on sugar pops right out of the box while you take in the show. Now, let's listen. United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big deputy Jingles were foremost in the fight to stamp out Russellin in the Great West. One of their grimmest assignments sent them thundering across the plains of New Mexico and straight into the battle at Bear Creek. Now, gents, have you had your fill? We sure have, Angus. Well, I sure wish everybody that sent for us would give us a... Oh, a big feed like that before he started talking about the troubles, huh, Bill? It would be right nice, partner. All right, Angus, spill it. What's got you in a corner? Rustlers, Bill. Rustlers? Is that all? Yeah, that's enough, Jingles. They're stripping the mavericks out of my herd so fast they're going to ruin me. Why, rustlers ain't no problem, Mr. Gordon. Jingles. Huh? You're talking when you should be listening, partner. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Angus. I take it these are no ordinary rustlers. You're right about that, Bill. They don't just come in and drive off a couple of hundred head. They're hitting me where it hurts the most. Calves, yearlings, and steers. Young stock, huh? Yep. We just finished the roundup. My count on new stock is down by 20% or more. But how are they getting away with them? And I don't know. Few at a time, I guess. But they don't leave any sign. Cookie said you wanted me to come up after supper, boss. That's right. Uh, Gents, this is Speed Racker, my foreman. Speed, shake hands with Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles. Hickok? And Jingles. Howdy. Howdy. Glad to meet you, Marshal. Same here, Speed. Uh, Wild Bill and Jingles are going to try to take a hand at uh, running these cow thieves to ground, Speed. Yeah, and we'll do it, too. Angus is right, partner. We're going to try. Well, you ain't going to find no more sign than we did. You're probably wasting your time, Marshal. Maybe. Where's your shipping point, Angus? Town of Sibley. Ten miles down the road. Then we'll ride into town and spend the night. Tomorrow morning, we'll check around. You keep your eyes open here, and we'll let you know what we find. Come on, Jingles, let's saddle up. Bill, seems to me you're going at this backwards, like a coyote looking for chickens in a pasture instead of a chicken coop. How's that, partner? Well, now, I figure if you're going to look for rustlers stealing cattle from a ranch, you stake yourself out on that ranch. What are we riding to town for? Stolen cows have to be shipped, Jingles. We're going into Sibley where they load cows. Might give us a lead on who's shipping young stuff. Well, that shot was meant for us. Who, Buckshot? Who? I guess you're right. Where'd he come from? Well, who cares where it come from? Let's get out of here. Yeah, the shooting. Too dark to see him. Well, he can see us up on this ridge. That means he's below us. Bill, there's the flash in the valley back by the Gordon place. Come on, Jingles. Let's get him. Hi, Buckshot. Joker. Bill, we'll never smoke out that bushwhacker in this dark, and he's got a beat on us already. That's right on down his throat, then, partner. Hi, Buckshot, hi! Hi, partners. Your old saddlemate, Panhandle Jim, talking. I do a lot of chinning here, too, but boiling it down, the most important thing to say takes just four little words. Yep, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. 
four words that mean the most delicious two-way cereal you ever tasted. Yes, sir, e by jingo, because Kellogg's sugar corn pops are golden hearts of corn, all popped up bright and jolly with a sweetening already on them, ready for eating right out of the big yellow box just like candy. Like I eat my sugar pops listening to the show. That's one way. Now, the other way you eat Kellogg's sugar corn pops is out of the bowl with milk in the morning for breakfast. And I'll stake my best six-shooter. You'll say you never tasted a better cereal than new Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Because they're sweeter and crisper than ever before. That's why we sing... Yippee! Sugar pops. They're sugar-coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now, sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. <laughs> While Bill Hickok and Jingles, in search of a lead to the unknown rustlers of Angus Gordon's cattle, were riding through the night toward the railhead of Sibley. From the valley floor, a lone gunman started firing at them, and Bill decided to smoke him out. Hold your fire, Jingles. He's quit shooting. Yeah, but I'll bet we don't find no more sign of him than you would coconut cake after a lodge picnic. Oh, Buckshot. Who are you? Oh, oh, Joker. We're just about here in this clump of pin oak. Got a match, partner? Yeah, but it ain't gonna do you no good unless it's to give that bushwhacking coyote another shot at us. We'll have to take that chance. All right, but I can think of better things to be doing than asking for a brisket full of lead. There. See anything? Yeah. He didn't get off his horse. <laughs> that tells us a lot, don't it? Go on, that match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's blue. All right, come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> you said it, but I, I ain't going to chase that Jasper all over this valley for the rest of the night. I just ain't going to do it. No, I'm not either, Jingles. We're heading on for town, keeping off the skyline of that ridge. Forget about Buckshot. Let's get to town. Come on. Hey. Yeah. If I'm going to swap lead with a pack of rustlers tomorrow, I want a good night's sleep first. Go, Joker. Head for the barn, boy. This the place, Sheriff? Yeah, this is where most of the cattlemen from around here do their loading, Hickok. Looks like somebody's loading right now, Sheriff. Yeah, that's uh, Tory Macon from Bear Creek Ranch. I'd like to meet him. Well, no sooner said than done. Hey, Tory, want to meet a friend of mine? Well, howdy, Sheriff. Morning, Tory. Step up and shake hands with Wild Bill Hickok. Bill, this is Tory Macon, owner of Bear Creek Ranch. Hickok, eh? Howdy, Mr. Macon. What's the U.S. Marshal doing around Sibley, Sheriff? Wild Bill came down to help round up the rustlers that have been operating around here, Tory. Rustlers? Have they been bothering you any, Mr. Macon? Nope. Guess my spread's not big enough to interest them. Those your cows being loaded now? That's right. What about them? Nothing. I just wondered. They, they look mighty young, mostly long yearlings, aren't they? Some of them. What about it? I thought most cattlemen waited till their beef was four years old. You're getting too nosy for your own good, Hickok. Hold it, Tory. Hickok didn't mean no harm, just curious, that's all. Well, curiosity killed a cat once, I heard. Now, simmer down, Macon. I'm here to protect cattlemen, not to fight with them. Unless they get their cattle from rustlers. That's all, you nosy star packer. I'm coming over this fence after you. You've got a mighty touchy conscience, Macon. I don't stand for nothing on the likes of you. This was your idea, mister. Gee, Christmas, what a fight. Now, what you want to start a ruckus with Hickok for, Tory? Never mind, Sheriff. Let's go and give him a chance to think it over. I've thought it over, lawman. And the next time it won't be my fists. It'll be a body full of lead you'll get. Oh, Bill, uh, I never seen him act like that before. You reckon he stole them steers and yearlings? That what made him so touchy? I don't make accusations without proof, Sheriff. But I reckon I'll go get Jingles and look over Macon's Bear Creek Ranch. Just for luck. Want to come along? Well, I sure and blazes do. It ain't every day an ordinary plug sheriff like me gets a chance to ride knee to knee with Wild Bill Hickok. You just bet your best rope and saddle I'm a coming along. <laughs> Bill, me and Angus had the best game of checkers you ever saw. I beat him. Once. He sure did, Hickok. We was going hot and heavy just before you rode up. 
How many times did Angus beat you, Jingles? Huh? No, oh, um, a couple of times. How many? Um, um, uh, oh, ten, doggone it. Now, what do you have to ask that for? And something else. I told you to keep your eyes open. Oh, I did, Bill. I was wide-eyed as a hooty owl sitting on a barn door. Cross my heart and hope to choke. Well, get in that saddle, partner. You and the sheriff are going for a ride with me. I'll try to get back for evening supper, Bill. We will. And I sure hope so. Yes, sir, there's nothing better than a spread Angus puts on his teeth. Well, thank you, Sheriff. Yes, By the way, Angus, if you brand your calves every spring roundup, how do you figure Mavericks get to be two years old without a brand? Oh, the boys are bound to miss a few, Bill. And if they missed them two years in a row, they'd still be unbranded when they were two years old. Hey, I hadn't thought of it that way, but you're right. What are you getting at, Bill? I was just wondering how some steers I saw this morning got such fresh brands on them. Come on, let's go. I'll see you later, Angus. Hi, I'm Hi. Hurry back, Bill. Jump, Joker, let's ride. Bill, we've been standing up here in these trees watching that ranch of Macon's for over an hour, and nothing's happened. Yeah, hey, Conk, what are you expecting to see down there? I'm not sure, Sheriff, but Macon sure acted mighty suspicious when he started that fight with me this morning. Yeah, well, that don't prove nothing. Hey, wait a minute. There. Now we'll have something to watch. But, Bill, <laughs> that's just two cowpokes driving three mavericks into Macon's corral. You don't drive cows into a corral on an open range unless they're sick. Well, now, I hadn't thought of that. And if those were Macon's cowpokes, they'd be heading for the bunkhouse and not his ranch house. That's right. Nine out of ten, it's right. Now, look. There, there they come out again. But, Bill, that ain't the same, too. See, those hands are wearing right bright shirts, a red one and a yellow one. <laughs> Real pretty ones, too. That's right, partner. But they're getting on the same horses. Hey, they are. It is the same, too. Just change shirts is all. Now, doesn't it strike you mighty funny that they'd go in the house, Macon's house, mind you, just to change their shirts? By Jingo's Hickok, you're right. It does look funny. Why, it sure does. <laughs> Looks funnier than a jaybird jumping rope with a tomcat. But doggone it, I still don't know what it means, Bill. You will right soon, partner, because you're going to turn rustler. No, no, I'm not. Not on your life. <laughs> you ain't making no night rider out of me, no siree. This is another one of those big ideas of yours that's going to make me the bait in the trap. And I just ain't going to do it. No, sir, I ain't. Hey, ho! Get along, doggy. Hup, ho! Come on. Come on, Joker. Head him off, boy. That's right. Right into that corral, you wall-eyed critter. Up! Ho, ho! <laughs> now get around him, Joker, so I can close his gate. There. Steady now. Steady. Well, there he is, Joker. Now to go in and see Macon. Uh-oh. Here he comes to see me. Howdy, Mr. Macon. Howdy, cowpoke. Where'd you come from? I've never seen you before. Well, I'm a new cowhand up at Angus Gordon's Block S spread. Yeah? What are you doing driving a critter into my corral? Oh, well, I, I thought I'd like to pick out one of them new pretty red shirts some of the boys are wearing. Yeah? What do you know about them shirts? Oh, just that they're mighty pretty and... Well, some of the boys said all I had to do was to bring you a critter and you'd give me one. A red one, huh? <laughs> I like red shirts real well. Ain't nothing wrong with this Maverick, is there? No, looks sound enough. Came out of the block, yes, heard of bald faces, eh? Yeah, didn't have no brand on it, so I just got behind it and nudged it down your way. Um, now do I get the shirt, huh? <laughs> yeah, you get the shirt. Come on in the house. <laughs> oh, now that's real nice of you, Mr. Macon. You got a red one left uh, in my size? I got all sizes, cowboy. Here, come on in. Now, oh, right over here in this next room. There you are. Take your pick. Hoppin' horny toads. Mm, you got everything. Hats, boots, and shirts. Whew, even silver saddles. That's right. You just keep bringing me good unbranded mavericks and you can get anything in that room. For instance, 12 critters get you that new pair of boots. Oh, well, I'll be back again, all right, Mr. Macon. I'll just take this red shirt here. Yeah, go ahead. Put it on. I'll see who's at the door. 
Megan, you've got big trouble. Speed Racker, I told you not to come here in the daytime. What if Angus saw his own foreman down here? I had to come. Hickok's wise to you. He's scheming to get the goods on you. Well, Mr. Macon, how do I look? I sure like this. Macon, that's him. How did he get in here? He's a new cowhand up at your ranch. Didn't you know him? Know him? I sure as shooting do know him. That's Jingles. Well, Bill Hickok's yeah, different. Yeah, that's what? right. Now you two stand where you are or these six guns of mine might start spitting. No, you don't. Jump him, speak. <laughs> Get off of me, you owl hoots. I'll hammer you into the floor. Oh, no, you don't. You're sneaking. Well, I'm going to take care of you right now. Look out, Megan. I'll get him. Hey. Good work, Speed. Yeah, but what are we going to do with him? That's right. If you don't show up back at Angus's ranch, Hickok will be right behind him. Yeah, that's right. I got it. Load this big tub of lard on a pack horse and take him up to the cave on Red Rock. And get rid of him, huh? Eh? Not yet. I'll stay here and wait for Hickok. Then, when I've gotten rid of him, I'll come up and help you put this nosy deputy out of the way for good. Now get going! Say, Wranglers, right off, the first thing you see when you dig into your big yellow box of Kellogg sugar corn pops like I do listen to the show, is a bright, shiny, silvery bag. And it's mighty pretty, too, isn't it? But it's not just for looks. No, sir, that bag is pure aluminum. Keeps your sugar corn pops fresh up to ten times longer. That's why Kellogg sugar corn pops are always fresh. Yep, crisp and crunchy and fresh as an evening breeze. And remember, you can save that bag for your mom to use to keep things fresh in the refrigerator, too. So now you know why new Kellogg sugar corn pops always taste just right. Yes, sir, by Jingo. Downright delicious, out of the box like candy or out of the bowl with milk. So if you aren't enjoying sugar pops right now, load up on those big yellow boxes at the store tomorrow. Then you can enjoy all the Kellogg sugar corn pops you want. Yippee! Sugar pops. They're sugar coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out, pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. <laughs> Back at the Block S Ranch, Angus Gordon, Wild Bill Hickok, and the sheriff waited for Jingles to return with the news of how he'd fared with Tory Macon. But after three hours had gone by, Bill began to get worried. I figure he should have been back half an hour ago, Angus. Well, maybe he dawdled over picking out the pretty shirt, Hickok. I doubt it. Maybe something went wrong. But I can't figure what a... Wait a minute. What struck you, Bill? Angus. Where's Speed Racker, your foreman? Why, he said he was going into town right after you and me sent Jingles off of that marked steer. I'll stake my next three meals on it. He didn't head for town. Come on, my partner's in trouble, and it's my fault. Bill, you ain't saying the Speed Racker's in with me, can you? If he is, he's going to be the sorriest wrestler you ever saw. Come here, Buckshot. Run, boy. Man, I wish I had a horse like that. Good boy, Buckshot. All right, hit those saddles. Let's ride. Hi, Buckshot. Hi. Yeah, oh. There's a steer Jingles was hurting. He's been here all right. Doesn't look like we're very welcome, Hickok. I figured on that. Come on. But, Bill, you ain't going in there. Huh? All right. Jingles in trouble. It's Megan or me this time. All right, Megan, I'm coming in after you. Well, we can give him some of that, too. And I'm going to pay him back for stealing my cattle. Let's go, Bill. We're with you. Stay back, Angus. I'll take this poor cat by myself. You better shoot straight, Megan, or your time's up. Me, I'll leave that gun on the floor. It's just as easy to hit you in the chest as your gun. I start talking and talk fast. Where's my partner? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't stall with me, Megan. Where's Jingle? Never heard of him. All right, if I have to beat it out of you, I will. That's just what I've been looking for. A chance to beat in your head, you nosy stupid. You're going to talk first, Russell. Where's my partner? 
You're not making me talk, old man. All right, maybe this will convince you. Move on. Are you going to talk more or do you want more? No. No, I'll talk. Speed Racker took him up the cave at Red Rock. Speed did it. Racker, huh? Well, I thought so. All right, you're going to show me just where. Come on, get on your feet. All right. Get out there on my horse. Come on, move. Stop, shove it. If anything's happened to Jingles, you're loaded with trouble, mister. Bill, Bill, you all right? Where's Jingles? That's where this Gila monster's going to take us now, Angus. All right, Megan, take us straight to that cave. Hi, Buckshot. Come on, Sheriff. Angus. Faster, Buckshot. Come on. Hurry, hurry. Right up there. Oh, back to the move Go ahead, Megan. Lead the way. Now, now that jughead speed wrecker will shoot first and ask questions later. Well, he can't see us very good in the dark. Yeah, but he might just get lucky and plug me. Stop talking and start walking. We're ready if he starts shooting, Bill. Yeah. I'd like to smoke that butter out. Wait a minute. Hold your fire. If Jingles is in that cave with a racker, you might hit him. You know, that's right. You can talk racker out, Megan. Go ahead before he stop. He can't be shooting. I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you don't. You're walking right up to that cave with me, Megan. Now move. Hey, you out there. You say we are a blast. No, Racker, no. No, no, don't shoot, don't shoot. Who's that? It's me, Megan. I'm coming in. Well, it's about time. I've been sitting here with this ornery elephant for two hours. What kept you? I held him back a bit, Racker. Hickok. Bill, is that you? It's my chance, Hickok. <laughs> Yeah, partner, I got him. You all right, Jingles? Well, I will be when you get me untied. Yeah, I'll cut your ropes loose. There, free. Can you stand up all right? I hope so. I sure don't want to spend any more time in this coyote's den. Well, you sure helped us clean up this wrestling mystery, partner. Yeah, Jingles, you sure did. And I'm mighty grateful to both of you, Mr. Hickok. Ah, Bill, you were right. Wait till I strike a match. There. Look at this pretty red shirt I got on. That varmint right there gave it to me for bringing him that critter. Oh, then that's how I've been losing so much stock over the last two years. Well, you won't be losing any more, Angus. The sheriff will take Megan and Racker away to jail for keeps. Yeah. And of all the rustlers, that just leaves me going free. And, well, you don't have to worry about me no more. My rustling days are over. Why, from now on, every time I see an unbranded maverick... I'm just going to tip my hat and say howdy and pass right on by. I'm getting so I don't like red shirts no more. (laughs) And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Thanks for being with us, folks. We'll be back with you again on Friday. Right. And we have an action-packed story about jewel thieves and guess what? (laughs) A prize pig. Meanwhile, and then I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. It's the greatest new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Sugar Corn Pops are great. So long. See you Friday. Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Hal Gerard, Ralph Moody, Jess Kirkpatrick, Tom Holland, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick Orant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok chases Pettigrew's prize pig. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. And Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal.
the greatest name in cereals, presents... Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of Heather Grew's Prize Pig. Have some fun at breakfast, boys and girls. Have Kellogg's Rice Krispies. They're fun to eat and fun to listen to because they're the talking cereal. When you add cream or milk, they go snap, crackle, pop to tell you how fresh and crisp they are. Next time Mom makes out that grocery list, tell her to remember golden, delicious Kellogg's Rice Krispies. And be sure to stay tuned in so you can find out later in the program how to get an amazing new Aerodoodle rocket launching beanie. Boy, they're sensational. <laughs> Of all those who fought to bring law and order to the Old West, one man stood head and shoulders above the rest, United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok. Hard riding, a fast draw, and a cool head brought Wild Bill and his big deputy jingles through one dangerous adventure after another, just as it did the time they got wound up with Heather Grew's Prize Pig. Now, you see there, Bill, that's the third poster we've seen advertising the big rodeo and stock show over at the county seat. Hey, why don't we go? Because it's 20 miles out of our way, Jingles. Oh, what's 20 miles? It's a day's ride and wasted, for one thing. Oh, you're just plain hard rock stubborn, that's what. Why, doggone it, Bill Hickok, I've seen a Missouri mule that was real easy to manage compared to you. That's so, partner? It sure is. Why, you're getting so you don't know what fun is. All you look for is gun smoke and owl hoot. Sounds like you called it, Jingles. I knew it, I knew it. Now I'll never get to see that rodeo. Maybe we'll have one of our own. Come on, let's see what those shots were about. Hi, about shot. Run, boy, run. Dig in, Joker, let's go. No shots right far away, Bill. No, just down the road here. Bill, it's a stage holdout. Yeah, partner. Faster, but shots. Stretch out, boy. Bill, I don't see no road agents around that stagecoach. No, but you can see their dust going over the hill. We going after them? Let's pull up, see if anybody's hurt. Whoa, but shot. Whoa. What? Ho, ho, Joker. Hey, anybody hurt? We heard some gunshots. Ah, uh, no. No, no one was hurt but those highwaymen. They have robbed me. Quick after them. Go, go, go. Whoa, now, slow down, stranger. Yeah, mister. What'd they steal from you? The blue eye. That is why they hold up the stagecoach. Just to take the blue eye from me. Quick, catch them and bring it back. The blue eye? Bill, what's this gent sputtering about? I don't know. Now, listen, mister. If you don't slow down and explain, we can't help you. Yeah, what's the blue eye? You still got both your eyes. No, not my eye. No, the blue eye. It is the most beautiful, the most exquisite diamond you ever saw. A diamond? Yeah, that is what I say. The most beautiful, the most... Fifteen carats it weighs. A perfect blue-white stone. Well, what are you doing with a big diamond like that? You'd better hurry and tell it, mister, if you want us to do anything about it. Yeah, I will make it very simple for you. Well, good. Then I can understand it. Yeah. I am Eric Ventum. And uh, who is you? Oh, so you finally got around to that. Well, this here is Wild Bill Hickok, and I'm his deputy Jingles. Wild Bill Hickok? Then you are the law. Quick, I tell you. I represent the Crown Jewelry Company of Philadelphia. They send me all the way out here to deliver the blue eye to Mr. John Morris, the wealthy cattleman. I know him. Good. Now, it is for his wife's birthday. Now, I, 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 I do not have the time, and those two highway men have taken it. Where will you be? Where will I be? Oh, I am going to the county seat, Langville. 
But the South's a blue height. It's no use. If we get your diamond, we'll find you there. Come on, Jingles. Let's track those varmints. Hi, Buck Sharp. Hi. Yeah, Bill. Maybe we'll get to the county seat after all. Jump, Joker. Ho, ho, ho. Bill, we're gaining on him. Yeah, but we haven't caught him yet. Dig in, Buckshot. Hey, you! No, I'm gonna ride you down. Get him, Joker. They turned in that gate, Jingles. Let's jump the fence here and head him off. I'm with you. All right, Buckshot. Over it. Jump, Joker. All right, now after him, partner. All right, you two coyotes, pull in those nags. Come and get us, you flat-headed saddle friend. All right, we will. I got this one, Bill. Drag him out of those saddles, Jingles. Get in there, Buckshot. Corral him, Joker. <laughs> no, I'll hoot down your car. You two, you two-legged hyena. <laughs> <laughs> Almost brought them right in that pig pen, Bill. I don't know what you think you're doing, mister, but I'm going to teach you best. Look out, Bill. I got him, Jingle. Take care of yours. Don't Don't worry about this one, partner. This is the last time you'll butt into anything. Maybe. That's the one, Bill. Now, maybe you'll get up and talk some sense now. All right. All right, all right. Uh, I don't know. And both of you back up against that pig pen. Get the gun, Jingles. All right, Bill. I reckon we ought to just take him on into jail. Jail? What are you talking about? He's talking about robbing diamonds from stagecoach passengers. We trailed you from the holdup. Badger, he's got it. Shut up, huh? So, we were right, huh? All right, hand over that diamond, Badger, if that's your name. Uh, you'll have to crawl for it. <laughs> Bill! Uh, Billy, he threw it in the pig's feed trough. What did you do that for, Badger? Quick, Jingles. That pig's going for it. No, I'll get it. No, oh, I'll get it. Bill. Oh, Bill, the pig beat me to it. He swallowed the diamond. Oh, Mark, let him have it. Oh. <laughs> nice work, Mark. I bet that's the first time anybody ever got a chance to get Wild Bill Hickok from behind. Hickok? Is that who it is? Uh, sure, sure it is, Mark. Him and Jingles. I know him the minute they was close enough to see. But they ain't going to give us no more trouble. Come on, give me a hand. We got work to do. This is Charlie Lyon and Slim the Singing Cowboy, folks. Hey, Slim, did you hear about the swell new Aerodoodle beanie cap and rocket planes the Kellogg Company is offering boys and girls? You bet your boots, Charlie. I got one right here in my pocket. Here. Yeah, that's it. It's a bright red and green cap, kids, with a flexible plastic launching tube on top. Put the beanie on your head, fit a rocket plane on the tube that sticks out of the beanie, then blow on the other end and zoom! The rocket plane zips off your beanie into the air. Goes as high as a house, too. Now, all you have to do to get one is send in 25 cents and a box top from a regular or large-sized package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Yes, kids, send the top off a regular or large-sized box of those swell-tasting Kellogg's Rice Krispies and send it to Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois, along with 25 cents. You'll get a complete Aerodoodle rocket outfit, but you better send for yours right away. Now let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. <laughs> When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles scrambled forward on their knees too late to keep the pig from gobbling up the diamond, Badger and Mark attacked suddenly and hit Bill and Jingles over the head. What are you going to do with them, Badger? Forget them for now. They're out cold. we got to butcher that hog and get our diamond back. Badger, who's that shooting at us? Get away from my pig pen, you sneaking varmints. It's the old gent who owns this ranch. That's his pig. Grab our guns. The hot one took him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's yours. Yeah. Did I let the old gent have it? Yeah, he ain't gonna stop us from killing that pig. Hey, he came too close that time. Get away, I said, or I'll blast your heads off. Ah, 
You missed. Bill. Bill. Bill, what happened? Badger. Them lawmen are coming out of it. Come on, come on. Let's get out of here. We can come back for that pig tonight. All right. Bill. Yeah, yeah, Jingles. Hey, Bill, look. They're getting away. Go for Let them go. Come on, All right. I'm coming. You cold cats, I'll get you. Come back here. So, there was four of them. All right, you two. Stand where you are. I missed your thieving partners, but I can't miss you this close. No, now you just hold your horses, Mr. Budinsky. I've been shot at enough tonight to make me downright unreasonable. One move and I'll drill you right between your breakfast and your dinner. Hold it, old timer. If you shoot us, you're going to miss some right surprising news. News? What news? Oh, no, 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 you don't. Just stand still. You can talk from where you are. Now, Dad, burn it, you old goat. Don't you know we're your friends? Don't act like it, trying to steal my prize pig. Oh, steal nothing. Hold it, Jingles. Well, we were Never wasn't. mind. Oh, all right. Now, stop this palaver. Quiet, you old burrhead, and listen to what Wild Bill Hickok's trying to tell you. Hickok? Well, I'll be dog. Imagine finding Wild Bill Hickok in my pig pen. Yes, just imagine, you hungry old porcupine. Now you two back off and listen, Mr. Pettigrew. Rutherford C. Pettigrew, Wild Bill. Well, Mr. Pettigrew, thanks for saving our skin. Those two Jaspers you were shooting at held up a gin on the stage and took a diamond worth thousands of dollars. Diamond? Well, what were they doing here? Well, we tracked them here, that's what. Then one of them threw the diamond in your feet, Troth, and Troth tried to hide it from us. Well, that's what he was trying to do, but your pig swallowed it. Swallowed it? Sure he did. Well, now, ain't that a fine mess of stew? I'm afraid it is. Yeah, if we're going to get that diamond back, it's going to be kind of hard on your pig. Oh, no, you don't. That there's my prize porker. I'm taking him to the stock show over at the county seat tomorrow. He's going to win a blue ribbon for me. Now, hold on. Hold on, on nothing. Ain't nobody gonna lay a hand on that pig till after the judging. And the man that does is gonna get a brisket full of lead. Then we better plan to spend the night guarding this pig pen. Those owl hoots will be back tonight, sure. Well, they ain't gonna have no luck. Dag Nabbit, what's all the fuss about a diamond fur? It ain't worth nothing compared to a prize winning blue ribbon porker like that there pig of mine. Bill, the knights have gone and they ain't showed up yet. Reckon they gave up after all? I doubt it, Jingles. Well, they might just as well have. I'll blast their buttons off to come around here. Hey, that dog must be barking at something. Quiet, Jingles. Bill, I hear horses. And they're coming this way. Looks like we're in luck, Mark. Yeah, Badger. How are we going to do it? It's them. The sneaking pole cat. Shh. Let me handle this. No such thing. I'll get him. Hey. Hey, who's that? I'll show you. No, Pettigrew. Come on, Mom. Try Get up there. Now, doggone it, Pettigrew. You've done it again. Now they'll just keep coming back. Won't do them no good, I tell you. I'm shipping that pig to the county seat tomorrow morning on the train, and I'll be sitting right on top of the crate with a loaded, sawed-off shotgun. Yeah, and they'll hold up the train just like they did the stagecoach. Wait a minute, Jingles. Maybe I've got an idea. What kind of an idea, Bill? We'll fix up two crates. Mm -hmm. Put them in a separate boxcar. I'll ride with the pig, and Pettigrew, you can ride with the other crate. But, but Bill, what are you going to put in the other crate? Well, Jingles, I figured we'd rig up a trap for those two Jaspers. Trick, huh? (laughs) Oh, no, you don't, Bill Hickok. I'm getting wise to you now. You ain't going to use me to impersonate no prize pig in a crate. Not on your tintype. No, sir, rebob, sir. Doggone it. Oh, I'm so cramped up in this crate, I ain't never going to be able to walk again. Shut up and sound like a pig. No, I ain't going to do it. And besides, I'm thirsty. Well, I've got a canteen of water here. But you've got a grunt for it. Oh, now, Pettigrew, don't go teasing me like that. Grunt, I said. Oh, doggone it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Here's your drink. Well, tear a board off so I don't have to drink it through the crack. No, sirree. i got to keep this crate closed up so nobody will get wise there ain't a pig in there. 
Well, don't go away and leave me in here. Now you just shut up your talk and start grunting. Maybe I'll get you a ham sandwich. No, not ham. I don't want nothing that reminds me of a pig. But if you happen to have a roast beef sandwich on you, well, that's different. Hey, hey what's going on? Now we're just stopping to take on water at the junction. Halfway to the county seat. Well, I want to see Bill. I'm so cramped up in here I can't breathe. Now let me out. I gotta get some air. No, sir. You stay there till we get my pig safe at the stock show. Hey, who's that? I don't know. Run, be a pig. <laughs> oh, we got you. Don't move, old Tommy, and you won't get hurt. Come on, Mark. Uh, you ain't taking my pig. Grunt, Jingles. Grunt. <laughs> Hurry, Mark. We ain't got much time to load this crate onto the wagon. Get away from there. I'll bless Shut up, you old goat. I'll fix you right now. Oh. I reckon he won't give us no more trouble. Quick, get the other side of the crate. We've got to get out of here with the pig before the train starts up again. <laughs> Gather round close to the radio, kids. I'm going to tell you about a wonderful surprise the Kellogg folks have for you. Right now, let's everybody sing about those crisp, golden good Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Come on now, let's sing. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best and how. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Now, kids, listen to this. The Kellogg people want to send you a swell new aerodoodle beanie and rocket launching outfit. It's a bright red and green beanie cap that fits on your head. But this beanie has a flexible plastic tube attached to the top. You fit a sleek, sturdy, five-and-a-half-inch rocket plane over that tube on the top of your beanie. Then you blow on the other end of the tube. Zoom! The rocket plane shoots right up into the sky right off the top of your beanie. It'll go way high and come down a loop in the loops and a diving and doing all kinds of fancy shenanigans. Boy, oh boy, it's real fun. So be the first in your block to get one. All you do is send the box top from a regular or large size package of crisp golden Kellogg's Rice Krispies along with 25 cents to Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. Okay, now let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. Wild Bill Hickok's trick to fool the robbers was working fine until the train stopped at the junction to take on water. There, the two bandits broke open the door to the express car, knocked out old man Pettigrew, and made off for the crate containing jingles. A few minutes later, Wild Bill entered the express car and discovered the unconscious Pettigrew. Hey, what happened here? Hey, Pettigrew, wake up. Huh? Get away from that crate. Pettigrew, snap out of it. Where's Jingles? Oh. Hey, what are you doing away from my pig? You were supposed to be guarding him with your life. And you were supposed to be guarding Jingles. Now, quick, what happened? Well, them two varmints broke in here, hit him over the head, and took him away. It was back at the junction. Oh. Well, he said something about a wagon. Didn't you try to stop him? <laughs> Not very hard. As long as they had him in that crate, they wasn't going to bother my prize porker. Pretty slick, huh? If anything's happened to Jingles, you're going to wish you'd never seen that pig of yours. Hey, where are you going, Hickok? I'm going to stop this train and get Buckshot and Joker out of that boxcar up ahead. Then go after Jingles. Well, what about my pig and the diamond? You take care of me safe until those two varmints discover they've been tricked. And I've got to catch up to them before they do. How much farther are we going before we break open that crate? Far enough so nobody will see us butchering that hog. Help! Let me out of here! Pat, what was that? Huh? I didn't hear nothing. Well, I did. That pig was talking. You gone loco. Who ever heard of a pig talking? Help! Let me out of here! There it is again. Yeah, yeah, I heard it that time. Stop this wagon. I ain't have nothing to do with talking pigs. It's bad luck. That's going to be bad luck, all right, for somebody. Stop the wagon. I'm high-tailing the back for town. Shut up. We're going to find out about this talking pig right now. 
Hey, you lop-eared cayuses. Get over there. Come. What are you going to do? Pull over in these trees and break open that crate. And if that talking pig is who I think it is, he ain't going to talk no more. Oh, oh, no. All right, grab that crowbar. Yeah. And we'll uncover your talking pig. Well, no, I ain't hankering for... Stop no... jabbering and do what I tell you. Come on. All right, Badger, I'm doing it. Hey, what are you doing? Ow! Watch out, you'll bust my head in. Ah, so, you and that no-good low-down Hickok tricked me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good trick, too, huh? <laughs> you ain't gonna think so, fat boy. I'm gonna kill you for this. Now, 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 now. You just hold on a minute. Hey, back. Who's shooting? Oh, whoa, it's Wild Bill Hickok, you coyote. Come on, Bill. I've got him cornered. You ain't got us cornered, lot head. Get down, Jiggles. <laughs> Bill, I'm sure glad to see you. These bloodthirsty varmints was gonna butcher me. All right, Jingles. Load them in that wagon, and we'll take them back to the sheriff. I sure will, all right. Now, get in there, you two. All right. So you can drive, right Badger. That's my sixth gun in your neck. All right, get them moving. We've still got a diamond to rescue at the stock show. Move, I said. Go on, Badger. Drive me. All right. Get up, you crowbait. Ha, ha! We going by the stock show first, Bill. It's right here. All right, Jingles. Maybe these Jaspers would like to know what happened to the diamond they stole. I never should have tried to trick you at that pig pen, Peacock. I'd have got away clean. All right, Jingles. Take the reins away from Badger and slow down. Yeah. Whoa. Ho, ho team. Ho, now. Hey, Bill. Here comes old Patty Grew waving a blue ribbon over his head. Yeah. And there's Eric Van Doom running after him. Hey, Patty Grew. Where'd you get the big blue ribbon? My pig won it. I told you he would. Congratulations. Hello, Van Doom. Oh, Mr. Hickok, my diamond. Yeah, what about the diamond? A diamond? Well, now, that's the funniest thing. No sooner than the judge had said that hog of mine was the best in the whole show and give him the blue ribbon, guess what happened? What? Huh? What happened? Why, my pig started squealing real proud. Hmm. And then he started coughing. And he coughed and coughed. All of a sudden, he coughed up this right in the middle of the ring. The diamond. It is mine. I tried to tell you. Give it to me. It is a blue eye. Yeah, Mr. Hickok. Right then, this Mr. Eric Van Doom came running out and claimed the diamond. But I wouldn't give it to him. I saved it for you. But he's right, Pettigrew. It is his. That's the man these bandits stole it from. You can give it to him now. Well, all right, if you say so. You heard him. Give it to Van Doom. I am. Just don't get a burr under your saddle, Jingles. There you are, Duke. You better take good care of it from now on. Oh, I will. Yes, thank you. And thank you, too, Mr. Hickok. I go now to deliver it to Mr. John Morris, who bought it. Thank you. Thank you again. Goodbye. Well, that's that, uh, Jingles. Now we can take these coyotes to jail. Well, now, that's not quite all, Bill. The way I figure it, Petty Crew's prize pig wouldn't have ever got to that show if I didn't save his hide with my impersonation. So I reckon I ought to get that blue ribbon he won. <laughs> It'll look real pretty stuck on my vest alongside of my star. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. We'll be back with you Monday, folks, with another Wild Bill Hickok story. Yeah, and it's a humdinger, too. All about Indians ready to raid and Wild Bill Hickok standing between the warpath or peace. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right, it's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Benny Rubin, Earl Ross, Ed Max, and Jim Nusser. 
Our director is Paul Pierce, music by Dick Orant, story by Larry Hayes. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok leads us on a war path or peace. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Cereals presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of jokes and gun smoke. <laughs> Say, boys and girls, if you haven't seen what your pals here, Guy Madison and Andy Devine, look like yet, listen. You'll find swell, big, actual, real-life photographs of both Guy and Andy right on the front of those big, new, yellow Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops packages now at your grocer's. So hop down and look for them soon. Now, let's listen. <laughs> Their job of law enforcement took United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles into most of the little towns of the Old West. In many towns, they found danger and adventure, but it was in the little town of Black Rock that they found the unusual combination of jokes and gun smoke. Ding, busted, Bill. We come out to the desert where it's supposed to be hot and dry, and what happens? Rains for two days. When it does rain out here, it rains hard, Jingle. Now my poncho's starting to leak. I haven't been so uncomfortable since Joker threw me into that cactus bush. Well, at least I won't have to spend all night picking thorns out of you. Hey, when we get to Black Rock, I'm going to bust out and buy myself a new poncho. That's what I'm going to do. That is, if you'll lend me the money. Will you, Bill? Will you? Huh, Bill? I guess so, Jingles. We'll go shopping at Charlie Nichols' general store, huh? Yeah. Reckon he'd have a poncho. Yeah, Charlie just about got everything. You don't happen to need an anvil or a gold-plated button hook, do you? Well, now, come to think of it, I've always wanted a gold-plated button hook, but I ain't buying it from Charlie Nichols. Why not? Oh, he's the old buzzard that plays practical jokes on his customers, ain't he? Yeah, that's right, but... He's not so old. He's only 83. Yeah, and he's never grown up. <laughs> I hear he set his store on fire seven times, giving exploding cigars to his customers. He does get pretty rough with his jokes. Well, if he tries any of them on me this time, he ain't going to live to be no older than 83. No, you wouldn't hurt an old man, Jingle. No, but just let him squirt water in my eye or put a jack in the box in my bedroll and I'll braid his ears and his whiskers together like a little girl's pigtail. I don't like practical jokes. All right, all right. Now simmer down. Let's prod up these ponies and get in out of the rain. I am jump for cover, Joker. Hi, hi. You won't hit him with a forty-five. Maybe not, but when I get shot at, I shoot back. Okay, partner. Let's see if we can get him before he gets to town and loses us. 
Go after that black horse, Buckshot. Go, Joker. You heard what Bill said. Ha, ha, ha. He went into the livery stable, Bill. We'll catch him. Come on. Bill, look out. Whoa, Buckshot. Whoa, oh, 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 Joker. Bill, he's disappeared. The back doors are closed. He's in there somewhere. How can a horse and rider get out of sight that fast? Hey, you two. Howdy, mister. What's the idea of charging into my livery stable like a troop of cavalry? You'll spook every horse in the place. We're looking for just one horse. A big black. And a bushwhacking snake in a red shirt who's riding him. I don't know what you're talking about. There's been nobody in here all morning except you two compounding in like a couple of Apache braves. Now look, mister. We've got reasons for finding that gin on the black horse, so don't start lying to me. I don't know who you are, stranger, but this is my livery stable. Private property. And when I say I haven't seen anybody come in here but you, that's just what I mean. I'll tell you who we are. Jingles, not now. No. Well, I guess maybe you're right. Sorry we bothered you. Come on, partner. Let's get down to Charlie Nichols' store and get in all the rain. Come on, Buckshot. But Bill... Up, boy. Bill, are you crazy? That fellow was lying to us as sure as I'm a foot wide. Jingles, if he's going to that much trouble, we can be sure our friend in the red shirt is mixed up in something bigger than just bushwhacking a couple of strangers. Let's see if we can find out what it is before we start anything. Howdy, Wranglers. Your old pal, Panhandle Jim, again. Hey, uh, what are you going to do tomorrow morning come breakfast? I know what I'm going to do. Pop right up to the table and pour me out a big heaping bowl of Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Yes, sir, by Jingo. Then I'm going to add a little milk and dig into the most delicious breakfast treat I know of. And notice I don't go putting any sugar on my Kellogg's sugar corn pops. No, sir. Sugar corn pops are already sweetened for you. Tasty, popped-up hearts of corn ready for eating. Out of the bowl or out of the box, you never tasted a cereal so downright good as Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Believe me. You just try a bowl of Kellogg's sugar corn pops for breakfast tomorrow, and you'll be ready to sing this song, too. Yippee! Sugar pops. They're sugar-coated, tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, Boy, they're neat. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Now Sugar Pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles started chasing a rider who'd parted their hair with bullets, they followed him into the livery stable in the town of Black Rock, where he mysteriously disappeared. Now they've ridden to the general store owned by their old friend Charlie Nichols. Bill, we ought to be able to find that black horse and the man in the red shirt somewhere in this town. We'll be looking for him, partner. This place ain't much bigger than a couple of prairie dog holes. I also want to know how our friend in the livery stable figures in the picture. Well, 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 if it ain't Wild Bill Hickok and Jiggles. Howdy, Charlie. I haven't seen you for a long time. (laughs) Yeah, where you been, you old buzzard? Well, I've been right here. It's you two who's been chasing all over the West. And what's the idea of calling me an old buzzard? Oh, because I ain't no mood for your jokes, Charlie Nichols. Uh, One little squirt in my eye or one mousetrap in your cracker barrel, and I'm liable to sit on you. Yes, well, if you'd keep your fingers out of my barrel of crackers, you wouldn't get mousetrapped. Now, looky here. Now, just a minute, you two. Oh. Charlie. Huh? You know everybody in this part of the country. Well, just about. Have you seen anything of a gent wearing a red shirt and riding a big black horse? Yeah, the kind of a gent that takes pot shots at people riding down the trail. No, no, can't say I know anybody answering that description. Why, what's the matter? Somebody figured Jingles was too big a target to pass up? <laughs> this particular fellow was shooting for keeps. The rain hadn't spoiled his aim, we might not be here. And don't say, how could he miss Jingles even in the rain? I didn't even start to say nothing. I'm trying to figure why anybody should be out bushwhacking on that trail. 
Have there been any robberies or killings around here lately, Charlie? You know, it's funny you should ask that, Bill. Why? Well, Sheriff Weaver was shot and killed last week while he was looking into some rustling over on West Mesa. You mean Dan Weaver's dead? Yeah. Oh, Bill, that's awful. It sure is, Jingles. How did it happen, Charlie? Well, I don't ride to know. Some of the folks over on the Mesa started missing some of their stock, and when Dan rode over to investigate, he never come back. Some of the boys found him the next day. Sounds as though somebody doesn't want the law poking into his business. Well, if that's it, he's got what he wants. The sheriff was the only law we had around here. Stop looking at me that way, Bill. I know you and I are the law, too. I guess we'll be staying around here for a while, Jingles. Uh, Would you, Bill? I'll look into this thing, Charlie, and see what I can find out. Oh, here we go again. We're just peacefully riding back home to Abilene. Don't forget the weasel that shot Dan Weaver may be the one who parted our hair with a rifle bullet a little while ago. By golly, that's right. I would like to get my hands on that buzzard in the red shirt. Well, then bring in your things and roost here. I got a couple of extra bunks in the back of the store. Oh, that's right. Nice of you. I guess this is as good a place as any to work from. Well, yes. And I'll, I'll make a pot of coffee and fry some bacon and eggs. Uh, Jingles, uh, help yourself to some crackers out of the barrel there. Well, I am kind of empty at that. Don't mind if I do have a few crackers. <laughs> Just a little something to keep my body and soul together until you get the break. Get me up! Get it out of me! Jingles, calm down. You're not hurt. Oh, it's a wild animal. Get it off! Oh! You jump. That's the funniest thing I've seen in a long time. It's one of Charlie's jokes, Jingles. Oh, is that all? <laughs> it ain't funny, you old goat! Oh, it couldn't hurt you. <laughs> Just a bundle of feathers with a clock spring and a whistle in it. Bill, I ain't staying here with this old coot. It ain't safe. Yes, you are, Jingles. What? We can hide out here and find out what all the shooting's about. make pretty good bacon and eggs, Charlie, and none of them blew up in my face. Yes, well, I don't play jokes on my regular friends, Jingles. Just on the strangers that come through Black Rock. You mean Jingles is still a stranger after all the years you've known him, Charlie? Well, Jingles is different. I like spring jokes on him because he hollers so loud. <laughs> yeah, you'll be hollering if you pull any more jokes on me, you old rooster. You had my nerves cracking and slapping like a cow's tail in fly time. Oh, oh sure. Well, a good laugh keeps you from getting old. Just look at me. Eighty-three, and I still like a good joke. Well, you ain't going to live much longer if you start joking with me again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, doggone. It sounds like I got me a customer out in the store. Now, you just sit there and finish your coffee. I'll be, I'll be right back. Well, howdy there, stranger. Uh, what can I do for you? How's your stock of rifle parts, Pop? Oh, pretty good. Sharps, Winchester, Kentucky, or Remington? Winchester. I broke the lever on it. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I got one here, Summers. Uh, let's see the gun. Here it is, and get a move on, will you? I'm in a hurry. Ah, been firing this today, ain't you? Smells the powder pretty heavy. I didn't ask you to smell it. Now get me the part. Bill, I wonder if that's the gent wearing a red shirt. Let's go find out, partner. Yeah? Ah, let me see here. I got a box of 30 30 parts here, Summers. Uh, don't need a whale bold corset, do you? No, I don't need no corset. Uh, Who are these gents? Well, I don't reckon it's none of your business, but they're friends of mine. Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. That's me, Jingles. Hickok. Uh, well, uh, I've, uh, heard a lot about you, Marshal. Uh, didn't know you was in these parts. Just passing through. And as long as we're all asking questions, what's your name, stranger? Well, my name's uh, Rango, cattle buyer. Looking for some beef I can drive to the railhead. Well, this is good beef country. By the way, uh, is that your horse out in front? Big Pinto? Yeah, that's mine. Hey, how you coming with my rifle, Pop? Well, I don't know whether this is the right part or not. Here, take a look. Uh, let me see. Yeah. That looks like it ought to work. How much? That'll be a dollar and a half. Okay. Here you are. Uh, glad to met you, Hickok. Thanks, Rango. Maybe I'll see you later, huh? Uh, one thing before you go, mister. Yeah? 
What's that? Where can I get a pretty blue shirt like that? Well, I'm afraid you'll have to send to the mail order house in Kansas City. Well, I'm in a hurry. See you gents later. Do you know that gent, Charlie? Nope. Never saw him before in my life, Bill. But I know that horse. Whose is it? Belongs to Jack Blander down at the livery stable. Well, now, ain't that interesting? It sure is, partner. What about Blandon? He's a pretty worthless character as far as I'm concerned. Always fighting and starting arguments. Every time he comes into the store, he wants to know something about the cattle ranches around here. Oh, no, talk, talk, talk. Why don't we go chase somebody or arrest somebody or something? It might be a good idea to find out what they've done first. Bill, the sheriff's dead, cattle are being rustled, and we've been shot at. Ain't that enough? Can you prove who did those things? Well, no, but can't we do something to somebody, Bill? Can't we? Huh? We can start, partner. Come on. Look, Rango, are you sure it's Hickok? Of course I'm sure, but what's he doing here? I don't know, but that hombre's trouble. We've had a sweet little deal with you posing as a cattle bar so you could line up stock for us to rustle. But I don't want to tangle with that star pack and marshal. I shouldn't think so, especially since you gunned down the sheriff last week. You just forget about that or you'll have to wind up eating a couple of slugs yourself. All right, all right. Just, just makes me jumpy to have Hickok in town and asking a lot of questions about what color horse I ride, what color shirt I wear. You were loco to take a shot at him out on the trail. I'm telling you, Blandon, he and that big deputy of his were getting too close to the canyon where, where we're holding those cattle. I thought I could scare him off. Hickok doesn't scare. Yeah, I know that, but I didn't know who it was. Well, the only thing for us to do is move those cattle out on the trail and do it right now. Saddle up. Yeah, sure. I guess you're right. I, uh, I thought we'd be safe when we got rid of that sheriff. Now we got Hickok on the trail. Oh, you jughead. Hickok hasn't caught us yet. We're moving those cattle and cashing them in at the railhead. And what if Wild Bill finds us doing it? Just fixed your rifle, didn't you? Yeah. We've killed one lawman already. If Hickok gets in our way, we'll give him the same medicine. Well, I'll be a whistling young bronc buster, partners, if I haven't been digging into these new Kellogg sugar corn pops in the big yellow box... Lickety split right along. And this is the first time I slowed down to take a good close look at them. Why, well, these new sweeter and crisper Kellogg sugar corn pops look just as good as they taste. Sweet, golden, nugget like hearts of corn, all popped up bright and jolly, just glistening with a sweetening already on them. Yep, by jingo, it sure is easy to see why sugar corn pops are just plum wonderful. Out of the box like candy or out of the bowl with milk. And remember, there's a whole series of Wild Bill Hickok's famous guns on the backs of the new yellow boxes of Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. So look for them down at the store when you go for more Sugar Corn Pops. Yippee! Sugar Pops. They're sugar-coated, tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Now Sugar Pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. <laughs> When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles rode into the town of Black Rock, they rode into gunfire, rustling, and murder. And with information given them by their old friend Charlie Nichols, they've started out to trail two desperate men who will shoot to kill. Bill, you're heading out of town. You ain't going to the livery stable at all. I know it, Jingles. Out here is where the coyote on that black horse took a shot at us. I want to know why. You think maybe he's got something out here he didn't want us to see? That's exactly what I think. And since he didn't know who we were, it must be something he doesn't want any strangers to see. What's that, Bill? Cattle, I hope. Head for that little rise over there. Yeah, I just happened to think of something, Bill. What's that, partner? 
You know, we could get shot at again just like the last time we was out here. I hope we do. Bill, are you local? I don't like being a target for bushwhackers. If somebody takes a shot at us, that'll prove that we're crowding them too close for comfort. Yeah, but isn't there any safer way to prove it? Here we are. Pull up. Move, Buck John. Move. Oh, 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 Joker, easy. Well, what do you know? A nice big herd of fat steers moving out. And look at those two riders down there. One's on a big pinto and the other's riding a black. Yeah, Rango and Blandon. Neither one of them's wearing a red shirt. They can change shirts, but they'll never change their ways. Come on, Jingles, and watch out. They're dangerous. Hot buckshot. Ha! Ho, Joker, you heard what Bill said, and I don't like it. They've seen us, Jingles. Yeah, one of them's pointing a rifle, Bill. Spread out a little so they can't get us both. I don't want them to get either one of them. Pass them off, Jingles. You knocked one off his horse. That's Rango. Blanton's getting away. He's heading for those rocks up there. Let him go, Jingles. Move. Oh, slow down, Joker. With those twists behind him, he won't get away. Let's take a look at the one we dropped. Doesn't seem to be hurt too bad. Howdy, Rango. I didn't think I'd beat you again so soon. Oh, yeah. You're awful good with a six-gun, Hickok. Yeah, you bet he is. That arm will heal up in time for you to stand trial for rustling. And maybe murder, too. You got us with stolen cattle, but I didn't have nothing to do with killing the sheriff. Blandon did that, huh? That's right, and he was going to kill you, too. Now look at him. As soon as I get hit, he runs and hides in the rocks. I don't blame him. I met a lot of no-good rats who wish they could run away and hide from Wild Bill. You're going to have trouble smoking him out. He's a dead shot. Tie this one up, Jingles. I'm going to go see what I can do about our hold-up friend. Down, Jingles. I'm already down. Best thing you can do about him is stay down out of range. Well, if we can't go after him, he can't get out. So make yourself comfortable behind a rock, Jingles. We might be here a long time. Bill, are we going to sit out here all night? Just to let full moon goes down, Jingles. As soon as it's good and dark, we'll sneak up on him from two sides. He'll get one of you for sure. He killed the sheriff before the old boy had a chance to draw. Well, he ain't tried to outdraw, Bill. It can't be done. Quiet. Thought I heard something. <laughs> Nothing but crickets. I heard something up there on top of that cliff. About those rocks. You suppose Blanton's climbing out? Come on. Stay down low so he won't have a good shot. Stop right there, Haycock. Wait a minute, Dinkles. He's still there. Yeah. You make a pretty target there in the moonlight. Both of you. I throw down your guns or I'll plug your fat friend. Okay, Blandon. You've got us covered. You too, big boy. We sure walked into this one, Bill. All right, now I'm coming down. Leave it. We'll track you down sooner or later. You won't be alive to do it. I'm plugging you both right now. Get your guns. Charlie, what are you doing out here? I'm sliding down the cliff. And it ain't easy either when you're 83. Was that you making all that racket? (laughs) Well, sure. And I saved you both from getting plugged, too, didn't I? (laughs) Nice shooting, Bill. He isn't dead, Charlie, but he won't wake up for a long time. You like to scare me to death, Charlie. Uh, what was all that noise? <laughs> Same kind of a joke I rigged up for you in the Cracker Barrel, Jingles, only bigger. <laughs> I dropped it off the cliff right on top of that varmint. Well, you sure gave me a chance to get my gun and drop him. But what were you doing up here, Charlie? Oh, Bill, I've been following you all day. Things get dull in the store. I thought I might get a chance to sneak up and play another joke on Jingles. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure did, Charlie. But any time you want to play jokes that keep me from getting killed, <laughs> that's the kind of jokes I think are real funny. <laughs> and now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Thanks for being with us, folks. 
We'll be back on Friday with another Wild Bill Hickok story for you. Yes, sir, and it's one you won't want to miss. Wild Bill and Jingles tangle with a crazy old coot in a story called The Wild Miller of Paiute Fall. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think sugar corn pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Forrest Lewis, Paul Fries, Paul Richards, and Jack Moyles. Our story was written and directed by Paul Pierce, music by Dick O'Rourke. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok runs into the Wild Miller of Paiute Falls. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. Present Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We've got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap. Crackle and pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of The Wild Miller of Paiute Falls. Close your eyes for 30 seconds. Picture a bowl full of golden Kellogg's Rice Krispies with strawberries and cream. Mmm, sure looks good, doesn't it? And listen, hear that snap, crackle, pop? Well, that's the Rice Krispies telling you how fresh and crisp they are. Yep, Kellogg's Rice Krispies make a cheery, delicious breakfast. Now have some tomorrow. And boys and girls, later in the program, you'll find out how to get the Aerodoodle rocket launching beanie that Kellogg's Rice Krispies has for you. <laughs> Throughout the vast and violent emptiness of the Old West, there was many an outlaw to test the metal and defy the six-gun law of United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok. One of these treacherous desperados plunged Wild Bill and his deputy Jingles into a death struggle with the Wild Miller of Paiute Falls. Confounded, where is that sheriff? Come in. Morning, Mr. Pennyworth. No, Sheriff, it's about time. I sent for you over two hours ago. Well, now, Mr. Pennyworth, I got the whole county to worry about, you know. Early this morning, I got word from old Rusty Jenkins that somebody's been touching up his brand with a running iron. I don't care a hoot who's after his critters. I'm losing gold right out of a stone vault with a guard sitting right there. I know. You told me last week. You lost some more? Yes, I've lost some more. This bank will be ruined if it doesn't stop, and so will all the ranchers who put their money in my care. Now, you've got to find out who's stealing that gold and how and get it back. Well, now, I... 
Well, now I gotta admit, I... That, that infernal racket out there is another thing. Now, why can't you run that crazy Len Creswell out of town? Now, we can't do any work with that noise going night and day. It's a dad blame nuisance, I know, but Lem claims he's invented a gold-making machine in that there mill of his. He's got the property, and he's got the right to do what he wants on it. Well, if it keeps up, the whole town of Paiute Falls is going to be just as crazy as he is. But that, that comes later. What about the thieves? I got to admit, I'm stumped, Mr. Pennyworth. Uh, you mean you're giving up? No, no. Sheriff, those two strong boxes of nuggets and gold dust were entrusted to this bank for safekeeping. Wells Fargo is sending a special stage to pick it up day after tomorrow. Now, hold your horses, Pennyworth. I said I was stumped, but I didn't say I was giving up. Not by a long shot. Well, what are you going to do about it? I've already done it. I sent for the only man I know who can handle a job like this. You ought to be here before sundown. United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok. Hey, Bill, this town of Paiute Falls is bigger than I thought. Sure, Jingles. It's a trading center for all those ranches we passed right in. Hey, what's making all that racket? Hmm. Looks like some kind of a mill up here on the bank of the creek. What do you say we have a look? Yeah. What kind of a mill would be this close to the middle of town? Ooh, but you Oh, 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 oh Joker, stay there now. Well, whatever it is, it sure makes plenty of noise. Well, if that ain't the queerest looking contraption. <laughs> Look at the big water wheel. It's got a furnace, too. I don't see anybody around. Ought to be somebody running it. Hey, there he is, Bill. <laughs> Little old gent with a spiked beard. Funny looking, ain't he? <laughs> yeah. Howdy, mister. Now you get away from here. Not a very sociable gent, is it? Now, just a minute, stranger. Yeah, we don't mean no harm. We just want to... You hear me? I said get away now. Get. Jingles, duck, he's got a gun. <laughs> This is Charlie Lyon and your singing cowboy friend, Slim. Now, Slim here has one of those swell new beanie caps that shoots rocket planes. Is that the same kind the kids can get? Sure is, Charlie. Nifty, huh? Oh, I'll say. It's a bright colored red and green cap, kids. A beanie. Now, on top of the beanie, there's a four-inch tube. You put a rocket plane on the tube and blow it sky high. Now, do you have one of the planes, Slim? You betcha, right here. Say, you get three of them when you get this here outfit, too. Now, you put a plane on the launching tube, you put the beanie on your head, and then on the back of your beanie, you fasten the 20-inch flexible blasting tube and you blow into it. Zip! Up zooms the rocket plane right off your beanie cap. You ever see anything like it? Oh, no. Say, how can a kid get a beanie cap in those rocket planes? Why, shucks, it's easy. All they do is send in a box top from a regular or a large size package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies along with 25 cents. They send it to Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. That's right. Send a Rice Krispies box top and a quarter to Kellogg's. Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. Better hurry. Now let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. Curiosity led Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles to investigate the noisy mill at the entrance to the town of Paiute Falls. But as they approached the mill, a small man with a spiked beard ordered them away, then suddenly opened fire with a six-gun. Hey, you Henry horn toad, what's all the shooting for? That was just a warning, stranger. I don't like to have people I don't know meddling around my mill. Who are you, anyway? Well, when you get the answer, you'll see how lucky you are. Not to have more holes in you than a honeycomb. Well, speak up. Who are you? I'm Jingles, that's who. And this partner of mine is Wild Bill Hickok. Hickok? Oh, my pointed beard. I did make a mistake. 
didn't I? Uh, Mr. Hickok, I am sorry. Uh, come in, come in. Uh, now, now, come over here, gents, and take a look. I'll show you just how this here mill works. Now, this here machine of mine makes real gold. Oh, come on, Bill. i got to see this. Don't get too close to those gears, Jingles. Now, uh, Jingles, uh, you walk right down there in that pan. Now, lean right over close. Yeah, I see the pan. Hey, hey, stop pushing. Jingles, look out. Hey, Bill, my jacket's caught in the gears. Help! Pull away, Jingles. Move. Oh, no, that's the camera. I right those gears. Now, look what you've done to the machinery. You all right, partner? Uh, I ain't sure, Bill. Hooey. I could have been ground to sausage in those gears. Lamb Creswell, you pushed me into them. You ruined my gold machine, you two meddling idiots. You ruined my invention. Take it easy, mister. You can get that timber out. And just take a warning. I'd be mighty careful of pushing people into gears like that. Somebody might get hurt. I didn't push the big tub. It ought to show you that it's kind of dangerous to go meddling where you're not wanted, Hickok. Very dangerous. <laughs> The dad blamed head muddling mystery, Mr. Hickok. Well, let's talk to the banker. Pennyworth's office is right to that door. Bank looks right prosperous, sure. Well, it won't be if we don't get that gold back. It's going to be ruined and half the people in the valley with it. Reckon I better knock. Come in. Come on, Bill Jingles. Sheriff, I wish you'd go on and tend to your business until you can bring me some news. Now, hold the harness on that temper of yours there, Penworth. Well... I got some news in the person of Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. Shake hands, gents. Oh, how, well, are you? how do you do? I brought them over just as soon as I got to town. Yes, well, I, I'm glad you're here, Hickok. And I'm being robbed. Somebody's stealing the gold right from under my... Ah, he knows all that, Pennyworth. I told him. What he wants to see now is your vault. Oh, does he know that Wells Fargo is coming for the gold I haven't got on the day after tomorrow? No, I didn't. That doesn't give us very much time. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, close that outside door, will you, Sheriff? Sure. Yeah, good. Now, this door leads down my private stairs to the... Bill, you... Private stairs, huh? Bill, you thinking maybe... Never mind, Jingles. Oh, don't tell all I know, huh? Not just yet. Yeah, come right on down, gentlemen. Be careful, they're kind of narrow. Yeah, they sure are. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh. Bill, Bill, I'm stuck here. Well, turn sideways and come on down, Jingle. Oh, now you know that won't do no good. I'm the same size sideways as I am frontways. Well, let all the air out and shrink. Oh, all right. (laughs) You see? That works all right now, doesn't it? Yeah. Hope I can get back up again. Uh, here, Mr. Hickok. Here, uh, this is the vault. And Matt here is one of the three guards I keep here around the clock. Uh, Matt, this is Mr. Hickok and Jingles, his deputy. Well, how Howdy, Matt. Uh, tell me, Matt, have you heard anything strange going on down here? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Hickok, nothing. Hey, what's that? The bank is falling in. I'm trapped down here, Bill. We'll never get out alive. Jingles, Jingles, simmer down now. That's not the bank. Oh, no, no, that's that confounded mill of Lem Creswell's again. Oh, <laughs> I guess he's got it going again after all. <laughs> yeah. Well, this ball looks tight enough. Big iron door, solid stone walls. Can't see how anybody could get in there without a key. Well, now, I've got the only key, and I keep it locked up. Well, then you must be taking your own gold. The what? You accusing me of robbing my own bank? Jingles, that's enough. Well, he could, Bill. Never mind. How dare you accuse me? I just said you could. Cut it out, partner. Well, I didn't. How do we know that? Jingles? Oh, well. All right, settle down. We've got work to do. Well, now, I'm glad that stopped. Maybe we can hear ourselves for a change. Strange that we can hear that mill so plain down here under the bank. I'd swear you could hear that ding-busted contraption for 40 miles around. Is the gold kept in the usual iron strong boxes, Mr. Pennyworth? Yes, yes, sir, right in the middle of the vault. Well, we'll do what we can to find the thieves. Where are we going to look first, Bill? First, we're going to get a room at the hotel. Whoever's pulling off this job is too smart to be caught in a few minutes. Looks like we'll be around for quite a while. Howdy, gents. 
Welcome to the Paiute Falls Hotel. I'm Ace Spring, the manager. I'm Bill Hickok, Mr. Frame. This is my partner, Jingles. Well, howdy. Uh, we come to get a room. Well, now, I reckon Paiute Falls ought to celebrate this as a big occasion. Ain't often we get such high and mighty visitors around here. Now, I ain't sure I like your tone of voice, Frank. Never mind, Jingles. Huh. How about a room, Ace? Why, sure, sure, we can fix you up. I even got a room with a bathtub right in it. The King's Suite, we call it. <laughs> There's the key, second floor front. Thanks. Come on, Jingles. You gents here on business or just stopping on your way through? We're here on business and it ain't none of you. Never mind, Jingles. Mr. Frank, you got a right nosy way of asking questions. I'd get over it if I were you. Now, there's some real good advice. Well, I didn't mean to start no trouble. Like I said, we ain't used to such high and mighty visitors here. Kind of hard to know how to treat them. But I figured to catch on. Come on, Jingles. Yeah. I figured to catch on right quick. <laughs> Oh, boy. I sure hate to get out of this water. Just a little while longer, Bill. Oh, mid pleasure and palaces, though I may roam, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. What was that? Uh, some sneaking buzzard threw this rock through the window and it landed right in this tub. Through the window? Uh, see anybody, Bill? No, no, I don't, partner. Not a sign. Maybe somebody didn't like your singing. Oh, now, Bill, you know they wouldn't throw a big rock like this at me just for singing Home Sweet Home. Hey, look. There's a, a note tied to the rock. Let me see that. Oh, it's all wet. Can you read it? Yeah, I can read it all right. Looks like we've stirred up a real hornet's nest this time. <laughs> well, what does the note say? It just says, Hickok, if you want to keep on breathing, you better take that that lard barrel deputy of yours and get out of town. <laughs> Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best, and how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. <laughs> Doggone yes, sirree. They're fun to listen to and fun to eat. When you put the milk on Rice Krispies, what happens? Why, they talk right up to you. Snap, crackle, and pop to tell you how crisp and how fresh they are. Sure they do. And do you know what the big talk about this talking cereal is right now? Well, it's about a whiz of a rocket-launching beanie cap that you can get. Fits right on your head just like any other beanie. Only this one shoots off rockets. It's got a rocket-launching tube on top of it and a long rocket-blasting tube that comes around from the back of the beanie. Now, you fit a rocket plane on top of the launching tube, you blow into the rocket-blasting tube, and zoom up goes the rocket plane. Why, she can go as high as a house, too. Now, you can get all this gear, the bright red and green beanie, the launching tube, the rocket-blasting tube, and three swell, blunt-nosed, sturdy rocket planes. Just send in your name and address on the box top of a regular or large size package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies and 25 cents. You better send now, though, because the supply is limited. Send the Rice Krispies box top and a quarter to Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send now to Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. And now let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. <laughs> While Jingles was taking a bath up in their hotel room, a big rock crashed through the window and landed in the tub. Attached to the rock was a note which told Bill and Jingles to get out of town. Well, Jingles, I think we're coming to the end of the trail. Uh, you caught the thieves? No, but we're getting out of town. Come on. You mean we're running out without doing what we come here to do? Steady, Joker. We're going to leave town and double back. 
I want the coyote that threw that rock in the window to think he scared us out. Well, what's the sheriff going to think? I've told him all about it. Here he comes now. Oh. You still figuring on trying this trick here, Gus? Sure am, Sheriff. Now, you spread the word around that we left real sudden-like. Uh, sure. Uh, uh-oh. Here's the man to spread it. Hey, Haycock, what happened to that window in your room? Somebody threw a rock through it. A rock? What for? To tell us to get out of town, and that's just what we're doing. And who's going to pay me for my window? Find the man who threw that rock and ask him for it, Ace. Yeah, and give him our regards. So long. Bye, Sheriff. Adios, gents. Sorry we couldn't catch them gold thieves, but it ain't the first time some varmint's got away with something like that. That's right, Sheriff. See you on our next trip through. Come on, Jingle. Hi, my son. Hi. Jump, Joker. You heard what Bill said. Ho, ho, ho. All right, Jingles. This is far enough. Well, what are we doing back at Lamb Craswell's mill? Quiet. Just keep your ears open, partner. There's something fishy about this mill, and I mean to find out what it is. <laughs> then he told me about the rock coming through the window. Me, mind you, Lamb. Bill, listen. Yeah. Keep back in the shadows. I don't care what you say, Ace. Hickok's not scared that easy. Oh, he was scared stiff. Got out of town, didn't he? Yeah, but that don't mean nothing to me. Ah, come on, quit your worrying. Nothing can happen now. Well, Jingles, that's just about what I figured. Now to get the proof. Proof? What are we looking for, Bill? I'm not quite sure. I've got an idea we'll find it down on the bank of this creek. Come on. The moon ain't given enough light to see much, Bill. Watch your head there on that water wheel. Yeah. Here, come around this way. The water's shallow here. That water under the wheel sure looks deep and black. Yeah. Yep. There it is, Jingle. What? Right there on the side of that bank. A nice little tunnel. Come on, we're going in there. Oh, doggone it, Bill. You had me in more tight places today than I've been in for a month. Duck your head a little. This is bigger than I thought. I can almost stand up. And the floor is hard packed. This is where Lim was getting the rock for his gold mill. Well, you ain't saying that you really think he got gold out of that mill, are you? No, but I think I'm going to show you where he did get it. You mean he had... Ow! Oh, my shins. I quit. I've just been beaten and battered for the last time. I'm through. Shh, quiet, Jingles. Oh. You'll ruin everything. A quick light of match. Let's see what that was you stumbled over. Oh, well, all right. Bill, it's an iron box. Yeah. And now we'll see what's inside. That's it. Look, Bill. Gold. Nuggets and gold dust. That's right. And look. A crowbar with a hook on the end of it. Oh, wait till I light another match. Now, look at the end of this tunnel, Jingles. You see anything strange? Uh-huh. It's just a stone wall. That's right, partner. A stone wall, just like we saw in the bank vault. And right down here... Yeah, there it is. A big stone that's loose. All they had to do was drag that stone out. And then they took the hook and pulled the gold box out and took the gold out of it. Then they put it back, and the mill made enough noise to cover up the whole operation. Mighty slick. Yeah, Hickok, mighty slick. Bill, that light, I can't see a thing. It's right in my eyes. You don't have to, Jingles. That's our friend from the hotel, Ace Spring. And I'm here too, Hickok. I just want you to know that, because you didn't heed my warning to stay away from my mill. Yeah, now you're going to die under that water wheel, both of you. You ain't taking that gold back. Do you want the gold, Ace? Here's a whole handful of nuggets. There you are. Get him, Jingles. No, oh, you don't. Shoot him, Ace. I can't see where I'm shooting. I'm getting out of here. No, Ace, wait a minute. Grab Lim, James. I'll get this other coyote. All right. You ain't taking me, Hickok. Your aim's mighty bad, Ace, and that's going to be your tough luck. Now I can see you. You forgot I could see it, too, huh? And now I'm going to finish you off, Frank. <laughs> <clears throat> Hickok, Hickok, is that you? Yeah, Sheriff. You're just in time. Is it, is it them, Sheriff? Did they catch the thieves? Well, we sure did, Mr. Pennyworth. Oh. One of them's laying there with a print of Bill's fist on his nose, and here's the other little varmint. Let me down. Let go of my beard, you big ox. There you are, Sheriff. You can take them both and lock them up. Yeah, but what about my gold? Did you find that? It's all back in the tunnel. 
Quite a stunt they had running the mill so loud they could steal the gold. You mean that tunnel runs into my vault under the bank? It sure does, Mr. Pennyworth. But you'll have all your gold for that Wells Fargo shipment. See, Mr. Pennyworth, I told you, Hickok's the only man I knew who could uncover this mystery. Hickok and Jingles, that is, Sheriff. (laughs) Well, I'm I'm mighty obliged to you both. No, oh, Bill, I almost forgot. There's one more thing I gotta do. Wait a minute, Jingles. What are you doing with that lever? I'm starting that mill. That's what I'm doing. Turn that thing off. Oh, no, Bill. Just you wait a minute. There she goes, wide open. Look at it. Tearing itself apart. Now, what you going to do that for, you big hyena? Well, you're out of business, Slim Creswell. People of Paiute Falls wanted some peace and quiet. Now they'll have it since your mills tore itself down. For that, they can thank Wild Bill Hickok's deputy Jingles. That's me. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Have a good weekend, folks, and we'll be back with you on Monday with another Wild Bill Hickok story. Yeah, and it's all about a little bitty tyke who leads Wild Bill into a whole pack of trouble trying to find the secret of Arroyo Diablo. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Uh, Right, it's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Rice Krispies are great. So long. Uh, See you Monday. (laughs) Yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Clayton Post, John Daner, Herb Vigran, Lou Marcel, and Dusty Walker. Our director is Paul Pierce, music by Dick Orant, story by Larry Hayes. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok learns the secret of Arroyo Diablo. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Present Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you. From that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of a shot in the dark. Say, boys and girls, for a rootin' tootin' snack or a rip-snortin' breakfast treat, new Kellogg sugar corn pops in the big yellow boxes just can't be beat. Yes, new sugar corn pops are now sweeter and crisper than ever before. So make a date right now to get Kellogg sugar corn pops at your grocery store and join in the fun. Now, let's listen. <laughs> It 
wasn't often that United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big saddle partner and deputy Jingles wandered as far west as California. But once, a letter from an old friend, urging them in the name of right and justice, turned their faces toward the setting sun and a crashing adventure which began with a shot in the dark. Who, Buckshot? Who, Joker, who? Hey, Bill, what are we stopping at this big stone gate for? Is this Don Gasper's ranch? No, Jingles. This is one of the missions. It's the best place to get information when you're riding through California. They'll all be asleep at this time of night. Mm, it's not that late. Just gets dark early this time of the year. Bill! Stand where you are, Americanos. Don't reach for your guns. Bill, I can't see anybody. Do nothing. Don't listen to me. Well, go ahead and talk, you night-crawling sidewinder. Listen to him, partner. We know who you are, Senor Hickok. And you're stuffed pig of a partner. Stuffed pig. Hold it, Jingle. But Bill! Quiet. No, oh, I... Now listen to this warning. Don Gaspar de Salva has sent for you. We know that, too, you see. You will go there. But if you do this thing that he asked you to do, you will never leave California alive. You seem mighty sure of yourself, Buster. Yeah, when you're hiding in the shadows behind the gun. Do not try my patience, senores. Or I will have you shot right here at the mission gate. No. Don Gaspar's rancho is two miles down the road. Mount your horses and go. But say nothing to him of this meeting. Go, Andale. Come on, Jingles. Steady, boy, Chuck. Doggone it, I wish I had that smooth-talking salamander out in the open. Now, whoa, Joker. Our time will come, partner. Do not waste so much time. Andale. I don't know who you are, mister, or why you go to all this trouble to warn us. But whatever it is Don Gaspar wants from me, you bet he's going to get it. Come on, Jingles, let's ride. Hi, Buckshot. And the next time you cut our trail, you'd better come a-shooting. Go, Joker. Ho, ho, ho. Ah, you do not know what joy it brings to my heart to welcome you and Jingles to California, Bill. I'm glad we can make it, Don Gaspar. Yeah. Pleasure's all ours, I reckon. Come, come, sit down. My house is yours. I am sorry that you are not here for supper, but it will I will take care of that right away. On the moment of Maria! Maria, food for our guests, eh? There, Maria will bring something to take the weariness of the road from your stomach. Well, now, that's what I call a real welcome. After what we've been through in the last... Jingles. Huh? What is this you mean? You have made troubles on the way to my rancho? Well, I reckon you it might... It didn't amount to very much. Oh. I'm more interested in hearing the reason you sent for us. Certainly. But first, here is Maria with the food for you. It is not much, I'm afraid. Bill! Would you look at what Don Gaspard calls not much? Roast pig, lamb, a half quarter of beef. Stand back, boys. Give me room. <laughs> Go right ahead, mi amigo. Tomorrow there will be more. Now that my partner's fixed up, Don Gaspar, suppose you tell us why you sent for it. It is very simple, Bill, yet terrible. Monterey is seething with intrigue and plotting. Plotting against who? The Americans. As you know, I was one of the United States' strongest supporters when California became a state of the Union. That is well known, Don Gaspar. But now there is someone, one of my own countrymen, who is a traitor to us all. He is trying to stir up a revolution among the hot tits. He wants to take California away from the United States again. You called on the Army for help? See, si. Twice they have sent trusted lieutenants to live here in my house and search out the truth. What happened? In each case, the morning after each one arrived, he was found in his bed, dead, with a knife in his back. With a knife in his... Bill, Bill, uh, Don Gaspers just went and ruined my appetite. I don't... Bill, at the window behind you. A masked man. Viva Californianos! Death to the Americanos! Howdy, cow folks. Here's your old bunkhouse buddy, Panhandle Jim. Hey, you know, uh, when one of those range riders say they want something done pronto, that means right now. Well, that word is a good one for these wonderful new Kellogg sugar corn pops. Yes, sir, by jingo, because new sugar corn pops are already sweetened for you. Ready for eating right now. Pronto. 
Dig into the big yellow box and eat sugar pops by the handful, just like candy. That's the way I enjoy them during the show. Then come morning, you just pop sugar pops into a bowl with milk for some mighty fine breakfast chow. And no sugar needed, because Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops is the new two-way cereal that's already got the sweetening on it. Ready for downright delicious enjoyment anytime, both ways. Out of the box or out of the bowl, pronto, you're in for real fun with Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Yippee! Sugar Pops. They're sugar-coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Shortly after Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles arrived at his rancho, Don Gaspar de Salvo was telling them of the renegade revolutionary when suddenly from behind Bill, a knife sang through the window and sank deep in the table in front of him. Bill, that knife missed your ear just that much. I heard it whisper, Jingles. This may be our man, Don Gaspar. Come on outside. He goes this side of the house. Wait a minute. Who's that? Where? Hey, hey, it's a girl. <laughs> Pretty, too. Oh, that is my daughter, Conchita. Conchita, my dog. Come and meet our guests. Uh, You reckon she saw anybody, Bill? We'll soon find out. Conchita, our house is honored by the presence of Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles. Uh, Gentlemen, my daughter. Welcome to our house, gentlemen. Thank you, Miss Conchita. Uh, Howdy, ma'am. But, Papa, why are you all running around the hacienda like game roosters seeking some prey? Someone threw a knife through the window at Senor Hickok just now. Did you see anyone? No, Papa. I saw no one. And I have been standing on the front terrace waiting for Pedro. Oh, here he comes now from the other side of the house. Oh, that young burro coming to call on you again tonight? See, si, he is. And what is wrong oh. with Pedro? Oh. His ears are too long. Oh. Ah. Hey, Conchita, my lovely one. Has been a lifetime since I have seen you. <laughs> a lifetime, pa. You saw her this afternoon. Papa, do not be unkind. See, si, Papa, do not be unkind to Pedro. Uh, senores, my name is Pedro Martinez. Well, howdy, Pedro. Looks like you and your pop-in-law are getting off to a bad start even before the wedding. Evening, Pedro. Did you see anything of a masked man running loose out here? A masked man? No, no, senor. But then I just arrived here. Uh, w- what is this uh, masked man? Oh, he's some owl hoot that's asking for trouble, throwing knives at people. Ah, uh, knives again, eh? Don Gaspar, it's a surprise to me that you are able to find Americanos who will stay at your hacienda since what happened before. They have very bad luck here, very bad indeed. Oh, Bill, I sure am ready for a good night's sleep. Oh, we had too much happen in the last few hours for me. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Jingles, but we're not going to sleep just yet. Oh, now, Bill, I can't keep my eyes open another minute. I just got to hit the feathers. Maybe a little reminder will help you keep your eyes open. A reminder? Yeah, about the two lieutenants who were found dead with knives in their backs. That was right in this room, partner. In this room? Well, now that you put it that way, I reckon I'm not as sleepy as I thought I was, huh? What are we going to do? Put a couple of dummies in those two beds to look like us sleeping. Then we'll go out and look around. Look around? For what? The moon's coming up. As soon as everybody's asleep, I want to see if that knife-throwing coyote left any tracks under that window. No. Hey, the moon is coming up. Huh. Looks real pretty out there. Hey, and look, Bill. There's Conchita and that young Pedro walking in the garden. Now, ain't that a sight to make your heart beat faster? You're going a little soft, aren't you, Jingle? Oh, but, Bill, there ain't nothing sweeter than young love. <sighs> uh, makes me remember back to the time I was all sugared up about a little gal named Maud Muddyweather. <laughs> I called her Muddy for short. She was the prettiest little thing I ever did. What 
is the matter, Pedro? You have not held my hand. You have not kissed me once since the others have gone in the house. I have not, Conchita. No, you have not. Ugh. All you do is walk and walk around the garden and look at the windows of the room where Senor Hickok and his friend are staying. Well, that is strange to you. It is very strange. Always when there are Americanos visiting my father, you become like this. Why is it? Well, it's just that I'm, I'm, I'm jealous of you, my lovely Conchita. So jealous, in fact, that I would like to kill them just because they are near you. Oh, I had no idea that you loved me so much. Oh, see, Jule, I do, I do. Then why do you not ask my father to set a date for our wedding and take me to your own hacienda? Oh, no, Conchita, please. I'm not ready yet to marry you. Oh, so you are not ready, yeah? Well, maybe then I shall never be ready to marry you. Oh, no, Conchita, please don't talk like this to Pedro. I will talk as I please to one who talks like a mule. You are a feather-headed fool. Now go. No, Conchita, my alma. Don't, don't, don't go in the house, please. I am going into the house. Good night and goodbye. Oh, no, please, Conchita, wait. <laughs> <laughs> the pretty little pigeon is a spitfire, my capitan, no? But it's not the funny joke that it may seem to you, Sanchez, my friend. Why, mi capitan? I thought it very funny. No longer will I be welcome here in this hacienda. Don Gaspar likes me little enough as it is. Do you not see what that means? Oh, now I understand. Mm. That is not so good. That's right. And we can wait no longer. Knowing what we have planned for tomorrow night after the fiesta, there is only one thing to do. What is that, mi capitan? The Senor Wild Bill Hickok and the Senor Jingles must die tonight. Now, sit your knife, Sanchez, and come with me. Quickly. Now, Sanchez, this is the room where the Americanos are sleeping. See, si. we shall kill the Senor Hickok and Jingles in the same way we did the lieutenants, huh? That's right. Quieto now. Make not a sound. You will give the signal when you are ready? See, si, I will. Now, Sanchez, are you ready? Si, mi capitan. I am ready. Then kill them. De to the Americanos. Bueno, bueno, Sanchez. It's enough. They are dead. Jingles! Senores, why you do not answer me? Are you in there? Papa! Papa, what is the matter? Why are you pounding on Senor Hickok's door like that? They did not come out to breakfast. I fear for them, my daughter. Then why do you not go into their room? See, I must. Oh, let us hope they have not made the same fate as the two army lieutenants who slept in this room. Papa? Conchita, they are dead. They have been stabbed in their sleep. Those knives. Oh. Those knives. What is it, my daughter? What about those knives? I, I have seen such a knife in Pedro's stash, Papa. Conchita, my daughter. Control yourself. What is it? Conchita, if you know anything, for the love of heaven, tell me what it is. Daughter, speak. Stop this nonsense. Tell me what you know at once. Wranglers, the reason I'm always toting two boxes of Kellogg's sugar corn pops in my saddlebags is because sugar corn pops are tasty, golden, puffed-up hearts of corn that are already sweetened for you. And you eat them up two ways, out of the bowl and out of the box. Yep, by Jingo, sugar pops are sweet, crisp, and crunchy, and mighty good for growing young ranch hands. So it's a good idea for you to always keep a couple of those big yellow boxes handy, too. Because your mom's going to let you eat all you want. Like I say, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops is a two-way cereal. And it's got plenty of vitamins and food energy. So don't go fussing with only one box of Sugar Pops. Tomorrow, sure, ride for the store and load up big on those big yellow boxes of Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Then you'll have plenty around for breakfast and snacks. Yippee! Sugar! 
sugar pops. They're sugar coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out, pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. <laughs> On the morning following Pedro's visit to Wild Bill Hickok's room with his treacherous compatriot Sanchez, Don Gaspar and Conchita found two inert figures in the beds of Wild Bill and Jingles. And to his horror, the two deadly daggers still stood as messengers of murder above the bedclothes. At the sight of the daggers, Conchita became hysterical. Conchita, you must stop this. I'm sorry, my father. Now, that is better. If you know something... Tell it to me immediately. Papa. Papa, I love him. It is very hard for me to say this. Pedro, the puppy you think you are in love with? What has he to do with this horrible thing? I don't know. But I have seen such a knife as this are in Pedro's sash. He carries it all the time. Pedro? Oh, but that is impossible. That moon calf? Well, I shall soon know. I will find him right now. I'm afraid there would be a real uh, big mistake, Don Gaspar. Oh, Bill Hickok. Jingles. Howdy and good morning, Don Gasper and Miss Conchita. Papa, they are not dead. Oh. See, Pedro has not killed him after all. No, senorita, but it was no fault of his. But wait, those two figures in the bed, oh, who slept there? Who is it that is dead? Well, Don Gasper, we've been kind of leading a double life. Them's our other cells in the beds. They're dummies. Uh. Oh. oh, that is wonderful. Then no one is dead. Now we can all go to the fiesta tonight. Conchita, how can you talk like this? She's right, Don Gaspar. We will all go to the fiesta tonight. Hey, Bill, that sounds real good. Everybody wears masks at the fiesta, don't they? You see me, but why? We want to let Pedro think he has killed us. Sure, Bill's got it all figured out so he can catch the whole shebang at once. But, Bill, a mask ain't going to do much good when it comes to hiding me. <laughs> do not worry, Senor Jingle. Papa will find you a beautiful Spanish costume with a big red sash. No one will know you at the fiesta. And I will teach you to do the Spanish fandango. It will be fun, no? No. I mean, see. I mean, yes. <laughs> I ain't sure what I mean, except that it's going to be a hot time in California tonight. Fiesta, here I come. Hop the molly. <laughs> In your jingle, you're a wonderful dancer. <laughs> Am I, Miss Conchita? You most certainly are. You learned the fandango poof, just like that. Poof, huh? Come on, let's go show Bill. Oh, here he is. Hey, Bill, look at what Conchita taught me. Hold your voice down, Jingles. Your Spanish get-up won't do you any good if anybody hears that squawking of yours. Oh, uh, Bill, Miss Conchita says I'm real good at the fandango. Well, that's fine, Jingles. But don't forget to keep your eyes open. Don't forget that tonight is a night of... Bill, I have just heard some terrible news. News? What is it, Papa? It is Pedro who leads these bandidos. Even this minute, he's planning to take Monterey tonight. Is it really Pedro? That's right. Then why did you not arrest him this morning? Because I want to catch all his confederates at the same time. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, that is what I've been waiting for. It's about time, huh, Bill? What is it, Bill? Now, listen to me quickly. Pedro is planning to start the fight from the beach. There's a shipload of rifles coming ashore in small boats. Wait. Very soon now. Yeah, there goes Pedro. Oh. And now you can see the other men drifting away from the dance floor. Oh, see, I can see them. They, they go toward the beach. But what can we do? Now, don't worry. It's all set. Bill and me rode all over the country last night, rounding up a bunch of fighters, and we got the army, too. That's right, Don Gaspar. Now comes the payoff. Come on. We're heading for the beach. Bill, I don't see nothing yet. There is a ship riding at anchor out there. That's the one, all right. Hey, Bill, listen. I hear somebody rowing boats ashore. Yeah, partner. Time's getting short. Where are the traitors and Pedro? 
Hmm. There they are now. You're sure the Army has this place around? Now, don't you go worrying about the Army, Don Jasper. And Bill gives a signal, you'll hear more doggone racket than you've ever heard in your life before. Quiet now. Listen. They've beached the boats, Bill. All right, be ready. Here goes. Who is that? Pedro, he's been betrayed. Senor Hickok, I cannot tell you how great I am that you have come to our assistance. You have done a great service to California. Oh, see. And my heart is sad that you and Jingles are leaving us so soon, Wild Bill. Yeah, I'm kind of sad too, Miss Conchita. Well, partner, we never like to leave our friends, but Pedro is not the only troublemaker in the West, and we've got a lot of ground to cover. See. Si. Go, you must, I know, but with Pedro and his band of traitors in jail. You leave behind you a peaceful California. Vaya con Dios, amigo. So long, Don Gaspar, Miss Conchita. Come back to see us, Bill. And Jingles, I will always save one wonderful dance for you at fiesta time. Well, thank you, Miss Conchita. I'm going to practice up on that there fandangle you taught me and spring it on them pretty little sage hens back in Kansas. <laughs> Thanks to you, from now on, old Jingles is going to be Don Juan of Abilene. <laughs> and now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Matheson and Andy Devine. That's our story for today, folks. We'll be back your way again on Friday. And, boy, we've got a pip of a story for you. Wild Bill not only fights some gun slicks, but a blinding snowstorm and blizzard. It's called Rescue at Salvation Spring. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Right. It's the great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Sugar Corn Pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Lillian Bayef, Tony Barrett, Harry Bartell, Ted DeCorsia, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Ron. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok attempts a rescue at Salvation Springs. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. is Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereals. Snap, crackle, and pop. Kellogg's 
Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of Rescue at Salvation Springs. To brighten up the day, boys and girls, start out with some fun at breakfast. Have Kellogg's Rice Krispies. They're fun to eat and fun to listen to because they're known as the talking cereal. They're so fresh and crisp that when you add cream or milk, they go snap, crackle, pop. So next time Mom makes out that grocery list, tell her to remember to get golden, delicious Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Then you'll be all set for some real fun. In the pursuit of his duties as United States Marshal, Wild Bill Hickok had almost as many battles with the elements as he did with outlaws. Wind and rain, the scorching heat of the desert, and the blinding blizzards of winter served to make his job even tougher. It was a Nevada blizzard that gave Bill and his deputy Jingles a real battle the time they fought through blinding snow toward... Rescue at Salvation Springs. Jingle bells, jingle bells, a jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. <laughs> Wish I had one, doggone it. You're a little late for Christmas, Jingles. Oh, no, I'm not, Bill. I'm early. All this snow makes me start thinking about Christmas next year. You'd better start wondering about getting to Battle Mountain today instead. Oh, what's the matter? Your compass froze up on you? No, but it's already afternoon. We'd better head to the left and try to find some shelter in the foothills. Oh, now, Bill, if we if we do do that, we'll never get to Battle Mountain. We can hold up till the storm blows over. And spend another night freezing to death? I'm getting tired of this. Can't see ten feet ahead of me. The wind is cutting through me like cactus needles, and I'm hungry. If we can make it to the foothills, we can find shelter. Oh, but Bill, doggone it. I wish all the outlaws would go south for the winter like the birds do. Then we could be comfortable while we're chasing them. Hold it, Jingles. Who, watch out. Who, I... Oh, Joker, who? What are you stopping for? Quiet, listen. I thought I heard shots. Oh, now you didn't either. You're always looking for trouble, and I ain't... Hold it, partner. Now, listen. I still don't. There. That's it, Jingles. Three shots. Somebody's in trouble, all right. Well, they sure picked a fine time for it. It came from the left. Come on, let's go. Hi, Bacho. Hi. Well, I hope it was just somebody inviting us to dinner. Come on, Joker. Don't get too far away, Bill. You could lose me easy in this blizzard. You sure we're headed in the right direction, Bill? I think so, Jingles. There's that signal again, Bill. Yeah, it's not far away now. Boy, I wish I could see through this snow. Reckon somebody's hurt or just got lost. I don't know, but they need help. That's a cinch. Listen, everybody, I hear horses. Hey, Bill, that's a girl's voice. It is horses. Help! This way! You're right, partner. Howdy, folks. What's the trouble? Yeah, we heard you shooting. You lost or something? We sure are, mister. Then you talk to him. Gents, we're sure glad to see you. I'm Jed Thomas. Folks elected me the leader of this here wagon train. This here's my daughter, Jeannie. Howdy, Miss Jeannie. Howdy. I'm Bill Hickok. This is oh. my deputy, Jingles. Wild Bill Hickok. I never thought when I shot that rifle up in the air, I'd bring down the best scout and guide in the whole West. And the second best. <laughs> I never thought when we heard those shots that, well, that they'd lead us to the prettiest little red-headed gal I ever saw. Did you, Bill? No, partner. But let's find out why Miss Jeannie fired those shots in the first place. Yeah, Jed, you said you was the leader of these wagons. Yeah, but it don't do much good to be the leader. If you don't know where you're going, you can't do much leading. I'll tell you, Mr. Hickok... We had a guide. His name was Bart Maddox. But last night, he disappeared. Sure did. Ran off clean and left us stranded. 
Didn't he say where he was going? Yes, he said he was going to get help, but he hasn't come back. Well, we've already busted up all the furniture and used it for wood, but that's all gone. Animals ain't had no forage for three days now. Well, Bill, I never heard of a guide with any sense running off and leaving six wagons full of settlers setting out in a snowstorm. Well, you folks can't stay here any longer. You'll all freeze. Come on, let's get those wagons moving. You know where to take us, Mr. Hickok? Battle of the Mountains, about 15 miles ahead. We can try to make that, but it's going to be rough going. Hey, hey, what's going on here? Who said we're going anyplace? Well, now I figured the only way to save so your you wagon... you figured, eh? Then who are these Jaspers? What right they got buttoned in? Mark Maddox had to stay right here till he got back. Now, Curly, simmer down, will you? This here's Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy, Jingle. Yeah, and what's got into your craw? You want to die out here? Who said we're going to die? I've heard plenty about you, Hickok. Always buttoning into folks' business. Now, just a minute. We heard a distress signal. Yes, and I fired those shots. Curly Gavin, you mind your own business. Mr. Hickok's trying to save us from freezing to death. You had no call to fire, no signal. No call? Are you crazy? Our food's almost gone. We burned our furniture. We're lost in a blizzard. Our animals are starving. And you say I've got no call. Yeah, that's what I said. You're a meddling, nosy... Now, lady. hold on, girl. Mister, I've heard just about enough yeah, of you. Yeah, you can't talk to Miss Jeannie like that. I'll take him. Bill, you get away from me, you big ox. I'll let you have it right between the eyes. Look out, he's got a gun. Down, Jingles. This is Charlie Lyon and Slim, the singing cowboy, friends. Say, uh, what's that string around your finger for, Slim? Well, it's been there for nigh on to 40 years, Charlie. My ma put it around there one time when I was a kid, so I'd remember to bring home some Kellogg's Rice Krispies. I just left it on there so I'd remember to keep buying them. Well, that's a good idea, Slim. You can't beat the clean, sweet, fresh taste of those Kellogg's Rice Krispies. And they're lots of fun to eat, too. That's right. That's because they're the talking cereal. You pour some milk or cream on them and just listen to them snap, crackle, and pop. Well, it's their way of telling you how fresh and how good they are. When you're eating Rice Krispies, you just can't help singing. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Yes, sir. Pour some milk or cream on Kellogg's Rice Krispies, folks, for a great big golden bowl of fun. Then listen to those little cuties go snap, crackle, pop, telling you how crisp and good they are. Why don't you take a peek in the pantry right now? And if you're running low on Kellogg's Rice Krispies, remember to get some tomorrow at the grocer's. Okay? Well, now let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. While Bill Hickok and Jingles were just about to try to lead the stranded wagon train of settlers on through the biting blizzard toward Battle Mountain, when Curly Gavin interfered. At the height of the argument, Gavin pulled a gun and fired point blank at Jingles. Oh, thank goodness, Mr. Hickok. You shot his gun out of his hand. Now get back on your wagon, Gavin. Pull in behind the rest. All right, Hickok. But you're going to regret buttoning in on this deal. You ain't heard the last of me. You try anything else, you sneaking weasel, and you ain't heard the last of us neither. All right, Jed. Let's get all these animals on their feet. Hook up your oxen and get these wagons moving. You bet we will, Mr. Hickok, right now. You see to the rest, Dad. I'll hook up our team. Oh, now, Miss Cheney, that ain't no work for a pretty little gal like you. I'll hook up your team for you. <laughs> but thank you, Jingles. But watch that off mare. She's kind of skittish. She's apt to kick. Oh, no, she wouldn't kick me. Would you, girl? Ha <laughs> ha, steady now. Whoa, girl. Look out, Jingles. Whoa, girl. Jingles, you poor man, are you hurt? <laughs> well, just my feelings. That little filly is right unsociable. <laughs> you just don't know how to handle her. I'll finish the job. Now, whoa, Nellie. Yeah. Yeah, that's a girl. Ah, uh, you about ready to move out, Miss Jeannie? Yeah, Bill, we're ready. Bill, well, nobody else is around, I gotta tell you something. All right, Jed. Well, all these folks figuring I was their leader, giving me their money to keep for them. 
There's over five thousand dollars in gold in my wagon. Five thousand dollars? Holy horny toy. Quiet, Jingles. Dad thinks maybe Bart Maddox was trying to get that gold, Mr. Hickok. But we've been watching it too close. He knew about the gold, huh, Jed? Yes. Dad trusts everybody, so he told Bart about the gold when we hired him as a guide. I reckon that was my mistake. Nobody else in the outfit trusted him, except Curly Gavin. Him and Gavin was thicker than thieves. Me. I've been waiting to get a chance to talk to you. Uh, oh, oh, I wondered where you got to. What happened? How come the wagons are moving? Uh, old Jed's meddling daughter got it into her fool head to fire a signal for help. So what? Ain't nobody for miles around to hear. No? Well, it wasn't ten minutes till two Jaspers come storming in on horseback. And guess who they was? Don't play games with me, Curly. Spill it. Wild Bill Hickok and that fat deputy of his jingle. Hickok and jingle? Yeah. And they got the whole train moving. Why didn't you try to stop them? I'd done all I could. Well, it wasn't enough. Uh, of all the blasted luck. At the right things was going, the whole bunch would have been froze by tonight. We could have had the gold and nobody the wiser. Yeah. Well, Hickok ain't going to stop me. Uh, what are you going to do, Bart? You stay with the train. Do everything you can to delay him. Fake a breakdown. Do anything. I'll dog along out of sight and try to get a clear shot at Hickok. Hey, hey, that's a good idea. If you can pick off them two lawmen and Jed, we might get that gold yet. Don't worry. We'll get it. If this storm keeps up to give me a chance to stay hid, I'll plug Hickok and his partners so slick they won't know what hit him. Now get going. Bill, we ain't making much headway against this storm. I know, Jingles, but we've got to keep them moving. Hey, Jed, tell Curly Gavin to pull his wagon to the head end. It's his turn to lead a while. Up, Jed. That Gila monster. Yeah, I'd just soon him be up there in front where we can watch him, Jingles. Say, you better go back and try to cheer up some of these people. You mean make them laugh, Bill? Sure, if you can. Their spirits need a lift. Sure, I'll make them laugh. <laughs> I'll start with Miss Jeannie. Okay, I'll go help Jed. We gotta keep moving. Howdy, Miss Jeannie. How you coming? All right, I guess, Jingles. But it's so cold, I'm about to freeze. Cold? Cold, you say? Why, shucks, Miss Jeannie. This ain't cold. No. Why, it's nothing to what it was at the Battle of Vicksburg in 63. We had a real cold snap then. You did? Sure did. Why, for a week it was so cold that every time the company bugler tried to blow a call, sound froze right up in the horn and nothing came out. Oh, oh now, Jingle. Well, it's a fact. No. Then when it warmed up, that bugle thawed out and all those bugle calls started coming out at once. Oh, no. <laughs> Made such a oh. racket it scared the bugler so much he deserted. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Miss Jeannie, it sure is good to hear you laugh like that. I reckon you're about the bravest and prettiest little gal I ever saw. Oh, Jingles, I'm not brave at all. I know we'd all have frozen to death if you and Wild Bill hadn't heard my signal. Oh, here come Dad and Bill. Dad! Oh, Bill, Dad been shot at you. Easy, Miss Jeannie. Okay. Bill's got your paw. Oh, no, he won't. Here, Jingles. Give me a hand with Jed. Uh, sure, Bill. Here, let's get him up in the wagon. I'll lay out the blanket. Oh, Bill, is he dead? No, Jeannie girl, I'm not dead. Oh. Just got me on the side. Oh. There you are. Now, let's see about that slug. Bill, it went clean on through. Oh, thank goodness for that. Dad, does it hurt much? It's not too much, honey. Now, Bill, I reckon I'll go out and hunt down that bushwhacker. No, Jingle, you'd be lost in ten minutes. But who's low down enough to shoot old Jed? I know. I know who'll be mean enough to do it. Yeah, Miss Jeannie, I reckon you're right. That dry gulch in Jasper's name is Bart Maddox. But, Bill, if he's riding along out there hiding in the storm, he can watch his chance and pick every one of us off one at a time. <laughs> Oh, Bill, we ain't never going to get to Battle Mountain at this rate. I'm afraid you're right, Jingles. But there's no shelter any closer that I know of unless... Unless what, Bill? Hey, wait a minute. What's going on up there at the head end? I can't see a thing through the snow. Come on. 
Get up there, Buckshot. Come on. Come on, Joker. Move, boy. Bill, I hope there ain't no more delays. These people are going to die if we don't get... Bill. Bill, look. Curly Gavin's wagon is jackknifed across the trail. Yeah, I see it, partner. Move, Buckshot. Move, boy. Stand up. Oh, oh, Joker. What's the matter here? Gavin, you low-down good-for-nothing. How come you let your wagon jackknife like this? I, I couldn't help it. I can't go no further. I can't do it, I tell you. I'm plumb give out. You don't look in such bad shape to me. No, you don't. You look a darn sight healthier than most of the folks. Well, I ain't. We're all gonna die. You two brought us nothing but bad luck. Come to think of it, Gavin, you do look right healthy. Well, I ain't, I tell you. I think I'll have a look in your wagon. You might just... Oh, no, you my... don't, Hickok. Grab him, Jingle. I got him, Bill. Now, come here, you. Get away you. from that wagon, you two-bit law tramp. You can't talk to Bill like that. I'm gonna sit on you. Oh, now, go ahead, Bill. Have a look in that dat burn wagon. I am, Jingle. Huh. Guess what I see in here. Oh, what is it, Bill? A charcoal stove and a sack of charcoal. Two baskets of extra provisions he was hiding. So you, Henry Coyote, no wonder you look so healthy. Bill, the side winner, could have held out for a week after all those other folks were froze to death. Yeah, Jingles. And I guess that's just what he and Bart Maddox had in mind. Let him up. You nosy mavericks will regret this. You said that before. Now get up and get your team moving. Straighten that wagon out fast. Yeah, you heard, Bill, fast. Uh, Jingles, take that stove back and give it to Miss Jeannie. She can heat some snow water to Bay Jed's side. Yeah, and I'm taking her this food, too. Gavin can live on his fat till we get him to jail. All right, everybody. Get moving again. Who move out! <laughs> Bill, what's made you go loco? Just keep digging down through that snow, Jingles. If you beat me to solid ground, let me know. Well, what do you hope to find down at the bottom of this wash? I'm not sure. I'll tell you if we find it. The wagon train is going ahead. You can't go very fast. We'll catch them. Well, uh, I hit rock if it's any use to you. Rock? Good. Come on, let's have a look. Doggone it, Bill Hickok. What are you up to? Jingles, look at this rock. Yeah, I see it, and I'm not interested. Well, you better be. It's just a hunk of old limestone. What's there about limestone to get all lathered up about? Limestone is a deposit. You know what that means? It means nothing, less than nothing. You're wrong, Jingles. It means everything. It means that we've got one last chance to save the lives of these folks in this wagon train. One last chance. Well, now, ain't that just too bad? Bill. Don't move. I'm right behind you, Hickok. Reach up and catch snowflakes, both of you. Sorry to keep you from being the big hero to that wagon train. But I got other plans for them. Bill, I reckon that's Bart Maddox behind us. And you're betting right, fat boy. Bart Maddox. Was real handy you're getting away from the wagon train like this. Now, nobody will ever know what happened to you. Except maybe the coyotes and the timber wolves. <laughs> It's pound leather, cowboys. We're going to the R.K. Ranch for one of them good old western breakfasts. And the cookie's got the best brand of cereal this side of the Sierra Madres. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Come on, let's sing while we ride. <coughs> Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies mean more fun and pep, so come on, gang, let's get in step. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Add milk or cream, that's all you do, then listen to them talk to you. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. These Kellogg's Rice Krispies will talk you right into having another bowl, kids. So you'd better bring along an appetite to breakfast. Now get a package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies tomorrow, and you'll see what I mean. Now, what do you say? Let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. Bill, 
and Jingles had just discovered limestone in the bottom of a wash by the side of the trail. It seemed to mean a real chance to save the wagon train of the settlers to Bill. But just then, the voice of Bart Maddox threatened them from behind their backs. Bill, he's going to kill us. Then those folks will have nobody to protect them. That's right. You catch on quick. And he's got us right close together. That makes it real easy for him, partner. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, quit spreading out around. You know what? Man, I... Let me burn it. Hey, Bill, grab that gun. He's I... going to shoot again. Oh, you low down. That's it, Bill. Oh. Give it to him. That ought to take care of him for a minute, Jingles. Yeah, now, what was it? You ain't you... going nowhere. I got you covered. Bill, it's Gavin. Down, Jingles. Woo. We. That was close. Bill, did he get you? No, Jingles. You all right? Yeah. Then let's gather these two coyotes up and get back to that wagon train. Yeah, at least we won't have to worry about them no more. And Jed still got the gold in his wagon. That's right, partner. But now we've got plenty more to worry about. We've only got one chance in 50 of saving them now. Dad's getting weaker. He can hardly stay in his horse even if he is tied in the saddle. Bill, you sure you were right in leaving all the wagons and heading the folks up this wash? I think so, Jingles. But we've been going for two miles or more and there still ain't no shelter. I, I don't think we can go much farther, Bill. It's getting late, Bill. Seems like the dark will catch us in another hour or so and... Well, look at that fog bank ahead. I've been looking for that fog to set in, Jingles. That's the only hope I have. What do you mean by that? First you dig up a piece of limestone, and then you make us abandon all the wagons, and now you're looking for fog banks. Bill, I ain't so sure about you. What is it, Bill? Tell us. Just a little farther, Jeannie, and I'll know for sure. Hey, the fog's clearing. Yeah. Jingles, Dad, look through the fog. Well, glory be. Do I actually see green grass, or am I losing my mind? You see it, Jeannie. Yeah, I see it, too, and it's getting warmer. Come on, hurry. I I don't believe it. Bill, what is it? How'd you know about this? It's hot springs under the ground, Jingles. They're called Salvation Springs. I've never been here, but I heard about them. Then, then... And that's what you meant by the limestone. The, the hot water overflowing left the deposit of limestone on the floor of that wall. Hey, help, help, what's that, Bill? Hold it, Jingle, hold it. Don't stampede. That's oh. just a geyser. Oh. Isn't it beautiful? A wonderful fountain of steam. What oh, this beautiful valley of green grass. A oh, wild bill. Uh, say, Bill, uh, uh, didn't you tell me once that if we dug straight down far enough, we'd come out in China? That's right, Jingles. Why? Well, that geyser of hot steam shooting up out of the ground looks like a big spouting tea kettle. If there's a Chinese cook alongside of that tea kettle, I'm going to start digging right now. Somebody hand me a shovel. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Thanks for joining us today, folks. We'll see you on Monday with another Wild Bill Hickok adventure. Yes, sir. And our story's a rip snorter. Wild Bill and Jingles get all wrapped up in the mystery of ghost town gold. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right. It's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Marion Richmond, Paul McVeigh, Frank Gerstle, John Stevenson, and Dusty Walker. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Round. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok searches for Ghost Town Gold. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it.
Entertainment Serials present Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pop! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of the monstrous toothache. Say, boys and girls, when you get that old hunger for something good to snack on, just dig into that big yellow box of new Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Corn Pops are wonderful any time of day, right out of the box, just like candy. Because Sugar Corn Pops are crisp and crunchy, already sweetened for you. So join in the fun. Now, let's listen. Throughout the gun smoke and violence faced by United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big trusted deputy Jingles, there was always a streak of grim humor. One adventure in particular later brought a smile to those who heard about the case of the two saddle partners and the monstrous toothache. Get out of here. Oh, no, Jingles. You said you had a toothache, so I brought you to the dentist. Now you're going to get it fixed. Oh, no! Ow! Uh, I'm not going in that office, no, sir. My tooth feels much better now, Bill. Doesn't hurt at all. Not even a little bit. Let's go, huh? Not till Doc Wayne takes a look at it. No, oh, but Bill, I... Oh, oh, oh. Be right with you, Jens. Oh, don't hurry. We were just leaving, Doc. All right, Fudge. You better go meet you more. Tell her not to worry about the bill. Sure, I'll tell her. We ain't got much money since my dad was killed. I understand. Hey, mister, you gonna get your tooth pulled like I did? Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. I just come in here to get out of the rain. <laughs> That's real funny, mister. Funny? Why? Because it's not raining outside. Ain't it? Oh, well, that's fine. Then we can go now. Come on, Bill. Let's... Oh, I'll bet you're scared of the dentist. You ought to be brave like me. Yeah, I heard how brave you were. You sounded like a coyote with its foot in a bear trap, and beside your face was dirty. Oh, I know it. Looks like you've been playing in a coal mine. I have. We got a big cave on our ranch. All right, Fudge, get along. Don't start making up any more of your stories. Yeah, go on home. Now. Huh? Hey, we got to go too, Bill. Oh, no, you don't, partner. Well, we have got a cave, and it's got coal in it. Dad told me so before... Before... Go he... on and find your mom, Pudge. Now beat it. Well, all right. But we have. Huh? That little button's got a mind of his own, ain't he? <laughs> got an overgrown imagination, that's what. I heard him say his dad was killed. How'd it happen? I don't know anything about that. You come to see me about a toothache? My partner did. No, I did not. Well, make up your mind. I'm a busy man. Well, you go right ahead with anything you got to do, Doc Wayne. Uh, we'll be moseying right along. All right, Jingles. But don't you say anything about a toothache to me from now on, or I'll get Joker to kick it loose for you. <laughs> Jingles, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, why, Bill? Now, you just give me one little old reason why I should be ashamed of myself. Acting like a baby in the dentist office. Well, that's enough reason, but, oh, let's forget it. Let's just forget all about it, huh, Bill? But you made me ride 20 miles out of our way to get here to Black Butte just to find a dentist. Well, Bill, it's a nice little town, ain't it? Sure, it's hey, a nice... Hey, you two jaspers, wait a minute, Ben, burn it. Wait up, I see. Now, who's that doing all that yelling? Hmm. Don't know, Jingles. Hey, got a star on his vest. Must be the sheriff of Black Butte. Why, gee, hoss of hat. I've lived all these years without shaking hands with Wild Bill Hickok, and I ain't living another day without doing just that. Put her there, Wild Bill. Howdy, Sheriff. Meet my pal, Jingles. Hmm. 
I ain't never heard of him. Oh, doggone it, everybody says that. Well, it's so, ain't it? No, sir, I've been Wild Bill's saddle partner and deputy for long enough for folks to have heard about me. Well, uh, you ever heard of me? Peter Penrose? No. Well, <laughs> it makes us even. Shake, Jingles. <laughs> Howdy, Sheriff Peter Penrose. Welcome to Black Butte. Welcome to Colorado. Welcome, I see. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Sheriff, but my partner and I were just leaving Black Butte. Leaving? Not by a mother's tail, you ain't even. No, sir, either. Not by a coyote's calling high wind, you ain't getting away from Black Butte until you've solved an unsolved crime I've got awaiting for you. Oh, no, now you're not dragging us into any unsolved crime, Sheriff. Come on, Bill, let's hightail it for somewhere else. Now, hold your horses here, Jingles. Hang right on to him tighter than a hack of more than a rodeo outlaw digging a cowpuncher's grave. I've got business for you and Wild Bill. What kind of business, Sheriff? Murder. M-U-R-D-R, that's what. As mean a low-down, cold-blooded killing as you was ever mixed up in. <laughs> Howdy, partners. This is Panhandle Jim, your old sidekick. And if you could see me now, the way I sit back and enjoy my sugar corn pops during the show here, I'll bet you'd say, there's one happy wrangler. <laughs> and you'd be right, too, by Jingo, because new Kellogg sugar corn pops in the big yellow box are better than ever. Golden hearts of corn, all popped up bright and smiling, crisp and crunchy, all ready sweetened for you. Delicious, right out of the box, just like candy, or when you chow down at breakfast in a bowl with milk. And no sugar needed, mind you. The sweetening's already on sugar pops. Why, you never tasted anything so downright good as Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Yes, sir, I'll stake my new ten-gallon hat you'll say you never enjoyed better eating. Now, listen. Yippee! Sugar pops. They're sugar coated, tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are cops. When Jingles lost his nerve in the dentist's office upon hearing young Pudge Taylor's screams, Wild Bill Hickok decided to leave Black Butte. But no sooner were they down on the street than Sheriff Peter Penrose cornered the two lawmen and insisted that they help him run down a cold blooded killer. Ten minutes later, they were riding out of town at a breakneck speed. Come on, Sheriff. You ain't told us nothing about who got murdered or when or what for. Why, you ain't told us nothing. Plenty of time for talk when we get there. When we get where, Sheriff? Here. Whoa, Penelope. Whoa, Whoa. 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 Pull up, Jingle. Whoa, Joker. Whoa. Doggone it, you'd think we was being chased by a 20-man posse. Well, now that we're here, where are we? <sighs> Now, get down off them crow baits and I'll show you where you are. Now, don't you go calling Joker crow bait, you old billy goat, or I'll pull your beard off clear up to your ears. Never mind, Jingles. Oh, well, I'm getting tired of being hauled and pushed and run all over the country by this old brother to a blue-nosed mule, Bill. Oh, hit your fuss, you big windbag. And listen to what I got to tell you. Windbag? Now, that's all I'm going to take for... Jingles? From... Well, it is. That's enough. Oh. There it is, Bill. There what is, Sheriff? The spot. Spot? What are you talking about? The spot where Monty Taylor was killed. That's what I'm talking about. Shot in the back he was. In this cave. Monty Taylor. Yeah. Taylor? Bill, ain't we heard that name someplace before? It seems I heard it today. You did, Jingles, in the dentist office. Doc Wayne's patient. Sure, that little button's name was Pudge Taylor. In relation, Sheriff? Yep. Monty was Pudge's paw. <laughs> Bill, I knew it. Now, now they're shooting at us. Well, don't pay it no mind, Jingle. No mind? What do you want me to do? Just stand here and get shot at? <laughs> That's Lydia. She's a rotten shot. Just the same. I think we better get back in this cave, Sheriff. That last slug went through the top of your hat. <laughs> it did? Oh, doggone it. She never got that close before. I'm going down there and give her a lesson on what for her. Hey, what are you doing up there in my cave? 
There's Pudge now. And Bill, it's the same little fella we saw in Doc Wayne's office. Well, let's have a talk with him. Hi there, Sonny. Hi. Hey, you're the same two I saw at Doc Wayne's office. Did you get your tooth pulled, mister? Huh? Oh, no, I was, uh, no. Oh, let's talk about something else. <laughs> I was right. You were scared to, weren't you? Oh, now you be quiet. Ask him some questions, Sheriff. Questions? You gonna ask some more questions, Sheriff Penrose? Gee, I, I told you all I know. Was that your mother shooting at us just now, Pudge? No, Ma's down at the house talking to Mr. Ponder, the banker. She is? Well, if she... Hey! If she didn't do that shooting, somebody else did as sure as thunder. Come on, hurry. We better get back in the cave or, or down to the house or, or someplace quick. Whoa, Penelope. Whoa, 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 This is where I live, Wild Bill. Whoa, Buckshot. Whoa, Joker. Whoa. Thanks for letting me ride on Buckshot behind you, Wild Bill. Gee, where do I tell Ma who you are? <laughs> you run in and tell her we're here, Pug. I sure will. Yeah, he sure is a cute little button, ain't he? He's a good boy. Yeah. It's a crying shame some low-down sidewinder shot is, Paul. Say, Bill, uh, I've been wondering what the banker uh, Dave Ponder came to see Liddy about. Might try asking him, sure. Yeah, I... Yeah, might have said. Sure, ask him, Sheriff. That's the way we find out a lot of things just by asking. Now, don't you get smart with me, you big... Now, one. hold it, you two. Howdy, ma'am. Well, Mr. Hickok, this is a downright pleasure. What put you so excited about your being here? I can't hold him on the ground. <laughs> did he say anything about me, ma'am? He sure did. You must be jingled. <laughs> yes, ma'am. See, Bill, Pudge thinks I'm a big man. You sure are. <laughs> We're at Council East. <laughs> now you stop that, Sheriff. Oh, hello, Sheriff Penrose. Come in, gentlemen. I think I can scare up some coffee and a piece of cake. Cake? Hey, Bill, did you hear that? Can I have another piece of cake, Ma? Please? Uh, uh, can I have some, too? Hey, now you two kids cut it out and mind your manners. Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, may I have some cake, too? Bingo. Please. <laughs> Well, Mr. Hickok, I don't know what else I can tell you that I haven't told the sheriff. Well, you'd better tell him about the day it happened, Lydia. While Bill might get some other ideas out of it. Well, Monty, that was my husband's name, Mr. Hickok. Yes, I know. Monty went out to the cave early that morning. It was three months ago this morning. He was so excited about it, he couldn't stay away from the cave to do his work with the horses. Oh, why did he get so excited about the cave, Mrs. Taylor? Well, that hurt tell it, Jingles. Oh, sorry. Why, it was because he had found coal back in the hill. Gold? No, coal. Oh. The first to be found here in Colorado. Well, what was so exciting about coal? Jingles, if you don't shut your yap, I'm going to shut it for you. No, oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Taylor. I was just wondering. It's all right, Jingles. <laughs> Not many people could understand about it, but Monty said it was wonderful. Mm. He talked about the railroads coming through and all the engines burning his coal and people heating their houses with it during the cold winters up here. Did anyone else know about it? Not that I know of, unless it was the banker, Dave Ponder. Well, I thought he was here, Lydia. He was, but he left just as you come in. Well, we didn't see him. He went out the back door and said he didn't want to be in the way of company. Go on about the cave, Mrs. Taylor. Well, there wasn't much more... Pudge went up with Monty to the cave that morning to play. He was as excited as Monty was, although he didn't quite know why. Pudge played in the cave a lot? Yes. Well, he kept himself covered in coal dust. I couldn't scrub it all off. I felt so bad when he had to go to the dentist because he looked so dirty, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> yeah, I told him to go wash his face when I saw him up in the dentist office. Had Pudge been going into town before the day your husband was killed? Oh, yes. And Doc Wayne had been working on his teeth for two months. I'd gone to get him that morning Monty was killed to take him in, but Doc Wayne was out when we got there, so we come back home. Pudge went back up to the cave to play, and that's when he found Monty dead. Oh, now that was a dirty shame. Yes. I don't think he'll ever really get over it. Uh, Mrs. Taylor, I wonder if you'd tell us what that banker wanted here today. Dave Ponder? Why, he's made an offer on the ranch. I've been having such a hard time running it since Monty's death. Did you ask him to make an offer? Well, no, but he's known what trouble we're in. He's been very kind. 
Well, surely you don't suspect Dave, Mr. Hickok. I don't suspect anyone, Mrs. Taylor, unless I find good reason. Sorry to have asked so many questions, but the sheriff and Jingles and I are after your husband's killer, and we'll run him down before we're through. I hope so. I think we better get back to town now. Goodbye, ma'am. We'll let you know what we find out. Thank you. Bye, Sheriff Penrose. Bye. Come back to see us, Jingles. Yeah, we will, ma'am. Say goodbye to Pudge for us. I will. Bye. All right, gents, let's head for town. Get along there, Buckshot. Hi, boy. What are we going to do in town, Bill? Yeah, Bill, uh, you get any ideas? Maybe. When we get to town, Sheriff, I want you to send a telegram for me to my Abilene headquarters. Well, what you got up your sleeve for us to do, Bill? Plenty, partner. While the Sheriff sends that telegram, I'm going to call on that banker, Dave Ponder, and you're going back to the dentist to have that tooth fixed. What? Oh, no, I'm not. No, sir, Reed. You couldn't pay me to get in that dentist chair. Not on your tin type. I ain't going to do it. I just ain't going to do it, and that's final. <laughs> Dad, blast it, you big ox. Quit squirming. You make more noise than a kid. Well, you don't have to grind that doggone tooth clear down to my gizzard, do you? You ought to be glad I ain't going to pull it. Now, you look at here, Doc Wayne. You ought to figure out some way to fix teeth so they won't hurt. Ah, that don't hurt you. I can't feel a thing. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. that's real funny. You all through, ain't you? I got to get back to Bill. Yeah. Folks told me who you were. I saw you and Hickok talking to the sheriff. Got big business around Black Butte? Uh, we sure have. We're going to catch Monty Taylor's killer. Monty Taylor's killer? Hmm. Now, that'll take some doing. He's been dead for three months. Nobody's got any idea yet as to who shot him. Wild Bill Hickok has. He has? Who's he think it was? No, he didn't say, but I know Bill Hickok like I know the back of my hand. When he gets that look in his eyes, watch out. And I saw that look when we was riding back from the Taylor Ranch this afternoon. You did? I sure did. Bill knows who it is. Huh. I'll bet my silver spurs on it. Hey, what are you doing? Just getting ready to finish up that there tooth of yours. Can't sit there jawing all day. I got other patients, you know. Well, don't make it hurt so much this time. All right, I'll just pump this chair up a little in the back here. So I can see better what I'm doing. Well, don't you sneak up back of me with that drill where I can't see you. Don't worry. This ain't no drill. Oh! Now, you big lump of lard, I'll drag you over to this closet and lock you up while I go figure out a way to get rid of Wild Bill Hickok and his big ideas. <laughs> Yippee, Wranglers. We're sure getting some real two-gun excitement with Wild Bill and Jingles, aren't we, though? Yeah, you betcha. And listen, if you want to get in on some mighty good two-way eating fun, just make sure you got a good supply of Kellogg's sugar corn pops on hand at your ranch, like I do. Because once you dig into new Kellogg's sugar corn pops, you'll start eating them up fast and often. Out of the box like candy and out of the bowl with milk. Yep, by Jingo, they're so downright delicious, you just can't help going after those sugar pops lickety-split. So if you don't have any in your pantry right now, better gallop down the store first thing tomorrow and load up big. Just look for those big yellow boxes of even sweeter Kellogg's sugar corn pops, and you'll be all set. Yippee! Sugar pops. They're sugar-coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are pops. Jingles did a lot of talking in Doc Wayne's dentist chair, and it must have been a little too much, because Doc sneaked up behind the big deputy and slugged him over the head, then went out to find and get rid of Wild Bill Hickok. 
A few minutes later, Bill walked into the office of Sheriff Peter Penrose. Oh, Bill. I've been waiting for you. I've leaned far to answer that wire back in record time. And guess what it says. Let's see it. Don't have to see it, I can tell you. But wait, uh, uh, what about the banker, Dave Ponder? You talk to him? Yes, he's open and above board about making an offer for the Tillerant. Says he can make her a good deal. Now, let's see that wire. Now, just simmer down and I'll recite it for you. It says, your man answered the description of escaped convict from territorial penitentiary, was a blacksmith and a coal miner in Pennsylvania, and practiced little dentistry on the side. Coal miner. Dentist. You get it, Bill? That's right, Sheriff. Doc Wayne. Bill, out the window. That was Doc Wayne, Sheriff. Come on, let's go get him. There he goes, Bill. Cross the street. Oh, missed him, Dad Burnett. Come out and open, you hyena. I wonder where Jingles is. That's right. He went up to get his teeth fixed. And to get some information. Get out, Sheriff. He's behind that rain barrel, Bill. Spread out, Sheriff. Maybe we can take him alive. Yeah, but he don't want to be took alive. Clear the streets, everybody. Get inside somewhere. That Doc Wayne's a killer. Watch out, Sheriff. He looks like he's going to run for it. Well, I hope he does, he yellow back coyote. No, Pete's still behind that barrel. I'm going to smoke him out. Hold it, Sheriff. All right, Doc Wayne, you've had all your chances. I'm coming after you. Bill, Bill, don't just walk out there like that. Come on, Doc, get out of that hole. You better stay back, Hickok. That empties your gun, doesn't it, Doc? Looks like you're up against it now. You'll have to catch me, Hickok. Bill, he's running away. Shoot him. He won't get far, Sheriff. Come on. That's it, Bill. Get him. You're not going anywhere, Doc. Let go. Oh, you still got yeah. some fight left. Killer? Yeah. And I'm going to spit your nose all over you. I, <clears throat> you. I doubt that. Killer. Hey. Uh. Uh. Ooh-wee. That did it, Bill. He won't get up till day after tomorrow. Oh, yes, he will. I'm uh, packing him off to jail right now. Hey, Wild well, Bill, how were you fighting Doc Wayne? Because he's the man who killed your father, Budge. Is that true, Bill? Didn't Doc Wayne kill Monty? That's right, Mrs. Taylor. Oh, thank goodness you caught him. Well, and to think he was doing Pudge's dental work. Well, he never did much, except the time he pulled the wrong tooth. He wasn't really a dentist either. He did that just to find out what he could about quick ways to make money out here. What do you mean by that, Bill? He knew that people talked to a dentist like they do to a barber, so he figured it was a good way to get the lay of the land. Oh, then that's how he found out about Monty's coal mine. From Pudge. Yeah. He's been a wolf in sheep's clothing for the whole time he's been in Black Butte. The black-hearted snake. Well, just the same. I wasn't afraid of him like Jingles was. Me? Afraid of that, Jasper? <laughs> I wasn't either. I was just suspicious of him all the time. You were, partner? Why, sure, Bill. And when you sent me back up there to get my teeth fixed... I was just about to put the handcuffs on him when he sneaked up on me and hit me over the head. Huh. If it hadn't have been for that one little thing, I'd have had him sure. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's our story for today, folks. Join us again on Friday, will you? Yes, sir, because Wild Bill and Jingles tangle with two of the most dangerous outlaws of the Old West who call themselves Thunder and Lightning. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Bombs. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Sugar Corn Bombs are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Virginia Gregg, Ken Christie, Jess Kirkpatrick, Jeff Silver, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce. Story by Larry Hayes. Music by Dick Orange. 
This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok meets thunder and lightning. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. And Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. Cereals presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap. Crackle and pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Thunder and Lightning. Step right up, folks, and see the show. What's that, Sonny? Is that a bowl of golden nuggets? No, sir, that's a bowl of golden Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the amazing talking cereal. Just pour some milk or cream over them, and these little marvels speak right up with a snap, crackle, pop, and tell you how good and fresh and crisp they are. Get Kellogg's Rice Krispies at your grocer, son. They're fun to listen to, fun to eat. <laughs> The greatest threat to the development of the West in the early days was the bandit clan. Battling these bandits were a handful of courageous lawmen, the most famous of which were United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his faithful deputy Jingles. And two of the most dangerous outlaws these saddle partners met had teamed together calling themselves Thunder and Lightning. Already, I don't like this town of Alkali Springs. Well, prod up that pony and let's find out what's going on. You reckon it's got something to do with the sheriff's telegram? Might have. We'll soon see. The shooting stopped. We got here just in time. Yeah, Jingles. Hey, look up the street. Hey, everybody's hit out in a big circle around the jailhouse. Hey, Bill, that shot comes from inside the jail. I thought so too, partner. (laughs) Maybe the sheriff was shooting it out. That don't make sense. He sent for us to help him out. Oh, but Joker. Oh, 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 Joker. Oh. Yeah, you're right. So what do you say we leave our horses here and scout around a little? Well, let's be doggone careful how we stick our noses back out in the street. Yeah. Maybe I'd better show my hat around the corner first. No, no, no. Wait. You got a brand new hat, and I already got two holes in mine. I'll do it. There. Three holes. Something doesn't add up around here. Let's go around the back of the hotel and sneak up on some of those gents running the jail. Come on, partner, but keep your eyes open. Keep my eyes open? I'm as pop-eyed now as a newborn calf an hour late for its supper. Shh, Jingles. I want to surprise this gent. Yeah, he's looking towards the jailhouse. Don't turn around, stranger, and keep that gun pointed right where you got it. All right, all right, don't shoot. What do you want of me? Never mind that now. Just tell us right quick what's going on here. No, no, don't turn around. I'll bet you're part of their gang, trying to help them escape. There they go again. Who's gang? Who's in that jail? Thunder and lightning, that's who. You darn well know. Thunder and lightning? Now that's real silly. Ain't even threatening rain. Won't do you no good to be funny. You better lay that out real clear, stranger. What do you mean by thunder and lightning being in jail? Well, if you don't know, then you couldn't be one of them. And if you ain't, then I reckon you're on the side of us honest citizens. 
If that's the case, you can take that gun out of my back and I'll tell you all about it. Don't do it, Bill. You make sense, stranger. Holster that six gun and turn around. Well, now that's better. <laughs> he gave me his... Hickok. <laughs> he knows you, Bill. That's who you are, Wild Bill Hickok. And you're Jingles. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you know? Well, I took both your pictures and run them in my paper just oh, yesterday. Well. That was before Thunder and Lightning grabbed the sheriff. I'm Mark Willard. Run the Alkali Springs Chronicle. <laughs> sheriff told me he'd sent for you. But the next thing we knew, he'd cornered them two bandits and called themselves Thunder and Lightning and brought them to heel. You mean we came out here for nothing? No, not by a long shot. He'd no sooner locked them up in a jail than they tricked him. Now they got him in there with them. They got the sheriff? Yeah. We got the place surrounded, but if we try storming it, they'll kill the sheriff. It's a stalemate. Maybe not, if I can get close enough to talk to him. Nah, I can't do it, Hickok. They got a clear view all around, and they're crack shots. Well, we're getting nowhere this way. Hey, Bill, Bill, look up the street. A bunch of riders. Hey, it's the Thunder and Lightning Gang. Come to set them free. Then unlimber those six guns, gents. This is going to turn out to an all-out war. This is Charlie Lyon and Slim, the singing cowboy kids. Hey, what's the matter with your fingers, Slim, all bandaged up like that? Well, doggone it, Charlie, this morning I was a peeling spud, sort of helping the cookie out, you know, and the boss comes in for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Well, the cookie gave him a big bowl of Kellogg's Rice Krispies and poured some cream all over him. Well, them little critters set up such a fuss with their snap, crackle, and pop... But, well, I just forgot what I was doing and peeled a little too fast, Dad <laughs> Blimp. Mm. Well, it sure is lots of fun listening to those Rice Krispies when you pour milk or cream over them. Why, they were just making sure everyone knows how fresh and crisp they are. Oh, you said it, Charlie. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Yes, sir. Get yourself a package of wonderful golden Kellogg's Rice Krispies tomorrow, folks. They're called a talking cereal because they actually tell you with a snap, crackle, pop how crisp and good they're going to taste. It's the barrel of fun cereal, boys and girls. Fun to listen to, fun to eat. So be sure to try Kellogg's Rice Krispies for breakfast. And here's an idea. Eat them with some berries or peaches. Mm, mm, mm. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, now, let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles, summoned to Alkali Springs by Sheriff Mort Gillis, arrived to find the sheriff a prisoner of the two bandits, Thunder and Lightning. While Mark Willard was telling them the facts, the bandit gang rode into town with guns blazing and Bill and Jingles were in the middle of an all-out war. Those Jaspers get through to the jail, we're lost. They're not getting through, Willard. Bill, what are you going to do? I'm going to block them out, partner. Bill, don't go out there! All right, hold it right there, gents. Yeah, who says so? I do. Any argument? Yeah, I got an argument, mister. Here it is. Any other arguments like that? Now turn those cayuses around and hightail it out of town just like you came in. I don't know who you are, mister, but you just dug your grave. When thunder and lightning get out of that jail, we'll all be looking for you, so you better get lost. Well, now, let me tell you one thing, you loudmouth sand lizard. When you come looking for Wild Bill Hickok, you better come a-shooting. Hickok? Oh, the name means something to you, huh? Got the palaver and get out of town. All right, but like I say, we'll be back. Come on, man, let's go. Well, that takes care of them for now, Bill, but what are we going to do about those two owl hoots, Thunder and Lightning? They still got the sheriff in jail. We'll have to let them go, partner. Let them go? Are you local, Bill? Marshal, you can't let them go after we bottled them up. It's the only way to save the sheriff, Mr. Willard. Let's go back around toward the jail now and call off all guns. All right, gents. 
Hold your fire. Now, now, simmer down. Simmer down, gents. That's Wild Bill Hickok talking to you. Do what he says and get moving. Well, I hope you know what you're doing, Hickok. Uh, me too, Bill. Hey, out there. Did I hear somebody say the name Wild Bill Hickok? You sure did. Is that you, Sheriff Gillis? Jingles. I didn't know that voice anywhere. Where is Bill? All right, that's enough, Sheriff. Hickok, can you hear me? This is Thunder talking. Yeah, I can hear you. What's on your mind? You can't trick us, Hickok. One false move on your part, and your sheriff's a dead goose. All right. Leave the sheriff there and come on out. Oh, no, we don't. We're taking the sheriff with us till we get out of town. Then we'll turn him loose. You willing to take that chance, Sheriff? Sure I am, Bill. If you say so. All right, Thunder. But I'm warning you. If he's not back in 20 minutes, I'll have every man who can fire a gun on your trail. He'll be back. All I want is a head start. Then you or nobody else can catch us. Now stand back. We're coming out. All right, Sheriff. You go first. So long, Hickok. <coughs> My word's as good as yours, so you'll get your sheriff back. But if you come after me, then you're as good as dead and buried on Boot Hill. Come on, Lightning. Yep, boy. Let's ride. Bill, I don't like this a little bit. Neither do I, Jingles, but that sheriff's too good a man to lose. Now we sit and wait for him to get back. Yeah, this is going to be the longest 20 minutes I ever spent. Bill, this town's as quiet as a graveyard all of a sudden. Everybody's waiting, same as we are, Jingles. Bill, look, here they come after us. Stand your ground, partner. We're not wrong for another nine minutes. Who's leading that crowd, Willard? Boy, that's Cards London, big gambler in town. Owns a London casino. Neat looking, Jasper. Bill, I smell trouble, sure as Maisie's made biscuits. Just don't ask for it, partner. Howdy, gents. Hickok, I'll come right to the point. We don't like what you did about letting those two sidewinders get away with the sheriff. You speaking for everybody, London? Yeah, I'm speaking for everybody. We figure you made a wrong play. We've still got five minutes to go before I'm wrong. And every minute those owl hoots are getting farther away. Now, nah, take it easy, cards. Take it easy. Wild Bill knows what he's doing. Well, all i got to say is this. If that sheriff don't show up and... Well, three minutes, there's going to be a new marshal and deputy riding this part of the country. You seem to forget those two called Thunder and Lightning had already killed three men this afternoon in that gunfight. And they'll kill the sheriff, too. And then go on to run free for the rest of the... Bill, Jingles, look, coming into town. It's the sheriff. You were right, Bill. You were right. Well, they let him go. (laughs) Well, howdy, sheriff. Sure glad to see you. Glad you, boys. Bill, you sure had the engine sign on thunder and lightning. They let me go out by big oak just like you figured they would. Well, gents, you were mighty ready to fight against me a few minutes ago. Maybe you'd like to fight with us now. Yeah. Sure they are, Bill. How about you, London? You win, Hickok. Say the word, we're all with you. All right. Throw a hairpin over your horses and let's go run those coyotes to ground. <laughs> That's it, boys. Grab them coyotes and let's run! Hey. You're heading right back to the hideout, Thunder. Why, sure I am, Lightning. Well, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Of. That Hickok could track a gopher through here, let alone the whole gang. Don't worry about it, Lightning. I got a plan. Yeah, you got a plan. We never should have let the sheriff go in the first place. Yeah, that's where you're wrong. All right, hold up, man. Hold up. Now, what are you up to? Listen and find out. Now, listen to me, all of you. This is the pass to our hideout. 
We got blasting powder all set on both sides for, for a time like this. Now I begin to see what you mean. The sheriff knows this hideout, so he'll lead Hickok and the rest of them right into our trap. Now spread out and wait for them. When you hear me fire one shot, throw torches in that blasting powder. Now you're talking, Thunder. When the avalanche starts, break out those six guns and start shooting. Them we don't bury under the rock, we'll gun down. I don't want one man in that posse left alive. Especially Wild Bill Hickok. Sheriff, you sure you know where you're leading this? Sure do, Jingles. See that path ahead? Yeah. That leads right to Thunder and Lightning's hideout. Tracks lead right on through the pass, all right. We're hot on their heels, Bill. Hey, Sheriff, wait. Wait nothing. We almost got them. Let's go. But Bill, I heard a shot. It's an ambush. Get low on those saddles and ride for it, men. Hi, Buckshot. Hi. Faster, Jingles. Bill, the whole hill's coming down. We'll never make it. We'll get back to Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles in just a minute. I'm a stomping over to the cook shack myself to set me down to a great big bowl of you know what. So sing it out with me, men. <coughs> Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies mean more fun and pep, so come on, gang, let's get in step. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Add milk or cream, that's all you do, then listen to them talk to you. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. I'm a leveling with you, folks. There ain't no finer tasting breakfast food than Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the talking cereal. Boy, when you pour milk on these little critters, it sounds like they're a gunning for you. Yes, sir, they go snap, crackle, and pop. And they're telling you in no uncertain terms how crisp and how fresh they are. So you better check your supply of Kellogg's Rice Krispies right now. Don't get caught without them. Well, sir, what do you say? Let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. The sheriff was leading the chase after the two bandits, Thunder and Lightning, and their gang when Wild Bill suddenly tried to stop him just before they entered the pass to the bandit hideout. Bill's idea came too late, however, and they rode right into an ambush. Bill, did everybody get through? I don't know, Jingles. Take cover, men! Those sidewinders knew the sheriff would lead us through here. Yeah, I thought about it too late. Come on, we'll smoke these varmints out yet. Bill, here's some cover over here. This way, Jingles. Up there, Buckshot. Up. Uh, I hope he found a big hole for me, too. Hey, there's one of the varmints. Well, that's one less we got to worry about. Good job, Jingles. You got him. Who, Buckshot? Who, I? We'll get back in those bushes, boy. Yeah. You too, Joker. Go on. Well, Sheriff, looks like we're right back where we started. Yeah, except we got the sheriff out here with us instead of in jail with them two sneaking road agents. Those two varmints played me for a sucker, Bill. They almost got us all killed by riding through that there pass. Well, Sheriff, we all got through, so quit worrying about it. Yeah, but we still got plenty to worry about with this whole hillside crawling with them gophers. All right, you white-livered bums. Don't let Hickok scare you out. Get after him. Well, thunder makes a big noise, doesn't it? I wish he'd stick his head up just once. Watch it. They're trying to work around us. Thunder, I'm hit. Come and get me. Nothing doing. I got my own skin to think about. Now, there's a right friendly cuss to have for a partner. And 
boys are keeping them busy, all right. Yeah, but this isn't smoking them out. Uh, but what can we do, Bill? <laughs> Doggone it. I'm thinking they might get curious if all of our posse quit shooting. Yeah. Hey, I remember the Indians pulled that one on us once. Worked so well, I darn near got my head shot off. What say, Sheriff? Well, I'll tell the boys to hold their fire. Now, wait a minute. I'll crawl around to each one of them and tell them. No, no, no. Now, that's dangerous, Bill. We've got to get Thunder and his gang down out of those rocks, Jingles. There's no way to get to them or behind them from here. What do you want us to do, Bill? Stay here. Keep shooting once in a while. When I get back, you'll be the last to stop. I got you. We'll do her. Good luck, Bill. Thanks, partner. Hold your fire, Willard. Hold it? What for? We're going to try a trick to get Thunder and his gang out in the open. Oh, I get it. Curiosity, huh? Yeah. Stay here and wait for my signal. Okay. Hey, who's that? It's me, London. Holy tornado. Hickok, you sure throw scare into me. You don't make no more noise than Indian. What's up? Hold your fire till I give you a signal. Okay. Anything you say. Stay put so I'll know where you are. I will, Hickok. Hold your fire, Shorty, till you hear from me. Just hold your fire till you get a signal, Mac. Bill back. Get him old tool, Bill? Yeah. Now you can stop shooting and we'll see if this little trick will work. Boy, it sure is quiet all of a sudden. You reckon they'll fall for it, Bill? Never can tell, partner. Hey, what's going on down there? He's taking the bait, Bill. <laughs> this is real smart, Hickok. It hasn't worked yet, Sheriff. Hey, Lightning! They quit shooting! Yeah, well, I don't trust them. That low-down polecat, he's wise. Wait, Jingles. Hey, Thunder! Yeah, Butcher? You reckon we got them all? Another country heard from. They're getting itchy, Bill. All right, Hickok. Where are you? <laughs> getting curious. Come on, men. Work down the hill, but keep your eyes open. Here they come, Bill. Stay down. Be ready to jump them. We're coming to get you, Hickok. Must have killed them all, Sunday. Ain't nobody shoot. Yeah, Butcher. What did I tell you, Lightning? We got them all. Wild Bill Hickok ain't gonna pull no more tricks on nobody. Just one more, Thunder. All right, men. Hey, it's a trick. Blast them, you guys. <laughs> Well, Wild Bill, I gotta hand it to you. If you ain't the trickiest lawman I ever run across, I'll eat oats for the rest of my life. I reckon we got lucky this time, Sheriff. Yeah, but luck just sort of seems to run towards Wild Bill, Sheriff. Well, it sure were lucky for me. I sent for you before those two varmints caught me up in jail. <laughs> Well, the walls of that jail are sure bulging out now with thunder and lightning and their whole gang in it. Well, hello, Mr. Willard. Did yeah. you get your paper out with the news? Yeah, I sure did, and I brought you boys a first copy. <laughs> has it got my name in it? You bet it has, Jingles. <laughs> Yours and Wild Bill's, with your pictures. Well, right on the front page. <laughs> Look at there, Bill. Yeah, partner, that's real nice of Mr. Willard. But the sheriff and his posse deserve the real credit for today's Hall of Bandits. Well, sure they do, Bill, but gee willikers, I ain't exactly sorry Mr. Willard put our pictures in his paper. This'll make me a big man back home. Hey, uh, you better print me about a hundred extra copies, Mr. Willard, because I'm going to send one to everybody I know back in East Sedalia. <laughs> <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's all for today, folks. 
But remember, we'll be back again your way on Monday. You bet we will, Guy, with a story about Wild Bill and Jingles getting into more trouble and gunfighting in what we call the Trail of Death. Meanwhile, and in I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right, it's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Cliff Arquette, Joe Duvall, Clayton Post, Benny Rubin, and Dusty Walker. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok rides the trail of death. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hiya, folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg Sugar Corn Pop! Today, Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of A Snap for Snooper. Partner, you want to be the first in the gang to see Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show down at the grocery store. Yep, all of Kellogg's cereal packages have been changed, and they're all on display at the store. It's a real show to see what all these new packages look like. Why, they've got pictures on the fronts and cutouts, game stories, or other interesting things to read or do on the backs of the packages. Now, be sure and look at them the next time Mom sends you to the store. And say... Remember to ask her if you can get a package or two of those swell-tasting Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his saddle partner and deputy Jingles were riding southeast out of Colorado when a passing scout gave them a message. When the scout was finished... Wild Bill and Jingles checked their guns and rode fast toward the town of Bluefield and the action-packed adventure, A Snap for Snooper. Bill, this little town of Bluefield looks too peaceful to be harboring outlaws. Outlaws pick a quiet town on purpose sometimes, Jingles. Yeah, I reckon you're right. Where are we headed? For that general store up there to your left. Ease up, Buckshot Boy. Ooh. Slow down now, hold, Joker. Hmm, walking's easier. This one, Bill? Yeah. Ooh, Buckshot. Up by that hitching reel, boy. That's it, Joker. Hmm. Bluefield General Merchandise. If you want it, we got it. If we ain't got it, we'll get it. <laughs> That's a real good sign, Bill. It says the huh, Jonathan J. Jones, proprietor. That's the man we want to see. Let's go in. Hey, you know, my name's Jones, too. Maybe this here's some kind of kinfolk. You go around claiming counterfeiters for kinfolks, partner? Counterfeiter? That's what I said. You let me do the talking. Uh, 
I'll get it down. Hey, there's an old gent waiting on that lady, Bill. Yeah. But wait till she goes. <laughs> Look at that silly hat. <laughs> Jingles. Looks like a rooster scratching in the hay mouth. <laughs> now, uh, that'll be all you want, Miss Shuck? Oh, right over here on this counter. Oh, howdy do. Howdy, ma'am. Morning, ma'am. Maybe hey, right with you, Jen. Now, Jonathan, I want a packet of them hairpins, the gold ones. They look so pretty against my gray hair, don't you think? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and two of them red and black hat pins to hold my hat on. When it's windy, the rooster almost flies out of the hay mouth. <laughs> Jingles. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, that'll be all, Miss Shuck? Yes, I'll I'll just put them in my handbag and go, so you can wait on these uh, handsome strangers. Well, thank you, ma'am. You're right pretty, too. Hey, that'll be $2.85 altogether. Oh. Just write it down, Jonathan. But, Miss Shucks, I've been writing it down for a long time. Already, you Well, only... now, don't you worry about it. Not a bit. I'm coming into a fortune. My lawyer, Mr. Tate, said so. A fortune? How come? My great uncle Corny in St. Louis died and left me all his money. Mr. Tate said I should get it by tomorrow. Your uncle Corny shocks? That's the one. Rest his soul. He was a kind man. And when I get his money, I'll pay up my bill and buy everything in your store. Maybe tomorrow afternoon. Bye now. Bye. Hey, mighty glad to hear about the news. Yeah, mighty glad. If I get what she owes me. And now, gents, what can I do for you? Well, Mr. Jones, I'm Bill Hickok, United States Marshal. This is my deputy, Jingles. Why, Bill Hickok? And Jingles, howdy. Well, now, this is a right big honor. Uh, what brings you to Bluefield? We're looking for some counterfeiters, Mr. Jones. Counterfeiters? That's what Bill said, and the trail starts with you. Jonathan, I want some pipe tobacco. I'm in a hurry. You know where it is, Tate. Get it yourself. Get it myself? What kind of a storekeeper are you? No wonder you ever make any money. I'm a good storekeeper, and I ain't no hurry to make money. I'll get you back here and leave two bits on the counter. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, here Miss Shucks is coming into money. There she is, a fortune. Then see that she pays my bill first. She'll pay it. There's your 25 cents. Someday we'll have another store in Bluefield, and you won't be so lazy. <laughs> well, now, ain't he a cocky hyena? <laughs> Think she owns the town. Come here about four months ago and hung up his lawyer's shingle. I don't like him. Ain't comfortable and friendly. Don't hurt folks to be friendly. He seems to think that Miss Shucks is getting her fortune all right. Uh, maybe. But if he gets his hands on it, I wouldn't count on getting my bill paid. Now, uh, what about them counterfeiters? I have a report that some bogus banknotes came from your store, Jonathan. Well, I ain't never noticed none. I want to put Jingles to work in your store to keep a check on the customers who trade here. Why, sure. I could use some more help. Gives me more time for setting by the stove. Good. Now remember, tell no one. If this got out, we might miss our man for sure. Hey, what's that? Oh, I, I guess I fell off the shelf again. Hey, Bill, it's a little boy. Yeah, Wild Bill. I heard every word you said, and I'm a good detective. Don't you worry, Grandpa. I'll help Wild Bill run down those black-hearted cowfitters and bring them to justice. <laughs> Did you hear that, Bill? He's going to help us. That don't mean a hat full of trouble. I'll eat that fancy bonnet Miss Shucks was wearing right down to the last feather. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast show has a cheerful look and a lift for you. Start you up with a hoopty doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Kids, did you see what I saw? Did you see the new boxes that all ten of Kellogg's different cereals come in now? They're the All Star Breakfast Show. See them all at your grocer's today. Did you see what I saw? The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show. And while you're looking over Kellogg's all-new picture packages, remember to buy a supply of Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Sugar Pops are tops. Eat them right out of the box, just like candy, 
or out of the bowl with milk. Mm -mm -mm, Are they ever good? I'll say. Say, did Did you you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful, the Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start Start you out out with a hoop-de-doo. Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Just when Bill was telling Jonathan to keep the word about the counterfeiters a secret, a crash of pots and pans brought a little boy right to their feet. He'd heard it all, and Jingles predicted plenty of trouble. I'm sorry, gents. This is my grandson, Snooper. Keeping something from him is like trying to hide a thunderstorm. Sure, I'm Snooper Jones. I was going to be a famous detective like the Pinkertons, but now I'm going to be a fearless U.S. Marshal like Wild Bill Hickok. Well, Snooper, the first thing you have to learn is to keep your mouth closed and your eyes open. Yes, sir. you got to see everything and tell nothing. That's the first rule. Oh, I know that. You going to let me help you, Wild Bill? I sure am, Button. You can come along with me right now and show me around the town. Oh, oh now, Bill, ain't you going to take me with you? No. Oh. You stay here and help Jonathan, partner, <laughs> and watch for anybody spending 10 and $20 banknotes. Come on, Snooper. Oh, doggone it anyway. Where do you want to go first, Wild Bill? All right, Jingles. If you're going to be a clerk for me, you can start with putting those pots and pans back on that top shelf. Now, ain't this a fine job for a partner to Wild Bill Hickok? Don't do you no good to grumble. Now, here. You better use this stepladder to climb up there. You'll never reach it. Yeah, you better stand there and hold it steady. Me? Stand under you while you're climbing? <laughs> no, sir. If you fell on me, there'd be nothing left but a grease spot. Yeah. Put them big pots on the left of the frying pans. The ladder's shaking. Now hold it steady. Now, now, watch out what you're doing up there. Hold that ladder. I'm putting hell. Now see what you went and done. Bent one of my best frying pans. No, Dad, blast your old frying pans. Wish I'd never seen this doggone old store. Hey, Jingles, there's a stranger. You better wait on him. I'll hide in the back room. Oh, I don't feel like waiting on nobody. Well, I ain't got all day, Fatty. Fatty, now don't you go calling me that. Then get moving. I want two boxes of slugs for this cold peacemaker. All right, all right. You don't have to be so dadgum ornery about it. Let's see. Here they are. That'll be a um, dollar and a half. That change for a tenner? Tenner? Hey, yeah, give it to me. There, make it fast. Hmm. The tenor good, stranger? Huh? You looking for trouble, big boy? No, but a Jasper in such a hurry buying gun slugs don't make me real trusting. Well, I'm going to teach you to be more trusting right now. You ain't teaching me nothing, mister. I'm teaching you plenty, like this. And here's a lesson for you. That's the last one, you Oh, nope, I got one left. Mr. Now get up and get out of here, you ornery horned toad. And from now on, watch out who you pick fights with. Next time, I'm liable to hurt you some. You heard me? Now get up. All right. I'm going. But the next time you see me, you better draw fast, you big walrus. Or I'm going to ventilate your hide. And don't you forget it. Well, Well, I wish Bill could have been here to see me handle that Gila monster. I sure fixed him good. Hey, Jingles. Jingles, what happened? That ain't no way to treat our customers. But Jonathan, he he gave me a $10 banknote. He did? Where is it? Uh, Right here in my pocket. In your pocket? What do you mean, putting my money in your pocket? Now, harness your temper, you old weasel. Saving it for Bill to look at. I wish you'd hurry back. Well, while you're waiting, you can clean up the store. Now, now, get at it. Hey, Grandpa. Me and Wild Bill have been all over town playing detective. Yeah, well, maybe I solved your mystery for you myself. How's that, Jingles? Well, it was like this, Bill. 
This Jasper comes in here to buy slugs, and he gives me a $10 banknote. I got it right here in my pocket. Hold it, Jingles. Oh, now, doggone it, what does she want? Hey, Snoopy, go wash your ears. Oh, I never have any fun. Oh, Jonathan. Here I am, Miss Shush. Jonathan, I told you I got my money, a fortune, and I've come to pay my bill. How much is it? See, I've got $50 right here. Well, now, I'm right glad to hear it, Miss Shush. Your bill is $43.30. I will forget the 30 cents. Well, there you are. Oh, dear. That takes almost all he gave me. So I'll just have to go back and get some more. Congratulations, ma'am. Yeah, congratulations. Sure is good to see somebody get a lot of money. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? Well, here's your change. Seven dollars. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun to be rich. I'll come back and buy that blue ostrich feather when Mr. Tate gives me some more money. It'll be just a few minutes. Uh, then I'll shake the dust out of the feather while you're gone. <laughs> I'll be right back. Hmm? Bill, she's sure is happy about that money, ain't she? Yes, she is, Jingles. What'd she pay you with, Jonathan? Two twenty-dollar banknotes and a ten bill. Here they are. But you don't think she's got anything to do with it, do you? You never can tell who's passing Boga's money. Well, the tin looks all right. This 20... Hey, wait a minute. <clears throat> find something, Bill? I sure did, partner. Gee, what'd you find, Wild Bill? Snooper, I told you to go wash your ears. Oh, but gee whiz, I was just detecting, Grandpa. You know, look here. She dropped her handkerchief. That's a clue, Wild Bill. I'll bet she's the counterfeit. Hold it, Button. Hold it. We got a lot to find out yet. Yeah, and Miss Shucks ain't no more a counterfeiter than I am. Now you just take that handkerchief and scoot after her. Oh, I sure will. I know where she's going. And remember, Button, eyes open, mouth closed. I got you, Wild Bill. You can depend on me. Now, Bill, what was you saying you'd found out with those banknotes? Just this, Jingles. The ten and one twenty are both genuine. But the other $20 note is a phony. It is? Oh, oh, Bill. Hey, here's the, here's the one that mean Jasper gave me while you were gone. Take a look at this one. All right. Well, now, this sure puts a brush across our trail, partner. What do you mean, Bill? This $10 bill you gave me is counterfeit, too. Dex, what did you come here for? You're still wanted. Now, oh, take it easy, Tate. I'm getting tired of hiding out. I want my cut from the money now. Well, it won't do you any good to threaten me with that gun. If you shoot me, you'll get nothing. Well, how long is it going to take that shuck's name to pass them bogus bills are made for you? I don't know, but I'll do... Wait, here she comes now. Put that gun away and sit down. I paid the bill at Jonathan's store. And... Oh, that man. I've seen his face. Yeah? Where have you seen it, sister? Dex, sit down. Now, oh, he's just a client of mine, Miss Shucks. Oh, uh, here. Here's more money. I know where I've seen his face. On a poster in the post office. He's wanted. That's what he is. Now, you hadn't ought to notice that, Miss Shucks. Dex, no. Put, put away that gun. What are you going to do? You won't give me my money. I'm leaving. You ain't going nowhere, sister. No, Dex. Oh, Miss Shucks. You dropped your handkerchief back at Grandpa's store. Hey, who's that chick? Oh, Snooper, am I glad to see you. Hey, what's he doing with a gun? What's going on here? None of your business, kid. That man's wanted, Snooper. He was going to shoot me. Wild Bill Hickok will take care of him. Come on, Miss Shucks, run. Yeah, you two ain't going nowhere. Now stop. Let him go, Dick. Why, you lame brain jughead. Now we're in for it. It's worse than that. You heard that kid say Wild Bill Hickok? The marshal must be in town. Yeah, we better get out of here. Not just yet. If he paid a bill with one of those phony $20 banknotes, I've got to get it back. No time for that. If I get it back, they've got no evidence to convict us. Now, you go bury the plates in the printing press. I'll go get that banknote from old Jonathan. I'll meet you at the bend of Sandy Creek. Uh, what about Hickok? <laughs> if I get a chance, I'll take care of him in the bargain. It'd only take one well-aimed shot in his back. <laughs> Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look and a lip. 
for you. Start you out with a hoop de doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. It's lots of fun seeing how Kellogg's have changed the looks of all their cereal packages. Now, you'll want to see them all. They're all different. New pictures on the front, new games, cutouts, stories, things like that on the package backs. Next time you go to the store for Mom, go look at what's happened to all the Kellogg cereal boxes. Tell Mom that all of Kellogg's cereal boxes have been changed. Next time she buys groceries, ask if you can go with her so you both can look over the new Kellogg's boxes. And when you're at the store, buy a couple of packages of those swell-tasting Kellogg sugar corn pops. Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful, the Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you out with a hoop doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. When Snooper let the fact that Wild Bill Hickok was in town slip out, Tate and Dex jumped into action. Dex ran out the back way to bury the counterfeiting plates and printing press, and Tate headed for the general store to retrieve the bogus banknote. Snooper and Miss Shucks had almost reached the store. Oh, oh, that awful man! Why, he might have killed me. Oh, I saved you. Oh, oh look there. there. That hombre's running away. Well, let him go. No, I gotta follow him. You go on and kill Wild Bill all about him. No, Snooper Jones, you come back here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, oh Jonathan, is Mr. Hickok here? I'm Hickok, ma'am. What's the matter? Oh, that man was going to kill me. Oh, what man? That man at Mr. Tate's office. He's wanted, Marshal, but now he's getting away and Snooper's following him. Snooper? Hey, Bill, oh. Snooper's in danger. You say this man was in Tate's office? Yes. Mr. Tate said he was another client. Bill, you reckon that means Tate was... Hold pressed. it, partner. Hold it. Here comes Tate. All right, don't now. any of you move. Billy's got a gun. Not a very big one, partner. It's big enough, Hickok. Jonathan, get the money Miss Shucks paid you and give it to me. The same money. Uh, I was guessing right, Bill. He, he's one of the counterfeiters. Looks that way, partner. Yeah, but you can't prove anything when I get that bill back. Come on, Jonathan, you're wasting my time. Uh, uh, what will I do, Bill? Get it for him, Jonathan. Well, now you're being very intelligent, Hickok. Yes. The jingles, you reckon Snooper's up in his roost? Huh? Oh, <laughs> hey, I know a good way to find out. No tricks now. Well, thank you, Jonathan. Hey, yeah, here they the come, one. Bill. Hey, hey, what are you... No, you don't. <laughs> no, Bill, he's not up there. That's all right, Jingles. We got our man. Good work. Now, pick up his toy pistol. Now, uh, Hickok, I can explain everything. I'll just bet you can. You giving me counterfeit to spend. How could you do that Oh, to me? be quiet. All right, I got you covered. Don't anybody move. Well, <laughs> Bill, this little Derringer at Tate's works pretty good at that. I got him right in the shoulder. But who's that, Jingle? That's the man, the wanted man that was going to kill me. And he's the one that gave me the first $10 banknote you said was a phony. Well, Tate, what have you got to say? I say you still haven't got a case, Hickok. I can plead innocence about where those counterfeit bills came from. I'll bet he can't, Wild Bill. Look what I found. And that's the man on the floor that buried it. I saw him. Snooper. What's in that box? I don't know, Gramps. It's locked, but it's heavy. Here, let me take a look at that. What do you reckon it is, Bill? If that Jasper buried it. Maybe there's a key in his pocket, huh? Take a look, Jingles. Oh, I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you're not, you huh? crook. Not till you give me the rest of my money and good money at that. Then you stand right where you are. <laughs> That's right. Nice works, Miss Shucks. Ain't nothing quite so dangerous as a frying pan in a woman's hand. You find the key, Jingles? I'm still looking. Uh Uh-oh. Here's a key, Bill. Yep, it fits all right. Now we'll see what's inside. What is it, Wild Bill? Looks like you brought the clenching argument that'll put these two counterfeiters away for a nice long spell, Snooper. What is it, Bill? The plates used to print the bogus banknotes, partner. Whoopee, that I did help you, Wild Bill. You sure did, Button, but if I were you, 
I'd wait a while before I started mixing with sure enough outlaws. Oh, don't worry. I will. I'm going to wait until I'm grown up like you and Jingles. Now, Bill, that's what I call a real smart little button. Hey, Jingles, where are you? I'm up here, Bill. Well, calm down from there. Right now, we've got to take these Jaspers oh, to jail. Oh, Jingles, look out! Now, Jingles, what did you do that for? I just couldn't resist it, Bill. Snooper had so much fun climbing up there on that shelf of pots and pans and listening. Well, I just had to find out what it was like. And this time I got a good excuse to get out of here before I have to put all that stuff back up there. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Well, folks, that's our Wild Bill Hickok story for today. But we'll be with you again on Friday. Yes, sir, and we got a story about a different kind of robber this time. Ranch robbers, we call it. The Secret of Sandy Hook. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Right, it's the great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Sugar Corn Pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Monty Margett, Fred Howard, Larry Dobkin, and Richard Beals. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok looks for the secret of Sandy Hook. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. Present Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap. Crackle and pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, The Secret of Sandy Hook. Boy, oh boy, is there ever something swell to see at your grocery store. I'll say there is, and you'll want to be the first to see it so you can tell your friends. The box Kellogg's Rice Krispies comes in. In fact, all the Kellogg's cereal boxes, they're all changed. Now, they've got pictures on the fronts and new interesting things on the backs. Games, cutouts, stories, and things like that. Now, you'll want to look them over, these brand new Kellogg's cereal packages, right away. It's an all-star breakfast show. See the new Kellogg's packages the very next time you go to the store. During the years they rode the plains of the Old West, United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles were in constant danger. 
almost every day found them riding out of one cloud of gun smoke and into another in their fight to bring law and order to the land of sage and cactus. This adventure was no exception, for seldom had they been in more danger than when they rode down to Texas to find out the secret of Sandy Hook. Those hyenas are yapping too close at our heels. Keep riding, Jingles. We don't want to be seen. <laughs> but they're throwing that lead too near my ears. Maybe we can lose them in these hills here. I hope you ain't dreaming. Turn off the trail here. Get around there, Buckshot. Come on, boy. Jump, Joker. We gonna hide out here, Bill? We'll try it. Ooh, Buckshot. Ooh, stand there, boy. Oh, oh Joker, quiet now. Hold him down, Jingles. Joker, doggone it. Quiet. You want to get a shot? That's no posse, Bill. Uh, why don't we just talk to them? They're past us now. John Gettings said to be sure not to let anybody see us, you remember? Yeah. Uh-oh. Bill. Bill, they're, they're stopping. That's bad. Are we going to ride for it? No. Let's wait and see. Something's wrong here. I've lost the trail. <laughs> don't surprise me, none. Easy, partner. Those two hombres are trying to put trick us, I reckon. Then out and come for trail. Hey, Bill, that Jasper's too smart for his britches. Yeah, this may mean trouble. Hey, I found it! Don't gun your ornery hide. Quiet, Jingles. All right, boys. Get out your rifle. Train them on that clump of pinion. If they make a break for it, shoot the kill. I don't like this, Jingles. Well, me neither. We got about 15 rifles looking right down our throats. We'll wait for his play. All right, you two in there. You got about as much chance as a rabbit in a wolf pack. I'm right now with your hands pressed in the cloud. Bill. Well, there's one way to find out what their game is, Jingles. Reach and ride out. But let me do all the talking. Move out, Buckshot. Walk, Joker. Now, don't surprise them any. Here they come, boys. Be ready. All right, now hold your fire, you two-legged salamanders. Well, it's like smoking a possum out of a rotten stump. All right, you rannies, moving on them. Now, gents, I'll just relieve you of them shooting irons. Here, Joe, take these peacemakers and keep them for me. Oh, all right, you roadrunner. You got our guns. Let us put our hands down. Now, my arms are getting tired. Sure, put them down. We're going to tie them up anyway. That won't be necessary, cowboy. I'll decide what's necessary, buckskin bitches. Now that you've found your tongue, suppose you keep using it. Tell us who you are. What you're doing on this spread? Whose spread is it? Belongs to John Giddens right at the present. That mean anything to you? Nope. Oh, but Bill, I... Hold it, that... partner. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, it means something to you, blubber boy. Huh? Oh. I reckon the sheriff will be right glad we smoked you out of that brush. You could be just the coyote he's been out looking for. What's that? You'll find out soon enough. All right, men. Let's take him into old John. The sheriff can come to the ranch house for him. Come on. That's right. Mister, what do you mean by saying we might be the Jaspers the sheriff was looking for? Just this, stranger. He's got to find somebody to pin Hot Stewart's murder on. And it just might as well be you two. By tomorrow, son up, I reckon you'll both be stretching your necks from a high hickory limb. Boxes bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Those be the stifle, the Kellogg's All Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look and a lift for you. Start you out with a hoopty doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. You sure want to see all the new packages that Kellogg's cereals come in now, because they've all been redesigned, changed. They're all new, all new picture packages. And there are lots of interesting cutouts, games, and things like that on the package backs, too. Your grocer is featuring this Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show right now. Did you see what I saw? The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show. 
In the Kellogg display at your grocer's, be sure to spot the new Rice Krispies package. It's swell. Ask Mom if you can get a big package of this famous talking cereal. The one that talks right up and tells you how fresh and crisp it is. Snap, crackle, pop. And you know how swell Rice Krispies taste with fruit or berries. Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful, the Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you, start you out with a hoop to do Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles were captured by the bunch of riders, they were taken to the ranch of John Giddings, the very man they had ridden west to see. Oh, oh, oh. Now you two girls climb down from them cayuses and walk inside. Don't forget, I got a six iron pointing right at your backs. This Giddings ranch house? That's right, mister. I reckon you'll be right glad to see we caught the pair that was causing the trouble around Sandy Hook Ranch. Gans, who are these men? I reckon they're the ones we've been looking for, Miss Meg. Your pa at home? Yes, he's back at the office. Then you better step aside and let us through. Well, they don't look like criminals to me. We caught them right near old Bigfoot's cave. Could be they've been camping out there. Well, come on in. Straight ahead of you. Right through that door. Gans, what's the meaning of this? Hi, boss. Brought you a couple of coyotes we smoked out of the brush. Coyotes? Why, you lame brain jughead. These men aren't... Mister, no... I don't know who you are, but I'd be right glad to sit down and talk peaceable with you. Hmm? Yeah? You don't know who I am? I said I don't know you from a lame maverick, but I hear you got trouble. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen you before, either. All right, Gan, you brought them in, you... Better go round up some stock or fix a fence or something. You keep talking to me like that and you're going to be scouting for another foreman, Giddings. Yeah, it wouldn't be a big loss, I figure. Now go on, get out. I'll send for you if I need help. <laughs> yeah, if I need it. All right, I'm going. Then close the door behind you. <laughs> <laughs> that sure is a mean Jasper you got for a foreman. No, oh, I reckon he's all right. Singles just, just thinks he's a big steer in the corral, that's all. Bill, I'm dogged if I ain't glad to see you. Sorry I let your cow hands find me first, John, but they just happened along before I knew it. Yeah, dog gone near killed us before they caught us. Hey, wait a minute. What's do with you? You can't keep putting me off. Meg, you're my gal and that's that. Hey, what's going on out there? Oh, Meg's having trouble with that game. No, Bill! Yeah, partner. You get him, Bill. All right, Gans, let her go. You keep out of this, mister. I said let her go. Sure, I'll let her go. Bill has got to get... Ah! Not so good, Gans. Now I'll take that gun. You'll take something else, no deal. Come on, I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Drop that Sorry. gun. Uh, here's one. Three. No, stop it. Stop that fight. We're going to, right? No. Uh-huh. Yeah, what's the matter, Gans? Find somebody you couldn't blood? I'll get him yet. You wait. I'll get him once and for all. And that ain't no bluff. Now go on. Get out. Oh, I never saw such fighting in all my life. Thank you, Mr... Why, I don't even know your name. <laughs> you just hang on to your hat, honey, and meet Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy, Jingles. Wild Bill Hickok? Well, no wonder. And Jingles. And Jingles. Yeah. Well, this is a big thrill. Thank I you. I first met these two while you was back east at school, Meg. Oh, did they come to help us, Dad? They sure did, honey. Now, you sit down, gents, and I'll tell you all we know. Well, reckon we know a good deal already, Mr. Giddings. Jingles is right, John. Except, who's Hot Stewart? Well, he was a neighboring rancher to the south. The Jumbo Jordan owns this spread above me to the north. Well, we know you've had trouble, and somebody they haven't caught yet killed Hot Stewart. That's right. Shot him in the back, right? Through the window. He was sitting just just about there where you are in relation to the window. And somebody with a rifle shot him from a distance right before our eyes. Bill! Pardon me? 
Bill, speak to me. Well, they've killed him. The same way they killed Hot Stewart. Not quite, Meg. But I reckon that was their idea. Oh, no, thank goodness. Bill, you sure gave me a scare the way you fell on that floor. Now. Sorry, partner, but this gives me an idea. Yeah, what's that, Bill? Suppose they think they got me. They might come out in the open with whatever their little scheme is. Well, they might at that. Well, it's worth a try. Meg, is there any wash out on the line? Yes, some sheets. Why? Good. You run out there like you were in a hurry and get one of them and bring them back to the house. All right, I'll go right now. Jingles? Yeah, Bill? You rush out to the pump with a wash pan and pump some water. Then rush right back in. I got you, Bill. They'll think somebody's hurt for sure. Where can you hide me until dark, John? Why, in my room. Nobody ever goes here but me. Good. In about an hour, you and Jingles and Meg go outside and sit down where you can be seen. Look sad. It won't be hard for me, Bill, after what's been going on around here. Then pick a man you can trust, not Gans. And send him riding fast toward town. Toward town? What for? He's to tell anybody he meets that there's been another killing and he's going for the corner. <laughs> It'll make everybody think you're a corpse. Here's the water, Bill. What'll I do with it? Wash your face with it, partner. Huh. You know, you're not exactly the cleanest maverick I ever saw. Now, Bill, you quit hoorahing me at a time like this. Well, Gantz, it's about time you got here. Hey, Jumbo. Huh? There's been big things going on down there. Me and the boys caught a couple of bombs. Yeah, armies. yeah, Hammerhead. You caught Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. Uh, you was lucky you didn't get your ears blasted off. Hickok? Yeah. Is that who that was? Sure. You sure see a lot through that telescope. Yeah, but I see more through the one I put on my rifle. Then it was you that shot him. Hey, that means you killed Hickok. If he's dead, I did. Just like I shot Hod Stewart. Oh, he's dead all right. Marnie just rode into the town for the corner. No, he didn't. But I saw him. He told me. He rode as far as that sycamore clump and then left the road. Here. Here, take the telescope and look over under the rim of Hubbard Hill. Huh? Yeah. Uh, look. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's Monty, all right. Yeah. Making a big swing back toward the ranch house. Now figure it out. You got my jumbo. I don't get it. I didn't think you would. That's why I gotta do all your thinking for you. Then what does it mean? It means Hickok ain't dead, you dummy. If he was, Monty had gone to town and fetched the coroner. Somebody's setting up a trap. A trap? Yeah, that's right. A trap for you and me. Well, I ain't getting caught in no trap. I'm gonna get You're out You're of... gonna do just what I tell you to. And I'm telling you to go back down there and find where Hickok is hiding out. And tonight, after he's asleep, make sure he really is bait for that coroner. <laughs> well, you sure got to hand it to Wild Bill, Miss Meg. He thinks up the best ways to trick owl hoots and killers. Well, I just hope everything goes like he planned it. No, oh, it will all right. Now, don't you worry. There. That's all the supper dishes dried and put away. Mm-hmm. Thanks for helping me, Jingles. Oh, and also for staying to protect me. Oh, now, Miss Meg, you don't have to thank me for something. It's a downright pleasure to be doing. Well, I know how much you wanted to go with Bill and Dad. What? So... The great wild Bill Hickok ain't dead after all. Gans! What are you doing with that gun? He ain't doing nothing with it, Miss Meg. I'll see to that. No, you don't, big boy. You don't draw on me and live to tell it. Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see the cycle, the Kellogg's All Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look and a lift for you. Start you up with a hoopty doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Be the first in your gang to see all the new, yes, brand new Kellogg cereal boxes. Every single one of them is changed. They've got exciting new pictures on the front and swell new things to read and do on the back. See them. See them all at your grocer's. Did you see what I saw? The Kellogg's 
All-Star Breakfast Show. When you look over the whole lineup of new Kellogg cereal packages, buy a box of Rice Krispies. Ask Mom if you can get a big package. Rice Krispies are the talking cereal, you know. They go snap, crackle, pop when you pour milk on them. Have some Kellogg's Rice Krispies for breakfast tomorrow. Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful. The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you out with a hoop de doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. While Jingles was shooting it out with Gantz in the ranch house kitchen, while Bill Hickok and John Giddings were out in the night running down the clues to the secret of Sandy Hook. All right, John, light your lantern. Let's look around here. How do you figure to come to this spot, Bill? From the way that rifle slug went in the floor, it had to be shot from high ground. Yeah, yeah, looks like you pegged it right, Bill. Look there on the ground. Yeah. Two horses stood here. One of them was here longer than the other, and it was a big horse. Well, how can you tell that? Footprints are wider, deeper. My guess is that it was a big man in the saddle, too. Hey, wait a minute. These tracks lead off this way. Hey, bring that lantern here. Here, here you are. And what do you see? The big man rode off to the north. Didn't you say Jumbo Jordan lived up that way? Yeah, yeah he's a big man. Bill, somebody shot the lantern out. Get on, John, quick. Bill, you all right? Yeah. How about you? You didn't hit me. What thunder was it? I don't know. I don't hear anything. You reckon you shot him? I don't know that either. Now you stay down. Hey, Bill, there he goes. Yeah, after. Come here, Buckshot. Come here, boy. Ready, John? Right behind you. Good, let's go. Hi, Buckshot. Hi. Get that Jasper, boy. Yeah. Jingles. Jingles, it's Meg. Oh. Oh, thank goodness he's still alive. Oh. Jingles, can you hear me? Bill. Bill, they're, they're getting away. Jingles. Jingles, it's Meg. Meg. Oh, now I remember Gans. What happened? You and Gans shot it out in the kitchen. You oh. got him in the arm, but he creased your head with a slug and knocked you out. Where are we? We dragged you over here and locked us in the storm cellar. Then we've got to get out. We can't get out. This place is tight enough to hold an army. It is. Doggone it anyway. Why didn't I shoot straight in? Oh, he was just lucky when he hit you. We've got to get out of here. Bill may be in danger. The dad, too. Oh, but it's no use, Jingle. Say somebody! Anybody! Let us out of here! Help! Help! Hey, Bill? It is Jumbo Jordan we're chasing. He's headed straight for his house. Well, now we know who's been causing your trouble, John. Yeah, but if he gets in that house, we'll never get him. And he's almost there. Well, he's not going to make it. Hi, but Get him, boy. He still got his gun, Bill. All right, Jordan, your time's run out. You ain't taking me, Hickok. Shoot him, Bill. Oh, no, I'm taking this one alive. You'll never catch me now. No, you don't, Jordan. I got you now. That's what you think. Bill, you sure take things the hard way, George. You watch him, Bill. He's reaching for a chair. That's the last thing he's going to reach for. Now, Jordan, you want some more? No. No. I had enough. But I didn't do it. Gans shot hard, Stuart. Gans? My foreman? Yeah, sure. I reckon I can prove different, Jordan. You can't prove nothing. There's a Model 73 rifle in the scabbard on your saddle out there. There's a shell to fit it. I picked it up where you took your first shot at us tonight. No. No, I tell you, Gant's done it. Why, a double-crossing sideways? Hey, 
Bill, he shot Jumbo. All right, Gantz, drop that gun. I ain't dropping... Hmm. Some of these varmints get kind of hard to convince, John. Yeah, they sure do. All right, let's get him in the saddle. Gantz can tell us all about it on the way back to the ranch. I'll tell you about it right here. That sneaking Jumbo killed Hot Stewart. We ought to get Giddens so he could take over both ranches. And you were working with him. Yeah, I was working with him. He promised to give me half the Giddens spread and the herd to graze. Well, John, that about cleans it up. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, Meg and Jingles ought to be right happy to hear the news. Why don't somebody hear me? Wait a minute. I hear horses outside. Yes, yeah, so do I. What if it's Gans coming back? Oh, I can't help it. Who will have to take that chance? Hey! Hey, out there! Come in here and let me out there! Well, partner, what are you doing down there? Oh, Bill. Uh, oh, we were just looking for a jar of blackberry jam. What do you think we were doing down here, playing hide-and-seek? Well, simmer down, well... partner, and help Miss Meg up the ladder. We got the varmints that were plaguing the getting spread. You did, Bill? Oh, well, one of them, that sidewinder Gans, huh? Yep, and he told me about your gunfight. Oh. If you hadn't winged him, partner, I figure he would have got me before the night was over. I <laughs> sure do want to thank you. Oh, it wasn't really nothing, Bill. <laughs> Nothing at all. Well, I wish you two would settle down right here. Bill, you could be my new foreman and Jingles could do the cooking. Oh, I wish you would. How about it, boys? No, sir. No, sir, Reed Bob. Not on your life. I'm getting as far away from this ranch and this storm cellar as Joker can take me. What's the matter, Porton? Well, from now on, when I got any storming to do, I want to do it right out in the wide open spaces where there's plenty of room. Because the way I'm built, I sure need it. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's our story for today, folks. Be with us again on Monday. Yes, sir, we. Because we've got a real rip snorter of a western with plenty of gun smoke and action called Trail Herd Trouble. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right. It's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Lillian Bieff, Tom Holland, Jim Nusser, and Ed Max. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok runs into trail herd trouble. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg sugar corn! 
Corn Pop! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of The Deadlock at Silver Sight. Next time you go to the store to get some more sugar corn pops, look at all the other Kellogg's cereals. You'll be surprised. All of them, all ten of them, look different because all boxes are different. They're changed. They're new. On the fronts, there are colorful pictures. On the backs, there are interesting things to do, cutouts, games, stories, and other things like that. It's fun to look them all over and see which one you like best. Tell Mom, too. She'll want to see Kellogg's all-star breakfast show of new packages next time she goes to the store. The West was still young when United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his faithful deputy Jingles cast their shadows across the plains. Men lived and died by violence, and a fast draw meant a longer life when the chips were down. That's the way things were the day that Wild Bill and Jingles plunged headlong into the deadlock at Silver Sight. Bill, a railroad train sure leaves an easy trail to follow, don't it? Draws a long black line in the snow. Yeah, Jingles. That track stretches across the valley as far as we can see. And I remember when we stood up here and looked down on the backs of buffalo in that valley. <laughs> Not more than three years ago, either. Here she comes, partner, puffing away. Yeah, let's wait and watch her go by. All right, partner. Hey, Jingles, look on that bluff up there to your right. Where? What is it, Bill? Those two men. You see them? Yeah. What are they doing with that big boulder? Trying to push it off the hill, that's what. Come on. Uh, it'll wreck the train, Bill. Hi, right, Buckshot. After him, boy. Jump, Joker! All right, you coyotes. Get away from that rock. Too late, Bill. There it goes. Jingles, you head down the hill and flank that train to a stop. That rock's going to land on the track. Okay, Bill. Where are you going? After those two Jaspers and push that boulder. Good luck, Bill. Come on, Joker. Down the hill. Faster, Joker. We got to save that train. Hey! Stop that iron horse. There's a boulder on the track. Oh, Joker. Oh. Hey, stop. Hear that critter down. Hey, what happened? How'd that boulder get on our track? Oh, too low down. Varmus pushed it off the top of the hill, that's how. Well, I, I sure want to thank you for flagging us down. If it hadn't been for you, we'd have wrecked the whole train. Yeah, you still got a right smart curl in your cow catcher the way it is. But the engine and all the cars are still on the track. My partner took after those two sidewinders, but I reckon they had too much of a start on him. Because here he comes back. Your partner? Yeah, Wild Bill Hickok. I'm Jingles. Woo wee. Cold, ain't it? Wild Bill and Jingles. Right now, I don't know anybody I'd rather see. Good work, Jingles. I see you stopped it. I sure did, Mr. Hickok. Uh, I'm Bob Sharon, chief engineer on this job. Howdy, Sharon. You had much trouble like this? Plenty. This is just one of a long series of attempts to block the completion of the job. You mean the railroad ain't finished yet? Not by ten miles. And if this keeps up, we'll not only fail to finish it, we'll lose our shirts. That's right, Sharon. Might as well give up now. If you never make it to Silver Sight by next Tuesday, you've only got a week to go. Well, we would if the stockholders had bought us some more money, Mr. Holt. Well, I'm a stockholder, and I've blocked the appropriation of one more red cent. I'm taking my loss and getting out. Uh, gents, this is Mr. Conrad Holt. Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles, Mr. Holt. Howdy, Howdy Mr. Hickok. Hulk. What are you doing here, Marshal? Well, they tried to save the train. If Jingles hadn't flagged us down, we'd have had a real wreck. Well, get that track cleared and get us to Ridley before we all freeze out here or before we're all killed on your blasted train. It's a menace to the whole West. 
And I'm going to see the end of it if it's the last thing I do. Woo-wee, that slickered up gent sure ain't on your side, Bob. Ah, that's easy to see, Jingles. Who is he, Bob? One of the top dogs in these parts. President of the Overland Stage and Freight Company and one of our stockholders. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to find out he was behind all these shenanigans. Easy, partner. You gotta prove things like that. We've got just one chance to pull out of the hole, Hickok. And I might do it if you'd help me. What's that, Bob? If we set the rails and run one train into Silversite by next Tuesday at 12 noon, the town will give us $50,000. Woo-wee, then you could really be in business. That's right. But if we don't stop these wrecks and accidents, we'll never make it. You're on, Bob. We'll help you all we can. Yeah, we sure will. Come on, the first thing we'll do is to get that boulder off the track and get your iron horse to start. Hold her, Newt! She's a rare <laughs> Boxes bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see the cycle, the Kellogg's House for breakfast show. Has a cheerful look and a lift for you. Start you up with a hoopty doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Here's something to let your pals in on. Tell them that all the Kellogg's cereal boxes have been changed. They're all different, all new, all ten of them. You can see them right now down at the grocery store. Why don't you go down and take a look? Did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display in brand new boxes, bright and gay. The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show. Somebody else that you'll want to tell about Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show of new packages that your grocer has, that's your mom. So tell her. She'll want to see how all these packages look. And while you're at it, ask her to get you some Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Boy, they're swell eaten right out of the box like candy or by the bowl full. Sugar pops are tops. Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display in brand new boxes, bright and gay. These famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful. The Kellogg's All Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look and a lift for you. Start you up with a hoop de doo. Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy. After clearing the boulder from the track, Bill and Jingles went with Bob Sharon to the railroad construction camp to help him complete the tracks to Silver Sight. How are things coming, Bob? Oh, mighty slow, Bill. We've still got seven miles to go and five days to make it in. You got enough rails to reach Silver Sight? Just enough. Just enough of everything, in fact. If we lost one spike, we'd be late, let alone rails and ties. Oh, it's getting colder, Bill. My fingers and toes are going to chip off if it gets any worse. That's not helping us any either. The ground's frozen sod is like chiseling in a rock. Maybe Hope's right, but I'm not giving up. This is my first big job, and I mean to see it through. Good boy, Bob. As long as things are quiet here, I think Jingles and I will ride into Silver Sight and see Mayor Salsey. Just so happens he's an old friend of mine. He is? Well, then maybe he can think of some way to help us. But look out for Conrad Holt. He lives there, too. Oh, that hard-nosed old salamander better not cut my trail. I'm getting to like him less by the minute. <laughs> You blundering, empty-headed dummy. Fresno, I should have known better than to trust you to do a job. Yeah, but, Mr. Hulk, me and Doby had that rock rolling. How could I tell a while Bill Hickok and that big, lumpy deputy of his had come along? Well, you could have stood and fought it out with him. You were two to one against Hickok. Uh, Twenty to one ain't good odds against Hickok, boss, and you know it. Well, that railroad's got to be stopped, I tell you. Yeah, but how? We tried everything from wrecking the train to killing the work crews. Hickok ain't going to make it much easier for us. Then Hickok's got to go. Go? Go where? To Boot Hill, that's where. Spread the word to all the boys. Shoot Hickok on sight. And that deputy, too. Gang up on him. Shoot him in the back. I don't care how you get him. Just get him. Bill Hickok! 
By the buttons on my vest. <laughs> well, Bill, what brings the country's greatest officer of the law to Silver Sight? I happened onto a rough deal, Mayor. A rough deal? What's that? Who's got a rough deal, Hickok? It's the aim of my administration to see that every man gets his just desserts. Desserts? Well, now I'll take pumpkin pie, if you please, Your Honor. Bingo? But he said... Never mind. But a little bit... Oh. Now tell me, Bill, who's got a briar in his craw? Bob Sharon, building the silver site in the Southern Railroad. Oh, yes. Now I see what you mean by a rough deal. Some low-down polecat is playing some dastardly tricks on young Sharon. And just who do you think that polecat is, man? I don't just think, Bill, I know, but I can't prove it. The polecat in question is Conrad Hoke. What's his game, Mayor Salsey? High-handed villainy and no-limit stakes. He's got the only stage and freight lines running to Silversight, and he's doubled his rates twice in six months. Highway robbery it is, and him living like a leading citizen of the town. You don't say. Well, yes, I do. Conrad Hoke's the only man in our fair city who stands against the railroad, and he bids fair to block it single-handed. Hmm. He's the fly in the pumpkin pie, huh? Well, now, Bill, maybe we'd better just go over and pay a little call on that sneaking maverick. Might just be a good idea at that, Jingle. Think twice, Hickok. Bob Sharon's worth the effort, it's true. He's moved heaven and earth to finish the railroad, and Silver Sight needs that road. But by now, you're a marked man, Bill. Hoke will stop at nothing to block the railroad, even to killing you in jingles. Hmm. So I say you're a marked man. <laughs> Bill, you reckon we ought to stay in this town tonight after all? Why not, Jingles? Well, if Hope's out to get us and he's got all those strong-armed thugs the mayor says he has them done, well, maybe it's just be better to go back to the railroad camp, huh? We'll go back in the morning, Jingles. Yeah, pardon me, stranger. Could you tell me the time? Sure. Get my watch out of my pocket here. Try to draw on me. Look out, Bill! That's an old trick, Buster. It's been a long time since anybody worked that one on me. Bill, that's another bushwhacker over in the alley. I'll get him. Watch this guy a minute. You ain't through with me yet, Nick Hockney. I haven't got much time. Who are you, mister? Bill, here comes another one. They're all around us. Oh, we'll never get out of this one alive, Buster. I just dropped in to tell you that your boys failed to get me and my partner tonight, Hoke. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Hickok. Now, that's a big old fat fib, and you know it, you sidestepping salamander. Boss, that fire saddle tramps can't talk to you like that. Let me get him. No, Fresno, use your thick head. Now, don't go talking to me like that again, boss. Then shut up. Yeah, Fresno. I've already got you lined up for pushing that rock off the cliff in front of the train. Who, me? What rock? What cliff? What train? Who, me? What rock? What cliff? What train? Just as innocent as a little Susie Ann eating frosting off a cake, ain't you? Your time's coming, Sonny, and it ain't far off. All right, Hickok. You can both get out of my office. You've made a lot of false accusations that won't stand up in court. And without proof, you're a dead duck. That's right, Hook. But if you keep overplaying your hand, I'm going to pick up that proof. And when I do, your jailer at the territorial pen will throw the key away. If they don't hang you first. That's fair warning, Hook. Lay off Bob Sharon. I mean to see he finishes that railroad by high noon without any more trouble from you. Well... Bill, how was your trip to Silverside? Oh, Buckshot, stand there. Oh, oh, Joker. Howdy, boss. Hey, you should have been with us. Got real exciting in spots. How's it going with you, Bob? I'm just about whipped, Bill. We've made less than a half mile today. The ground's frozen too hard to grade off flat. And you can't lay rails over humps. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, four and a half miles to go and four days to do it in. Now, that's a doggone crying shame. Hey, wait a minute, 
Maybe I've got an idea. Well, I could sure use one. The river runs alongside the railroad bed all the way to Silverside, doesn't it? Yes, yes, straight as a string, except for two curves. What are you getting at, Bill? And the river's frozen as solid as the ground. It'll carry the weight. Why not build your track on the river? Have you gone local, Bill Haycock? Oh, who ever heard of running a railroad on a river? This ain't the craziest thing that ever happened. I'm a seasick salamander. Where's that whistle cord? <laughs> well, you sure had a good idea that time, Bill. This river's just as solid as bedrock. Just hope you don't get a sudden thaw, Bob. Hey, that flat car we're pushing got the rails for that last quarter mile, Bob? It sure has, Bill. And just around this bend is where we start laying it. Pour the spurs to this old lion horse and let's get there, Bob. She's wide open now, Jingles. Hang on, we're rounding the curve. Hey, Bob, look up ahead there. Bill, it's a fire on the ice. Throw on the brakes, Bob. Stop this snort monster. We'll crash through the ice and go to the bottom of the river. It's too late. We're going to crash. Has a cheerful look and a lift for you. Start you up with, with a hoop de doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. It's a load of fun to see which of Kellogg's new cereal boxes you think are the best looking. Go down to the grocery store where you can see all ten new boxes and look them over. Look at the front of the packages, the big new picture, and at the back of the packages. There's lots of interesting new things on the backs. Games, cutouts, things to send for, stories, things like that. Go down and see this whole line of new packages today. Tell Mom, and she'll want to see all the new Kellogg cereal boxes and how they've been changed. Ask her to get you some Kellogg sugar corn pops. She knows how good they are, but tell her they're your favorite because you can eat them right out of the box like candy or out of the bowl for breakfast. You betcha. Sugar pops are tops. Kids love pops. Moms love pops. Pops love pops. Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful, the Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show. Has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you off with a hoop de doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. With victory almost ensured, Wild Bill, Jingles, and Bob Sharon were moving up in the engine to finish the railroad into Silver Sight when they rounded a curve to find a bonfire on the ice directly in their path. The engine plunged toward it, too late to avoid a crash. Where you hurt, partner? Oh, nothing but my feelings, doggone it. I'd like to get my hands on that polecat that built the fire on the ice. Bob, you all right? Yeah, but I'm with Jingles. That makes three of us. Bill, we dropped that flat car rail right in the river. Yeah, but the engine's not clearing that hole, and the ice is still solid under us. Try to back it off easy, Bob. Okay, I'll try. Here goes nothing. She's making it, Bill. Yeah. Just a little more, Bob. Are we all clear of that hole in the ice, Jingles? We sure are. I never thought you'd pull out of it. That's good enough, Bob. Just hold her right there. Well, that's got the engine out, but the rails are all shot, and that's all we had. You mean that varmint hoax got us licked after all? Uh, I'm afraid so, Jingles. That was a good fight while it lasted. 
Bill, there's that coyote we saw in Holt's office. He's riding across the ice. I'm going after him. He'll never catch him on foot, Bill. Buckshot's back in the stock car. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Look. His horse slipped and threw him. Now he's a foot, too. That's good enough for me. Give that sidewinder one for me, Bill. You pull your last trick, Fresno. Get away from me, Hickok. Just as long as it takes me to catch you. I'm warning you, law man. Keep away. Your aim slipping, Fresno. I won't miss this time. Ow! Now we can forget about the guns, Buster. You ain't taking me without no fight. That's good enough with me. Now, if you want some more, get on your feet. No. No, I don't want no more. Oh, Bill, what's going on here? Howdy, Mayor Saucy. Just caught a coyote, and he's about to howl. Yeah. Yeah, I'll howl. Shut up, Fresno. One word out of you, and you'll die where you stand. Now, hold it, Mr. Hulk. I got a bead on your diamond stick pin. And if you so much as sneeze, I'm liable to cut you down. Now, go ahead, Bill. All right, Fresno, talk. Sure. Conrad Hulk was behind all the trouble. He made us all cause them wrecks. Uh, shoot the crews, and he done a lot of it himself. Uh, and that's the truth. That's the end of you, Conrad Hulk. Uh, you all win bag. I've got a good mind. You got a good mind of what, Hulk? Uh, nothing. I know when I'm licked. But I won, too. The railroad missed getting to Silver Sight by a quarter mile. All right, Mary, he's all yours. Ask your sheriff to take him to jail. He sure will, Hickok. I'm sorry we didn't make it to Silver Sight with the railroad. Now, hold on, Bill. Folks, we've all seen the gallant fight young Bob Sharon and his railroad crew have made to get the tracks laid into our fair city by 12 o'clock today. And it seems a dead blasted crime to see him lose a long fight by just a measly quarter of a mile. And so, I'm declaring this an open meeting of the citizens. Our beautiful metropolis is going to be a real center if you will now vote to expand the city limits by one half mile all around. All in favor, say aye. aye. Motion carried. No opposition. Except Conrad Hoke, and he's a prisoner and he can't vote. So it now becomes my pleasant duty to award the $50,000... And my congratulations to one of the best dead blasted railroad men ever to drive a spike, Mr. Bob Sharon. Meet the journey. Let the celebration begin. Mayor Saucy, that was a real good move. The only thing you could do, Bill, my boy. Right's right, that's all. Well, I sure want to thank you, Mayor. You'll never mm. regret it. Welcome to Silverside, Sharon. I hope you settle down, raise a family. More votes for Saucy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want young Bob's kids to vote for you, Mayor, you'd better start finding him a pretty girl at this celebration. Because your votes are waiting on his wedding belt. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Thanks for being with us today, folks. We hope you'll be with us again on Friday. Uh, we got a pip of a story, Guy, all about hijackers at a silver mine called Bullets at Silver Bell. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Right. It's the great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Sugar Corn Pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Stan Farrar, Howard McNear, Tyler McVeigh, and Ralph Moody. Our director is Paul Pierce. Story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok runs into bullets at Silver Bell. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. 
Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. Cereals present Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Bullets at the Silver Bell. Kids, have you seen Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show? That's what we call the display that's down at your grocery store right now. It's a display of all Kellogg's cereals, and you'll want to see it because all the packages are new. They've all been changed, all ten of them. They've got new pictures on the fronts, and on the backs, there are games and cutouts and interesting things to read. Now, you'll want to see these new boxes pronto. See which one you like best, and which one your pals like best. Now, be sure you see the Rice Krispies package. What little law there was in the Old West was spread mighty thin, and the official duties of United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles took them over thousands of miles of weary trails. One of their longest and most dangerous rides took them south to the Mexican border where they ran into... Bullets at the Silver Bell. I don't get it, Bill. We ride a thousand miles across Texas just to do somebody a favor. Well, Tom Daly is a good friend of ours. Seems like we ought to help him out. But it's an awful long ride, and this country's down near the border is tougher than a 15-cent steak. We've been in tough country before, partner. Yeah, I just hope nobody starts any gunslinging. I've been shot at so much lately, I feel like a moving target. I don't think there'll be any gunplay this trip. All we have to do is deliver the deed to the Silver Bell Mine, get the money, and head back home. Yeah, and we do all this with Ace Clark, who's so mean the rattlesnakes won't bite him for fear of getting poisoned. Someday we'll get enough evidence to put Ace Clark in the jail, but this time it's straight business. Tom needs the money Ace is going to pay him for the mine. Oh, why didn't Tom come himself? He's a pretty sick man, Jingles. He couldn't ride a horse long enough to get here. Now, how come he owns the Silver Bell? His uncle left it to him. He hasn't made a nickel since he got it, so when Ace Clark made him an offer, he took it. It's only $5,000, but Tom can sure use it. Well, I'll be glad when we get the money and start heading back. Wait a minute, Jingles. Whoa, Buckshot. Oh, Joker, whoa. What's a six-horse freight wagon doing on this road? This road only goes to the Silver Bell. It must be hauling freight out from there. That driver's in a tar and hurry. Hey, let's give him room. Good idea. I'm sure moving that thing. Jingles, did you see that? I'll let go my arm. <laughs> Did I see what? That wagon's loaded with ore boxes stamped Silver Bell Mine. Come on, I want to talk to that driver. Let's go, Buckshot. Right, get on, George. What do you want to talk to him about, Bill? Those boxes. They're the kind they haul bar silver in, and if they're loaded with silver, Ace Clark is about to pull off the biggest swindle of his life. What if the driver won't talk? We'll make him talk. Hey, Bill, we're being shot at again, and I don't like it. If he wants to play rough, let's help him out. Take the other side of the road, and we'll give him some crossfire. That'll be a pleasure. All right, pull up. Keep those hands away from your holster. Oh, 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 oh. 
what is this? A pick up? Not exactly. We're agents for Tom Daly, who owns a silver bell. Yeah, and we think maybe something. Never funny mind, is... Jingles. Oh. I'll keep this gent covered, and you take a look in one of those boxes. No, oh, all right. You know Ace Clark runs a silver bell, and he ain't gonna like this. When Ace gets mad, somebody generally gets hurt. That's what I've heard. Where's Ace shipping this load? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to know? It'll be easy enough to check the railroad stations. There are only two of them you can get to from here. Hey, Bill. Yeah, Jingles? What a load this hombre's token. What is it? Well, just what you thought. Bar silver. There's a fortune back there. Probably a lot more money there than Ace is paying Tom for the mine. One of you's named Bill and the other Jingles, eh? You wouldn't be Wild Bill Hickok, would you? That's right. And I'm his deputy Jingle. I've heard you're pretty rugged, Hickok. But I don't think you're tough enough to explain to Ace why you stopped this shipment of silver. We'll find out about that when I talk to your boss. You can go now. I'll take it from here with Ace himself. That's too bad. You won't live long. Get up there. <laughs> Woo-hoo-wee! He's about as sociable as a black widow spider. Yeah. And from all I hear, his boss is even worse. Well, let's go. Go where? Go talk to Ace Clark. Up, but your hat. Well, get around, Joker. Are you sure you want to talk to Ace, Bill? Uh, of course I'm sure, Jingles. Why not? Well, I've heard that he does a lot of his talking with a 45 and that a lot of the people he talks to wind up seriously dead. Kellogg's on display in brand new boxes, bright and gay. These famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful. The Kellogg's All Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look and a lift for you. Start, Start you out with a hoop de doo. Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Well, how about it, pal? Did you see what I saw? Did you see Kellogg's All Star Breakfast Show of new packages? Yes, all ten of Kellogg's cereals are put in new boxes now. Have you seen the colorful new pictures on the fronts of these packages and the exciting things to do and read that are printed on the backs? Better hurry down to the grocery store. That's where you can look over all the new Kellogg's packages right now. Did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display in brand new boxes, bright and gay. The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show. When you go to the store to see Kellogg's swell new cereal boxes, take some of your buddies with you. One thing I'll bet you and your friends agree on, that's Rice Krispies. Boy, they are good. Ask Mom if you can have Kellogg's Rice Krispies for breakfast tomorrow. Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this rifle, the Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you out with a hoop de doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. When Wild Bill Hickok started out to deliver the deed to the worked-out Silver Bell Mine, he found that rich loads of silver were still being shipped out. He and Jingles went on to the mine office to talk with the buyer, the notorious Ace Clark. Sit down, gents. I have the money right here in my cash box. Let's wait just a minute, Ace. Well, no need to wait, Hickok. I suppose Tom Daly sent the deed to my mind like he said he would in his letter. That's right. I have it right here. And I have 5000 in cash that you can take back to him. We'll just wrap up the deal and you can be on your way. Maybe I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> Most people who drift down into this border country are anxious to get out again, Hickok. We don't offer many attractions to tourists. Well, Bill and I aren't exactly tourists, mister. Uh, we might kind of like it here. As a matter of fact, we're agents for Tom Daly. I think maybe we should have a look at his mine before we turn it over to you. Oh, that's a waste of time. The mine has been played out for a long time. Besides, Daly and I have already agreed on the sale. But the mine still belongs to Tom until Bill gives you the deed, don't look, it? Look, the mine isn't worth a nickel. I offered 5000 just for the salvage value. If you want to haggle over the deal, I might call the whole thing off. That might be a nice break for Tom. That's huh? none of your business, Hickok. 
I have a verbal agreement to buy, and I've already started moving some of the stuff out. Some of that stuff wouldn't be silver now, would it? I told you the mine's played out. We'd still like to have a look. Look here, Hickok. You're just a messenger sent here to pick up the money and give me the deed. I'd advise you to do just that and then hit the road. Now he's beginning to sound like Ace Clark is supposed to sound. Yeah, but it's time somebody talked back to him. Yeah. Do we take a look, Ace, or do I haul you off to jail for shipping silver out of someone else's mine? You must have run into my freight wagon on your way in here. That's right. Seems a little stupid for anybody with your reputation. It was supposed to go yesterday, but I had a little bad luck. Yeah, you got plenty of bad luck now that Bill's here. All right. I'll have my foreman show you through the mine. Pete, come on in here. Yeah, Ace? Shake hands with Wild Bill Hickok, Pete. Wild Bill? Gee, I'm glad to know you. Shake. Get your hands up, Hickok. There's a gun right in the middle of your back. I should have known better than to turn my back on you, Ace. You get your paws up, too, big boy, or Ace will plug your partner good. Search Hickok, Pete. If you find anything in his pockets that looks like a deed, hand it to me. All right, Ace, but keep him covered. I don't mind saying that this star packer scares me. Thanks, Pete. None of your talk. Just turn around and face the wall. Well, I can't find anything, Ace. Keep looking. You're smarter than he is, Ace. Why don't you come and take a look? Watch out for him now, Bill. He's got a gun. Now, just take you up on that, Hickok. Here, Pete. Take this coat and watch. Now, Jingle. Hold it. Drop that gun, Ace. No, you don't. Drop it, Ace. All right. All right. Uh, That's better. Now, you can stand over by the wall. How you doing, Jingles? Oh, fine. I'm just sitting on him. Real comfortable, too. Get off him, you big ox. You'll kill him. <laughs> Let him up, Jingles. Shucks, and just when I was getting relaxed. All right, get over there by the wall, you salamander. Uh, how much do you weigh? You ought to know you were on the bottom. <laughs> Jingles, look over our friend here and see if he has any more artillery on him. Well, that'll be a pleasure. Stuck a gun in our backs once when we weren't looking for it. Ace, I'm taking you and Pete into Laredo on charges of grand larceny. What grand larceny? Stealing silver from a mine you didn't own. I think we can try you for fraud, too, with the deal you tried to run on Tom Daly. Yeah, it would have worked, too, if it hadn't been for you. Hey, Bill. This sidewinder's carrying a derringer. I thought he might be the kind who would have a sleeve gun. Yeah, a cute little pistol, isn't it? It's a coward's weapon, Jingles. Now, come on, you two. We're taking you to jail. Well, how far to Laredo, Bill? Just a couple of more miles, Jingles. Well, I don't mind all the fights and trouble and misery we get into being lawmen, but I sure hate the job of herding prisoners to jail. That's where they belong when they've committed a crime. Oh, I don't feel sorry for them. When we've got prisoners, I can't relax and enjoy the beauty of the countryside. What particular beauties would you like to enjoy right now? Well, over there is a great big pile of black lava. Yeah? On both sides of the trail are big bunches of cactus. That's right. And up ahead, I can see the outlines of the Laredo City Dump. You're right. It's a beautiful country, Jingles. Oh, Bill, now, what I mean is that these two coyotes are just too plump peaceful. They're liable to make a break before we get them to jail. That's why we've got them riding up ahead of us with their hands tied. Yeah. If they try anything, we got them covered. Sure we have. But, Bill... What is it, partner? Why does the hair keep standing up on the back of my neck? Head for cover, Jingles. I'll bet I beat you to those big rocks. Drop, Joker! Around here, Buckshot. Whoa, whoa, boy. Oh, Joker. Give me a rifle. Oh, Bill, that's 200 yards. I've got to stop Ace before he gets to that lava pile. Oh, you can't. Right out of the saddle. And now for Pete. Both of them knocked right off in the desert. <laughs> Look at their horses run. <laughs> I didn't kill either of them, Jingles. Their hands were tied, so I aimed at the shoulders and just knocked them off balance. <laughs> friends up in that lava pile are real ornery, aren't they? Just keep your head down, partner. They won't be shooting to creases. I'm staying down. I make too big a target. The question now is, what do we do next? Yeah, that's a good question. We can't stay holed up in these rocks. That's right, but if we go out, we're liable to stop some lead from them varmints over there. Well, our real job is to pick up our prisoners and take them on to Laredo. Oh, sure. Our two brave heroes ride through a storm of bullets, upholding the law and order. I can just see us now. Don't make it sound so dramatic. Oh, well, 
That's exactly what we're going to do. Get Joker. Well, Billy, have you gone completely loco? I'm too young to get myself filled full of 45 slugs. You used to ride in rodeos, Jingles. Sure. You think you can pick up Pete at a full gallop? Well, sure I can, Then but... you take Pete, and I'll get Ace as we ride by. But, Bill... There's no time to argue. Oh. Steady, Buckshot. But, Bill... Whoa, Joker, now you hold still while I get aboard. All set, partner? Yeah, but, Bill... I'm... Ride as hard as you can and keep shooting at that lava pile to keep those varmints undercover. All right, get around there, Joker. I'll give them a little dusting before we start, but... The time they poke their heads up again, we should be halfway out of there. But, Bill, when I was riding in rodeos, nobody was shooting at me. That's right, Jingles, but this isn't a rodeo. Here we go. Oh, hold on, watch out. Move, boy, move. Jack Joker, you heard what Bill said. Ha, ha, ha. And a lift for you. Start you up with a hoopty doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Lucky you. Breakfast at your house can be more fun than ever because even the boxes, the Kellogg's boxes are more fun. They're all new. All ten of Kellogg's cereals are in new boxes. On the backs of the packages, you'll find swell games, cutouts, things to send for, and stories. Go down to the grocery store today and look them over. And by the way, there's no need to keep this news about Kellogg's new cereal boxes a secret. One person you want to tell for sure is Mom. Go down to the store with her so you can look over all Kellogg's all-star breakfast show together. And ask her to buy a big box of Kellogg's Rice Krispies while you're there. They're crisp and fresh and delicious. Say, did did you you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay. These famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful. The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you up with a hoop-de-doo. Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Bill and Jingles are off on one of the most dangerous acts of their careers as lawmen. They're trying to grab up their two prisoners, Ace Clark and his henchman Pete, right from under the guns of the outlaw's friends. Buckshot and Joker are running at full gallop as Bill says... Dust them off again, Jingles! Yeah, they're throwing up some dust, too. Stay low on the saddle. Here comes a pickup. That fellow Pete is going to be having to yank into the saddle. Don't miss him. I don't want to have to ride back through all that lead. Now, Bill, that last one was closed. They're all close enough. I'll get set to grab them. Here we go. Got your man, Jingles? Yeah, how about you, Bill? I'm all set. Let's go. Huff, buck shots. Yeah, Joker. You haven't got me yet, Hickok. Lie still across that saddle horn or I'll crack your head with a barrel of a colt. That goes for you, too, ugly face. I ain't said a word. Well, don't. Hey, Bill. They ain't shooting anymore. They're afraid they'll hit Ace and Pete. You mean we're safe and I can let my nerves uncurl again? We're safe for a couple of minutes, but our horses are carrying double and they'll be after us before long. Yeah, how far did you say it was to Laredo? About two miles. Why? Oh, that's just about the distance of a good long horse race. You're right, partner. Maybe Buckshot and Joker can give them a run for the money even with the weight they're carrying. Come on, Buckshot boy. Move, Joker. First prize is a chance to stay alive. Ha, ha, ha. with their horses, but they might with those bullets. Ace's friends don't seem to care whether they hit him or not now. I'm going to have plenty to stay home when I get loose. You ain't going to get loose for a long time. There's the jail right up ahead of us. Looks like your friends stopped at the edge of town, Ace. Yeah, looks like you won the horse race. We sure did. Whoa, Buckshot. Whoa, whoa, Joker, that's far enough. Well, here's the sheriff coming to meet us, Bill. Yeah. 
Slide down off of those horses, you two. Well, if it ain't wild Bill and Jingles and it. Well, what's these two varmints you got tied up here? A couple of swindlers I thought you'd be looking for, Sheriff. H. Clark and Pete. <laughs> Bring them on inside. Well, we didn't have any trouble catching these two, but we sure had a time getting them here to jail. I noticed some of Ace's friends were right on your heels. I know who they are. We'll round them up later. Well, lock them up, Sheriff, and I'll swear out a warrant for grand larceny, fraud, resisting arrest, and, and a couple of other things I'll think of later. Dad, Bernard Bill, I hope you've got enough evidence to convict this fellow Ace Clark. I've been trying to get it for a long time. He was shipping silver out of a mine that didn't belong to him. That's pretty good evidence. Yeah, I hope we convict him, too. I'm happy just to have him in jail. You know, we come darn close to getting killed just bringing him in. You'd better check this jail over or I'll break out of it. And if I do, Hickok, I'm coming after you. I've heard that from other men, Ace. And if you ever do, I'll be ready for you. Put that big moose peed in this cell, Jingles. Sure, Sheriff. Get along. Uh, you. Cut the ropes on his wrist, Jingles. Here, Ace, I'll cut you loose. Thanks, Bill. Oh, my hands are pretty stiff from being tied up so long. Well, so long, Pete. I'll see it your trial. Ah! Am I loose? Yep. Now get in that cell. No, I won't. I got Bill. I'll break you in two. No, you won't. I got a gun on you, Ace. Don't shoot. You'll hit Bill. Hold your fire, Sheriff. I'll take care of this. You mean I'll take care of And when we get him in jail, he still gives us trouble. He won't give us any more trouble, Jingles. Let's pick him up and lock him in the cell. You know, there's one thing wrong with being a thief out here in the West. Sooner or later, you're liable to run into Wild Bill Hickok. And Jingles. Well, this is it, Bill. This is where Tom Daly lives. I know, Jingles. Remember, I've been here lots of times. Oh, that's right. But this time, we're bringing him pretty good news. You know, I can't wait to see what he says. You'll find out in a minute. There he is out front. Ooh, but the woo. Oh, Joker, stand, boy. Hi, Tom! Hi, Jingles. Bill, I thought that was you, so I came out to meet you. Well, we got to your Silver Bell mine and got back again, Tom. Have any trouble? I mean, with getting my money for the deed? I sure can use that 5000 Well, we didn't have any trouble with the deed, but we sure had some trouble with Ace Clark and some of his friends. He didn't back out of the deal for that worthless old mine, did he, Bill? He sure did, Tom. Here's your deed to the Silver Bell back again. But, Bill, I can't use the deed. I, I need the money. I thought of that, too. I collected a check for $10,000 for the last shipment of silver out of the mine. There'll be a lot more as soon as we find out just how much of it Ace Clark stole. You mean... That's a good mine? Yeah, that's just what he means. And you almost gave it away. But I... I... Yeah, I don't know how to thank you or what to say. He's had me swindled beautifully. No, don't bother saying anything. Bill was just doing his duty, but... Well, next time... Next time, pick somebody that ain't so tough to swindle you. Ace Clark and his friends were a little too tough for Jingles, Tom. Oh, they weren't either. Didn't I pick up that big fella Pete with one hand while Joker was at a gallop? You sure did, partner. Well, I'd like to see you or Pete or Ace or anybody else pick me up with one hand, even if your horse was standing still. No, sir, it can't be done. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's our story for today, folks. Join us again on Monday, will you? Yes, sir, because you won't want to miss Wild Bill Hickok being best man at a wedding which proves to be a dangerous wedding. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right, it's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. 
Today's cast included Ken Christie, Stan Waxman, and Hal Gerard. Our story was written and directed by Paul Pierce. Music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok attends a dangerous wedding. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you. From that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingle. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of a hornet's nest. The next time Mom goes to buy groceries, remind her to look at the Kellogg's display. Look for it yourself. You'll both find it's exciting and interesting because every single one of Kellogg's cereals is in a new, different-looking package. Of course, while you're looking, you'll want to buy a supply of cereals, too. Sugar Corn Pops, for instance. That's the cereal with the sweetening already on it. And zowie, it sure tastes great. You can eat it right out of the box like candy or out of the bowl for breakfast. Get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pop soon. In the early days of the great Southwest, two men, tall in the saddle, cast their long shadows across the plains. They were United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his trusted deputy Jingles the most famous of those who fought for law and order in an age of violence. One great fight took them in a wide circle which began and ended in the ominous whine of a hornet's nest. Come on, Jingles, we got to move on. Oh, but Bill, I ain't had enough to drink yet. This is the first water we've seen since yesterday noon. You know, partner, we're taking a chance stopping at all. Biggest Jack could be watching us right now. <clears throat> well, I don't care if that bushwhacker's got a bead on the back of my neck. I'd just as soon be shot as to die thirsty. <laughs> well, come on. We've got to track him down. Yeah, but I ain't enjoying it. Jingles, what's that limb over your head? That's a hornet's nest. Oh, now, Bill, hornets will... Ow! Help! Now help! you've done it. Now you've done it. Just jump in the creek, Jingles. The creek? Yeah! Quick, drop your gun. Come on. In the water. Have those little stingers gone, Bill? <laughs> yeah. Boy, you sure fixed us up in fine shape. Oh, come on, let's climb up. Hey, right where you are, Hickok. You too, big boy. Uh, Bill is Pegasus Jack. Yeah, partner. That's right. The same man you've been trailing all the way from Gallup. Come on, Pegasus. Cut the palaver and plug it. No, Muley, there's no hurry. When they jumped in that water, they dropped their guns right here on the bank. They can't do nothing. Doggone it, Bill. This is all my fault. Never mind, partner. No, Hickok. It don't make no difference now, does it? I reckon many a man give his next ten years to get you like this. You may get me, Pegasus, but you'll find another long shadow in your trail if you do. Let him come. All right, Muley. Pick up their guns. What's he going to do, Bill? This is what I'm going to do, you big ox. Duck, Jingles. 
right, Beauty. Let's get to the horses and ride. Yeah, let's get on. <coughs> Bill! Bill, where are you? <coughs> Jingle. Did they hit you, partner? No, but he sure came close enough to make me mad. Well, let's get out of this water and get dry. Yeah. Bill, how do you reckon I managed to get us into messes like this? Now, don't go worrying about that. Oh, doggone it anyway. Look at us. Like a couple of half-drowned roosters. Our guns gone, our horses gone. Easy, partner. I got more hornet bumps swelling up on me than goose pimples on a dude in a (laughs) gunfight. I got a few myself here and there. Yeah, you sure have. Have your left eyes closing up fast. Hey, hey, Bill, you're bleeding. That low-down coyote did hit you. Yeah. Nick, the side of my neck, Jingles. Oh, now I am mad. And I ain't going to be satisfied until we run those two bush-hiding killers to the ground and watch them swing for all they done. We'll get them, partner. You ready to travel now? Yeah, but how are we going to travel, Bill? It's 20 miles. Hold it, partner. Hold it. Things aren't always as black as they seem. Hey, you whistling for Buckshot? Sure. When you fogged up those hornets, Buckshot and Joker took off for the tall timber. Come on, Buckshot. That's our boy. <laughs> and here's old Joker. I never was so glad to see that horse in all my days. Bless his old honorary heart. Steady, Buckshot. <laughs> steady, boy. All right, Jingles, into that saddle. Yeah. Ow. Oh, oh, oh. Cut it out, Joker. Ow. What's the matter, partner? Oh, Bill, I don't sit so comfortable in this saddle. Those doggone hornets stung me all over. Well, Ow. settle down and ride. We got a trail to follow and a couple of right mean killers to catch. Hi, Buckshot. Hi, boy. Well, it ain't gonna be no fun for me this way. Go, Joker! Ho, ho, ow, 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 ow! Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see the cycle. The Kellogg's All Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you up with a hoopty doo. Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Be the first one in your gang to see Kellogg's All Star Breakfast Show of new packages. See how all of Kellogg's cereal packages have been changed. See how much better looking they are. Get hep to all the interesting games, cutouts, offers, and stories on the backs of these new packages. See them at your grocer's right away. Did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display in brand new boxes, bright and gay. The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show. Don't make a secret out of the big news that Kellogg's cereals are all dressed up in new packages. Tell Mom. She'll want to know, and she'll want to see them, too. Now, when you tell her, remind her to get a couple of packages of Sugar Pops. Kellogg's swell-tasting cereal with the sweetening already on it. Will you do that? Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful, the Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you up with a hoop-de-doo. Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. While Bill Hickok and Jingle, still soaking wet, without their guns and covered with hornet stings, set out on the trail of Pecos Jack and Muley, two desperate killers wanted by the law. It was late that night when Bill suddenly called a halt. Whoa, butcher. Whoa, boy. Pull up, Jingles. Whoa, whoa, Joker. We going to make camp here, Bill? Quiet, Jingles. What do you see, Bill? Look down there in that drawer, partner. Huh? Oh, hey, that's a campfire. You reckon it's them? I know one way to find out. Come on, Buckshot. We'll leave the horses in this clump of trees and have a look. I'd sure like to get my hands on that sneaking horse thief, Pecos Jack. Easy hold, Joker. Tiptoe, will you? This'll do it. Stand there, Buckshot. Yeah. Joker, if I hear one snort out of you, I'll hide your nose bag. Hey, Bill, we got no guns. Bring that rope off your saddle. Okay, let's go. I'd sure like to lay a loop over those sidewinders. Well, if that's Pecos Jack and Muley by that campfire, we'll have to catch them quiet and quick. 
They got more guns than an army. Come on and take it easy. Hold it, Jingles. Bill, it's them. That's right. Quiet now. Let's take them, Bill. Not so fast. Look them over first. Spot their guns. Look overhead for any limbs that might stop your rope. Well, Muley, we got nothing to worry about now. Hey, it's a sure, Pecos. That Hickok's got nine lives. They don't kill easy. They went under the water, didn't they? You saw him. <laughs> he don't know that water deflects bullets, does he, Bill? Guess not. You ready to take him, partner? I've been ready. All right. Swing a small loop and throw it straight or we're in real trouble. Spread out. You take Muley. Mine's ready. Say when. All right. Now. Jerk that rope, Jingles. Take him. Come to me, you low-down varmint. I'm going to stomp you into the ground so far you'll come out in China. Hey, cut it out. Let go of me. That rope cut me in two. I hope it does. Pick up. Where'd you come from? Take us that told you had nine lives. Well, you ain't got me yet, Kicker. Switch it, Bill. So you want it the hard way. Kill her. Well, that does it, Bill. I got this one hogtied. All right, partner. Pick up our guns. And let me throw a hitcher on this Jasper, and we'll take him to the sheriff at Big River. Howdy, Sheriff. Brought you a couple of visitors. <laughs> Thought you might be lonesome. Hickok, where'd you catch them? In Red Rock Wash, about three miles south of here. Well, then that's in my county. They're my prisoners now. I'll take them to prison myself. That's all right with me. Well, now, your attitude ain't what I'd call real sociable for a law and order man, Sheriff. Never mind, Jingles. I should warn you, Sheriff, they're three-time killers. Almost five times. They darn near plugged me. I don't need no warning. I don't know how to handle killers. All right, I've had my say. Just sign this paper showing we delivered them to you, and we'll be on our way. Sure, I'll sign it. There you are. And any more outlaws you hear about in my county, just send me word. I can take care of things around here without your help. You sure can take care of the bragging for two counties. You cabbage head. Let's go, Jingles. Good luck, Sheriff. Yeah, and you're going to need a whole pot full of luck with them, too. Luck nothing. All right, you two hombres. March back into that cell room. Well, ain't you going to take these ties off our hands? Yeah, they're cutting my wrists in half. I'll take them off when you're in that cell. You ain't pulling no tricks on me. Now, move. Nah. you're in. Now, turn around and I'll cut them ropes loose. But no tricks or I'll blast you. Well, that's better. Yeah. Get him, you No, you don't. Baker's he got me. Uh, you ain't getting me, sir. Now, I'll take that gun, you old coot. No. No. That's all for you, sheriff. Yes. Sure, I'm grateful you got so bullheaded. Now I'm free and ready to hit the trail again. Bill, I don't understand you at all. After we chased them two varmints down through half of New Mexico and Texas... You turn him over to that Henri Sheriff at Big River without so much as a how do you do? We caught him in his county, Jingle. Well, I don't care. We caught him, and I'd sure laugh if they got away from him. No, you wouldn't, Jingles. Then they'd be loose to kill somebody else. Well, something ought to teach that doggone high sounding sheriff a lesson. Wait a minute, Jingles. Who's that fogging down the road? Who, Buckshot? Who? Oh, ho, ho, Joker. Hey, Bill, that looks like the sheriff. It sure does, partner. And he's lathering. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Hickok. Hickok, I, I reckon I've been a feather-headed fool. Well, I could have told you that this morning. You didn't have to ride all the way out here to tell us. Easy, partner. What's the matter, Sheriff? Bill, weren't no sooner than you rode away from my office. I, I was putting them in a cell, like you said, and, and when I went to untie their hands, they turned on me. You mean you let them get away? Hold it, Jingles. Oh. Go on, Sheriff. Well, they, they, they spread out. 
Uh, I got the big clumsy one, but the long, mean Jasper got away. Let's pick his jack, Sheriff. Which way did he ride? The tracks head northeast to Big River. Bill, I'm eating some crow, I reckon, but will you help me track him down? No, I don't know whether we will or not. Sure we will, Sheriff. Oh. You say you headed northeast? That's right. If he stayed on that tack, he'd cut the Chisholm Trail. If I've got the right hunch, maybe we can save time with a shortcut. Come on, Sheriff. We're riding, partner. Hi, Buckshot. Hi, boy. Jeff, Joker. Bill, this time if we catch that varmint, I'm taking him to jail myself. Doggone it, Sheriff. See what you done by letting Pegasus Jack hit you over the head? I didn't let him, Dad Bernard. I told you he tricked me. Well, if it had left the trail, we couldn't find it in this ring. Sometimes an outlaw leaves a different kind of a trail to follow, Jingle. Yeah, Bill, a trail of dead men. Huh. Hope we don't find no more of those. Well, Bill, this is a mighty big and empty country through here. Don't know how you hope to catch up with Pegasus Jack now. Yeah, Bill. How do you reckon to find him? Remember Shorty Millrod, partner? Shorty Millrod? Oh, yeah, that pint-sized rustler with a skin full of meanness. That's the one. Yeah, the time he gave us a slip, he joined up with a cattle drive right about here on the Chisholm Trail and... Hey, Bill, I got it. I figured you would. You're thinking maybe Pegasus Jack is trying the same trick, joining up with a herd headed for the Kansas Railroads, huh? Say, Bill, that's a pretty good hunch at that. Well, I see a blanket of lightning up ahead, and that could be playing across the horns of a herd. Then that's where we'll try first. Come on, let's prod up these ponies and find the trail boss. Now, Mr. Hickok, you're darn near asking me the impossible. He just asked if you'd seen an owl hoop called Pecos Jack riding with your herd. I heard him. Then cough up an answer, you longhorn puncher. Shucks, gents, I ain't even seen some of my own punches for three days. This herd half spooked from the lightning dancing on the horns. We ain't slept since Tuesday. Ain't been on the saddle. Then no stranger's been around. I ain't saying they ain't been here. Could have rode ten feet away and not caught my eye. Them wall-eyed critters of mine take my full watching. Got them spread out for five miles. Tell you this, Hickok. What's that, Roper? If there was a stranger ride up, I'd ask him if he could ride her a lot faster than I'd ask him if he was a killer. I gotta get these cows across the big sand before she swole beyond swimming. You wouldn't like to give me a hand, would you? No, we wouldn't. I rode her to plenty in my time, and I ain't doing it no more. Just all of that. <laughs> Bill, the sheriff, he's fallen. Somebody shot him. Come on, partner. It feels like somebody don't like him much. Who could have done that? Maybe you've got strangers around that don't know it, Roper. The sheriff's dead, Jingle. You sure you ain't seen Pecos Jack, you Texas roadrunner? No, I ain't. I wouldn't know him for some. If you two are going to be drawing lead like that, I reckon I'd be a lot more comfortable after I'd said goodbye and seen your backs fading through the rain. Well, sorry to disappoint you, mister. But you offered us a job riding herd. Seeing what's just happened to the sheriff, I reckon we'll take that. Dad, Dad, blasted that last one, done it. That herd's headed for no place. Bill, it's a stampede. Right for the head end, Jingles. Maybe we can turn the leaders and mill them. Hi, Buxo, hi. Go, Joker. Right now, take his jack left the way. Jingles, that big stimulant is gone local. Right for your life. Has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you out with a hoop de doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Want to have some fun? Get down to the grocery store and see all the new boxes of Kellogg's cereals. See which one you like best. Take one of your buddies in with you and see if the two of you agree on which one of the new Kellogg's boxes is the best looking and the most interesting. How about seeing them today? <laughs> Tell 
Mom how all Kellogg's cereal boxes have been changed and ask her to get you a couple of packages of sugar corn pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Yes, sir, sugar pops are top. Say, did, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this nightfall. The Kellogg's All Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look and a lift for you. Start, Start you out with a hoop de doo. Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. <laughs> When Bill was unable to see the man who shot the sheriff, he told Roper, the trail boss, that they'd join his cattle drive. But just then, a big crack of thunder spooked the cattle and a stampede was on, with jingles right in the path of a big steer gone mad. Bill! Hold your throat out of his way, Jingles. Oh, you grinner, get over there. Here! Yeah! Head for the hills, Junker! That's it, Jingles. Now let's turn the point. Don't run it, Bill. That's harder than... Stop talking and come on. Those two nasty horns in the leader, Bill. Let's get them, partner. Now, bear down on them. Put them. Yeah. Get around there, you hungry, wall-eyed, long-horned. Hey, hey. It's working, Jingles. Come on, Cookie. Give me just another dipper full of them beans and bacon. No, sir. I still got hands to feed. What you done to earn six plates of beans, what you already ate? Uh, it's ain't nothing to get in a seventh one. Better give it to him, Cookie. Mm. He helped Bill turn that point and break a stampede in a storm last night. There, you see? A, a big dipper full. Please. Mm, that don't call for a month's rations. So far, no strangers showing up, huh, Cookie? No, not yet, Mr. Hickok. Just our own hands. Some still to come, though. With the sun out, they'll be riding in. Hey, here come some riders now. And I ain't seen that pinto horse before. Quick, Jingles. Run behind that wagon. So he won't see us, huh? Yeah. Not until we're ready for him. Well, howdy, boys. Sit down and eat. Beans are plenty all around. No, stranger, don't hang back. Sit and eat. Thanks. You joined up with your herd just before dark last night. I reckon I could use a ration if you got plenty. Sure have. There you are. More where that come from. Mmm, smells real good. Say, you joined up with the herd last night, cowboy? That's right. What about it? Well, now, I wouldn't go barking at the gent that's feeding you, stranger. Instead, you better shake hands with the trail boss, that there's Roper. Ah, uh, my name's Roper. I'm glad to make your acquaintance, Roper. Same here if you helped with my herd last night. Didn't get your name, though. I didn't throw it. You just call we'll me... We'll just a... call you Pickus Jack, mister. Pickus! Scramble, you waddies! There's gonna be gunplay! You bet there be... Well, there goes another good gun, and that takes the teeth out of one more outlaw. All right, Pecos, sit down and eat your bean. Then we're going to take you where you can pay for shooting the sheriff and those other three men. Yeah, finish your beans. <laughs> and, Cookie, I reckon I could do with another plate, too. <laughs> sort of one for the road, so to speak. And it's going to be a long road, so make it a great big one. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's all for today, folks. We'll have another Wild Bill Hickok story for you on Friday. And this one's where Jingles gets all tangled up with a couple of gals in a story called Jingles the Ladies' Man. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pop. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think sugar corn pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> Yes, 
sir, Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Joe Duvall, Clayton Post, and Fred Shields. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rourke. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok gets into trouble because of Jingles, the ladies' man. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. present Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Jingles, the Ladies' Man. Something's happened that you'll want to see, and your mom will want to see. Every single one of Kellogg's cereal boxes have been changed. Yes, all ten of them. They all look different with pictures on the front and interesting games, cutouts, and things to read on the backs. Tell Mom to look at them, too. And ask her to get you a big box of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. That's the crisp, fresh, snap, crackle, pop, talking cereal, you know. When the West was a youngster, there were very few ladies to be seen in the cow towns or on the scattered homesteads dotting the open plains. But where men go, their women follow. And by the early 70s, calico was a common sight in Arizona. This fact led United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok to a surprising discovery one day when suddenly he learned that the deputy at his side was actually Jingles, the ladies' man. Sorry, Dad, but there are no biscuits because we're still out of flour. I know, honey. But Duke Nuller's coming to end his rope. You sent for Wild Bill Hickok? I sure did. Nuller can't keep on stealing every shipment of flour from the freight wagons and selling it at double the price. Wild Bill's going to take care of that just as soon as I tell him what I know. Well, I wish you hadn't found it out. Now, don't you worry, Marie. Duke don't know I know what I know. How do you know he doesn't? I don't reckon he saw me back at the warehouse that night. But if he did, he'd be out to kill you, sure. Dad, I'm scared. I've been scared ever since you came home and told me. I won't even go near Carlotta's cafe because I'm afraid he'll see the fright in my eyes and know I found out his secret. I'm scared, I tell you. Now, honey, no Stilson's ever been scared of the likes of Duke Nuller. But he might try to kill you. Well, Bill Hickok, you cannot take my jingles away from me. He's mine. He will stay here and marry me. Marry you? Oh, no, 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 Carlotta, honey, See, I just... you will marry me, and we will run the cafe together with each other, no? No, 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 Bill, get me out of this, please. You got yourself into it, making calf eyes at her, partner. Oh, but Bill... <laughs> you better stampede, partner, before she gets her brand on you. The pottery will be showing up here any minute. What is that you say about the pottery? 
Oh, um, now, now, Carl, Otto, he, he didn't say nothing about the pottery. Now, you just go back to your, well, to your nice little old kitchen and bake a batch of beans or something, and then I'll be back on it. Hmm. Now you're talking, Jingles. I want to get out to Fred Stilson Ranch before dark. No, you're not leaving me, Jingles. Oh, yes, I do. I mean, I am, Carlotta. I, I'm going right now. You go to see that Marie Stilson. I know. You like her. You not like Carlotta. Well, all right, you go. I hate you. Hey, 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 easy, Carlotta. Bill, let's get out of here. You said it, partner, and fast. Run for it. <laughs> well, now, Carlotta, that was a right fine act. Look real convinced. No, you go away from me, you knaller. What's the matter? I said it was a fine act. I'm proud of you, Carlotta. Well, I am not proud. And it was no act. I mean it, every little word. What? <laughs> you mean you really got a crush on that big ox, Jingle? Don't you call him no ox. I fix you for that. Hey! I just cut that out, you little wild ass. No, 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 you let go of me. Go, I tell you. I'll let go when you simmer down. All right, I simmer down. But I fix you later. You forget who's boss around here. You're no more my boss. I quit. You're a bad man, I know. You want to kill Wild Bill Hickok and my jingles. Now, whatever give you such a good idea? It was your idea, not mine. That's why you want me to make up the jingles. You're talking too much, Carlotta. And I will talk a lot more. You see. You see? You come back here, you... Ah, now, that racks up a big mess for me. If she runs and tells Hickok, I'll have to kill them all. Now, they're not running me out of business. Duke Nuller ain't no dope. Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come you with. Go see this hypo. The Kellogg's all star breakfast show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you out with a hoopy doo Kellogg's for breakfast. And a happy, happy day. If you haven't seen the whole lineup of new Kellogg's cereal boxes, don't put off the fun any longer. They've got new pictures, colorful pictures on the fronts. And they've got loads of interesting things to make and play and read on the backs of the packages. Look for Kellogg. Did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display in brand new boxes, bright and gay. The Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show. When you go to your grocers to see Kellogg's new packages, go with a couple of friends. It's more fun that way. Before you go, ask Mom if you can bring home a big box of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. That's the talking cereal, you know. You'll love the way they taste. Get some, so you can have them for breakfast tomorrow morning. Say, did, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display. In brand new boxes, bright and gay, these famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful, the Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look. And a lift for you. Start you out with a hoop de doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Duke Nuller had threatened death to Wild Bill, Jingles, and Carlotta without their knowing about it. Bill and Jingles, after leaving Carlotta's cafe, rode out to Fred Stilson's ranch. Who, Buckshot? Who, boy? Oh, 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 Joker. Doggone it, Bill. Carlotta upset me so. I got a whole new appetite by now. Well, maybe Marie Stilson will offer you a snack, Jingles. Come on. I'm going to be awful careful how I go complimenting these gals on their cooking from now on. Seems I got a mighty powerful and appealing personality all of a sudden. Yeah, partner, and don't forget, this is leap year. It is. That's right. Hey, wonder why nobody came out to meet us. They must have heard our horses. Does seem kind of funny. Go away. Get off that porch right now or I'll shoot through the door. Hey, Bill, that's Marie Stilson. Yeah, something's wrong. I've got a rifle and I'll use it. Hold it, Marie. Don't shoot. It's Bill and Jingles. Yeah, Wild Bill Hickok and me. Jingles. Oh, Bill. Jingles. I was never so glad to see anybody in my life. Come in. What's the matter, Marie? Yeah, you look like you've been fighting the Indian War single-handed. Now put down that rifle and tell her. 
Oh, yes. Hey, who's that out there? It's Wild Bill and Jingles, Dad. Well, bring them in here. All right, Dad. He's in the bedroom, Bill. Will you come in? Sure. What's the matter? Are you sick or something? He'll tell you all about it. You're oh. dead very night, I'll tell you. But I almost missed my chance. Sit down, gents, and howdy. Looks like somebody pieced your head with a bullet, Fred. That's just what I did, Bill. Well, who was the varmint that used you for a target? Well, I couldn't see him. Shot through the window. But I know who he is, all right. That's the reason I sent for you. To run him down. And Dad didn't think he knew we were wise to his scheme. Let me tell it, honey. All right. You ever hear of a slick Jasper named Duke Nuller, Bill? Duke Nuller? Yeah. No, I never did. Is he the one that shot you? Well, I'd stake my new crop of calves on it. Why are you so sure it's Nuller? But it couldn't be anybody else, Bill. Dad has no enemies, and he found out about Nuller's flower business. Does he pick flowers? Never mind, Jingles. Oh. No, he's been robbing the freight wagons, bringing flour out here. And he's selling it at double the price or more for every sack. And everybody has to have flour, so he's getting rich. Where does he do his business, Fred? At the big warehouse on the north end of town. I saw him bring in a wagon one night, and when two men jumped him... And he shot him. Bill, he sounds like a polecat with a skin full of meanness. He sure does. Fred, do you know where Nuller hangs out? Well, I can tell you that. He's always around Carlotta's cafe. Carlotta? Uh, Bill, that's where we were tonight, but he wasn't there. No, Dad Burnett. He was out here putting a crease in my skull. I reckon we'll have to prove that, Fred. Now, who in tarnation could that be? Dad, maybe it's Nuller come back. Well, if it is, he's due to get a big surprise. You better let me answer the door, Marie. All right, Bill. <laughs> and I'm coming too, Bill, to back you up. All right, partner. Stand to one side. Well, I'm ready for him. Open it up. Bill, let me in quick. Bill, it's Carlotta. Who is it, Bill? It's Carlotta, Marie. Bill, I've come to warn you. Carlotta? What's she doing here? Oh, so I am not welcome here, eh? You want to steal my jingles from me, so I'm not welcome. Oh, now, Carlotta, don't be talking like I that. I talk like I please. Well, I tell her what I think. I pull her hair out. No, 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 don't do that. She doesn't like me at all. Not even a little bit, do you? Partner, I don't know how you get yourself into such a jazz, but you sure keep things stirred up. Now, Bill, I didn't do nothing. All else. right, all right. Carlotta, what do you mean when you said you came to warn us? It is Duke Nuller. He will try to kill you. And if he finds me here, he will kill me too. Hey, what's going on out here? Dad, you shouldn't be out of bed. Oh, he shot. Duke says he's going to kill you, too. Well, he'd better polish up his aim a mite. I ain't dead yet. Bill, the window behind you. Shut out the lamp. I can't see. Yeah, partner, I'll get him. You get him, Bill? No. Oh, it's so dark. Please, somebody, get a light. Outside, Jingles, after that sidewinder. Wait. Wait, Bill, I hear something. What is it? Quiet. Everybody, listen. There. Hear it? Oh, it sounds like a snake. Bill? Bill, is that what I think it is? I wouldn't doubt it, Jingles. Oh. Don't anybody move. Yeah, here it is. Dynamite sticks with a short fuse. Stay where you are. There. All right, get on the floor quick, everybody. Woo-wee, that coyote means business. Come on, Jingles, we're running Duke Nuller to ground. I'm with you, Bill. And so am I. You will not leave me, Jingles. Oh, no, Carlotta, honey. This is man's business and woman's place is in the home. Now, you stay here. You gourd-headed fool. How could you miss? Oh, it wasn't my fault, Duke. Must have been Hickok. I shot out the lamp like you said and threw the dynamite through the window. And the first thing I know, it come bouncing back out and blew up right under me. Darn near sends the fringe off my shaps. Yeah, I should have gone myself. But this time, Stilson and Carlotta will have told Hickok all they know. Yeah. And that marshal will be hot on your trail. What are we going to do? We ain't going to do nothing. What do you mean, boss? Quit asking fool questions and slide that door back, Red. Oh, yeah. You got to unlock it first, Jughead. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. All right, leave it open. This won't take long. What are you planning, Duke? Just a little surprise for Wild Bill Hickok when he gets here, that's all. Yeah? Like what? Just do what I tell you to. First, I'll take the stuff out of the safe. Yeah. 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 
fit. Now, this is all I need. Hey, look at the money. I never seen so many yellow backs in all my life. And I doubt if you'll ever see so many again, either. Now, what do you mean by that? All right, get that can of kerosene and spread it all over that first stack of flour sacks. And all over the floor, too. Hurry up. Oh, sure, boss. But if this stuff gets near a match, the whole place will go up and nothing flat. Now you're getting the idea, Red. Oh, I'm figuring on Hickok and Jingles coming here, huh? Not figuring, Red. I'm counting on it. Now I'll set a candle up just about here. Now light it. Hey, hey, be careful with that match, Duke. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Uh, now this long string tied to the candle. Then run it along the floor to the outside. Hey, you ain't planning to burn this warehouse down with all our flour in, are you? Why not? Didn't cost me anything. And I got plenty of money already. Yeah, but what about me? You? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot about you, Red. Oh, now, dude, you couldn't forget. Hey, what are you doing with that gun, Duke? You want to turn around, Red? No, no, Duke. You wouldn't shoot me. Duke, after I worked for you and helped you in all your business, you need me, Duke. No, Red. I don't need you any longer. Oh. So long, Red. I'll just go outside and sit back in the shadows to wait for them two snoopers, Hickok and Jingles. Guess this is it, Jingles. Who what got it? Oh, yeah. Oh, Joker. This is the only big warehouse at this end of town. There's a light inside. Maybe we're in luck. Well, better unholster that hog leg if Nuller's in there. I'm enough for that when he starts shooting. Now, that could be just a doggone second too late. Huh. Seems kind of funny the door should be open. Watch out for tricks, Jingles. What for? He don't know we're coming after him. Nuller may be smarter than you give him credit for. I don't get what you're... Oh, Bill, I just stumbled over something. Bill. Bill, Bill, it's Hmm? a body. You're right, partner. And he's not long dead. Bill, I don't like this setup. I don't either. Hey, you smell kerosene? <laughs> yeah, 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 Bill, I do real strong. Go on, kick uh, Bill, somebody's closed the door. I'll blast it. Hold your fire, Jingles. That won't do any good. Bill, look. Look, that candle is falling right, right in the kerosene. And a lift for you. Start you off with a hoopty doo Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. Yes, happy days are here. Happier than ever when it's Kellogg's for breakfast. That's because the Kellogg's cereal boxes are more fun than ever. There are colorful new pictures on the fronts and on the backs. There are exciting stories to read, cutouts to make, things to send for, games to play. Go down to your grocery store and see how swell the new Kellogg cereal boxes look. Here's something to think of, too. Mom will want to see these new Kellogg cereal packages, so tell her about Kellogg's All-Star Breakfast Show. And go along with her down to the store so you can both look over the whole lineup of new Kellogg's packages. And when you're there... Ask her to buy a big package of the famous talking cereal. Now, you know which one that is. Sure enough, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Say, did you see what I saw? Kellogg's on display 
in brand new boxes, bright and gay. These famous cereals come your way. Go see this eyeful. The Kellogg's All Star Breakfast Show has a cheerful look and a lip for you. Start you out with a hoop de doo. Kellogg's for breakfast and a happy, happy day. When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles were distracted by finding Red's body, Nuller slid the warehouse door closed, bolted it, and pulled the string which dropped the lighted candle in the kerosene. The fire spread quickly, threatening to burn Wild Bill and Jingles alive. Bill, the fire's spreading fast. We don't stand a chance. Maybe we do, partner. I don't see how. Duke Nuller overlooked something. Here. Grab some of these sacks of dry flour over here. Well, what for? Dry flour will smother the fire, partner. Hurry it up now. Yeah, do we bust them open, Bill? Rip the sacks open with your knife and throw the flour right on the flame. We've got to work fast. All right. Now there's one. There's another one. Hey, it's working. Grab some more. You got it. Yeah. Hey, it's going down, Bill. A couple of more on a do it. There's one of them. There's some more. Well, that does it. Hooey, Bill. I sure thought we were going to be roast pig this time. I guess Nuller did too, Jingles. Come on. Mm-hmm. What now, Bill? We've got to get back to Stilson's before Nuller has a chance to finish his job. What job? To kill everybody who knows about his flower stealing. You mean he'll go back out there and kill Fred and Marie and Carlotta? Unless we get there to stop him. But but we're still locked in here. I'll fix that right now. Stand back. I'm going to shoot that lock loose. Reckon that did it? Give me a hand. We'll soon find out. Uh, Bill, it's still stuck. One more big one, partner. Right. Now, now, let's go. I sure hope he was not too much of a hurry to steal our horses. Here, Buckshot. Hey, Bill, here they come. Come on, Joker boy. Yeah. End of the saddle, partner. I'm ready, Bill. All right, let's ride. Hi, Buckshot. Hi, boy. Jump, Joker. You heard what Bill said. Ha, ha, ha. Plenty of time to finish this job and get away with nobody left to give me away. Come on, open up. Oh, Bill, did you... Miller. Stand back, I'm coming in. No. Get back in there, I said. Don't let him in, he'll kill us all. Now, he ain't gonna kill nobody. Put that gun down, Stilson, or I'll drill you right now. Dad, do what he says. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, that's better. So you were expecting Wild Bill Hickok, were you? Well, he ain't coming back. You have killed Wild Bill? Yeah, I was too smart for that punk marshal. He walked right into my trap. So now you three are the only ones who know about me and my business. You know what that means? I know what it means to a polecat like you, Nuller. No, do not kill us. We won't tell nobody. I'm going to make sure you don't. You caused me enough trouble already. Now, if you don't want to see it coming, close your eyes. Pull it right there, Nuller. Me too. Oh, a ding. You still got yours, Hickok? Bill! Oh. <laughs> well, Muller, you won't be using that gun arm for a while. All right, Jingles, tie him up. He's done his last killing and robbed his last freight wagon. Yeah, he sure has. Come here, you sidewinder. I got a pegging string just waiting to hog tie you. Bill, he sure got here just in time. He was going to kill us all. Oh, Jingles, you saved my life. My hero. <laughs> oh, I ain't no hero, Carlotta. Well, you were too, Jingles. Oh. You were one. Now, you leave him alone, Marie. Oh. He's mine, and I'm going to marry him first thing in the morning. Oh, now, you ladies quit fighting over me. And besides, Carlotta, I can't marry you the first thing in the morning. It just ain't possible. Why? Because I just don't get up that early. <laughs> <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. 
Well, Andy, what's our story for Friday? Oh, we've got a pipperoo guy all about Wild Bill trying to save the whole town from the fury of Savage River. <laughs> well, Andy, hope the folks remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right, it's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Lillian Bayev, Nancy Shields, Paul Fries, and Jess Kirkpatrick. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Ron. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok faces... The Fury of Savage River. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We've got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you. From that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of the Black Canyon Gang. Say, what's as good at snack time as Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops? You said it, more Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Crisp, crunchy, and already sweetened. They're terrific right out of the box or in a bowl with milk. Get yourself a big box of Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops today and save that box top. Tell you why a little later, and believe me, you'll want to hear why, because it's big news. Right now, though, let's join Wild Bill and Jingle. <laughs> Holding the law in the Old West was really a full-time job, and many's the time Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles were away from home for days and even months at a time. The famous United States Marshal and his big deputy made up for it, though, when they got to a small western town where they could stay at a hotel and enjoy a regular meal for a change. It was just such a stop on one of their trips that started them on the trail of the Black Canyon Gang. Boy, oh boy, I can just see that cook out in the kitchen frying my steak right now. Oh, why don't he hurry? You said you wanted it medium well done. I know, but after three weeks on the trail eating cold beans and salt pork, I can't wait anymore. Maybe I should have asked for it rare. I think you can live a few more minutes without starving, Jingles. On well, every minute I get hungrier, though. Hey, I told him I wanted a steak as big as my hat and just as thick. <laughs> I ain't sure that'll be enough now. It's thinking about food that makes you hungry, Jingles. Forget about that steak. Think real hard about something else and you won't be hungry at all. Oh, I don't believe that. When I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I'm not fooling. It really works. Why don't you try it? Oh, that sounds silly, Bill, but, well, I'll try it while I'm waiting for my steak. What do I do? 
Just forget all about that steak and think real hard about something else. Anything else. All right. I'm thinking. I'm a thinking real hard. Fine. How do you feel now? Hungry. You sure you weren't thinking about that steak? No, sir. No, sir, Reeve Bob. I was thinking about something entirely different. What? Pork chops. Oh, fine. You might just as well stay hungry. Hey, hey, here comes the cook. Look at those steaks, Bill. Relax, partner. You want to take it easy. You'll get a stomachache if you get too excited. Look at the sight. That's great. Jinx. Listen. Oh, not now. Somebody's doing a lot of shooting out there. Oh, let them shoot. Come on, partner. Let's go see what it's all about. Oh, Bill, this is no time to go shining your badge. That sounds like real trouble. Let's go. All right, but I don't like it. What if I get out there and all that lead and get killed? I might never get back to eat my steak. There's a crowd around the bank. Come on. Bill, uh, there's somebody lying in the doorway. Yeah, and somebody else inside has been shot at. Must have been a bank holdup. Looks like it. Can we get through here, mister? I didn't know what for. Then Gunslick's got all the money in the bank. Did anybody see the bandits? Well, sure. They rode into town like they was going to a Sunday school picnic. We saw who it was. We just kept out of their way. They're killers, that gang. What gang are you talking about? Bart Masters and the Black Canyon gang. Oh, Bill, I've heard of them. They've been robbing and killing all over this part of the country. That's right. That's right. And this time it wasn't no different. They walked into the bank, gunned down the teller, and the manager scooped up all the money inside. That's the way they usually work. Then they headed south, out of town, probably back to the hideout. They got somewhere up in Black Canyon. Well, gee whiz, didn't anybody try to stop them? Sure. Sure, them two poor fellows in the bank, and then Sheriff Ames took out after them just as they was coming out. Where's the sheriff now? That's him lying in the doorway. Dead. I see. Get the horses, Jingles. Oh, what for, Bill? We're hitting the trail. And it's liable to be a long time before you get back to that stake. Oh. Mm-hmm. That tasted good, even cold. It sure did. Aren't you glad I took time to run in and grab the steak before we left town? Yeah. But I'm afraid Masters and his gun hands got a good start on us while you were doing it. Well, you don't really want to catch that Black Canyon gang, do you, Bill? Of course I do. They're nothing but a bunch of no-good murderers. But, Bill, there must be five or six of them, and they'd just as soon kill us as not. Of course they would. I ain't never been murdered before, and, well, I don't think I'd like it. We'll try our best to stay alive, partner. Pull up for a minute. Who? Who? Oh, Joker, easy, boy. What are you stopping here for, Bill? You haven't been watching the trail, Jingles. No. This is where five horses turned off the main trail and headed for the hills. That narrow pass in the rocks up there must be the mouth of Black Canyon. Golly, you just notice everything, don't you, Bill? Well, it pays to keep your eyes open, partner. Now we know how many men we're chasing, and we know that they're ahead of us. Well, I just hope they stay ahead for a while. I'm in no hurry to tangle with them. That's what we came out here for, though. Let's go. Hup, buckshot, hi. Oh, get along, Joker. Bill, that sure is rough country up in there. Sure is. Looks like the good Lord dumped all his leftover rocks in there. And some of them are as big as a house. They stand up every which way. It's going to be tough to follow our trail through all that rock. Yeah, and something else. What's that? Those rocks are just perfect to hide behind and shoot at certain people from. Certain people like us. Yeah, certain people like us. All right, Jingles. Let's find some rocks to get behind ourselves. Go, Buckshot, go on. Hit for cover, Joker. Ha, ha, ha. Wranglers, it takes more than a six-shooter and a horse to be on the official side of the law. It takes what Wild Bill carries. Yep, a marshal's badge. So hold your horses, because the Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops folks are fixing for you to have a genuine Wild Bill Hickok Marshall's badge, the same as Wild Bill himself has. It's a beaut, too, Wranglers. Great big six-pointer star, all silvery shining and solid as a nugget. And around the edge, engraved real deep and fancied up with black enamel, it reads Marshall Wild Bill Hickok. And that's not the half of it. Got a picture of Wild Bill and Jingles built right in. And say, just to keep your badge bright and shining, or so you can carry it in your pocket when you want to operate secret, you get a mighty fancy simulated brown leather badge carrying case. 
It's stamped with the official Wild Bill insignia. And with the case, you get the badge and an identification and membership card with Wild Bill's signature. Now, getting your own badge is easy as pie. Just mail the top from your Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops package and 25 cents to Kellogg's, Box 306, Battle Creek, Michigan. But don't you be pokey wranglers. Send for your Wild Bill Hickok Marshall's badge today. This offer is good only in those areas permitting such offers. When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles started out to trail Bart Masters and his gang of bank robbers, they were ambushed at the entrance to Rocky Black Canyon. While the five bandits poured lead down on them, they spurred their horses toward the shelter of the huge boulders at the mouth of the canyon. Oh, them bullets sure go key holding off them rocks, Bill. They'll make a nasty hole if they hit you, too. Head for that big rock, Jingles. This'll do. Whoa, my God. Whoa, whoa. Tie the horses so they can't move out and get hit. They're safe here. Safe, he says. Bill Hickok, nobody is safe if they go trailing around the country with you. There we were sitting in a nice warm hotel, and here we are now hiding behind a... Huh? Did you say something? Yeah, I just made a 30-30 remark to one of those polecats up in the rocks. How do they feel about it? I don't know. There's one of them that doesn't have a hat anymore. <laughs> Inch lower and he wouldn't have a head. Hey, let me get in on this, too. How you doing? Oh, this is fun. Every time a hat comes up, I shoot, and every time I shoot, pound goes the hat. <laughs> Try it again. I want to take a look at those hats. Okay. Now, there's one now. Yeah, I see it. Take a shot at it. Well, one more bandit gone. I'll have them cleaned out in no time. I'm afraid not, partner. That's an old trick they're pulling on you. What do you mean? Those hats came up straight. Well, of course they did. One of those varmints stuck his head up over the rock with his hat on it. No, he didn't. When you raise your head with a hat on it, that hat tilts back. Try it sometime. But, Bill, I... Those hats were on a stick. Oh. They came up straight, and you're wasting your precious ammunition putting more holes in the same old hats. Well, I'll be doggone. Well, cheer up, Jingles. That tells us one thing. What's that? Bart Masters and his gang have gone on up the canyon, and they've left one man behind to stop us and pull that hat trick. Well, if there's only one, let's get him. You won't wait for that. He's just there to slow us up. And he's probably pulling out right now to join the rest of the gang. Well, let's go get all of them, then. Up to now, I ain't been very interested. But now that they made a fool out of me with their old hat trick, I'm just mad clean through. Come on, Bill. Bart Masters and his gang are going to find out that they have to reckon with Jingles Jones. Come on, Joker, come on. Dad, blame it, Bill. Those bank robbing coyotes just disappeared. We've poked our nose into every rock pile in Black Canyon. No, we haven't, partner. Black Canyon is a mighty big place. We may have to keep this up for days until we cut the trail again. Oh, fine. That means more trail rations before we get back to town and good food again. I'm afraid so. Hey, wait a minute. Woo, Buckshot, woo. Oh, Joker. Now what do you see, Bill? Look there around the bend in the canyon. Hey, Bill. Hey, it's a man, one of them robbers. I don't think so. He looks like an old desert rat to me. Yeah. You know, with that white hair and that beard, he could be a hermit. Maybe he's seen the gents we're after. Let's go ask him. Hmm, all right. Get along, Joker. Let's go, Buckshot. Oh, boy. Bill, if this old boy has seen Bart Masters and his gang, why didn't they shoot him? They're trigger-happy killers, Jingles, but I don't think they'd gun down an old man. Well, we'll soon find out if he knows anything about him. Howdy, old-timer! He waved back, Jingles, but he didn't move. Easy, Buckshot. Oh, hold it, Joker. Yeah, howdy, gents. Get off your horses and set a spell. We can't stay long, mister. We're trailing a bunch of mavericks that held up a bank. Tank? What do I need with a tank? The water comes out of that spring, runs in these two pools and the rocks, disappears down in the canyon there. Ain't a big spring, but it's always got water in it. <laughs> don't need no tank. Bill, he don't hear very good, does he? I'm afraid not, partner. I speak up, you two. Stop mumbling. We're looking for bank bandits. Oh, bank bandits. There ain't no banks in Black Canyon. I know it. They hide up in here. How can you hide a bank up here in the canyon? I've been here ten years now. Found this spring when I was prospecting for gold. 
Staked out my claim right away. Best spot I found in 50 years of prospecting. That's fine, but we're not looking for gold mines. Well, that's good, Sonny. That's good, because I ain't got no gold mine. I staked the claim here because I got plenty of fresh water. Why don't you fellas take off your boots and dangle your feet in the water like me? Sorry, but we haven't got time. Fine, of course it's fine. Take off your boots, try it. It's fine. Hey, Bill, you know, it looks like it might be fun at that. My feet are awful hot. Go ahead if you want to, Jingles. We can't chase Masters and his gang in the dark anyhow. You're mumbling again. Well, I'll take my boots off and try out your pool, old-timer. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. What do you mean I'm right? I'm just a fool, old-timer. Spent all my life looking for gold and never found any. <laughs> but I'm happy. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with just sitting here with my feet in the water and taking life easy, is there? Not a dad blamed thing wrong with you. I it. said, there anything wrong with you sitting there? I and... heard you. I... I heard you the first time, you Pop. Were... Why did you say so? Oh, I did say so, you old goat. <laughs> Who's an old goat? Uh, no, I thought you was hard to hear. I can hear pretty good when I want to. Oh. Sort of comes and goes. <laughs> Look, old timer. My name's Rocky. Okay, Rocky. I said my name, Rocky, from all my prospecting. You know, rocks. That's why they call me Rocky. <laughs> kind of crazy, too, ain't he, Bill? Yeah, what's your name? Hickok's the name. Wild Bill Hickok, that is, and I'm Jingle. <laughs> Don't ever let your hearing go back on you. Sure plays funny tricks. I could have sworn you said you was Wild Bill Hickok and Jingle. Well, that's who we are. Well, I... You, you what? Well, what do you know? I've been hearing about you for years. Why don't you tell me who you was? We just did. Look, Rocky, maybe you can help us. Sure, maybe I can. Have you seen a gang of men right in or out of this canyon? Well, let me see. Was there five of them? I think so. Riding lathered horses? That sounds right. Have you seen them? Sure, stopped here about a half hour before you come. Watered their horses and rode on up into the canyon. Bill, those are the Jaspers we're looking for. Sounds like them. Now look, Rocky, I think those men are Bart Masters and his gang. They're killers and bank robbers. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. Well, that's all very interesting. Wild Bill, but I can tell you something about them hombres, too. What's that? That bunch of no goods is Bart Masters and his gang. They're killers and bank robbers. Look, Jingles, we're huh? wasting time here. Get your boots back on and let's ride before it gets dark. Okay, Bill, I'll just... Get on, Jingles. Yeah, somebody's shooting at us. Stop talking, you date blurred Indians, and get down. Somebody's shooting at us. I am down. If I go any lower, I'll be buried. Yeah, that guy can shoot. Don't stick your head up. Stop yapping at us and worry about your own head. I'm going to send a few shots back myself. I'm with you there, Rocky. Let's dust them off. Hey, you shoot real good, Rocky. You don't have to yell at me now, Jingles. Shooting always clears up my head and I can hear real good. Well, if that's the case, Bill, let's shoot at those lizards some more and shake up Rocky's hearing again. Well, they don't like to be shot at, do they? No, they don't. And they've got us in a bad spot. As soon as it gets dark, the five of them can sneak up on us and have us outnumbered. Yeah, and we can't round them up now because they've holed up in those rocks. (laughs) What are you giggling about, you old goat? I'm just thinking that if they get us, I'll probably go down in history as a man who got killed with Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. (laughs) That ain't funny. I say it ain't funny. Keep your heads down, both of you, or that little joke is liable to come true. Hey, cowpokes. I wonder if your Kellogg's sugar corn pops held out since the beginning of the show. <laughs> Mine didn't. Finished a whole box, and I'm digging into my second one now. Uh, it's a good thing I always keep an extra box of these new Kellogg sugar corn pops handy. Hope you do, too, so as you never run out. Sugar corn pops make mighty good eating any way you like. Out of the box like candy or out of the bowl, they're just plum wonderful. And say, pull up there. Don't forget, these big new yellow boxes of Kellogg sugar corn pops have got handsome, real-life pictures of Guy Madison and Andy Devine in full color. Yes, sir. So you always know you're on the right trail when you see them in the store. Load up big on Kellogg sugar corn pops at the store tomorrow for a heap of downright delicious fun. Yippee! 
sugar pot. Their sugar-coated tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Pinned down by the fire of the well-hidden bank bandits, Jingles, Bill, and their new friend Rocky are in a dangerous spot. They can't move from where they are, and the approaching darkness will give their enemies a chance to spread out and sneak up on them. Suddenly, Bill notices something that he hasn't seen before. Boy, they shoot straight. Those last shots came from farther up the canyon wall. They're crawling up so they can shoot down on us. Yeah, that's going to get real dangerous. They're heading for that little cave up there. That ain't no cave. That's my mine shaft. I thought you said you didn't find any gold. Who said anything about gold? I can dig a mine, can't I? Sure, but if Rocky, you... is there another entrance to that tunnel? Sure, right over there to your left. I dug a room in the side of the cliff and I keep all my tools there. The two tunnels are connected by a drift I dug through the rock. Jingles, you and Rocky stay here and keep them busy. I'm going through that tunnel and surprise those gents. Oh, take me with you, Bill. I want to crack at them, too. Yeah, take him along, Bill. I can throw enough lead to make them think you're still here. Okay, Rocky. I'll make it sound good. Sure, that'll be fun. Besides, shooting keeps my ears open up real good. Open up, then, Rocky, and we'll run for the shaft over here. They have seen us, Bill. Yeah, but they don't know about that shaft. Hurry it up. I'm hurrying. I don't like that lead flying around my ears. Here we are. Inside, quick. We're going to have to hurry now or they'll swarm down on Rocky. Yeah, Chief, look at all the tools and things. Look here. Dynamite. Grab some, partner, and let's go. I see light up ahead, Jingles. That's the other end. Yeah, right over Masters and his gang's head, huh? I hope so. Be quiet now. Wait around another minute, then we'll go down and rush the old boy. What about the other two? They duck back into that mine shaft. He'll bottle them up in there and starve them out. Bart, I'm telling you, they look like Wild Bill Hickok and that big fat deputy of his. I saw them in town at the hotel. I don't care who they are. We've got them now, and we'll teach them and all those hicks in town a lesson. This canyon's my territory. Nobody follows me up here and lives to tell about it. Is that so, Masters? Throw down your guns. It's Hickok above us. Shut up. Come back. Step back in the tunnel, Jingles. Oh, there's too many of them. You can't hit us, Masters. Throw down your guns and start down the hill or I'll drop a stick of dynamite on you. What are you talking about? You haven't got any dynamite. You're bluffing. Strike a match, Jingles. I'm not bluffing. Start down that hill right now. Stick your head out and try to make me do it. I'll blow your brains out. You've had your warning. Here comes the dynamite. You're not following me, Hickok. We'll get you as soon as it's dark. Am I still bluffing, Masters? No. No, no, no. You got us, Hickok. We give up. I threw that stick over your heads, but I've got plenty more, so don't try any tricks. Rocky? Yeah, Bill? Meet the Jaspers at the bottom of the slope. We'll follow them down and keep them covered. Bill, what you said just then is the first thing I've heard since you set off that blast. I guess it left me kind of deep. Five of them, all tied up tight and ready to be delivered to jail. I never would have believed it. Well, that's the way Bill does things, Rocky. Well, we can just sit here and relax till morning. I think we'll take turns watching that gang just in case they get any idea. Oh, sure. The jingle can dangle his feet in the water a while longer, can't he? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, you ought to try this, Bill. It sure feels good. Yeah, it's real relaxing, that's what it is. I like my little old spot in the canyon. I'm going to keep it just the way it is. Oh, ain't you going to dig out any of the gold? I thought you said there wasn't any gold in here, Rocky. Oh, I guess I didn't tell you. You were busy tying up the prisoners. You didn't tell me what? When you threw that dynamite down into the canyon, you blasted open the prettiest vein of gold quartz I ever seen in all my years of prospecting. <laughs> well, congratulations, Rocky. 
You'll be rich now. Uh, not me. I'll just dig out a little when I need it. <laughs> and, and, and not only that, Bill, you threw that dynamite stick so close to Rocky, well, the blast opened up his ears for good. He'll be able to hear us coming the next time we're in this part of the country, and, well, and I want to stop and dangle my feet in the water hole. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. What's our story for Friday, Andy? Oh, this one's about a court verdict that led Wild Bill into plenty of gunfighting and trouble. It's called Alkali Justice. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you remember to get Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Sugar Corn Pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Cliff Arquette, Lou Krugman, Paul Dubov, and Jack Moyles. Our story was written and directed by Paul Pierce, music by Dick O'Rourke. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok faces Alkali Justice. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. And Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. The greatest name in cereals presents Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap, Crackle, and Pop, Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Alkali Justice. Say, folks, if you want to start the day out with a whooping big grin, have a bowl full of golden good Kellogg's Rice Krispies for breakfast. Pour on some fresh milk or cream over these little happy morsels and listen to their merry snap, crackle, pop, telling you how fresh and crisp they are. They're the talking cereal, and you'll have lots of fun listening to them. So get some tomorrow. Try them with berries or fruit or just plain. Any way you have them, you'll love Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Usually, the adventures of United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big deputy Jingles started with gun smoke and wound up in the courtroom with the criminal facing the judge. In some cases, however, events took the opposite course, starting in the courtroom and leading from there to action and trouble. Such was the case in the adventure Wild Bill and Jingles had with Alkali Justice. Bill, this courtroom is a blasted powder keg. If Judge Thompson decides against Brad Bolton and in favor of Uncle Jeff Decker, the doggone lid's gonna blow off this whole end of the county. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, Jingles. 
Bolton's got half the room packed with these riders. Yeah, and they're gun to the teeth. And a meaner looking pack of wolves I have yet to see. Let's look at them. Yeah. But if they start something, you'll find plenty of guns ready to fight on Uncle Jeff's side. Especially if Brad beats old Jeff out of his lazy wire. Mm, you said it, partner. Well, we'll soon know. Here comes Judge Thompson to the bench. Yeah, I sure wish I hadn't lost my rabbit's foot. Order in the court. Order. Ladies and gents, take your seats so we can continue the case of Bolton versus Decker. Now, uh, here's the way the case sets up. Jeff Decker, the lazy wire, claims Brad Bolton and the bar S has trespassed on his land for the purpose of grazing and watering cattle. Brad Bolton filed a cross-complaint stating that Jeff Decker is not the legal owner of the land he calls the Lazy Wire Ranch. <laughs> Order! Order to court! This court finds no evidence to support the Bolton claim that Jeff Decker is not the legal owner of the Lazy Wire. What? Now, hold on, Judge. Order, I said. Sit down, Brad Bolton, before I find you in contempt. Uh, Bill, this don't look good. No, but it looks right. And this court finds further that Uncle Jeff Decker is right when he says Bolton's been trespassing. Therefore, Brad Bolton is enjoined to cease such trespassing and to keep his cows away from Decker's water hole known as Soda Spring. Here it comes, Bill. Yeah, be ready for trouble. Why, you all withered up, Weasel. You can't train me like this. Order! Sit down and shut up, Brad Bolton, or I'll find you in contempt. Yeah? I got nothing but contempt for this court. Order! Marshal Hickok, clear the courtroom. Ain't nobody clearing me out of this courtroom. Now, hold on, Bolton. You heard the judge. You either clear peaceable or I'll take it upon myself to throw you out. Yeah, but... Well, all right, we're leaving. Yeah, look at him back down, will you? <laughs> yeah, but the bar edge is big enough to get along without the law and its blasted courts and weak-kneed judges. Why, you loudmouth hammerhead, Bolton... You ain't nothing but a low-down, rain-stealing coyote. That's what you are. Quiet! Quiet! Clear the court, Hickok. Jingles, I find you in contempt. Five days or five dollars. Oh, now, Judge, your... Well, your honor, sir, i Five I'm... days or five dollars. Oh. Hickok, you collect the fine from Jingles or put him in jail. Court's adjourned. I'll take care of it, your honor. All right, clear the court. Go on, Bolton. Get your boys out of here. We're going, Hickok. Come on, man, outside. Well, Bill, I guess we were lucky to get by without no gunplay that time. Woo wee! That Bolton sure a loud mouth. Yeah, partner, and you didn't do so bad yourself. Oh, now, Bill, I shell out five dollars, Jingles. That's what the judge said. Oh, but Bill, hand it over. Or would you rather go to jail for five days? Jail? Oh, dog gone it anyway. Here's the five dollars. Well, I was saving it to buy me a new horsehair hat band. <laughs> well, don't feel bad, Jingles. Come on out to Lazy Y and I'll give you some horsehair. Then you can braid one for yourself. Well, congratulations, Uncle Jeff. Glad you beat Bolton's crooked play. Yeah, we was afraid he might make it stick against you, Uncle Jeff. Well, now, I don't reckon Brad Bolton's through with me yet. When he gets a bee stuck under his hat, it takes a mighty high wind to blow it out. You may be right, Uncle Jeff. I think it'd be a good idea for Jingles and me to ride out and stay at the Lazy Y for a few days. Yeah, I think so too, Bill, just in case he makes a play. I'll be right proud to have you, Bill. Well, come on. Might as well get started right now. Here they come, boss. Yeah. Say, Hickok. Looks all fired queer to see a U.S. Marshal being so friendly with one side of a lawsuit. Not when he's in the right, Bolden. And Uncle Jeff's an old friend of mine. Yeah, and mine too, you Henri Polecat. Easy, Ah, oh, come on, boss. You're going to stand here and jaw with him all day? No, I ain't. But well, you promised us we'd bust up that courtroom, and we didn't. So I'm taking this ten-horn marshal right now. Bill, look out! This is Charlie Lyon and Slim the Singing Cowboy, friends. Say, uh, I heard you ran out of Kellogg's Rice Krispies on your last roundup, Slim. No, oh, and you should have heard the moaning, Charlie. <laughs> I couldn't hardly get them Wranglers up in the morning. Yeah, I bet you didn't have any trouble before you ran out. Oh, I'll say we didn't. And boys just couldn't wait to get to the chuck wagon for breakfast. 
Guess they like to hear them little Rice Krispies going snap, crackle, and pop. Just to join away in the bowl, telling everybody how fresh and good tasting they are. Yep, they're the real talking cereal, all right. Oh, you bet they are, Slim, and crisp as the winter air. Say, did you ever try them with berries or bananas? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, sing, Slim, while I dream. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, puff. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. And if you boys and girls want some fun for breakfast, try these golden good Kellogg's Rice Krispies. They're lots of fun to listen to, and they'll really tickle your taster, too. So tell Mom to get you some Kellogg's Rice Krispies tomorrow and listen to them. Now, let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles left the courtroom with their friend, Uncle Jeff Decker, they found Brad Bolton and his cowboys waiting outside. Bolton started an argument, and his ranch foreman, Slim, made a quick gunplay against Wild Bill. That slowed him down, Bill. All right, the rest of you hotheads, stay right where you are. I got a mighty itchy trigger finger long about now. Keep him covered, Jingles. Slim, I'm arresting you right now for disturbing the peace. Get off that horse. You can't do that, Hickok. I'm going to have the pleasure of busting your nose first. Give it to him, Bill. I'll take care of him. Why not yet, you won't. Yeah, Buster, right now. There you are, Brad Bolton. That's what happens when you mix with Wild Bill Hickok, see? All right, Bolton, get the rest of your boys out of town. Slim's going back in to face the judge. You ain't through with us, Hickok. Now, you either, Jeff Decker. I'm planning to get that lazy wife spread of yours in my own way. Law or no law. Hi, boy. Come down, you red hand. Well, here we are. Get down and come in, gents. Oh, there, Red Hood. Oh, but no. Oh, Joker. Hey, you still got that big feather bed in your back bedroom, Jeff? Sure have, Jingles. Just waiting for you. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Now I know I'm going to enjoy this visit. Right, Bill? You're right, Jingles. That is, unless Bolton stirs up some trouble. Well, you can be counting on that. But what trick he'll think up this time beats me. No, don't make any difference. We'll stop him. Yes, sir. Well, looks like one of the boys picked up the mail in town. Here's a letter from Fred Berry. Who's Fred Berry? A cattle buyer. Ah, says he's headed this way. The letter was written three weeks ago from Hay City. He ought to have been here by now. I hope nothing's happened to him. He's my last chance. Oh, now, don't go talking that way, Uncle Jeff. Things ain't always as bad as they seem. Eh, they are this time. I can't even scrape up enough money to hire hands. Most of my stock's still unbranded. But if I can sell a bunch of my steers to Fred Berry, I just might be able to pull out and hold Bolton off. Will Bolton be selling to the same buyer, Uncle Jeff? I reckon so. Makes it tougher for us. And that's a time when he thinks up his meanness. Well, let him think it up. Just let him. He comes messing around here, he'll find he just walk, snap, dab into a den of lions and tigers. <laughs> Oh, oh, boy. Oh, 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 boy. Whoa. All right, Tim. Cut out about a hundred head from this herd and drive them down to Soda Springs on old Jeff's range. Oh, now, boss, you know Hickok and Jingles rode out to Jeff Decker's ranch with them last night. You're asking for trouble. Yeah, maybe. But I want to see how serious old Jeff's going to take that loco judge's decision. Oh, old Jeff don't scare me none, but I ain't got no hankering to go locking horns with Wild Bill Hickok. You white-livered roadrunner. Maybe you'd rather tangle with me. Red Bolton ain't no violet, you know. Oh, now, boss, I didn't mean that. And stop bawling like a newborn calf. I got a plan. And if old Jeff Decker gives us any trouble, we'll go to work on him for good. Well, I ain't so sure any plan's going to work on him unless it's a mighty good one. What do you got in mind? You don't need to know nothing. I'll do the thinking around here. But I'll give you an idea. Yeah, what is it? Well, 
Jeff ain't had enough money to hire hands to brandy stock. That means that most of them cows are unbranded. Now, if they was to get mixed up, how'd the cattle buyer know who they was? Huh? Oh, yeah. Is the cattle buyer coming? Yeah, any day now. He's already sent out letters. I got mine yesterday. Uh, maybe you got something there at that, Bolton. Reckon you're going to outsmart old Jeff Decker yet, at least once. What? Why, you low-legged saddle tramp. What do you mean by saying I'm going to outsmart him once? Well, nothing, boss. Nothing at all. But fellas in town saying that old Jeff's been getting the best of you most of the oh, time. Oh, that's what they're singing, huh? Well, they'll be singing another tune before I'm through with that old coot. Go on now. Round up them steers and drive them down to Soda Springs, Toronto. Get going. Okay, okay. I'm going. Up, boy. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Hey, Jingles. Hey, partner, wake up. Oh, Susanna, now don't you cry for me. For Jingles, I... Jingles, wake up. Wake up, we got trouble. <laughs> oh, oh, Bill, come, good morning, good morning, and go away. Partner, you've got to get up. Oh. Bill, me and this feather bed has got to be the best of friends. I couldn't bear to part from it. Jingles. Bolton's cows are heading for Soda Springs. Bolton's cows? Why that ornery sidewinder? What are we waiting on, Bill? My boots. Now, where's my boots? We gotta hurry. On your feet, Jingles. Huh? You must have slept in them. Oh, well, then let's, oh, let's go get that polecat. Come on. Joker! Joker, where are you? Joker! <laughs> Part of Bolton's herd, all right, Bill. Yeah, got the bar as brand on him. Guess this shows Bolton's not paying attention to the law, huh? He's used to making his own law. Can't get out of the habit. Well, that's slim herding those cows, Bill. Must have paid his fine and got out again. Well, fan out and turn his herd. I'll let him off and have a talk with him. Uh, we'll turn him all right. Oh, get around, you critter. Head for a hole. Ha, ha. Ooh, watch out, steady boy. I was just about to ask you what you thought you were up to, Slim. I don't figure it's none of your business, Hickok. Now call that empty-headed partner of yours away from my herd. You're trespassing against the judge's orders, Slim. Bolton tell you to drive these cows down here? I ain't talking. All right, then head them back for your own range. And tell Bolton from me that he's to keep his stock at home. All right, Hickok. I'm going for now. But you ain't stopping Brad Bolton. No, you either, Jeff Decker. Now, take it easy, Slim. I ain't never asked for trouble from Brad, and I ain't asking for it now. Well, you're going to get it. And when he gets through with what he's planning, you ain't going to have nothing left but a pair of shaps. Ah, oh, boy, hit that. Go on, go on and get it. Next time you come around here, I'm liable to tie your ears in a braid. That's enough, Jingle. Well, he had it coming. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, it made him tip Bolton's hand. Looks like Bolton has got something planned, all right. Well, ain't no use staying out here and waiting for it. Might as well go back to the house and be comfortable. These your cows grazing this way, Uncle Jeff? Yep. They'll be over by the springs by tonight. Well, if Bolton tries driving his herd in again, that could lead to a real fancy mix-up. Well, Fred, I'm sure glad you got here. Yeah, Mr. Barry. You're going to buy some of Uncle Jeff's cattle, ain't you? I sure am, Jingles. I need plenty of beef, and Uncle Jeff's always had fine stock. You had any dealings with Brad Bolton, Mr. Barry? Sure, he sells to my outfit. And he's a slippery customer to deal with. Fred knows Brad of old, Bill. I sure do. He been giving you any trouble, Jeff? A little, here and there. A little? Why, that Henri Polecat's been nothing but trouble. Easy, partner. Well, he has, Bill, and you know it. Now, Jingles, don't go barring trouble till it's happened. Ain't been a sign of them all day, and so far in tonight. Well, maybe we'll get a good night snoozing after all. And Fred can take a look at my stock in the morning. Hold it, Jeff. Maybe you spoke too soon. Huh? What do you mean by that, Bill? Quiet. Listen. Hey, that sounds like shots. Yeah, but what's that thunder? That's not thunder, partner. That's cattle on the move. Now that's bones hurting. 
Bill, they're headed for Soda Springs. That's right, partner. And if we don't head them off, they'll mix with Uncle Jeff's herd. But, Bill, if they do that, Uncle Jeff will be wiped out. We can't let that happen, Jingles. Come on, gents. Get your horses and hit those saddles. We got a private little war on our hands. What is the cookie says to get out of them there sacks and over to the chuck wagon? Boy, he's got a breakfast awaiting for you that'll lift you right into your saddle. First come, first serve. Come on now, you can't lay there all morning. Let's sing, cowpokes. <coughs> Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best, and how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies mean more fun and pep, so come on, gang, let's get in step. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Add milk or cream, that's all you do, then listen to them talk to you. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Say, let me give you a little tip, partner. You know, there ain't no breakfast cereal in this whole wide world that's more fun to eat than Kellogg's Rice Krispies. And that's a straight shot. So all you hands see to it that you get a good supply of them. Tell you what you do. Have some crisp, golden Kellogg's Rice Krispies for your breakfast manana. Will you do that for me? All right, now, what do you say? Let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. <laughs> While Bill Hickok had made sure that the rumbling herd of cattle were bar S stock headed for Soda Springs, he called for the rest to hit their saddles. Riding hard, Bill led them across Brad Bolton's trail just a short distance from the springs. Bill, that herd's stampeding for the water! Yeah, and if they make it, Bolton's gonna be the sorriest rancher you ever saw. He sure is a right bull headed Jasper. Come on, let's see if we can turn the point of that herd. Hi, Buckshot. Get after him, boy. Yeah. Go! Get around there, you longhorn thing! Yeah. 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 Hi! Uh, you're wasting your time, Bill. Them critters ain't gonna turn for you or nobody now. Yeah, the lead steers already got their feet in the water. Yeah, that doggone hammerhead starting to pick a fight! Come on, let's go talk to him. Get around there, Buckshot. He ain't much on talking, Bill. We'll see. All right, Bolton, post to that six gun and ride on up here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you want to be, Hickok? I ain't got nothing to say to you. Maybe not, but I got something to say to you. You made your move against the law, so I'm taking you back to face a judge on a new charge. Against the law? Now, Hickok, what charge you got against me? Driving your herd down across Jeff Decker's range and into a soda spring. That's enough to put you out of circulation for quite a while. Driving? Did you say driving my herd? Why, Marshal, I didn't drive him. They stampeded this way, and I rode down and tried to hit him back. I'm sorry they drank up all your water, Uncle Jeff. Holy horny toes. They sure did. Look, bottom of Soda Springs is shining white in the moonlight. Water's all gone. Yeah, Bolton. And I reckon you're going to be sorrier than that when you find out what you've really done. Huh? What do you mean? You hear anything strange, Bolton? Strange? No, I don't hear. Wait a minute. Some of them cows sound sick. And thanks to you, I reckon they are, Brad. What's going on here, Uncle Jeff? I reckon Brad's made almost one mistake too many, Jingles. Yes, Bolton, I'm beginning to think you have too. Hey, what is all this? Jeff Decker, if you pull another one of your dirty tricks on me, I'll make you pay and pay plenty for it. You pull this one on yourself, Bolton. Now, look at your cows now. Hey, they're moaning and laying down. Look at them. Decker, you poisoned that water hole. I'll kill you for that. Uh, thank you, Wild Bill. No, Brad, I didn't poison Soda Springs. Everybody around here knows that's a spring with an alkali bottom. But you killed my cows. No, they ain't dead, and they ain't going to die. But you've made them mighty sick by letting them stir up the bed of the springs. If you just let them drink... A few at a time, around the edges, they'd have been all right. Hey, here comes Fred Barry. Let's see what he's got to say. What do you make of those cattle, Fred? Looks like they all got alkali sickness, Bill. Be up and around about ten days. Funny thing is, most all of them are bar S cattle. 
Bolton, figure you lost your head. Then the ones on their feet still grazing are Uncle Jeff's cows, huh, Fred? That's right, Jingles. Good. It's going to save me a lot of trouble in the morning when I go to round Jeff's cattle up for shipment. Hey, now, Barry, you you, you got to take my cows, too. Sorry, Brad. Can't use sick cattle. Reckon you'll have to keep them. You, you ain't going to buy none of my steers? No, nope, can't use them, I tell you. Jeff Decker, you tricked me again. You low down, slippery cuss. I'm going to get you yet. I had nothing to do with it, Bolton. You just tripped yourself up that time, you smart jack. Reckon that's right, Bolton. And when the judge gets through with you, you're going to have a long time to think it over. Yeah, you big bully. Where you're going, I hope they wake you up every ten minutes and, well, just to tell you what a polecat you are. As for me, I'm going to go back to that big feather bed now, and, well, I ain't going to wake up for ten days on account of I got such a nice, clear conscience. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's our Wild Bill Hickok story for today, folks. Be with us Monday, will you? Yes, sir because we've got a real action story for you about cattle rustling called Mixed Brand. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right. It's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Fred Howard, Ralph Moody, Frank Gerstel, and Clayton Post. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rourke. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok straightens out some mixed brands. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Cereals present Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We've got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of Two Plus Two. Before we get into today's exciting Wild Bill Hickok adventure, boys and girls, let me remind you to start your collection of Wild Bill Hickok's famous gun cutouts. You'll find them on the backs of the new yellow Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops packages, a whole series of handsome guns made famous in the Wild West. Look for them down at your grocery store tomorrow. Now, let's listen. <laughs> United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles fought their way westward across the plains of Kansas to the cattle belt that ran from Texas up to Wyoming. 
Behind them, they left a trail of law and order as they cleaned up one bandit gang after another. But one adventure almost wound up in disaster when Jingles got completely baffled by a little problem of two plus two. That'd be real fun, wouldn't it? What's that, Jingles? Ringing a bell? Sure, I'd like to ring this bell all the time. Well, if you did that, partner, you'd have to teach school also. You know, that goes along with it. Oh, now, Bill, not me. I know I'm real smart, but, well, I don't want no part of school teaching. <laughs> I had enough trouble with the teachers when I was a little button. Well, put that bell down and let's get on our way. <laughs> I, you know, I wish it wasn't Saturday. I'd like to watch them do their lessons. I wonder who the school teacher is. I don't know, Jingles, but I think we should write him a note and thank him for letting us stop in out of the rain. Well, that's quite all right, Mr. Hickok. Huh? You're perfectly welcome anytime. Oh. And so's your deputy. Well, Bill, yeah, guess I don't have to write that note after all. Looks that way. I see you know our names, mister, and I take it you're the schoolmaster here. Yeah, that's right, Marshal. My name's Tom Dabney. Glad to meet you, Tom. Yeah, same here, Professor. How come you're around the schoolhouse on Saturday? Especially this late. Well, I live just across the road. When I heard the bell ringing after dark like that, I thought our mysterious visitor was back again. Mysterious visitor? <laughs> no, it was just me. Let alone me, I was... Uh... What mysterious visitor? If you'd like to come over to my place, I'll tell you all about it. I don't, uh, I don't like to leave Jeedy alone too long. Jeedy? Who's that? My son. Oh. See, my wife's back in Philadelphia visiting her family, so Jeedy and I are being bachelors for a while. Oh, uh, uh, Bill, um, don't you reckon we better be getting on? I don't like the sounds of this mystery business. No, partner, I think we'll go along with Tom. I'm getting real curious. Well, doggone it, I ain't. Already, I can feel the short hair sticking up on my neck like a wild razorback's. And, well, that means we're headed for a mess of meanness as sure as I'm a foot wide. Coats and make yourselves at home, gentlemen. Yeah. GD. GD, we got company I think you'd like to meet. Who is it, Dad? Hey, I know who that is. That's Wild Bill Hickok. You're Jingles. <laughs> there, Bill. I finally found somebody who knows who I am, too. Dad, the hmm. Indians came again while you were gone, and the chief was with them this time. Indian? What's this all about, Tom? Well, that's part of the story I was going to tell you, Mr. Hickok. Uh, what did they say this time, Dee? Big Chief Running Bear say, you tell man with foot, if bell ring and ghost horse ride in Valley of Blue Light one more time, Indian tomahawk send man with book to big sleep. Mm, big sleep. What did he mean, Dad? What is a big sleep? Why, that means those doggone bow benders are going to... Huh? Oh, it don't mean nothing, G.D. boy. Nothing at all. I, uh, I think it's about your bedtime, G.D. How about saying goodnight? Oh, gee whiz. G.D.? Oh, all right, Dad. Are Wild Bill and Jingles going to stay here tonight? Will I see him in the morning? Well, I'll try to persuade him to stay. Now, on your way. We'll be here, G.D. I want to stick around and meet your friend, the Indian Chief Running Bear. Bill. Bill, you mm-hmm. ain't going to have to wait till morning. Look. At the window, and he's all painted up with war paint. Oh, up there, Wranglers. Here's high riding news. Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops have got a real, genuine Wild Bill Hickok Marshall's badge for you. You've never seen the likes, I tell you. A real molded silver shining Marshall's badge, same as Wild Bill himself uses. It's a big six pointer star, heavy as a nugget. Around the edge, engraved real deep and fancied up with black enamel, there she reads Marshall Wild Bill Hickok. And right smack dab in the middle, there's a picture of Wild Bill and Jingles. Now, if you want to ride secret, we got that fixed too. You get a simulated brown leather badge carrying case so you can keep your badge in your pocket along with a special marshal's identification and membership card with Wild Bill's signature. On the cover of the case, there's Wild Bill Hickok's official insignia. No doubt about it, Wranglers. You'll be the envy of the whole corral with your Wild Bill Hickok marshal's badge. 
Sure, it's easy to get. Send the top from a package of those good eaten Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops and 25 cents to Kellogg's Box 306, Battle Creek, Michigan. Got that? Send the box top from Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops and 25 cents to Kellogg's Box 306, Battle Creek, Michigan. Hurry, send a day. But remember, this offer is good only in those areas permitting such offers. <laughs> A minute after G.D., Tom Dabney's son had told Wild Bill Hickok about the threat of Chief running mayor. Jingle spied the chief's face outside the window, a weird spectacle in its garish war paint. Don't move, Jingle. Tom, you and G.D. stand where you are. Bill, um, those two braves standing behind the chief, they've got arrows in their bows all ready to shoot. I see them, partner. Let's see if a little sign language to the chief will do any good. What are you saying to him, Wild Bill? Shh, G.D. I'm just telling him that we're his friends, G.D., and asking him to come in for a powwow. Yeah, and he can leave those two sharpshooters of his standing out in the rain for all of me. Hey, he's shaking his head. Bill, he's gone. Just like that, he's gone. Yeah, partner. <laughs> Guess my sign language wasn't too convincing. Well, all right, G.D., you can go to bed now. Well, if you say so, Wild Bill. Good night, Jingles. <laughs> Good night, youngster. Don't you go snoring in your sleep and waking me up. Oh, I don't snore. Good night. Bill, this bell ringing and Indian threats to kill the professor here is real bad medicine, ain't it? I don't know, Jingles. We'd better get the rest of the story from Tom before we go jumping on a wildcat's back. Yeah. Go on, Tom. Tell us. Now, what about the bell, Tom? Yeah, and where does Chief Running Bear and his war paint figure into this? Well, it's a fantastic story, Bill. Three times in the last two weeks, a school bell's been heard ringing in the night across the Valley of Blue Light. That's uh, only two miles from here. Well, why do they call it that? Oh, on moonlight nights, the moon shines on a big lake. It makes the whole valley take on a strange blue glow. Oh. Well, each time when I went to school the next morning, the bell was on my desk. The Indians who live in the valley think I'm the one ringing the bell. Stands to reason somebody's stealing the bell and scaring the Indians with it. Yeah, but there's more. While the bell's ringing, a big horse all draped in white rides around the rim of the valley. Well, actually, it's more like a big canyon. A white horse? Yeah. But stranger still, the sound of the horse's hoofbeats rolls like echoing thunder throughout the valley. I heard it once myself. And the Indians of Chief Running Bear's tribe think you're the bell-ringing ghost rider. Certainly. I'm the school teacher. I have the only bell like that. Well, we'll stick around and look into this. Bill. Bill, I hear it. The bell. I, I hear it, Bill. Hold it, partner. Maybe we can, too. Well, that's it, all right. Let's have a look outside. Hey, it stopped raining and the moon's coming out. If we were down in the valley, we could hear the hoofbeats. That's just where we're going. Jingles, you stay here with G.D. Tom, you go saddle your horse and you're coming with me. I won't be a minute, Bill. Oh, now, Bill, you ain't going to leave me here, are you? We can't take G.D. with us, partner, and we can't leave Tom here alone until we clear up this mystery. Yeah, but what if them feathered fellers come around and start scalping me? No, you wouldn't let them do that to you, would you? Oh, no, I wouldn't let them do that, would I? <laughs> oh, but Bill, I... See you later, partner. Oh. Right up to this draw, Bill. We'll be on the floor of the valley. Is this the way you came the night you heard the hoof beats? Yeah. Just about here. Oh, oh. Ooh, Buckshot, stand there, boy. Hey, there's a the bell again. Yeah, I can't understand what makes it sound so big. Just a hand bell. You saw it. Yeah. There, Bill, there. There go the hoofbeats. Did you ever hear anything like that? No, I didn't. And there, th there's a white horse, Bill, starting its ride around the rim of the canyon. Now, there's a sight to run chills up your spine. No wonder the Indians are getting that dander up. Yeah, but what's his object, Bill? That's just what I mean to find out. Come on, let's ride that poor cat down. Hi, Marshal. Hi. Yeah, hi. Mm, doggone it. I, I don't see why Bill left me and took the professor with him. What if them Indians come back and. Oh. <laughs> They wouldn't do that. No, sir. I was hey, just... talking to Jingles. Huh? Oh, me? I was just talking to myself. <laughs> do it all the time. 
Hey, what are you doing out of bed? Your chair was squeaking and woke me up. Oh, I'm sorry. Reckon it needs oil in her, rubbing down with beeswax. Where's Dad and Wild Bill? Your dad and Wild Bill? Um, um, they just went for a ride. Ride? At night? What for? Oh, just to see about an old Indian. Um, or, uh, I mean an old... Be- uh, they just went for a ride, see? No, I don't see. Uh, I was afraid you wouldn't. Uh, maybe you better go back to bed. Well, I'm not sleepy now. You're not, huh? Well, <laughs> want to play game? What kind of games? Oh, how about cowboys and Indian? Indian? No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll play something else. You sure act funny. Something's wrong, isn't it? Wrong? Oh, no, now, what could be wrong? Something about that bell ringing out there. That's a school bell. Oh, now, let's just forget that old bell. Come here, climb up in my lap, and I'll sing you a song. Well, all right. There. There you are. <clears throat> now, I'm going to sing you to sleep. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play. Where seldom is her... Jingles, I don't think I can go to sleep to your singing. You don't, huh? Nope. Now, give me just one little good reason why. Just one. Well, I don't think I'd better. Dad always tells me if I can't say something nice, I better not say anything. He does, huh? Yep. And you can't think of anything nice to say about my singing, huh? Nope. Then you're, you're, you're real nice not to say anything. Uh, jingles. Yeah. Is it a bad sign for a fellow as big as me to be scared once in a while? Oh, no, not, not a bit. Why did it take about ten armories your size to make one of me and... <laughs> I get scared once in a while. Well, then I'm scared. You are, huh? Yeah. Huh. Something's wrong. And Dad and Wild Bill are out there in the night and, and the bell's ringing and that Indian chief threatened to kill Dad. Huh. That's what he meant, wasn't it? When he said the big sleep, wasn't it? Now you just listen to me, young fella. Don't you be scared for a minute. Not even a little bit. You just put your face in Wild Bill Hickok and you'll be all right. Why, I'll bet he's just about got this bell mystery solved right now. But doggone it, I wish I was out there helping him. That ghost rider, Bill. Yeah. Did you notice that those hoof beats aren't coming from that rider's horse? They're across the valley now. Hey, that's right. That means he's got a helper in his little ski. Hey, he's seen us. That shot whistled right by my ear. Get low on the saddle, Tom. After him, Buckshot. Hi. <laughs> hey, look. Our ghost rider's cutting back down into the valley. He's not giving up easy. Come on, Buckshot. Down the hill, boy. Come on. Come on, Don't Stay with him. Bill, why don't you shoot back at him? I want to take him alive. I've got a lot of questions to ask him. All right, we're almost down now. Easy, Buckshot. Easy, boy. Hey, he's got a good mount. And he had a good head start. We're pulling him in. Stay with it, Buckshot, boy. Stretch out. Bill, look. Indians. The whole tribe's after us. And we're caught in the middle of the valley. Stay low on that saddle and ride. We can't stop now. Ride for it, Tom. Hi, Buckshot. Catch that ghost rider, boy. It's our only chance. Go, boy. Hi, hi. Well, I'll be a whistling mockingbird, Wranglers. Just why do you suppose these new Kellogg sugar corn pops in the big yellow box always taste so fresh and good? Huh? <laughs> well, you know why, don't you? The answer to that one's right inside every box of Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. It's that shiny, bright bag your sugar pops come sealed in. Partners, that bag is pure aluminum. Keeps your Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops fresh up to ten times longer. So they're always crisp and crunchy and fresh as an evening breeze. Yes, siri, by Jingo, you can always depend on Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops to be downright delicious. Out of the box like candy or out of the bowl. Now, your whole family's going to be diving into these new Kellogg sugar corn pops. So get your mom to load up big at the store. 
And then you can have all the sugar pops you want. Yippee! Sugar pops. They're sugar-coated, taste the sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now, sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar pops are tops. When Wild Bill Hickok and Tom Dabney were almost close enough to catch the ghost rider, they were attacked suddenly by Chief Running Bear's braves. Wild Bill yelled for Tom to ride for it and kept after the mysterious ghost rider. Meanwhile, back at the Dabney house, Jingles was trying to keep young G.D. occupied. Oh, come on, G.D., sing with me. Well, all right, Jingles, if you want me to. Yeah, that's the boy. Now, all together. Oh, oh give, give me a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play where seldom is a... Jingles, hey, Jingles, what's that? Shots. <laughs> Sounds like the whole county's at war. Yeah, and Dad and Wild Bill out there. Eagles, we gotta go help them. <laughs> but Bill said, well, I ain't staying here another minute. Come on, partner. You doggone right, we gotta go help them. Get your boots on, Buster, and let's go. We'll both ride Joker. going on. Yeah, I sure old Bill ain't gone and gotten himself into something I can't get him out of this time. Hey, stop here, Jingles. Whoa, Joker. Whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa, Joker. Woo, we almost rode right off the edge of the rim. Jingles, look, down there, on this side of the lake. Yeah, riders string up for a mile. First a white horse and then two riders. Hey, that's Bill and your pa. And they're being chased by the Indians. Jingles, what can we do? Well, that white horse is heading up the hill this way, and it looks like Bill is after him. Maybe I can head him off. Well, then come on. Let's ride. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not letting you get into that fray, because you're staying right here out of harm. Oh, but gee whiz. <laughs> you got plenty of sand, GD boy, but this is man's work. Stay put now. I will. Good luck, Jingles. Yeah, I'm going to need it. Jump, Joker. We got to get Bill out of this one right now. Ha, ha, ha! Coming, Tom. Fine, Bill. We're leaving the Indians behind. Not far enough. And that ghost rider's heading up for that cave. Hey, look, Bill. Coming down the hill to the right. Up there. Yeah, it's Jingles. Jingles? And where's GD? Well, don't worry. Jingles wouldn't leave him where he could be hurt. Hey, Jingles is cutting across the trail of the ghost rider. All right, now's the time. Take him, Buckshot. Hi! Hi, you boy! Come on, Bill! Get him. That's just what I'm aiming to do, partner. All right, you night riding coyote. Come down out of that port. Now, uh, get up and let's see what kind of a jasper you are. You ain't going to be able to see when I get through with you. That just might be the other way around, mister. Now you can start clearing up this little mysterious game of yours before Chief Running Bear and his boys get here. I ain't clearing up nothing. Hey, Bill! That shot came from this cave up here. I'll take care of it. Be careful, partner. That's this Jasper side chick up there. Come out of there! Come out of there, you! You ain't taking me, you meddling... Stand right where you are. I've had plenty of trouble out of you for one night. Hey, Jingles, you all right up there? Yeah, Bill, I'm all right. You're going to have to get all your information out of this coyote. That polecat up in the cave ain't going to be talking for a while yet. Hey, Jingles, you found my school bell. <laughs> yeah, found it up in that cave. That part of the mystery? Hey, Bill, the Indians stopped way back. Chief Running Bear's riding up alone. Yeah, I guess now's the time to get the whole story. You, Wild Bill Hickok. You stay by sign language, you Chief Running Bear's friend. Now you prove it by catch ghost riders. Well, here he is, Chief. You recognize him? Ah, he don't know me. 
Yes. I know him. He bad man Bull Lega. Four moons back, he tried to steal gold from Indian Valley of Blue Light. Yeah, Bill, I heard about that, but he disappeared. Yes. We run him away one time. Now he come back. Yeah, with a bunch of new tricks. Tricks? Bill, you mean that bell? See, that's what those logs were for, I guess, huh? Logs? What logs? Oh, well, just inside the cave up there, I saw two hollow logs. One of them had sheep's hides stretched across the end of it, and this bell was laying right by the other one. Yeah. Pretty good trick, if I do say so myself. And I'd have had these dead blasted Indians heading for somewhere else if you hadn't come along. You mean that a hollow log could make that bell sound that big? At the mouth of a cave? Sure. And he was beating the makeshift drum with his hands to make it sound like hoof beats when this coyote was riding the rim. Jingles! Jingles! Is it all right now? Hi, Dad. Uh, Gee, are you all right, son? Well, sure. Me and Jingles just came out to help you and Wild Bill. All of you great friend of Chief Running Bear's people. You give me this bad man, Lager. We take care of him. No, Chief. The laws of his own people will take care of him and his partner. You and your tribe go in peace. Yeah, Chief. And something tells me you better wash your face. That war paint don't look very peaceful. <laughs> yeah, Chief. You know, the button's got a right good idea there. This is a mighty pretty valley you got here, and, well, I reckon the thing to do is to enjoy it. Might settle down in a place like this myself. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Say, Andy, I understand our story for Friday has to do with a champion. It sure does, Guy. A champion frog. <laughs> so don't miss it, kids. Hear how a frog gets Wild Bill into plenty of trouble in The Champion of Pharaoh Flat. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think sugar corn pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Forrest Lewis, Jeff Silver, Ed Max, Harry Bartell, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok defends the champion of Pharaoh Flats. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. And Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. Madison is Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap, Crackle, and Pop, Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, The Champion of Faro Flats. 
When you open your eyes in the morning, there's no finer thing in the world to look forward to than a big heaping bowl of golden, crisp Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the talking cereal. These merry little gadabouts in the bowl will tell you with a snap, crackle, pop how fresh and crisp and good-tasting they are. So get a big box tomorrow. And boys and girls, a little later on in the program, we'll tell you how you can get a wonderful Aerodoodle rocket launching beanie. So be sure to stay tuned in. One afternoon in the late 60s, United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles stopped at a fork in the road on the California line. When they made their choice to take the left-hand road toward California's mining towns, they were playing into the hand of fate. For a strange, exciting adventure waited for them when they met... The Champion of Faro Flats. All right, Joker. Bill says this way. Pick him up. Yep. Let's go, Buckshot. Bill, something tells me we should have taken that right-hand fork after all. What's the matter, partner? You getting to be a fortune teller all of a sudden? No, but I get hunches about these things, and when the hunch says we're heading for gun smoke, you can bet your silver buckle we're going to get into it. Well, we'll worry about that when it comes, partner. Hey, Bill. Hey, look coming up behind us. Ain't that a funny way to fix up a buckboard? Yeah, like a little covered wagon. <laughs> Let's stop and let them go by. I want to see it. Now, hold, hold, hold. Hello, Buckshot. Uh, howdy, howdy to Nice day, huh? Sure is. Uh, howdy, stranger. And uh, howdy to you, too, my friend. Yeah, over there. Over there. Yeah, over the river to you, too. <laughs> He's a right happy gent, Jingles. Yeah, he sure is. That sure is a funny contraption. He's driving down the road. Come on, Buckshot. Yeah, Joker. You know, Bill, we're heading in the same direction. Maybe we'll run into him again. Maybe. Hey, Bill, look. Look, a bunch of riders jumped out of the bright. They're after that little gent in the wagon. Yeah. Bill! Come on, partner. We'll even this up a little bit. Hi, Buckshot. Get him, boy. Jump, Joker. We're going to cut those bushwhackers down to size. That little stranger's got plenty of spunk, Jingles. Look at him try to outrun them. Well, let's give those rollers something to think about, Bill. Yeah, partner. Fire a couple over the heads. Hey, they're turning on us. That's fine, Jingles. Ride right into them. All right, now, you two shots to say. You drag down on them horses and I'll be drilling holes in the boat of you. Woo, Wigga, woo, I. Yeah, mister? I'd be more careful of those shooting irons if I were you. And who is it telling me to be careful, I'm asking? And I'll be the one to be telling you that, you Spadolfin. It's being none other than Wild Bill Hickok. And does that name mean anything to you? Hickok, let's get out of here. Get up there. Get up there. <laughs> Look at him scatter, Bill. Now, stranger, maybe you'd like to explain what you and your boys were doing ambushing that wagon. Well, now, I wouldn't be explaining nothing, Marshal. And I'll be bidding you a very bad day, for you've interrupted our business. We did no harm to the little coyote, so you have nothing to hold me for. Now, get up, me boy. Hey! Hey, you come back here, you dry gulch and Gila monster! Let him go, Jingles. Let's see if they did any damage to our little friend in the buckboard. Uh, gracias, senor. Muy gracias. You have saved my life. I, Farino, leading citizen of Faro Flats, I give you a salute. Oh, now, slow down. Slow down and tell us what this is all about. Yeah, Mr. Farino. What were those men after? Them, a fact. I curse them for the snakes and the grasses they are. They would take from Farino, the most famous of all the jumping champions. You, you, you have saved the honor, Farino, on Faro Flats. Bill, this Jasper ain't making much sense to me. To me neither, Jingle. Hey, come ride with me and I will tell you. There's no time to lose. You must hurry before more harm is done. Harm? You reckon they'll try to get you again? Say, they will never give up trying until after the great contest. Which takes place tomorrow afternoon. Hey, good, uh, get up there, my bell. Master Hori, get up, get up there. Yeah, along, Buckshot. Might as well follow him, Jingle. <laughs> yeah. Doggone if he ain't got my curiosity right up into the top of my hat. <laughs> Say, uh, Reno. Say, yeah, my friend, there's a me. What contest are you talking about? The jumping contest, of course. I, Farino, own a champion of all the jumpers. Oh, horses, now you're talking. If there's anything I like to see, it's a good jumping horse. Now, wait a minute, Farino. Uh, how were them mavericks trying to steal a jumper from you just now? You can't get a champion horse in this little ring. Horses? Who's anything about 
the horses. Yeah, see the horses. I have the greatest of all the champion of jumpers. All right, here I'm in a wagon. Win the victory. Look, look, I pull it back at the commas and show them to you. Yeah, there he is, my wing of the victory. Look, this Jasper's gone local as a wild steer. That, that champion's a frog. A doggone green pop-eyed bullfrog. This is Tally Lyon and Slim the Singing Cowboy, friends. Say, tell us about those wonderful new Aerodoodle beanie caps and rocket planes, Slim. Well, sir, they're just about the niftiest thing this side of the Rio Grande, Charlie. You know what a beanie is, kids. It's a cap. And this one's bright colored, red and green. And it's got a four-inch flexible plastic launching tube on top for shooting out rocket planes. You fit one of these here rocket planes on the tube, then you blow through a 20-inch blasting tube, and that rocket plane can soar as high as a house. Boy, oh boy, what fun. Now, be the first in your neighborhood to get one. You just tear off the top of a regular or large-sized box of those delicious golden Kellogg's Rice Krispies and send it along with 25 cents to Kellogg's. They'll send you a swell rocket launching beanie with three rocket planes. So get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. That's the talking cereal that goes snap, crackle, and pop to tell you how fresh and crisp they are. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best, and how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Get this wonderful trick beanie that actually launches rocket planes. Send now to Kellogg's. Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago 77, Illinois. Okay, let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles were more than surprised when the excitable Farino disclosed to them that his prize jumper, Winged Victory, was actually a bullfrog. When Jingles and Bill stopped laughing, they headed on up the road and into the town of Faro Flats. Well, here we are. Now you will have the pleasure of meeting George Harrington, the other leading citizen of Faro Flats. He's a nice man. You wait and see. Uh, Farino, come in, come in. Everybody's been worried about you. Worry about the Farino? <laughs> but of course, Farino's a very important a citizen of Faro Flats. He's the right they should worry about me. Ah, I see you brought some friends. Oh, yes. These are my friends. The greatest marshal of all of the West. Maybe the whole world. While the Bill Hickok. Hickok. And is a sandal kick, a jingle. <laughs> That's me. Well, welcome to the leading <laughs> town of all California's mining country, gentlemen. Come in, come in, come in. You arrived just at a most propitious moment. We did? <laughs> well, well, what kind of a time is that? Never mind, Jingles. He's just glad to see us. Oh, <laughs> me too, Judge. Uh, uh, George, uh, <laughs> uh, tell me, is the contest all around? Yes, yes, and I have great news. Great news? What he is? Calaveras County citizens are entering their champion to compete against your wing victory. This will decide which is the best jumper of all time. Oh, if only Mark Twain could be here to witness this grand occasion. This must be an important time around here, Judge Harrington. Yeah, everybody's all stirred up like it was a rodeo almost. Rodeo? Rodeo is nothing. You will see. But, George, I must have told you something. O'Reilly and the cutthroats from Gopher Gulch attacked me on the road. They did. They sure did. Ambushed him, that's why. Sure they did. And if it had not been for a while, Bill Hickok... And Jingles. And a Jingles. Uh-huh. I would not be here. And my great champion wing victory it would be no more. Poof. Out. Gentlemen, you have saved the honor of Faro Flats. Oh, it weren't nothing to talk about. Much. Me and Bill was just riding down the road behind Mr. Farino and his wagon when suddenly 40 or 50 of the... Jingles. Huh? Well, weren't there that many, Bill? Five. Five? Five. Oh, yeah, five. Well, when five of the meanest, orneriest gun slicks you ever saw come busting out of the bright... Jingles. Well, they were. Never mind, partner. But Bill... Never mind. Oh, all right. 
Well, like I said, Judge, it wasn't really nothing. Nothing at all. Doggone it anyway. Well, I have a request to make of you, Mr. Hickok. You just name it, Judge. Yeah, name it. It's as good as done, ain't it, Bill? Well, if we can, partner. Well, it's this. I want you to guard for Reno's champion until after the contest tomorrow. It's very important to Farrell Flats. Oh, now, Bill, I don't want to be no guard nursemaid to a dad-blasted, croaking, jumping bullfrog. Well, there just ain't no dignity to it for a big U.S. deputy like me. Oh, now, now, you don't understand, oh. Jingles. The contest is the biggest thing of the year. Gopher Gulch and Farrow Flats are armed camps right now. Feeling is running high. Everyone is so stirred up that if anything happened, there'd be more killings than we had in the Civil War. There would? Yes, there would. Well, how about it, Bill? All right, Judge, we'll take that responsibility. Jingles, you get that bullfrog and we'll keep him in our hotel room. You can stand guard over him until tomorrow afternoon. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hickok. It's a fine thing you do for Faro Flats. It make you go down in history as the greatest United States of Marshal of all the time. All right, now, sir. You know what to do. Yeah, sure, Riley, I know. Just take this box with a snake in it up to the window of their hotel room and let the snake loose. That's right. He'll do the rest. If there's anything a snake likes better than anything else, it's a nice, juicy bullfrog. <laughs> yeah. Reno ain't gonna have no champion to jump against the gopher gulch flash tomorrow. <laughs> Now, my friend, the Jingles, you will guard my champion the world, my little wing to victory. And tomorrow he will be the most famous frog in all the history. Yeah, and tomorrow I'll be a nervous wreck. Now, don't go worrying, partner. You just keep your eyes open. Don't let the Gopher Gulch boys catch you napping. Well, how am I going to get something to eat if i got to stay locked up here with this frog? I might just start frying him up for supper. Frog legs are mighty good, you know. No, no. I will send our key from the cafe to come up to your window and bring you some. Okay. Well, where are you going, Bill? To look around town, Jingles. Folks are already gathering for the celebration and contest tomorrow. And it will be a celebration like you have never seen in your life before. I'll see you later, partner. You got my wing victory well, Jingles. Now, doggone it, how'd I ever get mixed up in a thing like this? <coughs> oh, be quiet. <coughs> Hey, what's that? Hey, who's that? It's just me, big boy. I brought you something for that croaking jumper of yours. There! Well, thanks. Hey, it's a snake. You sneaking salamander. He healing up Reno's frog. Yeah, Tommy, that's a general idea. <laughs> Help! Help, snake! I gotta kill it. Oh, Mr. Doggone it. Doc Jingles! Oh, Bill. Woo-wee. I'm glad you come back. Hey, you killed it. Oh, where's that doggone frog? There he is, safe and sound. I heard you holler. Bill, those varmints ain't kidding about being after this doggone old bullfrog. I guess not, Jingles. You know, they may try it again, so you better stay awake. <laughs> you couldn't put me to sleep now with a ten-pound sledgehammer. Fine. I'll be back before long. I'll key shut you up soon with some chow for you. You better show up mighty quick or I'll starve to death. I could eat a longhorn steer right now. Hair, hide, horns, and tallow. Who's there? No sidewinders surprising me again. Oh! Hey, it's that Chinaman from the cafe, and he's got a frying pan in his hand. Hot diggity, now I eat. <laughs> oh, Mr. Falino, him say, bring your chow-chow, chop-chop. Chow. Me bring. Oh, my name, Aki. How do? Well, now that's right nice of you, Aki. How do yourself? <laughs> I'll just take that frying pan. Oh, sure, you take. 
Oh, be careful. Frying pan hot right from stove. Ow! Yeah, it is, ain't it? Hey, is that all you brought? Two little old chicken legs? Me very sorry. Uh, many people in fellow flats. Many people mean much hungry. Eat all the food up, not much left. Only two chicken legs. You know, like me take back. No, 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 you don't. I'll eat them. Sure ain't much when you got as much to keep up as I have. All right, you keep. You eat. Oh, me go. Oh, bye bye. So long. Two little old chicken legs. Dog on it, but it's sure good at that. Just one bite and that one's gone. And another bite and that one's gone too. That bone sure sound hollow in that frying pan. Where's that frog get to? Hey, froggy, froggy, froggy. Come on, little froggy. Oh, now, come on. This ain't no time to play hide and seek. Are you under the bed? No. He's gone. Help! Robbers! Thief! Bill! Hey, Jingles, what's the matter? What happened? Where is my wing to victory? What are you done with him? The bill is gone. Just disappeared. What? Disappeared? No, you not tell me a thing like this. Where is it going to quick? Say something to me. Well, there ain't nothing to say. He just ain't here, that's all. Mamma mia, look in the frying pan. Two bones. Two bones. Jingles, I hear you said that you were hungry, you mother. You eat my frog, my champion of victory. You have eaten, and for that I kill you. Hey, Wranglers. Kids all over the land are buzzing about the sensational new offer that Kellogg's Rice Krispies is making. Now, I'm going to tell you all about it in a minute. Right now, though, come on, let's everybody sing. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best, and how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Here's what you can get from Kellogg's, kids. It's called the Aerodoodle Beanie Cap and Rocket Outfit. It's a bright red and green cap that fits on your head and has a flexible plastic four-inch tube attached to the top. You fit a sleek, sturdy five-and-a-half-inch rocket plane, and uh, there's three of them in the kit, on the front of this here tube. Now you blow through another long tube and watch the rocket go zooming off your cap and zip up into the air. You'll have all kinds of fun with it, and I'll tell you how you can get this wonderful rocket beanie outfit. Just send the box top from a package of Kellogg's Rice Krispies along with 25 cents to Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago, 77, Illinois. Now, be sure to include your name and address. That's Kellogg's, Box 8500A, Chicago, 77, Illinois. You better send it right away. And now, what do you say? Let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. When they heard Jingles yelling, Bill, Judge Harrington, and Farino rushed into the room to find Jingles moaning that the champion jumping frog has disappeared. Then Farino spied the frying pan with the two chicken bones in it and accused Jingles of eating the frog's legs, threatening to kill him. Yeah, I would have killed you. Hold it, Farino. Bill, pull him off of me. Doggone it. I wish I'd never seen that bad burn frog. But what happened? Eat my frog, I tell you. Now, everybody just settle down. All right, partner. Go over it for us. Tell us just what happened. Well, our key brought me a couple of chicken legs in the frying pan, and I ate them. Frog was right there on the floor when I started, right near the bed. Oh, my poor little wing of victory. What are I going to do? Quiet for Reno and let Jingles finish. <laughs> then when I ate the chicken, I dropped the bones in the frying pan and rattled them once. And when I looked around, the doggone frog was missing. Was the window open? Yeah. Our key brought the chicken to the window. Well, now let's just have a little look. 
What do you expect to find out there, Bill? I found it, Jingles, right out here in the rain barrel. What? My wing to victory? My champion? You'll find him? I sure did, Perino. Here he is. Well, I'll be doggone. Bill, that sure was some quick thinking. Yeah, and that was sure some fine jumping that frog did, too. Hey, hey, that's right. Jingles, you say you saw the frog right by this bedpost? Yeah, right where your foot is, Judge. And he jumped right out the window into the rain barrel. Judge, you know what I mean? And that is the longest jump ever made by any frog anywhere. But how did you get him to do it? I didn't get him to do it, I tell you. All I did was rattle the frying pan and turn around and he was gone. See, he agrees with me. The frying pan. Quick, give me the frying pan. Here, here. Now, what are you going to do with it? I show you. Here, you, you say the frog was right here? The right by the bedpost. All right. Now, wing the victory. There you are. Jump right by the bedpost again. Now, I show Papa how you can jump into the rain of again when I rattle the frying pan. Are you ready? Oh, I never saw anything as silly before in my born day. Hey, quiet, Jingles. If he does it, this will be a memorable day in the history of Faro Flat. Quiet now. I'm going to rattle a frying pan. Hey, he did it! He did it! He did it. He's the big champion of all the time! I can't wait till tomorrow. He'll beat the gopher gouch flash with his flippers down. Gopher Gulch entry by three feet, and the Calaveras entry by five. Oh, what a jump! O'Reilly well, sure went off with a sour look. My winged victory wins. George Otto Flotts is a famous. I'm a famous. You're a famous. <laughs> <laughs> We're all famous. Hey, and don't forget, I'm the one that trained him for the match. Yep, partner, you're a great frog trainer. And because you do such a fine job of training my jumper, I'm a changing the frog's name from a wing to victory. To a jump and a jingle. It's a nice, huh? That's real nice, Farino. You know, partner, you're going to be famous. Yeah, you'll be the most famous. Yeah, yeah, the most... I know. I'll be the most famous leading citizen. <laughs> the most famous frog trainer and frog jockey in the world. And it's all right with me just so as I don't have to live with the critter and listen to his singing. Mine's bad enough. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. That's our story for today, folks. Enjoy the weekend, and we'll be back again on Monday. Yes, sir. And with a story about one of the most vicious plots against Wild Bill Hickok's life called Four Aces for Death. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right. It's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Harry Lang, John Stevenson, and Fred Howard. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rourke. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok holds four aces for death. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it.
Cinnamon Cereals presents Wild Bill Hitchcock! Hi, you folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Bandits of Badwater County. <laughs> Say, boys and girls, if you'd like to sit down to a really scrumptious breakfast treat tomorrow morning, just pour yourself out a big bowl of new Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. Add milk and dig in. Those luscious golden hearts of corn just can't be beat for flavor. And no sugar needed. Sugar corn pops are already sweetened for you just right. Now, let's listen. Foremost among the champions of law and order in the days when the first railroads nosed their way westward was United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok. His blue steel courage and fearless daring were matched only by the faithfulness of the deputy who rode at his side, the mountainous Jingles. Tirelessly, this pair of lawmen roamed the West in search of those who lived outside the law. And it was inevitable that sooner or later they'd run into the bandits of Badwater County. Sheriff, I've been mail clerk on this railroad since it got up ahead of steam in its first engine. But I ain't ever been as scared as I am now. Now, settle down, Jim. Things ain't always as bad as they seem. Oh, they ain't, huh? You and me sitting here in a box full of payroll money after all that's been happening in the past three months? Now, don't borrow trouble, Jim. It yeah. ain't happened yet. Well, you can bet if some bandits do hold us up and get this payroll, might as well shoot us, too. Those construction workers are in a mighty mean state of mind. If they don't get this money today, they'll get our necks. Now, like I say, Jim, nothing's happened yet, and don't you go... Sheriff! Stop it. We ain't too bad water yet. Now, you keep your head, Jim. Well, what are we stopping here for? Well, maybe one of the cars has got a hot box. Yeah, 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 but maybe it's something else that... Listen. Hey, Sheriff! You in there? Who's that? Sounds like Matt Webster, the construction superintendent of the railroad. Sheriff, can you hear me? This is Matt Webster. Everything's all right. You can open up. All right, Matt. Now, you see, Jim, that's Matt, all right. I'd know his voice anywhere. I have to admit, I'm right relieved myself. Here, help me with this lock. Well, I'm right glad to turn over the payroll money to him and get it off my mind. Yeah. Well, Matt, I'm mighty glad... Hey, you ain't Matt Webster. Sheriff, there were a mess. It's a hold-up. Well, now, you catch on real quick. All right, Sheriff. Hand over that payroll money. Just throw it on the box. No, sir, I ain't throwing nothing but lead. All right, boys. Get up in there and get that box. Billy's oh. coming around. Doc said it'd be all right. That slug sure parted his hair, Jingles. Oh. Yeah. Nah, just take it easy, Sheriff. Don't rush anything. Howdy, Sheriff. It's Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles. Oh, Bill, I'm sure glad to see you around. Those bandits make off of that payroll? Reckon so, Sheriff. You and the clerk were laid out cold and the money box was gone. Uh, that blasted sneaking road agents pulled a low down trick on me. What was that, Sheriff? Matt, you here too? Yeah. One of them Jaspers talks like you. Sounds just like you. In fact, he called in and said it was you and to open up. Well, now that makes it real clear as to why you opened the door. Why? You didn't think I was in cahoots with those coyotes, did you? No, 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 Sheriff. But that crowd outside thinks so. You feel good enough to talk to them? Sure, I'll talk to them. Well, then let's go outside. I'll try to keep the men in hand. 
With Wild Bill's help. I figure we can do that all right, Matt. Yeah, we'll be backing you and the sheriff, Matt. Let's go. I'll be ready now, Jingle. Uh, I've been ready, Bill. There they are, men. All right, Matt. Turn that crooked chair forward to us. We'll string them up. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Hold it, men. All right. Now listen to me. They're just taller, Matt Webster. We all want our pay. We want it now. No crooked sheriff is going to keep it away from us. Make him tell us where it is. Now, that's going to do you no good running me down, Bull Hadley. The payroll was stolen, and that's that. But we're going to try and get it back. Yeah, and if you don't, you're going to do a jig at the end of a rope, Sheriff. And if we don't get our pay, there's going to be some railroad property smashed up, too. All right, that's enough, Mr. Now, just who do you think you are talking so big? I'm a United States Marshal in this territory. And I'm here to see that you don't have any necktie socials. I reckon any railroad property. Is that clear? Well, I hear you talking, but it don't seem to make any impression. Bill, you going to let him talk to you like that? Easy, partner. That crowd's in a rough mood. Mister, maybe it'd make more impression on you if I cooled you off in jail for a day or so. You ain't taking me to no jail. I got a special way of taking care of smart Jack U.S. Marshals. I'd be careful about demonstrating it if I were you, bull. Yeah? I'm going to be right careful. Bill is coming for you. Oh, that's your talk. Well, I'm talking in all I'm doing to you. Watch the crowd, Jingle. Yeah. All right, the rest of you milling mavericks. Keep your distance and keep your hands away from those six guns. You heard me. You got a grandstand seat to watch Wild Bill Hickok. Now enjoy it. Well, that's who you are. Yeah, now I'm going to give you time to think it over. <laughs> that's it, Bill. There you are, gents. Anybody else care to try matching Wild Bill? That's enough, Jingles. <laughs> All right, Bull, on your way. You ain't stopping us that easy, Hickok. We'll be back to get you and that no good sheriff real soon. Wranglers, did you ever see Wild Bill Hickok Marshall's badge? Outlaws have a healthy respect for that badge. How'd you like one just like it? Well, sir, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops are fixing to pin a Marshall's badge just like Wild Bill's on you. Oh, it's a humdinger. Big six-pointer star, hefty as a nugget. All silvery shining. And right around the edge, engraved deep and outlined in black enamel, it reads, Marshall Wild Bill Hickok. And there's Wild Bill and Jingle's picture right in the center. And tell you something else, this badge comes with a fancy badge-carrying case of simulated brown leather. The cover has Wild Bill's insignia stamped right on it. Oh, it's fine for carrying in your pocket when you want to operate secret. Carries your official martial identification and membership card, too. Now, Wranglers, the whole kit and caboodle is easy as easy can be to get. Just mail the top from a box of those fine eaten Kellogg sugar corn pops and 25 cents to Kellogg's Box 306, Battle Creek, Michigan. That's all. A top from your Kellogg sugar corn pops box and 25 cents to Kellogg's Box 306, Battle Creek, Michigan. But don't you be letting the grass grow under your feet. Send for your Wild Bill Hickok Marshall's badge today. This offer is good only in those areas permitting such offers. When Wild Bill Hickok met and whipped the mob's leader, Bull Hadley, they all dispersed, but with Bull threatening that they'd return to get both Hickok and the sheriff. Bill, in the meantime, talked to Matt Webster in the sheriff's office, trying to find some clue to the identity of the payroll robbers. I can't tell you anything, Hickok, except that this is only one of a long line of incidents against my construction company. Bill, it uh, looks like somebody was trying to run Matt's company into the ground so they could get the building contract for the railroad. Yeah, but just somebody ain't anybody in particular. And you gotta have some particular somebody before you can lock them up. Uh, ain't so sure I understand that, Jingles. Well, I ain't so sure I do myself. What are we gonna do, Bill? Find somebody to lock up for the robbery. Well, who? That's what we have to find out. Oh, uh, Bill, I don't get you. We're gonna try a trick, partner. Oh, 
Good, I like tricks. <laughs> well, I don't like the one that bandit played on me. Talking in a voice that sounded just like Matt here. Yeah. Well, I sure hope your trick works, Hickok. With the payroll gone, if that mob destroys any of the railroad property or my equipment, well, it'll finish my company. Yeah, Bill. Matt's closer to bankruptcy now than he's let on. Oh, now that's a downright shame. All right, here's my plan. Jingles and I were sent out here to watch for a government shipment of gold from the men at Carson City bound for Washington. Gold? Well, hoppin' horn toads, Bill. If those bandits got wind of that, we'd be in trouble right up to our gun bills. And that's just what they're going to do. Bill, you loco, you wouldn't take a chance on that. Well, you let the word leak out among the workers that this shipment is coming through Badwater tomorrow morning. Well, if you say so. Oh, but it really ain't going to be coming, eh, Bill? No, Sheriff. Man, I want you to arrange for an eastbound special. Just a locomotive and one car. Make it look like a hot shot. I got gotcha, you, Bill. Bill, uh, we ain't going to be riding that special, are we? We sure are, partner. Uh-oh, I was afraid of that. And I'm going to be right with you, Jingles. That won't be necessary, Sheriff. I don't care. I was the one that lost that payroll. I want to be there when those owl hoots are caught. If they take our bait, you mean. Yeah, we're the bait. All locked up in that car, we'll just be sitting ducks for those varmints. Well, you got everything straight, Matt? Sure have, Mr. Hickok. I'll have that hot shot ready to roll in and pick you up at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And the way I'll put it on around town, she'll look like she's carrying the whole daggum mint. Good. Come on, Jingles. We might as well get over to the hotel and get a good night's sleep. Yeah, looks like tomorrow's going to be a busy day. Good night, gents, and good luck to us. Could that be, Bill? You know a good way to find out, Jingles? What's that? Open the door and see. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. How do you do? I'm Turner Snively. Uh, how do you do? Uh, Bill, it's Turner Snively. Invite him in, partner. Oh, sure. Uh, come in, Mr. Snively. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Snively. I'm Bill Hickok. I came to see you, Hickok. To see why you aren't locking up that sheriff for implication in that payroll robbery. Now, just a minute, mister. Hold it, Jingle. Well, I don't know why you're so interested, Snively, but the sheriff's not guilty. You consider yourself both judge and jury, Hickok? No, but I have no reason to suspect the sheriff. Uh-huh. Well, I'm a lawyer in this town, Marshal, and I think there's plenty of reason to hold him. Then you'll have to bring me the proof. Until then, you can keep your suspicions to yourself. Yeah, and you can keep yourself out of this room beginning right now. That's the door, mister. It's for walking through, so do it. Okay, big boy. You got a big surprise coming to you, Hickok. You see... Hickok Snively? Yeah, but he didn't say anything to give me an idea of what he's up to. Well, if he hadn't butted in, we'd have had that pesky sheriff and that overbearing super Matt Webster right where we wanted him. you got to be careful, Bull. I've told you that before. You're just excited. You'd be excited, too, if you had this black guy Hickok gave me. I'm just waiting to get back at that tin star. You'll have your chance tonight. I've just gotten wind of something big. If we put this one over, we can ruin Matt Webster and buy him out with his own money. What have you got now? The less you know, the better. But I want you to round up the boys and tell them to be at the Green Hill Curve on the railroad at sunup tomorrow morning. Sounds like you really got something hot, boss. I have. Now go take care of them. Then come back and meet me behind the hotel at midnight sharp. First, we've got to get rid of Hickok and that big bear he calls a deputy. We gonna sneak up and shoot Hickok while he's sleeping? Ah, oh, you idiot. You don't just sneak up on Hickok and shoot him. Boot Hill's full of those that try that. You have to get him in the back. And I know just how to arrange that. Sheriff, you sure don't have to go on this trip. No use arguing with me, Hickok. I'm going. You sure are a stubborn stuff. This was fine work, Matt. You got this train here right on time. Yeah, and she's ready to roll just as soon as you get in that car. All right, let's load this gear and box it in the car. If anybody's looking, I want them to get some big ideas. We got most of it in. Here, Jingles. Give me a hand with this big one. Sure. 
in she goes. Now, well, there you are, Matt. You know, I'll be doggone. See, I could use you building a railroad. Not on your life. When we're through here, I'm going so far west, the railroad will never catch me. Yeah? You all ready to go, Bill? This has got to look like she's running on a fast schedule. Yeah, Matt. Give the engineer the highball and let's roll. Let's get up in the car, Jingles. All right, here goes. Climb aboard, Jinx. And close that door. Tight. And lock it. You know what to do, Matt. I got it all straight, Hickok. Good luck. Yeah, and that's something we're going to need plenty of. Well, round me up and ship me off, Wranglers. If I don't always want to talk more than a Paul parrot when it comes to telling you about new Kellogg sugar corn pops. But the best way for you to know about this wonderful two-way cereal that's already sweetened for you is by munching a few mouthfuls yourself. Yep, by Jingo, just take a handful of Kellogg sugar corn pops right out of the big yellow box like candy. They're a real tasty snack, sweet and crisp and crunchy. Then try a few spoonfuls of sugar corn pops out of the bowl with milk. There, that's all you do to know that out of the box, you're out of the bowl. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops is the most downright delicious cereal you ever tasted. So hit the trail for the store tomorrow and load up on new Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Hey, and you take old Panhandle's word for it. You'll be mighty glad you did. Yippee! Sugar Pops. They're sugar-coated, tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Oh, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Now Sugar Pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. While Bill Hickok has had Matt Webster, the construction superintendent, send out a special train of an engine and one car, and let word leak out that this is a hot shot special carrying minted gold to Washington. Bill, Jingles, and the sheriff are riding in the car, hoping to trick the payroll bandits into coming out in the open to stage another robbery. Bill, ain't this old peak kettle busting along a little too fast? I saw an engine blow up once, spread itself in the crew over two counties. Hey, I wish you'd quit talking like that, Jingles. You're going to make me nervous if you keep it up. Ah, oh, you're too slow now. Just keep your wits about you and everything's going to be all right. Hey, now, doggone it, well, what's that engine there doing? Something's wrong. Hey, you suppose this is it, Bill? Maybe, Sheriff. We'll soon see. Help! Hey, partner. Jingles. Jingles! Huh? Oh, Bill. My bruised and battered body. <laughs> Bill, are we wrecked for sure? Quiet, partner. We just stopped. This may be what we're looking for. Hickok, this is Matt. Your little scheme didn't work. I didn't fall for it. Bill, that's Matt Webster. Well, how'd he get here? We left him back at the station in Badwater. It's not Webster, Sheriff. That's the same man that fooled you once before. Come on, Bill, open up. I tell you the trick didn't work. And that trick won't work either, mister. You're not getting this gold like you got the payroll. Are you smart, Jack Starpacker? You're not getting away with that gold. Jingles, where have I heard that voice before? Huh? I don't know, Bill. Well, I heard it once before. To my sorrow, that varmint. All right, I'm through stalling with you, Hickok. Shoot that door off, Bulls. A pleasure, boss. Sheriff Jingles, get down behind those boxes. It don't do no good, boss. That door's sound. We'll slam that iron bar across it and we'll lock him in. One last chance, Hickok. Either you open that door and shove out that gold, or we'll run the train back and then smash this car to match wood with it. No, oh, he wouldn't do that, would he, Bill? With us trapped in here? He does mind, partner. Oh. That's undoing, mister. All right. Take that train back and then run it down here full speed. Bust this car wide open. 
hey. Bill, he's doing it. Or we'll all be killed in here. Not yet, Sheriff. I've got a couple of picks and crowbars. Here, Jingle. I'll start breaking a hole in the floor of this car. Uh, big enough to crawl down through, Bill? Is that your idea, Humpy? You got it, partner, and I'll make it fast. Ain't much time, Bill. Grab that crowbar, Sheriff. Pry up these pieces as we break them loose. Stand back, everybody. That engine will be coming like 60. Bill, I can see the ground. Just a little bit more, Jingle. We'll never get a hole big enough to push Jingle through. No, no, don't you talk like that, Sheriff. we got to get out of here. Here it comes. Bill, the train's coming back. Quick, Sheriff. Get down through that hole and roll in the ditch. All right, Bill. I'm going. Now, you, Jingles. Yeah. Oh, oh. Um, Bill, Bill, I'm caught. No, you're not, partner. I'll give you a push. Be sure to roll toward the ditch at the side of the tracks. Now, down you go. Uh, I made it, Bill. Come on, that train's right on top of Here I come. Now, hit the ditch, partner. Quick. Jasper. Jingles. You all right? Yeah. I'm okay, Bill. All right, now. Those Jaspers will crowd that car to get the gold they think's in there. Be ready to get them. I'm ready. Me too. All right, boys. I get that gold and let's get out of here. Come on, you guys. Clear where that wreckage and find that gold back. Oh, honey. Hickok and the others must be dead now. Hurry up. What's the matter? <laughs> here it comes, Bill. <laughs> hey. Hey, there ain't no gold here. Just a bunch of empty boxes and some picks and crowbars. Well, where did Hickok get to? His body ain't here. No. Let's get him. Here I am, Bull. Reach you pack of coyotes and get him up. Hey, hey, what's going on here? Hickok, where'd you come from? That's not where I came from that matters. It's where you're going, Bull Hadley. What do you mean by that? He means you're headed for the territorial prison for wrecking a train and for a payroll robbery. That's what. You can't pin that on me. I just did. But... But what about Snively? Oh, so that too is under the other mask. Well, I've got nothing on him but attempted robbery. You're the goat, Bull. Yeah, maybe they can fit you up with a pair of horns at the prison. <laughs> oh, no. I ain't being no goat for him. Shut up, you fool. No, sir. Snively, you ain't making me take no rap for you. Shut up. Hickok, you go looking Snively safe. You'll find the whole payroll. After he'd ruined Matt Webster's company, he was going to buy him out with her own dough. Well, now, ain't that a fine mess of greens? Bull, I'll get you for that. Snively, your getting days are over. And Jingles, I just remembered. It's Snively's voice. It sounds like Matt Webster's. Then that's how he fooled me when he got the payroll. That's right, Sheriff. Maybe Snively learned all those tricks from studying public speaking. Well, if he did, Bill, I reckon there are a lot of owl hoots where he's going that'll give him some more public speaking lessons. They'll teach him that even if he did talk his way into jail, he'll never talk his way out of it. <laughs> and now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Andy, what's our story for Friday? Oh, this one's about a phony mine guy and how Wild Bill and Jingle shoot it out with the shotgun swindler. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Sugar Corn Pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Ken Christie, Tim Graham, Byron Kane, Jim Nusser, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce, story by Larry Hayes, music by Dick O'Rant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok mixes with the Shotgun Swindler. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. And Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal.
Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, presents... Wild! 